yeah. I have some uh, choice stuttering John clips this week that I'm you know, excited uh, to play for you. The, what you were referencing was um, the stuttering John green screen incident. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we did it on Anthony's show two different times. Yes. And got like two different reactions from uh, the people Anthony, Anthony was talking to. We put it up on the YouTube channel. I'm trying to find. Yeah, the, the one with uh, Chrissy I saw on YouTube. Not there was too one with ago. Chrissy, and I think there's one with Gino too. Yeah, that's up on there. But it did <laughs> amazingly well. It's yeah, it's uh, it's almost at forty thousand views on this thing, <clears throat> and we just put it up. It's, and it's, it's hilarious. It's the funniest video you've ever seen as, as the city of Los Angeles is falling over just to reveal that John is living in disgusting filth. Well, I, I, I want to point I want to point this out because hearing it on your show, the, the audio, hearing the thing clumps down oh, 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 and, you know, him just scrambling to get it up is hilarious. Seeing the video, even more hilarious. Yes. But studying the video, really, there's something that you, you guys didn't even touch on. <laughs> So if you watch when he gets the screen back up and you see this like futuristic version of a city behind him, yep. if you stare at it real quick, there's watermarks all over the photo. <laughs> Are there really? So he didn't get a legitimate photo. He didn't get it from like uh, like Shutterstock or one of those uh, services that you can get uh, licensed photos from. He stole the sample that right. these sites use. So when he sits there, you just see text watermarks all over the back. Oh God. I didn't even notice photos. that. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's how cheap this guy is. Well, his camera isn't very high res. So he probably figured no one would notice that. Yeah. But when you go, if you look at the video again, another time when he gets the screen back up and he's sitting down there trying to get situated, just pause and take a look. You'll see <laughs> all the text watermark going all over the photo. Yeah. Someone just posted it in our discord. So <laughs> Definitely check that out. Yeah. He starts off this episode this past week, and I guess this is happening to him a lot now. Somebody has his phone number, and they uh. like to call him right when the show starts, like right when he's about to like get into like whatever he really wants to talk about. How's everybody doing? Uh, before I start, let me just say, 25 years ago, on this day, oh, here comes the usual... Here it comes. <laughs> there is the usual uh, spam call that calls right when the show starts. Uh, this one came from Canada. Oh, is it hockey puck? <laughs> hockey puck. Hockey puck. Uh, I uh, you know, haven't been victim of having your phone number given out on the air. It's not fun to receive that. But I will say it is hilarious to hear that on oh, another yeah. show when somebody's number is given out and their phone just doesn't stop ringing while they're trying to do like a news piece or, or a serious broadcast or just even entertain a conversation. And there's constant phone. Your phone is constantly going off with people spamming you as well hilarious what's hilarious about it is that he's like oh it's going off again he never remembers to turn off his phone before he starts his podcast and also you can hear that the phone goes off and then it goes off on the computer because what apple does is it syncs up all your devices so when right. i first got my phone i had my computer and my ipad and my phone all going berserk anytime someone called me so what i did producer chris mm -hmm. is i turned that off Wow. So that it wouldn't happen anymore. John still has not done that. John still is like, whoa, uh, shit, everything's going slow on. Slow down, slow on? down. You turned it off? <laughs> I turned it off. Yeah. I, I made it so that my computer didn't fucking wig out just because someone's calling my iPhone. People are hacking me. It's all YouTube. They're trying to suppress me. <laughs> How am I going to know if Amber's calling me? All right. So I, typically I don't get into John and his political talk because right. I, what are you going to do? But this week, it's so out there that I just have to play what he's been talking about because he is obsessed with a guy named Donald Trump. You ever heard of him? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, the guy from uh, WWE. He yeah, fought he Vince on, McMahon. Yeah, he was also on NBC for a little bit. Um, but so I think it was Dancing with the Star. I can't remember. Sure. So apparently there's this new report that came out, and John is just not, not happy about what's going on here. I cannot believe what is going on. What is going on is unbelievable. I mean, this new report shows what's what we've... Look, you heard it here first, people. Craig Unger was on this show, along with the former KGB agent that I'm now blanking on his name. They said Trump has 
LB has been saying this, by the way, LB's coming on on Saturday, has been saying this for so long. Trump has been compromised by Putin for years. And now we learn that Putin knew that Trump was the perfect idiot that they could use as a puppet. We're going to cover all of this today. This is a brand new episode. Iraq, are you familiar with what he's talking about? Uh, it, it, it's it, uh, no, it's the same thing he says every single time. So I didn't know what this was Trump. either. I hadn't heard about this, but apparently a few days ago, the Guardian put out a report, and it says that Vladimir Putin personally ordered a top secret spy operation to help a mentally unstable Donald Trump win the 2016 election, according to documents the Guardian newspaper says were leaked from the Kremlin. Helping Trump secure victory will definitely lead to destabilization of the U.S.'s socio-political system, the report predicts. The British newspaper doesn't say where the documents came from or how they have been authenticated. The Kremlin has rejected their authenticity, and Putin's spokesman dismissed the story as great pulp fiction and utter nonsense. Now, John says in that clip I just played, Craig Unger was on his show. And Craig Unger has been talking about this forever. Now, Craig Unger wrote a book about Russian collusion. He published an article that was highly skeptical of this report from The Guardian. He reached out to the reporter, and he was referred to the paper's media representative. The reporter wouldn't even talk to this guy who's on the same side as him. This is a right. bullshit report that was made up by The Guardian. This is the problem with Stuttering John. It's, it's confirmation bias, and it's worse where he hears this crazy fringe thing. He's like, oh, there's proof. And the the idea is that Putin, back when he was just a candidate, he wasn't even the front runner. They're like, we got to get behind Trump because if we can get Trump in office, then there'll be massive destabilization of the U.S., which, yeah, I, the news media went fucking nuts, but everything else actually went really well. And so here you have Suttering John in here going, holy shit, everything we've been talking about is totally true. And by the way, the, the whole... Russian collusion thing has been proven to be incorrect. Mal right. I mean, I don't know how many times we're going to talk about this, but John says this. And I'm telling you, I'm not lying here. And I don't think he's lying. Not lying. I think he believes this. I think he's just wrong. Right? It's interesting when, when you, you want to hate something or you want so desperately to have what you believe be true. Yeah. You'll pick and choose what side of, course. of anything is coming out. So The Guardian, right? News site, not normally really held in high respects by anybody for, for journalism. It's almost sort of a gossip kind of piece. Yeah, it's a, uh, a left-leaning gossip rag. Yeah, sure. right. But if, the, if stories came out against the opposing side, they're like, see, no, this is, is what they put out there. That's credible. But then if it comes out against your side, you go, well, you know, that's all... That's all editorials and opinions, and, and then half of it's bullshit. So it, you're using a source that nobody really recognizes as being legit. Like, you can say whatever your beliefs are. You can say about legit media and, you know, uh, fake news and all that shit. But if you see an article come out or a news blurb comes out, you look and check the source, and you go, uh, most of the time they're not that credible. You still wait for it to come from from CNBC or from NBC or Fox or CNN or uh, the New York Times, the Washington Post. You can shit all over those institutions if you want. But that's your where if it comes from them, you're going to be more inclined to believe it than if, if it's coming from the Guardian or, you know, some kind of dot org blog site or Daily and Mail. They, yeah, they, right. Yeah. And they, he always goes to stories like that because one, he can't pay for the New York Times subscription, the one dollar for the day that you can pay to read the damn articles. So he goes to these other things and goes, see, this is exactly what we're talking about. It's like, no, they well, just did it because idiots like you are going to believe this is the shit that's going on. And Iraq, I. I I don't want to get into a whole debate with you, but the New York Times was talking about Russian inclusion for three years. They're also completely full of shit. Of, of course. <laughs> Sorry. But, but anything else, if you would go, it's like if it came off a blog, you don't believe it. But if you saw that it came off of the New York Times yeah, website. You could at least source it and people would people, think it was credibility. Correct. Right. You're not, you don't have to believe them. Right. But you're more likely to believe them if it's coming from a source like that than it is from The Guardian. So this is one of my favorite clips. Of John, it's a longer clip, but this breaks down his political intelligence. Right, he's there playing a clip of Ted Cruz talking about the border and the border crisis and the fact that letting people in is actually spreading COVID nineteen 
And there's this Title 42 that was passed in March of 2020 and it's set to expire or the Biden administration wants it to expire and they wants to keep it in place. And he plays the whole thing of Ted Cruz talking about it. And I am ready for Stuttering John to present his argument why Ted Cruz is full of shit or what he's wrong about after this long thing that he played. And this tells you everything you need to know about John's intelligence. Making this crisis at the border even worse than it already. Yeah, okay, Ted. Okay, enough is enough with you, you lying sycophant. First off, you scumbag. Donald and Trump called your wife ugly. And you worship the ground that he walks. That says it all about you, Ted. Okay? That that alone says it all about you. If somebody insulted my wife, if I had one, do you think for a second <laughs> I would <laughs> worship this person? Do you think any man... Or woman whose <laughs> spouse got insulted by Donald J. Trump would be sitting there applauding that very same idiot? I don't think, though. <laughs> and let's not forget, Ted, you're the sycophant that decided to leave your state when people were fucking freezing to death. That's who you are, Ted. Stop trying to push down the throats of Texans that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are somehow evil. The only evil is you and your disgusting fucking party. Now I'll bring in Aaron Rupar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No sense of flow, has horrible <laughs> cadence. He always talks like his mouth is full of saliva or he's choking on phlegm. Uh, two things. One, you got to isolate. I don't think, though, you need to use that for your show. And then two, he just learned the word sycophant. Yes. Because he kept overusing it. Correct. So he, either he got a word a day calendar or he heard somebody using it and it's like, oh, that sounds like a big word. I'll be smart and apply it to my vernacular and then overuses it. So I've noticed that with John, when he starts using a different term that he doesn't normally say, yeah. he just learned that word. Yeah. And, and then he, he overuses it, and then he forgets the word by the next show. You'll never hear him say it again. <laughs> yeah, right. It's out of his mind. He, he, he saw someone on MSNBC <laughs> use that word that morning, and then he <laughs> says it on his show, and then it's gone after that. You make me sick of that. <laughs> so what's great is that he's trying to debate Ted Cruz over the border right. crisis and how we're going to handle it. And his response is, yeah, but Trump called your wife ugly. And remember when we had a snowstorm, you went to Cancun. It's like, okay, I I'm sorry. I'm not following your argument here, John. And there's people watching his show who are on his side, who are very left-leaning Democrats and, oh, we got to get Biden to blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, wouldn't you go somewhere else? If that's where your political leanings were, this guy is giving you nothing. And you know what else John hasn't learned to where <clears throat> for this, I'll say this in the, in the sense of talk radio, right? There's a reason why conservative talk radio does well and liberal talk radio doesn't because conservative talk radio fills in the gaps of all the rest of the country for the South, the Midwest, small markets, you know, people who don't have uh, or don't feel like they have a voice or somebody championing their points of view and and, and their views. Um, <clears throat> he doesn't understand when it comes to doing this that when your side wins and your side's in power, yeah, you shift your conversation to more of, of about preaching about your agendas and what your guys are doing right and everything that's going good with your side. You do fight the fight with the other side. But the majority of your of your content is a, is sort of like a boasting that yes. you guys kind of won. Here's what Biden's doing. Here's how, when he went overseas to the G7. Here's what happened here. Here's what they're doing at the border. You're defending your side. He never does that. He never champions his own side. He says, I'm on this side, and then goes after the issues that no one's really given a shit about. 
And he's fighting the wrong fight every time. Well, it's the, what we all predicted. If Trump loses, there's going to be a lot of people who have nothing to talk about anymore. And John right. was one of these people, and he has not figured out how to pivot from that. Because he's no. just he's still fucking talking about Trump nonstop. Actually, Iraq, you sent me a clip when I was playing uh, John's retarded pol- political talk uh, a few weeks ago. That I think sums is I might have played this on the show before, but I still have to play it anyway. Looks like those clowns in Congress did it again. What a bunch of clowns. <laughs> How does he keep up with the news like that? That's, yes, that's, that's John's exactly level that's of exactly John's political rhetoric every week is that that fucking uh, the robot machine that was replacing uh, uh, Bill and Marty on The Simpsons for their right. morning radio show. What's crazy? It's like stop though, praising the machine. He, his, he immediately goes to insulting people. When he doesn't right. like Republicans, he has to just call them dickless and yeah. they're fucking assholes. <laughs> so after that rant, he brings on his guest, as we heard in the previous. So Aaron Rupar comes on and Aaron Rupar actually is going to address what Cruz was saying and try to give the other perspective of what Democrats might think about this. Um, yeah, I mean, I saw someone pointing out that... Um, which is true, I think, that, you know, it does kind of remind me a little bit of, like, Nazi rhetoric. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, he didn't do that much of a better job, did he? Right, let's call everybody a Nazi. Ted Cruz is a Nazi. All right. There you go. This gets crazier later on in the show when John is talking about... So this guy loses his connection for a minute, and now it's just up to John to fill some time. And he's talking about a book that's coming out from General Mark Milley, but it's actually not General Mark Milley. It's these two Washington Post reporters, very far left-leaning reporters who interviewed this guy. And this is John's takeaway from what this book is going to be. Top U.S. general said Trump preaches gospel of the Fuhrer and feared he would lead a coup. Trump was the classic authoritarian leader with nothing to lose, according to the general. In an upcoming book, by two Pulitzer Prize winning journalists, U.S. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, likened Donald Trump to Adolf Hitler. Okay. Listen, peeps, I've been saying this for a long time now. And people have said to me, oh, come on, that's ridiculous. How could you compare Trump to Hitler? How? Because Ivana said he had Hitler speeches next to his his night table. That's the only reading he did. (laughs) Donald Trump worships Adolf Hitler, and he's following the same playbook. So I don't know if John actually thinks this. If he does, he's deranged. I don't think John (laughs) performs. Like you can right. you can listen to like a Sean Hannity or a Ben sure. Shapiro and you can if you listen long enough you can tell what they're amplifying for the radio and what they actually believe. You can you can just, right. you know, sort it all out. John doesn't have that. He's not he's not turning it up to 11 for the radio for for entertainment or a cringe factor or anything like that. I think he believes whatever he's saying at the moment. I agree. Like whatever he's got a goldfish memory. Whatever he said is yes. like that must be the truth. I said it, and it's like no, that's not how this works. I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt for a second. That he doesn't actually think that Donald Trump is equal to Hitler because that would be an insane thing to think. But then he says this, and yet Ted Cruz and Kevin McCarthy and Tom Cotton and Josh Hawley are kissing the ring. Of the next Adolf Hitler. Of the next Adolf Hitler? I got to say. He would have been Hitler already. He was in office. That's what I was going to say. If he's going to start throwing people in camps and invading other countries, he's got a real late start to it. He's got to fucking get out of that shit. It's coming. Just you wait. It's coming. (laughs) Okay. He was president for four years. He's not the next Hitler. (laughs) He's so ridiculous. Going into the bunker. Oh, I got something. To, I got something to tell you real quick oh, about please. John. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> not going to give out names, but uh, I know a lot of comedians who have had uh, who uh, who worked with John in the past, some for many years. And anytime we talk about John, they love to bring up a couple of traits of what John does. John, where you know how comics 
bust balls. If you ever <laughs> listen to Opie and Anthony. <laughs> yeah, we're not dropping any names. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. If you ever listen to uh, Opie and Anthony or Howard and you would hear the comics that were on that show, they all hang out together and they all just verbally destroy each other. Mm-hmm. But they're the best of friends. Yes. Right. John could never do that. So if you if they try to bring him in on the loop, like if he was doing comedy shows with them and they'd bust the ball, he would immediately, like you said, turn to anger. What do you mean you don't like my shirt? What do you blah, blah, blah? And they're like, John, we're just busting your balls. Relax. So apparently he does he doesn't know how to interact like a comic as he says he is a comic. The other thing he loves to do is that he loves to remind people that he did a favor for them 30 years ago. <laughs> yes, he does. Right? Yes, so he he'll does. sit there and he goes, oh, remember that time I you know, I did this and you asked me if I could help you out and I helped you and did this? It's like, well, you, you still kind of owe me. Can you get me on this show? Or can yep. we do this? And it's like, dude, we've helped. That was 20 years ago, and that was one little thing. You don't need to keep bringing that up all the time. But I've heard from several comics that said that this is John's M.O. all the time, is that if he needs, he only wants to interact with you if he needs something from you, and then he guilts you or tries to guilt you or bully you into the fact that of, uh, he goes, I did this for you back in the day, and you weren't being able to do this if I didn't help you. And you're like, no, John, I've more than paid that back to you. That's why I I agree with your assessment that what he is on his show is his true personality, because you see him doing those types of things all the time. And it's like, oh, John, that's a bad look. You probably shouldn't be doing that when he's asking for favors and reminding people things that he's done for them. But the worst is this idea that he can't get his balls busted and taken in stride. There's an episode that I really need to dig into of the Anthony Cumia show when Artie was on, the Artie and Anthony show, where John was the guest. And those two just gang up on John and he could not fucking take it. It is hilarious. No, and while you're doing that, look for the episode where Anthony and John dissected his uh, the movie that he paid National Lampoons yeah. to use to uh, use their moniker so he could put a movie out. They just sat there and they just dissected the whole movie. Wait, Anthony and, it, it, and who did that? And, and I think it was Anthony and Artie. Anthony and Artie. Okay, yeah, because yeah. one too many is one of the worst movies ever made. I watched yeah. the entire thing, unfortunately. It's not even a good, bad movie. It's not right. like you could watch it and, and laugh and, and enjoy it for, for how comically bad it is. You're just sitting there and you go, there's nothing happening in this movie. John thinks he can fuck college girls and he can't. And then that's the rest of the movie. Well, <laughs> Mersh from ROTC pointed out brilliantly that he thought he was the next Adam Sandler. Because he's got his part where he picks up the acoustic guitar and he's singing the song. And then he's got the hot chick who's out of his league. And then he's like, it, 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 none of it works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> none of it works. No, none of it works. No, fair assessment. Good I for was going to say that as we know, or as we're told, Hitler responsible for the death of six million Jews. And you think, all right, well, if Trump is the next Hitler, you would think he'd at least get a start on something like that. Well, he has, Eric. I'll say it once, I'll say it again. Donald Trump is responsible for 600,000 American lives lost. Okay? Now, 600,000, this number is including while Biden has been president for seven months. I just want to point right. that out. I, I think when, when John started that whole thing about Trump being responsible for lives, it was be, I think it was because... When the vaccine was about to come out yeah. and nobody was really sure if this was the way to go, other countries jumped in and, and bought like a million uh, doses right away, sight unseen. Trump didn't do that. He said, well, we're not paying for this. We don't. We want to see how it works first and whatever. And because it looked like we were a bit late to the game, he was just kind of uh, like, we're not ready to buy this yet. We don't know. We'll see how the rest, let the rest of the world be the guinea pigs on it, uh, essentially. John has been harping on this whole thing in time. So you just let people die. You didn't just buy the thing and, and, and let it, let everybody have it. No, it was actually kind of the smart move to do to wait to see if this was effective. Then when we found out it was effective, guess what? They bought all the vaccines and everyone has them. Whether you choose to take it or not is up to you. Yeah, it's but worked he's out the that. opposite of that. We're yeah. lousy with vaccines. We don't know what the fuck. They're expiring. We don't know yeah, what the but fuck that, I think that's where it stemmed from with John. He's like, look at all these people dying because he didn't act fast enough. It's like, no, anybody else, uh, plenty of other countries didn't act fast enough because they were waiting to see if this thing was going to work. We weren't just going to inject everybody with poison and be like, whoops, we didn't know. We'll we'll, tr- we'll get it in the beta testing on this. Uh, yeah, he 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 grabs some little kernel of of not even truth, just a soundbite 
or some kind of thought that somebody once had, and then it festers in there, and then he builds a whole system off that one little thought, and then doesn't research past that point. Well, I'm, it's like I remember hearing this once, so it's got to be true, and yeah, then I keeps That's true. doing it yes. over and over. That is true. He repeats things that have been debunked for months, and he just continues to repeat them. You won't even hear that he's wrong about it. But I wonder though if Trump is responsible for every single life lost to COVID. And right. you could argue whether COVID's solely responsible. I mean, obviously, uh, 6%. So what about Fauci? How many lives? He's responsible for zero lives lost because he was telling people not right. to wear a mask uh, in March of you know last that's, year. I, I don't know. That's interesting, too. So if it, I'm not doing it. I'm certainly have, you're not going to do this. But if somebody out there wants to go back and listen to old John episodes when Trump was still uh, in power and then Fauci was telling everybody to do this. See if he had anything negative to say about Fauci when Trump was in office. <laughs> I'd be curious. Compared to now with Fauci, with Biden in office, see if he's ro- cheerleading Fauci now yep. because Biden is in office. I guarantee you he did that. At somewhere in one of his episodes, he made that switch because the the other side's in power now. So John has a second guest come on, this woman, Sarah Reese Jones. And he brings her on the show ranting about Donald Trump and then wants her to comment on it. Now, remember, the thing that John's upset about is this article out of The Guardian that nobody thinks is credible, not even people who hate Trump think this is credible, and he's trying to get his guests to be as riled up as he is about it. Right. His thing is that, you know, we're used to this. You know, it, it, Trump is going to be Trump, and let's get over it. Me, I'm not, I'm not ever going to stop. Are you talking about the coup? Are you talking about the Russia stuff? Like, what are we? Everything. So much that's happening. Every, okay. Everything. Uh, She's like, all right, so what's the thing about Trump? Are you upset about right now? All of it. Every single part of it. Aren't you pissed too about everything? <laughs> and the Howard last four years. And Carl. Apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's the worst. And then this woman, at the end of the interview with her, he doesn't even know what website she's from. All right, Sarah Reese Jones from Politicus USA. I, I, I felt so uh, so bad. I was saying Politics USA, but now I learn it's Politicus. Okay. And in the description, he had it written Politics USA. He didn't even correct it on YouTube where it was Politicus. He didn't even know where his guest was from. Very good, John. I, he, he gets all these guests that, look, I'm not a big political person, so I don't know half these people he has I as guests. I don't know any of these people, yeah. Yeah, so I... I'm like, I, th- I thought I would at least hear some names like in the news cycle or something. I don't know a single person he gets on there. I think he's somebody turned him on to like a prep burger account and they're like, hey, you want this <laughs> expert to be on your morning show? They'll talk about what's going on in this situation. Gotta and that's who like he's that. booking. That's got to yeah. be something like that. So this guy, Aaron Rupar. Now, when I saw him on the show this week, I was like, oh, that's the guy from the famous cockroach video. He finally got this guy back again. Right. The guy, when he freaked out about cockroaches in his house and stupid. He doesn't have cockroaches, Carl. Oh, of course he doesn't, Eric. Stupid, stupid John has to bring up cockroaches to this guy. <laughs> he can't get out of his own way. It's like, John, it, it goes back to the Patrick Michael thing. It's like, oh, I, I don't even care about that. I don't even think about that. So like, well, why do you keep bringing it up? If you don't care about Patrick or if you don't care about Dick Masterson and you don't care about Roy and Dr. Yeah. Steve, why have you brought it up 18 times in the last month? So this is John doing that again. Thank you, Justin Case, for the two bucks. Look, he's a cockroach. And here's the segue. Speaking of cockroaches, Aaron, you were on when I <laughs> had those, oh. the case of the three or four cockroaches in my place. Believe it or not, I've never, ever had another one again. Wow. Believe it or oh, not. that's good news. Yeah, that was probably, man, that was probably about a year ago now. Um, <laughs> wow. Well, that's good. I mean, if it's been that long, then you're probably in the clear. So, no, I mean, glad to hear because it. I brought I brought boxes from my ex wife's garage. You know, <laughs> cockroaches love to eat cardboard, so I guess there was a few in there. He's still debating with who I don't know <sighs> whether or not he has a cockroach infestation. Yeah. It's his way of getting out in front of it is <laughs> is reminding <laughs> yes. everyone of it. He's keeping it. It's going. Oh, I, why? Yes. Why bring it up? It, even his guest is like, oh, yeah, the cockroaches. I forgot about that. That was like a year ago. That was a year it ago. It wasn't yeah. like it was a famous Howard bit. <laughs> right. You know? Right, right, right. Like, this wasn't like, oh, you were on the time. Remember I had the, the cockroaches on Howard and all that? Like, where everybody would remember it? <laughs> Correct. It's yeah. a famous WATP bit, yes! you asshole. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. <laughs> What a and moron. Somebody brought this up in, in your chat here, and, and I have to agree. All these guests he somehow gets 
on a show and not one of them has invited them on their properties. They're <laughs> yeah. not, they've done an interview with him, an article on him, invited him to anything. Nobody, even Hal Sparks, doesn't invite him to anything. Right, and that's been something that people have talked about quite a bit, because Hal Sparks does stand-up shows, and right. John's never the feature act. You'd think that they're such good buddies. Like, I'll take you on the road with me. Hal Sparks will join Steel Panther on stage at times. Oh, is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Hal Sparks more now. Yeah, right? That's cool. How, how bad is John that people won't even bring him to a bringer show in order to get right. credit for them to go on stage? They're like, no, <laughs> you know what? I, I don't really need the time that much. I'm not going to bring John. I always was curious about his comics, uh, his comedy stuff. And I, uh, this is where the discussion with other comics uh, about working with John, they would bring him uh, to places because, one, he was a name at the time with Howard. But two, they were sort of friends with him. But he just never had an act. Like right. he would go up there and riff, or or he would tell jokes on the equivalent of like Jackie level. But Jackie can deliver that. People right. are going to see a Jackie Marling show to see Jackie be Jackie. You can't do Jackie stuff and not do it as good as Jackie, and then try to to riff it for twenty minutes up on stage. And he's still doing that, but he's never at any of the clubs in L.A. Like, he, I think he's in L.A., right? Yeah, yes. he's still in L.A. Yeah. He, he's never at any of the clubs. You never see video footage of, uh, you know, hanging out at the Comedy Cellar or, or uh, the Laugh Factory or any of these big places where their names, whether they're a massive uh, star for being a comic or just well-known comedians. He's never in the mix at a party, on other people's podcasts, at comedy shows. So what is he doing? Well, barbecue restaurants and strip malls. Is the answer oh, to that fair? He's like, I saw this uh, 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 episode of The Office I'm performing at Chili's. I actually saw that he's playing a show this weekend, I believe, and there's like six or seven comedians on the show. I didn't recognize any of their names. Except for Jay Moore was on. I was like, oh shit! All right. I mean, huh? What does that say about Jay Moore's career? But he owes John a favor, probably. Probably. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> Remember that time? Remember Jay? I told him how would you? <laughs> he'd be a great guest. Remember when I answered your, the phone call when you called into Howard? Because I'm the phone screener. <laughs> Remember? John's the equivalent of that old radio bit where it's like, uh, hey, we're going to give this prize away. Um, you have, if, if you know a famous friend, if you have a famous friend, the person with the most famous friend that calls into the show yes. is going to win the, these yes. tickets or whatever. And that's what John does but for his show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I have one more clip to play. Now, John gets his advertising through a company called clnsmedia.com. Are you familiar with this company, Iraq? No, not at all. Now, I wouldn't be either except for uh, probably three years ago, they reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to join their network. And I don't know why I did this, but I went to their website and saw they were New England-based and they had a bunch of shows about how great Tom Brady is. And I wrote them back and told them to go fuck themselves. I don't like Tom Brady. All right, I guess is my point. But anyway, right. John, for some reason, is connected with these guys because when he does ad reads, he reads their promo code, CLNS50. Now, he reads the wrong copy. And like we were talking about earlier, Eric, I don't want to get people canceled. I'm not one of these people who's like a tattletale. Right. But... I doubt these guys are really paying that much attention to the ad reads they're getting out of this guy. If somebody wanted to send clnsmedia.com this right. clip, I maybe John would be told like he's not doing it right. This is from this past week. And I still have not. I don't know. I always forget to do this, but I really have to get these, this freaking desktop organized. Bet online is the f this is an easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Football might be over, but NBA, college basketball, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. This is not the right one. It doesn't matter. NBA, uh, I think it's still going on. Do you know how old this has to be to have college <laughs> basketball in the ad copy? He goes, NBA's still going on. There's two or three games left. <laughs> NBA's still going doesn't on. doesn't matter. <laughs> Wow. Advertisers don't care. They don't care. <sighs> and the way he reads these ads, too, is he's he, he's always like apologizing. Like, All right, bear with me. I got to get through this ad read. You know, <laughs> yeah. we, we got to pay the bills. He, he flings his arms out, like, in front, like he's yes. loosening up, like some men are going to do some <laughs> drinking. You know, and then, like he's getting watched the magic for doing these reads. John's the type that would 
certain advertisers for podcasts have notes in the copy that say do not over sexualize this do not whatever you know whatever their notes are their requirements are and it says please make sure you thank the podcast uh, thank the company for sponsoring your podcast at the end yeah he seems like the type that reads everything in the brackets that tells you not to right. say yeah, these yeah. things on the air uh, remember to tell a funny anecdote about using your product all right uh, uh, so and please, then the, re- the promo code is uh <laughs> clns oh i wasn't supposed to read that part don't say this part. <laughs> Please remember to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. <laughs> so another thing that happened this week is he retold the story about taking home a hot lesbian from Pickwick Pub and then not being able to get a heart on. I didn't pull that. I think we've talked about that before on here. But if we haven't, let me know. I'll be happy to bring that next week because he tells this story where you'd think he's the hero of the story. And he's like, none of it's true. Because he, he talks about there's this hot lesbian and they're having a conversation. And she goes, I miss dick. Like hot lesbians say all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I haven't had a dick in so long. It'd be great. So he's like, oh, I, I got a dick. Let's go back to my place. So she goes, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then they go back to his place. He has a hard on on the ride home. A raging hard on. Then he gets back to the place, takes her clothes off, and now he's soft. I don't, for some reason, I don't know how that works. And he's eating her out, and he's like, "But she doesn't like that because she gets that all the time." It's the cra- it's the craziest story. I feel like we played it before, but maybe I should have grabbed it just based on Chris's. I'm reaction. willing to believe that story is true based on what you're saying. I Some want it to true. be true. Some of it's true for sure. I don't know if she was hot or a lesbian, but she's probably fat and seventy. What's your pronouns? He you can't or just she. assume. Also this week, I want to report that Cardiff Electric. Do you know who Cardiff Electric is? You no. Know? Is that in Wales? No, he's this Twitter guy who oh. pre- pretends to love all things Stuttering John. He also like puts things out where it seems like he's a Stuttering John sock account, but he's doing it on purpose okay. so people think that he's a Stuttering John sock account. Anyway, he sent me a DM just this morning. He says, $500 and I'll do 10 minutes at your live show. Now, this is the guy who's been doing the hashtag SJ Army and Chicago Mission. He's been threatening to beat me up in Chicago, which, but God bless you, man. Come to the show in Chicago with hundreds of WATP fans and let's fight. What are you, stupid? Well, <laughs> what are you going to do with that? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Go for it. Um, I'll, I might have an acoustic guitar that I will break over your head. <laughs> I'm not going to break my nice one. <laughs> Uh, so I wrote back 10 minutes of what? <laughs> I'll do 10 minutes at your live show. What do you do? So he says, addressing the trolls and haters, but you need to be prepared to deal with the truth. So I wrote back a counter offer. Uh, I said, how about I give you $0 and give you five minutes? <laughs> I think that's a pretty good offer. It's a good offer. Five minutes you to be on You can handle WTP. the truth. That shit dumb pop stars say when like... I was ready to speak my truth, or are you ready to handle my truth? <laughs> it's know, just that so bullshit stupid. term that makes like, look, I don't even like your music. I know you're a hot chick, but the fact that you're speaking like this, this is why guys don't like you. This is why every guy cheats on you and leaves you, because you say stupid shit like that. I don't know what Cardiff Electric's deal is. I kind of think that this is a troll troll account. It has yeah, to be. I think it's playing the yeah. long game. Yeah, if it's if the words are being spelled correctly, you know it's not John, but it's somebody that's oh. wanting to carry John's favor. Actually, he pretends to be John because what he writes to me after that is, keep stealing content, loser. So he always spells loser with two O's, which I think is like his nod to like, see, I'm stuttering John, I'm stupid. You're like, oh, okay, I don't know. Um, how, how bad is it that you're pretending to be stirring John as a troll account? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That is really, really sad. Anyway, that's Cardiff Electric. So that's John just goes on stage and like the equivalent of the end of uh, Jay and Silent Bob, where they have the uh, shit printed off from the internet and they're just going around the country fighting the people that said nasty <laughs> shit about them and beating them up. Yes. Is he just going on stage and reading <laughs> all the shit that's been said about him and, and, and under the guise that he thinks he's doing, you know, edgy humor? Did you say I have clown shoes? <laughs> That's one of the best bits of that movie because it's a joke. No one would actually do that. Right. And that Except John, that's like, his stand-up tour. Yeah. That's his stand-up tour. <laughs> Folks, and he, sm- he he sits there, he holds a big stack of papers, and he, and he hits it with his hand like this and goes, 
folks. Got a bunch of fresh new material here for you. We're going to delve into this. And then he gets the red light in 10 minutes. <laughs> like, no one gives a shit about oh, hating you online, John. That is fantastic. I remember when Suttery John was talking about Frank's Comedy Club. He's like, there's a club that I wouldn't play at. No, there's a lot Never. of clubs that you won't play at. <laughs> and then he kept plugging it. He kept saying, White Plains Comedy Club. I'll never go there. That place stinks. That, that's a place White Plains you Comedy. shouldn't go. White Plains Comedy Club. I'll give you the web address in a second. Oh, my God. Speaking of Stuttering John, I have a brand new Stuttering John intro that came in from the Jingles Department this week. The Jingles Department thought people would enjoy that um, that music. <laughs> I like bad. it. I want to make that my ringtone. <laughs> you should. I think people would enjoy that. Uh, yes. Appar- you know what? He, they also started some shit too. It was like him. He, I think once he started getting with like Kevin Brennan, and things escalated. And they, they, I don't know. They they're like, well, everything she thinks and says is not any of her ideas. Like they had this. That was like part of the drama. Is like they think that. Everything I say on every podcast is either the ideas of Kumia or my boyfriend Frank. You're just saying that because you work for Compound Media, and yeah. so you got to say what the boss wants to hear. I have no thoughts of my own. Great. So this is great because Hale Sparks, who is Stuttering John's best and only friend, was on the show as he always is, and he's starting to troll him a little bit. And it's a lot of fun, especially when you watch the video to see John's face, where he's like, wait, where are you going with this? This is the uh, this is the best clip of the year. You know how, like, there's, uh, you, I'm sure at the pub, you know, uh, well, I mean, <laughs> Bruce Springsteen's Glory Days song, I think, you know, tells us the story of guys who sit at the end of the bar, you know. Glory Days. Remember the young girls as Glory Days. Uh, Remember when I did the one thing? Um <laughs> He's got glory days syndrome so fucking bad. And none of it is true. Now, is Hale Sparks doing that on purpose? Is Hale Sparks going to be a guest on our show in a couple of weeks? What's going on right now? Yes and yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> good, because Hale Sparks, the invitation is out there, my friend. Come on anytime. That was brilliant trolling. Because John can't do anything about that. He just has to sit there like an idiot. So I played this clip when I was on with Shuli the other day, and I teased it last week. And I guess I didn't realize how incredible this story is coming out of Suttering John's mouth. So this is a longer story. It's a longer clip. Chrissy, tell me to pause it at any time if you have comments. (laughs) I really want to get your take on this. There's no way anything that he's saying here is true. And knowing that, why would he make this story up? Because it doesn't even paint him in a good light. Let's get into it. This is the lesbian story. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you, I, this is this is horrible. I'm at the Pickwick Pub, and there is a lesbian, right? Super hot, <laughs> super mm-hmm. hot. Nice, nice size breasts, great right. body, but she's a lesbian. All right, first off, Ugh. there's a super hot lesbian at Pickwick Pub. You've already lost me. This, <laughs> this, this is a hole-in-the-wall place in a shitty neighborhood outside of L.A. Yeah, you sure it's not just some girl who had four drinks? Like, maybe she's not a lesbian. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, let's, <laughs> let's listen more. Ooh. So I say, so, I, so we start talking. I'm flirting, I'm flirting, I'm flirting. Why is he flirting with a lesbian, producer Chris? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you asking me? He's trying to turn her. Yes. He's like, so there's this hot lesbian. She hates guys. Most people yeah. hate me, even if they're into guys. And I'm hitting on her. <laughs> so we got that in common. <laughs> okay. Well, good luck with that, John. He would not be my pick <laughs> yeah, right. to turn somebody back over to, to heterosexuality. Oh, well, just you wait. <laughs> and I go, uh, you know, and then she starts going... She starts saying to me, you know what? I miss penis. As lesbians do. (laughs) Lesbians are always talking about like, you know what? I'm attracted to other females, 
But goddamn, just a, a erect penis every now and again would be great. I just, I sure do miss that. This story checks out so far. I, I think it's me, just you know like the... <laughs> the lesbians become lesbians because they they hate who the penis is attached to like they can buy <laughs> the penis you can have them in your nightstand you right can... <laughs> yeah they can do things that we can't do yeah what i miss penis oh i do miss penis not the plastic one right <laughs> i go do you want to come back to my place right she goes, she goes yeah just yeah as, as long as it's quick because we get all right so this is funny part do you want to come back to my place to fuck? And the lesbian says, yeah, as long as it's quick. Chrissy, have you ever wanted to get with a guy, but only if it's quick? Is that that, no. And, and, <laughs> and lesbians don't do anything quickly. Are you right. kidding me? You better be a premature ejaculator or else I'm not going to sleep with yeah. you. <laughs> All right, <Yeah>. fine. <laughs> wow. You better be quick. <laughs> Four plays out of the question, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Lesbians love unfulfilling, short, quick sex with men. <laughs> she doesn't want to be pleasured in any way. As long as it's quick, because we get, because, because, because my wife is going to be, you know, you know, is going to be checking up on me. Right. Oh, boy. So, <laughs> I, in, like an idiot, I didn't go to my car first and grab all my pills. Right. Ooh. So now I take, so I drive her Range Rover with a hard on to my place. Okay, so Ew. yeah, so what he's explaining is he's got his Blue Chew or his Cialis or whatever it is, Viagra, and he doesn't have it with him at the time. It's in his car, and he takes her car, her Range Rover, to drive it back to his place. But he's got a raging hard on while driving her back. I assume in anticipation of what's going to happen. I could barely steer the wheel. The boner was in the way. I kept making <laughs> left turns when I didn't want to. <laughs> to my place. Yeah. But then I get to my place and I'm looking around for some of these and I don't have any. I can't find any. Oh, no. I forgot I put them in my uh, spices cabinet downstairs. All right. Another lie. He has his boner pills in his spices cabinet downstairs and he forgot that he put them there and he's got oregano in his car what the fuck is going on <laughs> no this is working out <laughs> so i'm sprinkling wow. cinnamon on my, on my cock <laughs> I put paprika. wait that's not cinnamon that's roach poops <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that i take issue with in that statement is that he has a downstairs <laughs> that is an issue isn't it that's not a real thing wow i meant balcony <laughs> Right. So I'm like, I'm freaking now, and now I'm going down on her and shit. But she's used to that. She's a lesbian. Yeah, yeah. She's like, ah. screw that. Just come fuck me. Ew. All right. He's going down on this chick. All right. And he says she doesn't like it because she's used to it. Hmm. Well, girls like being eaten out regardless of whether they're used to it or not. I'm guessing he's just bad at it. Right yeah. in this scenario, like she's like, like guys right. are used to blowjobs. That doesn't mean you're gonna turn one down. Yeah, right, like oh, I get a blowjob. I had day. one yesterday. Like uh, I know how this is gonna go. I'm like gonna eating come. steak too much. Yeah, yeah. Gee, I hate fine wine and steak. And I, I know what's gonna happen next. Even in this made-up story, John sucks at everything. Yeah, right. It's great. Yeah, just come fuck me, mm. and then can't get it up. All right. He had a, I wasted my best boner in the car. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> the I went back fun. to the car. I noticed that the steering wheel was a little sticky. <laughs> that might be what happened. Oh, I can do this real quick. We don't have to get back to my house. <laughs> right, we're done. <laughs> How was it for you? <laughs> Doesn't matter. No. <laughs> so Ew. according to John, when he was in the car with this girl fully clothed, he had a raging heart on. Then when she's in his bed in his apartment naked, can't get it up. Makes perfect sense. I mean, we've we've all been there, sure. Okay, let's see what happens next. Can't get it up, and I'm like, oh no, oh, you stuttered. No, but because hold on, what was happening? It was like she's like, come on, fuck me, and then the bar is calling me right at the moment, and is going, John, you left your credit card. Then two minutes later, the bar calls, John, are you with this woman? Because her wife is here with her kids. Oh, my and God. And they're looking for us. 
All right. So this is obviously made up. So he starts no. off by saying, the girl saying, come on, fuck me, and I don't have an erection. Then he says his <laughs> cell phone starts going off. Ignore it. Who cares if your credit card's at the pub? You'll be there again very shortly. That's not a big deal. Plus, they wouldn't call John to say he left his credit card there. They know they're going to see him again. So yeah. that's made up. But oh, I, love, I love that he's take, he's trying to fuck this hot chick in his bed, and he's also like picking up the phone every time it rings. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, Jay yeah. Leno. Hey. <laughs> I know the sex is going great when I'm taking calls in, in between. <laughs> So he's trying to pretend that this is what's interfering with his boner, even though he already said, she said, fuck me, and I didn't have an erection. And now he's pretending that there's just too much going yeah. on. Or, uh... The ship has sailed. <laughs> now, now, Bill, could you get it up under those kind of freaking no, circumstances? No, oh, no. There's the truth. <laughs> yeah. Right. So now he's trying to get, you know, hey, I mean, you're in the same boat as me, right? Like, it's really tough to get an erection when there's a hot chick who wants to fuck. <laughs> and the guy's going... Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. That sounds sounds terrible. I don't know how I'd pull that off. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. It was like a perfect storm. Like, everything was happening at once. Exactly. So, so Except I drove for a hard back penis. Home. <laughs> then, like, an- yeah, there was one specific thing that wasn't happening at that time. <laughs> yeah. A yeah. very important thing that wasn't happening at that time. <laughs> It was a perfect storm, and by that I mean imperfect. So I drove up back home. Then, like an idiot, she tells her wife. Her wife goes, "You know where were you?" She goes, "Oh, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm with a guy right now." Can I call? She's like, the wife what? hangs up. All right. So this is also nonsensical. Remember okay. earlier, the lesbian said, "I'll fuck you. We got to do it quick. I don't want my wife to find out." So then it happens as quick as humanly possible because it doesn't happen at all. <laughs> and she decides to just confess, I was trying to fuck a dude. Yeah. Why? Jesus. Why would that happen? That doesn't make any sense at all. And him of all dudes. You're right. And especially stuttering John. That's like cheating at your diet with like airport pretzels. I, I mean, that's a terrible metaphor, but it's like if you're... <laughs> You're right. a lesbian. Your your one cheat on your supposedly like wife and family is gonna be with stuttering John to to have no boner and like no pleasure. Yikes. John's not an attractive man. If that guy no. was rock hard twenty four seven, there's no chick who would want to fuck him then. No. He's up. And then I text the lady, she's like, I'm about to get divorced. And then I and then I, I text her what you want. I text her later, she's getting a divorce. <laughs> Just this like escalated that. quickly. <laughs> I texted her further. She's a nun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come over here because now I have these. Oh, this is great. So she says she's gonna get a divorce, and John's answer is, "Well, I got my boner pills now, so let's go round two. Uh, and she's like, "I'm about to get divorced," and then I and then I, I text her, "Well, you want to come over here because now I have these." Uh, and then she goes. uh she goes, don't ever, you know, you know, my wife said, don't ever text me again. <laughs> oh, my God. She goes, those are Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> right. It sounds like it. I've never heard someone rattle around their Viagra like that. That's so sad. It's a very sad thing if you think about it. I don't, I don't have to think about it. It's sad. <laughs> this, is, this whole thing is so pathetic. And, and the, made up. And the, he's made up this crazy yes. story where he's a pathetic loser. And he's telling this story on his show. It's insane. Oh, and my God. It takes him forever to remember the made-up details. You never have to remember the truth, John. You know? <laughs> this is true, yeah. Well, and then my phone rang for this reason, but then it also rang for that reason. Right. Right. That's what I scribbled in my notebook. <laughs> Me again. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> So okay. That's why you always got to carry these around. Mm-hmm. The Cialis lasts you for two days. I think two or three days sometimes. But how many milligrams? All right. If somebody tells you Cialis will work for two or three days, is your response how many milligrams? Or just, no. oh, maybe I should try that. Or that sounds yeah. painful. He sounds like a man who's taken, who sampled his boner pills. Like, yes. he's had an array. This conversation gets weird. Uh, the five lasts you for about about 24 hours, a little more than that. He had an answer to how many milligrams. 
<laughs> I would have just said, I don't know. I just saw it on the commercial that it lasts for like 24 to 48 hours. I don't, <laughs> milligrams. I don't know what you're talking about. This guy's like, well, like, okay, take the five milligram. That's going to get you 24 hours. For me, like 23. Uh, now, if you want to upgrade to the 10 milligram. Oh, the so this whole... is a brilliant sag into an ad read. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> yeah. it. 24 hours, a little more than that. The whole 10 lasts you for two days. Wow. Yeah, you can think about a woman. And boom, that it is. Boom. He's just, that's because yeah. he's wow, Latino. I'm have to try that, see, I, don't... <laughs> right? I don't think that's the it's pill. In their, it's in their blood. Yeah. Wow, yeah. I'm going to have to try that Cialis. Oh, thing. it's, you'll love it. It's don't great. waste your money on Cialis, John. It's, this this uh, scenario is not going to come up again if it ever does, if it ever did. Wow. So uh, I wanted to play that for you, Chrissy, because I just found that Aww. to be the silliest thing. John's I'm ever so said. glad you did. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> I, I feel bad for him. I think I just, if he, I don't know, maybe when the Lord tells you your penis, maybe hang it up. I don't know. He can, he can jam his soft penis into as many lesbians as he wants, but at least just, yeah, try to be honest about these stories. But yeah, I think it's a long way to go. It's it's better to just have that crazy story than to be like, oh yeah, I, I lost the, my erection with somebody. Do me wah, a favor. Wah. Never feel bad for stuttering, John. Never, <laughs> yeah. never say that, that you bad? feel bad for him. Never do that again. I That's how fun. you know I was, like, grown up in an abusive household. Like, I feel bad for people that are mean to me. I feel bad for Chad. I feel bad for Stuttering John. You don't remember being seven? <laughs> There's a lot of ways that we know yeah. that you brought up in an abusive yeah. household. <laughs> so I do want to say I got some insider information. I was making fun of John last week for reading his uh, online betting website ad read where he said, the NFL season's over, but we still have college basketball. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait a second, this is very old copy. Well, it turns out, someone on the inside let me know, that that sponsor went away six months ago. And so that's why he still has the old ad copy. He's just pretending to have a sponsor on his show, which I can't think of something more pathetic than that. Oh, my God. I was, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's that brilliant. was actually something that I would advise, like like baby podcast starting out. Like You could do fake ad reads. Nobody would know. And it <laughs> makes you seem like you're more of a podcast that you have sponsors. Yeah, producer Chris and I were talking about it yesterday. I'm like, why wouldn't Toyota sponsor WATP? I like, was amazed that you could do that. You could just say anything. <laughs> so anyway, the Toyota thought is really exciting this year. Let me tell you about it. Get on board. I am now sponsored by used Teslas. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about what happened with his, his Tesla purchase, Chrissy? No. <laughs> Hale Sparks is talking about how he hates Elon Musk. No, no, it was um, the other guy, Richard Ojeda, was talking about how he hates Elon Musk. I wish he'd fly that thing into the moon, he says. And John uses that as a perfect segue to go, yeah, I'm not going to get a Tesla anymore. I don't like that guy either. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. It wasn't because there's no way he can charge it at his apartment complex or there's no way he can afford it. No, he just hates Elon Musk. So I'm going to get the, the used Prius instead. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was so funny that the reason why he was he was acting like, oh, where's my newest ad copy? I guess I'm reading the old one. When in reality, wow. there is no updated ad copy. And I've had sponsors on the show that are online betting. They only come about when the football season starts, around playoff football, and then the college basketball tournament. Like Those are their peak seasons. They do not advertise in July because the only thing you can bet on is baseball. It's, wow. There's not a lot going on. So John's Caught. lying. Which is hilarious because he's Caught a loser. red-handed. <laughs> All right, uh, this is. I'm just going to play a clip that somebody posted up on Reddit, and I want to read the comments because it's the fucking funniest thing that I have ever seen. And I thought this would be fun for everybody. And, and by the way, Bicycle Mike Forty Two was saying that the interview, like, of me going up and doing softball questions at first, and then getting, he's like, "You mean like Borat?" And you know what? I got to tell you, Farron. That drives me nuts when people say anything like that B because I was before Ali G. I was before Borat doing that very thing. I'm the one who interviewed Tommy Lasutter and asked him, like, what would he want on his epitaph and eased him into pissing him off. Don't don't throw Borat at me. Borat deserves me a, a little, you know, a small <laughs> dose of gratitude because I was before him. I preceded him. And I preceded Triumph the Insult, uh, you know, dog. And, you know, granted, it was Howard's idea to send me out and do that. But I've always been asking questions since I was in 
since I'm 10 years old. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> I preceded Borat. I just have to say that. I'm sorry, Farron, because that irritates <laughs> the crap out of me. So there's so many things I can say, but the, it's funnier if I just read the comments underneath this. Granted, it was Howard's idea to send me out, but I've been asking questions since I was 10 years old. I left my ass off. So he almost brought up his report card again. Ugh. So we can assume that he never asked any questions prior to the age of 10. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> Have I actually had a stroke, or is this guy seriously implying Borat is an imitation of what he did? <laughs> John, <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen is a Brit. He wouldn't have even heard of you, let alone heard your interviews. He probably still doesn't know who you are. And he lives in America. Borat is an evolution of his character, Ali G. Nothing to do with you, so pipe down, hon. Uh, if I were John, I'd be embarrassed to say Borat ripped me off. He's got about as much self-awareness as he has talent. You had me at if I were John, I'd be embarrassed. <laughs> John also thinks Between Two Ferns ripped him off, too. Uh, yeah. Tarby Lasarda. Uh, Jesus, work on that accent. You sound like an uneducated Long Island hobo from the 40s. <laughs> what happened to all those voice lessons during the Tonight Show with Jared Lardo? Uh I love John's comparison to himself versus Triumph the Incel Comic Dog. At least Triumph periodically cleans himself by licking his balls. <laughs> it was Howard's idea. Jackie wrote the questions. Somebody else edited the segments. And the whole point was to goof on John for screwing it all up. He was nothing more than a stuttering errand boy sent to a grocery sent by grocery grocery clerks to collect a fuck me. Easy for you to say. He was nothing more than a stuttering errand boy sent by grocery clerk. I can't say it. I can't say it. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. There's no words there. <laughs> that fucking thing sucks. He continues to let us know what drives him crazy. It's almost annoying how much of an internal lol cow John is. Uh. He'll never get out of his own way. So, yes, now we know that calling John Borat pisses him off. Let's uh, never forget. Yeah, well, you know, I was saying this the other night. The isotopes came before Post Malone. And Post Malone <laughs> owes us a debt of gratitude because we paved the way. Playing music with guitars and yeah, stuff? Yeah, for real. We what did it fuck, first. What a fucking asshole that guy is. All so right. We should uh, try a, suing them? Is that yes. where you're going with this? <laughs> yep. All right. The great Michael Popak. <laughs> So I want to point out because people have said like John says he's in Mensa. There's no ways in Mensa. We got to prove it. And I did play years ago. Yeah. Him admitting to his co-host Royce that he's not actually in Mensa. And thank you to Majestic Risk Seven for finding this clip so we can play it again to remind everyone that John thinks he's doing a bit, yeah. even though he says this over and over again. He's not laughing, and he's just like, "Well, I'm, I'm in Mensa." Mm -hmm. And Royce, thank God, called him out at the time. Okay, fine. But you're not so smart that you're getting weekend Mensa enrollment. No, no, I'm not in Mensa. That was a goof. As I goof on a regular basis. Maybe you should put some sort of emoji at the end of that. Or no, 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 no. I want I want those to believe it. Yeah. And I want the people who say, you know, get all pissed off. Like, oh, yeah, you're the whack pack Mensa. Like, like, it doesn't matter to me, Royce. It doesn't matter to him. He wants people to believe that he's in Mensa. So Until he, you ask him about it, he's like, oh, I'm just kidding. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. It doesn't matter to me. I just want people to think I'm smart, even yeah. though I'm not smart. Yeah. You yeah, get yeah. it, right? That makes sense. Stuttering John had the biggest debacle of a beer on the balcony in the history of Stuttering John, and that's I, saying that's something. That's saying a fucking lot right there. That is saying something. So he's taking it down, but fortunately, I got a copy of it before it was taken down. Actually, Adam Goldstein on Adam Goldstein TV did a whole video on this too so he he was able to get a hold of it but i have some clips here that i want to run through real quick this is john talking about people are stealing his beer on the balcony people who aren't even subscribing to it are stealing it mm. it's bizarre because in the chats there's only 10 20 but then later on i look and it's got 100 views 200 views i don't know if anyone's sharing it to any of the uh troll sites i don't go on any of them so, because you know what? I can give a shit. I really could give a frog's fat ass what anyone thinks or says about me. Oh, yeah. You know, it's old Teflon Melendez. Yeah. Doesn't give a shit. It just rolls off his back, Johnny. Well, they call him. Thick-skinned stutterer, they call him. 
Does he not understand how paywalls work? Well, what's funny is he I goes, mean, he goes there's, 10, there's 10 people in here now, but later there'll be 200 views on this. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't be saying that that means they're stealing it. Act like you have 200 subscribers. First of all, yeah. <laughs> right? But second of all, are you doing a private YouTube link or something? Because that would be fucking retarded. And right. then if it's on your Patreon or whatever service you're using, doesn't it? It stays there. It stays I mean, there, right. People would be able to watch it, not I necessarily Look, live. I'm on OnlyFans. I don't understand all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So this is just gross. Uh, what I do today. Today was a tough one. I got up early. Rub one out. Oh, God. <laughs> That's gross. Why did he feel like he needed to You know what? That? When you cannot achieve an erection at all, <laughs> and you finally get one, he probably marks his calendar. You know He's what I mean? proud of himself. July 13th. Finally got it up. <laughs> well, then he goes out to talk about his gym regimen, which is always fun. And he says this, which I was not surprised about. By the way, I can't. I can't stand the freaking. I I hate exercising. Yeah, that yeah, gets out. yeah, yeah. I'm guessing you'd rather drink. Yeah, than exercise. Seems like you spend a lot more time with that. Yeah, no shit. Than exercising. So, the reason why this was a debacle is because Jay Moore was going to come on the show. Now, I did a crossover show with Shuley, and we talked about how there's no way Jay Moore will do. In fact, I think we were ready to bet money on it. <laughs> Whether or not Jay Moore would talk to ten people on beer on the balcony. Yeah. With Stuttering John. I put together a comp. This is all of the mentions of Jay Moore throughout the show. And what you'll hear is early on, he's going to come on. And then the desperation of where is he? And then he starts trashing him. Uh, you see, you see the whole evolution the whole over an hour's yeah. time. Yeah, the whole Jay Moore arc here. And now we're going to follow it up with some more star power with uh, Jay Ferguson Moore. John Ferguson Moore. And he will be here any minute. He said he's just got to change, and he'll be on here. Come on, Ferguson. Let me see. I don't know why it's not working for him, but I'll try again. Jay Moore wrote to me, StreamYard stinks. I can't get my Google Chrome with your link, John, which makes no sense. It always works with Google Chrome. I've never had a problem. But I know Jay is not that technically savvy. Come on, Jay. Don't let us down, bro. You could do this, Mr. Moore. But hopefully Mr. Moore could fix it. I anticipate he can come on with his phone. Now, come on, Jay. Let me call him. Call Jay Moore. All right. Now he's not answering his phone either. Come on, Jay. I'm getting his voicemail. Jay, what's going on, bro? Uh... Try and uh, t- just come on with your cell phone. We have people waiting for you. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah. do what you can. <laughs> Call Yaz. It works with everybody. I've never had a problem with any guest. Come on, <laughs> Mr. Moore. <laughs> All right, I'll see him. Well, now Jay went cold. Well, I guess Jay is MIA. Oh. All right. I don't know where Jay is. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to go. tell you, my peeps. I don't know what to tell you. He's not He's not texting me back. Sorry. J-Mo was supposed to be on. You saw me call him. This is not false advertising. I told him he uses his phone. I don't know what the hell's going on. He knows false on. advertising. But now he's not even answering his phone. J-Mo just went silent. I'm going to call him again. Give him one more call, and then I'm done. Oh Jay is no more. Oh, Jay is God. no more. He is MIA. Oh. So, sorry, my peeps. Maybe something happened. Maybe he got into a fight with his wife. Who knows? What? I mean, nobody knows. All right, we didn't have Jay Moore, but we had oh. Steve Grillo. I mean, come oh. on. No. No, it's not really Jay Moore. It's just another, another fucking... Anyway, mm. Ziggy you didn't miss anything. Jay Moore stood me up. Mm. He claimed StreamYard wasn't working. Mm. So, it's not happening. No Jay Moore. No text back. Well, I'll tell you the only thing that's fucking with my head, Benny, is why did Jay Moore go silent? He said, he said he was, you know, he had StreamYard issues. I said, use your phone. And then he doesn't come on. Man, 
You are one pathetic loser. <laughs> the whole time, Hell Sparks is sitting there very politely and quiet. Yeah. God, if you listen closely, you can hear the moment his heart breaks. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I choo choo choose you. <laughs> So, again, props to Adam Goldstein. I did steal one of his drafts on that because it was just so too perfect. Wow. So, you just heard all of the, what he just said. Yeah. He has on, at the end of his show, he's so desperate, Mark P. and Benny Loco, two of the people in the stream, who just watch him, uh-huh. actually come on video form and join him on the show. And Benny Loco's trying to talk some sense into him. And he says uh, this. I I believe that he did. Jay did have the problem. I always give people the benefit of the doubt. Well, I you have to. That's you at least to turn your phone call or answer. Yeah, yeah, something. You know, sorry, I can't make it. He did say Probably he couldn't. Will. He did say Probably he couldn't will. make it work. Not, you know, look, I'm not gonna. I'm, you know, I'm not about trashing anybody. <laughs> what? Uh, Holy shit. Goes, I'm not about trashing anybody. It's the only purpose of his show. Yeah. Is to trash people. Yeah, it's literally all he does. It's the only thing he does. I know it's political mostly, but it's all he does is trash people. But it's also Howard Stern. It's anybody in his life. He trashes them. Anybody that used to moderate for his chat. Anybody that <laughs> yes. visited his subreddit. Yeah. The trolls. Anybody who's been a guest on his show but won't return his calls now. Yeah. Correct. So, I just thought that was beautiful. You got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Oh, no, I do. I do. But if that fucking guy was lying to me. So, then uh, he has these people on his show, Mark P. and Benny Loco. And, of course, the first question to them is, what about this Jay Moore thing? Hey, everybody. Hey, you know, I don't understand how Jay Moore could not get on. I don't understand how. Hey, Benny, don't go. Hi, honey. Hold Listen. on. My freaking cat Listen. is making an appearance. <laughs> Someone's got to turn off their audio. Yeah, it's not me. I'm all muted. I know how to do this shit. <laughs> so this is a debacle. Now, John wants to keep the conversation about how Jay Moore stood him up. Yeah. And Benny Loco, to her credit, and Benny Loco is like this older woman who I think survived cancer but still smokes. Like she's a typical Suttering John fan. Well, okay. I yeah. guess is what you could say. Mensa member, you mean? Yes. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Even she understands to segue away from the Jay Moore talk yeah. as John continues to drive that point. He said he was, you know, he had StreamYard issues. I said, use your phone, and then he doesn't come on. I don't know. Listen to that purring. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Mike. This is Annie. She's uh, she has a way of um, she she loves to hear, I guess, the uh, sounds from the computer. So. Oh God, <laughs> this is the worst show. When the people you're talking to are like, "Hey, look at that cat!" Yeah. When you're mid sentence, <laughs> cue the cat, cue the cat. Yeah, and John's face oh. dropped during that too. Just like, Whoa. yeah. Okay, <laughs> now listen. I would bet. Our friend Stuttering John has been stood up on a lot of dates. Sure. I would just, I mean, he's on all these dating services. His pictures look like absolute dog shit. His personality. Oh, my God. Have you seen his new new headshots? Oh, Oh my God. (laughs) Somebody wrote, it was so funny. I'm sorry. I can't give them credit because I forget who it was. But somebody wrote that the reason why there's so much nose hair is because his apartment stinks so bad. (laughs) That's just nature (laughs) taking over and helping him out. But I'm sorry, God, you were saying. Darwinian adaptation to (laughs) his fucking living conditions. But so he's sitting there at the bar and he's waiting and he's texting and his date's a little bit late and he's waiting and he's texting. The date never shows up. He sits at that bar all fucking night and ruins everyone's night around him. Anyone in a six foot circle yeah. is going to fucking hear all about how Vanessa said she was going to be here at six and never showed up and I'll take three more Coors Lights. Uh, like I guarantee this situation has unfolded right, over Followed over by, again. but I don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care, but maybe she was murdered by yeah. a hobo. No, I give her the benefit of the doubt, but this fucking cunt better fucking... Yeah, yeah, I bet it's a whole fucking thing. Dude, these new headshots are fucking outrageous. They're grotesque. He doesn't know how to shave his face. No. And his dye job his... looks like he went to Supercuts. Oh, yeah. wait, he did go to Supercuts. <laughs> super chats, Supercuts. Well, wow. The, and the weird thing, like, his, his hair looks like 10 years younger than it did last week, but his 
face just looks and it, look, dude. When I'm calling out your fucking looks, we got you know this, we got an issue here. Yeah, this fucking guy is not handling things well. Maybe have that kidney function checked out, my man. Just a little free medical advice from so, me to you. So as he's recognizing that Jay Moore is not going to come on, he decides, all right, that's fine. We'll just hang out together, all of us. All right. Well, in the meantime, we'll just chew the shit. <laughs> so, so okay. He said this twice: chew the shit in the show. You can you can chew the fat, yeah, and you can shoot, shoot the, the shit, shit, yeah, but you can't chew the shit. Look, <laughs> these fucking people with metaphors—they're all morons when they can't do metaphors. It's not rocket surgery, John. <laughs> Jesus Christ! We must admit we had some technical glitches last show, and I think that was because either Spectrum was having some um, problems with their. Uh, with their Wi-Fi, which they do quite often, actually, or my computer's memory was uh, taking up too much space, but I got rid of everything. <laughs> All right. Now, I know I work at a gas station, but I do have a little bit of a technical background. I thought you might weigh in on this. What he's saying there is actually technically true. Sometimes your memory takes up too much physical space in your computer, <laughs> yep. and you got to you gotta open the valve a little bit, let out some of the air, and oh, then I the actually, Wi-Fi will start working better. I pull the shift key off, because yeah. I only need that, a lot of that'll, them. That'll work, too. <laughs> but if, if you're not a trained expert, I wouldn't do this at home. I would take it into the shop, just let them know you need the steam uh, let out of the valve a little bit. <laughs> and I couldn't even get to all the Stuttering John debacles of the week because this show was so crazy. <laughs> but apparently, from what's been reported back to me, which I appreciate, is that during one of the shows, he had to tell his neighbors to get off the internet because they were interfering. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, they're, they're using my Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, John. Yeah. Now they're using yeah. your yeah, Wi-Fi. Yeah. My parents live with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So this show, I can't explain the dead air. There was one point I counted 35 seconds of dead oh. air, but that happened multiple times because he's texting with Jay and he's emailing links and he's trying to get, and he's got to get Grillo on to, to save the show. And he says this when, when somebody offers some helpful advice in the chat. It's nothing to do with a producer. Anybody could be able to do this. Not you. Yeah, not you. Exactly. Someone's like, you should get a producer. You know, someone to let the guests know when they're on and send the link ahead of time and confirm that they're there and ready to go. And I don't know, understands how Wi-Fi works and computer memory. Go get your white claws for you. <laughs> yes, I know. I know yes. at one point he's opening beers. He's like, these are getting warm. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking bring a cooler, you moron. <laughs> it's so stupid. Well, so, my neighbor's using my cooler. So he says, <laughs> this is an amazing clip. So he talks about how good of friends he is with Jay Moore. Now, this is when he's still thinking that Jay's going to come on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, uh, Jay invited him to do stand-up last night. We'll just see. He even invited me to do stand-up with him last night uh, at the Lancashire Theater. I didn't feel like it. Huh? I was supposed to, you know, my freaking, my, my freaking manager pisses me off. I go, Dante, am I performing tonight? Oh, no, no, no. Well, not until September. I go, well, you know, you, maybe you should have told me. I just found out. I go, okay. All right. You just found out. Okay. I love that he calls out his manager on the show. And you can find his manager on Twitter, Dante the Comic. And it's just so ridiculous to me. So can I translate what just happened? Yeah, then, please do. Please, please do. So he didn't know about the stand-up gig until the day of. And by the time he found out about it, he was already drunk. Because that's why he goes, I didn't feel I like didn't it. I didn't feel like it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In other words, you yeah, got the text yeah. from Jay like, hey, you coming to the show tonight? Yeah, yeah. He probably booked it through his manager, who's also like fucking out of it. Yeah. So his manager didn't tell him. So that's why John goes, I didn't feel like it. But then I talked to my manager like, what the fuck? Oh, <laughs> How come man. I don't know about this gig? That's what happened. I'm so glad you speak alcoholic. Because <laughs> that, that flew I know right by me. I know a thing or two. Yeah, that flew right by I me. I didn't <laughs> feel like it. God damn. You didn't feel like doing a comedy show with Jay Moore? I, can you fucking imagine? Can you fucking imagine? <laughs> when you have a routine down, you can just go and do your routine wherever, whatever. Seriously. So, oh my! I, it's not like, hey, Carl, do you want to sit in with Smashing Pumpkins? Like, I don't, I don't know all those songs. Can you give me? Oh, I can't do that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I thought of Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> Because if it was Ween, I'd be like, yeah, I could do that. It's no problem. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then John's getting multiple trolls coming in uh, just in this one short clip. This is really you. It's very easy to find out right now. I, I'll just email you. And now we'll see if you want to come on the show. 
Hey, what's up, Nikki? What's up, Nikki? Hey, what's up? Well, that wasn't Nikki. Oh, my God. It was Nicholas Cage. Uh, well, Brent, I already uh, emailed you. If that's really you, come on. Jesus fucking Christ. This is his fucking show? <laughs> this is his <laughs> life. I mean, it's worse than this. I'm finding the choice, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, dude, they don't call him Mr. Entertainment for nothing. I'll give him that. So, apparently, some guy named Brent in the chat room, I don't know if it's Brent Hatley or someone else, is like, John, I'll come on your show. So, John's emailing the person he thinks it is. With the information and going, listen, if, you, if that's really you, you should have the information. And at the same time, Nikki B's calling his phone, but it's someone spoofing Nikki B's phone number. Because ah. someone spoofed Jay Moore's phone number, too. Because later in the show, he's like, oh, hey, Jay. Oh, this isn't Jay. Oh, shit. So someone is, <laughs> someone is fucking with Johnny at a level that is beyond. Yeah. It's, it's very impressive. Well, what can I say, my peeps? Oh, uh, boy. Well, this really stinks. <laughs> I don't know why I keep saying my peeps. we got to work that into our yeah. next video series. Yeah. Well, my peeps. This is gold. What can I say? Oh, my God. He's talking to well, the roaches. I got an idea of something he could say. To my friends, my work is done. <laughs> why wait? <laughs> <laughs> we do not endorse suicidal thoughts on this show. But if, I did think it was if funny. If you're having suicidal thoughts, please call the National <laughs> I did think it was funny that he goes... Well, I don't know what to do now. Well, John, you're an entertainer. Why don't you say something interesting or entertain people? You're an old pro. Yeah, yeah you're, right. you're a pro. Maybe you would know a joke or two. <laughs> and it turns out John's not talented or charismatic. He does four shows a week. I think it's catching up to him. I think maybe it's a little bit yeah. too much. He has nothing to say. He should talk about that one time he was in an Uber and he was driving. <laughs> and, I, and I was the driver. Yeah, he should tell I, that story That again. didn't take up much time. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. I wish I could say I didn't love this, but since my regular shows are so professional, you know, they're usually pretty smooth. Why not? <laughs> Crouch. He says, I know, I know this is not a great episode of Beer on the Balcony, but it's okay. I'm allowed to have a stinker every now and then, is what he just said. <laughs> Is that impressive? My usual shows are so good. What's that, impressive is he tops himself uh, every week. Every week. With this kind of bullshit. Oh. It's amazing. You would think I'd have nothing to talk about with Senator Jen anymore. It'd be the same shit over and over again. Oh. But then he fails this miserably and has the balls to say this. As bad as this may be, I will still put it up against anything Howard Stern is putting out there. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look, I'm not going <laughs> to trash Howard Stern, but why not? <laughs> or anyone else. He takes off the whole summer. Oh, God. The whole fucking summer. All right. So this is a story from two months ago. This, yeah. That Howard serves out the whole summer. And people there, I guarantee there's fucking orders of magnitude. More people listening to the reruns from 2002 yes. that are playing on the Howard Stern channels right now. Orders that are of fucking magnitude. tuning into this bullshit. And he goes, I'd put up against anything that Howard Stern's doing now. Like, Howard Stern has had Metallica on the show <laughs> performing live. Yeah, right. Do you think you're better than you, Metallica? You've got Jay Moore's voicemail. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. If he was saying it to be funny, it'd be funny. Yeah. But he's not. So then he gets Grillo on. And, uh, good get. I know. Grillo well, first, wasn't busy? Well, first he has to insult Grillo, which is always good with a guest. All right, I'll bring Steve Grillo on. He's no Jay Moore, but... Oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, so this is his, uh, you know, he's going to settle for Grillo. And then Grillo comes on the phone, and immediately John is into it. Hey, what's going on, homie? Steve, I was just saying, look, Steve, how funny is it that Howard Stern is taking off the whole fucking summer? <sighs> so this is just oh. jealousy. That's all oh. this is. Is jealousy. Oh. I was just saying how funny it is. This guy's making 120 million. Up, and this is him again counting Howard's money. Yeah. Yeah. 120 million. And you know what's so funny, Steve? Like, because Judge Karate in New York uh, oh, do I. let Sirius beat me in that lawsuit. Guess what? I just, I just filed for an appeal. All mm. right. What Sirius beat you? Is a weird way to say you lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of All a right. loser way of saying it. So Judge Crotty, hopefully he doesn't say shit about Judge Crotty because you don't want to do that. Because because he's a fucking asshole, oh. that judge. He doesn't <laughs> oh. understand. He doesn't understand law. He's too old to do it. Oh, oh the judge doesn't understand law. 
He's too old, so ageism wow. is not working his way in. The judge doesn't understand law as well as stuttering John Melendez does. Wow. But I'll tell you this. Here you have, and you, Steve, this is the funniest part. Here you have all these assholes, like, applauding. Like, hey, isn't that great stuttering John didn't win? And meanwhile, I'm saying to myself, Steve, like, why are they in support of Sirius and Howard who have been raping them? Non-stop. All right, again, it's not that we're rooting for Howard. We're just rooting against you. Yeah, all basically. Right? But also this idea that we're being raped. Now, I still have a SiriusXM subscription. I rarely ever use it. I don't listen to Howard anymore. Yeah. But it's like 15 bucks a month or something. I'm not even sure. It's fine. I have it if I want to get on it. Listening to Dr. Steve on Weird Medicine or something like that. And it's just ridiculous to me that John equates 15 bucks a month as being raped, you can cancel if you're unhappy that Howard took the summer off. I'm sure many people did. Yeah. No, you can't cancel. It's part of Howard's contract. Yeah. He wants to continue to rape you for your 15 bucks a month to have a serious subscription. There's well, other and things then on serious. You call up and you're like, listen, I'm being raped. And I don't, and they'll be like, well, listen, we'll only put it in halfway and we'll give you $7.99 a month for six months. <laughs> what kind of lube do you and want? And you can decide. <laughs> we'll use lube. Yeah. It's, yeah. Honestly, if you were to call up Sirius and say, I'm going to cancel because Howard's off the whole summer, they would go, what if we gave it to you for five bucks over six months? Yeah. And that's what they do. <laughs> that's yeah, what they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll give it practically away for free because they want to keep their numbers up so they can sell advertising. Am I explaining how this works to John? He's not going to get it. Yeah. it's So then because it's, it's John and Grillo, this dynamite team. They're going to start goofing on Gary Delabate. Oh, boy. Baba Booey. Very topical. Oh, it's still just hilarious. Yeah. Bros. You can't believe how funny this is. Gary's selling the house that tooth built. And uh, then <laughs> he's moving to Florida, which which is, you know, makes sense because they have a monkey sanctuary in Clearwater. Bada boom. But, oh, yeah, monkeys like warmer climates. <laughs> Bada boom. He's like, what? Yeah. So they're cracking. He's just cracking up over just the most random, boring nonsense. So for some reason, this guy's selling his $3 million home to buy two other houses so he can live in Florida and the Northeast. John, I, I think maybe Gary Delabate won this one. I think maybe he's had the last laugh. Yeah. I said monkeys like warmer climates. <laughs> but he's also buying us another house. So, so he's selling one big mola and getting two pike uh, by cuspids. Zing. And you know, he's getting some crown work too in the back. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Nothing better than goofing on Gary. Sure brought my snare. But is one for Mary and one for the Gomada? <laughs> yeah. Hello. Well, wait, what's that? What was that fucking uh, talking uh, gorilla that did fucking sign language? <laughs> But that, yeah, it is a ser- now. If Fred's moving somewhere, by this way, is better than anything Howard Stern is doing. It's Coco, by the way, Coco the gorilla. And no, holy shit! No, gorilla thought that was a joke. Yeah, what was that gorilla that and, could do sign language? And, and, and Jack was, <laughs> I know. Oh my god, I know. <laughs> This is not good roasting. And Matt, you're living a storage unit, stealing your neighbor's fucking Wi-Fi. And you're like, <laughs> look at this asshole yeah. who just bought multiple estates and lives comfortably with his family who love him. I decided not to go to Tesla. Yeah. Because Elon Musk is a douchebag. His fucking kids actually spend the holidays with him. Can you believe this asshole? <laughs> what an asshole. Borat owes me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now Grillo is talking about how he just had Shuli on his show. Which is something that John can't do. <laughs> Listen to John's first question about this. But, so you know, I had I, the, Shuri, Shuri came on my show last week, which was kind of a shocker. Yeah? Yeah. Did, did he so I, I got a Miss, Miss Elegante to come on the show, so I did a little trade-off, which was nice because, I, you know, I don't really, I know Shuli, but I don't really know him, so I got to know him a little better. So, did he trash me? No, not at all. He won't trash anybody. John's first question, did he trash me? John, the answer is yes for an hour with me on our bonus show, the WATP Shuli Show crossover event. Mm, Tune in. That's behind a paywall. Tune in. On our on our Patreon. Oh my god. Did he did he trash me? No, we didn't you didn't come up with a conversation at all. You, you can say any name and he'll say, What did he say about me? Yeah. Well, did he mention me? Were you guys talking were you guys talking about me? 
Did she talk about that time we kissed in 1997? Did she bring it up? All right. So Judd starts kicking out trolls at some point. Oh. And he kicks out the wrong person. Well, Brent, if it's really you, I already emailed you and DM'd you. So it's not really you. So <sighs> goodbye. Let's see. Who else can we can get rid of you here? failed my capture. Uh, we can get rid of this one. Goodbye. And who else? Uh, and we'll get rid of that one. There we go. Wait. <laughs> what? I didn't mean to block Benny Loco. That's too funny. Uh, how do I unblock? I don't know. Damn it. Jesus. <laughs> he blocks the one lady who consistently gives him super chats because he's just a moron. He was trying to block someone named Gloria Days. <laughs> <laughs> Magnificent. Uh, Shuli is here. Shuli, can you what? hear me, buddy? Hello? Hey. hey shalom. <laughs> shalom, Shuli. How are you, man? I'm good, boys. How are you guys doing? Sorry to interrupt your potty time. Uh, it's all good, man. I'm just hiding from the family. Dude, we had a fantastic crossover show. I loved our Stuttering John segment. I was going back and editing that and laughing my ass off at it. Yeah, it was a good cleansing for me. <laughs> it, it sure was. Uh, yes, I am patting myself on the back. Thank you very much <laughs> for that. You should. It was great. It was, uh, It was. Uh, you know, numerous times I forgot I was doing your show. We were just hanging and talking, yeah. so that that was good. We were doing our show, Shuli. It was our show. That's true. The crossover, <laughs> the crossover was a events. huge hit. Everybody loves it. Uh, they're still raving about it. All right. And... Now, now it's pretty obvious that we're lying. See, you went too far no. with that. Did, did Shuli that, that, crash it's... me? <laughs> Shuli was talking about crows nonstop. No. I knew it. I knew it. We opened with you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Holy shit. Stuttering John, that's his first thought, that you talked to Grillo and that you were trashing Stuttering John. I mean, I don't blame him. He, you know, <laughs> he needs it. You know what I mean? He needs me to go after him. He and, needs and... someone to be talking about him for something. Yeah, he should be sending you a freaking thank you card every week, dude. I've been getting more and more notes from people saying, Carl, you're the only reason why anyone's paying attention to this guy. Just stop it and let him die. Let him die on the vine. And uh, I can't do that. <laughs> Not with yeah, those it's easy, from today. easy for you guys to say. Easy, <laughs> yeah, easy for you guys to say. If he keeps failing like this, and we called it Jay Moore. And I sent Shuli a text, too, as soon as I heard this. I was like, dude, we called it. <laughs> Jay Moore did not show up on his oh. show. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. What are the chances? Yeah. He ain't, he ain't that far down the ladder yet. No, no. Jay, Jay Moore still has some credits to his name. He doesn't want yeah. uh, frequent guest on the Stuttering John podcast to be at the top of that list. I think I think Jay would book himself on a show called Suicide by Cop before he does <laughs> Stuttering John show. <laughs> Oh, I'm a free con contributor to that show, by the way. I don't know if you knew that, if that was just a joke you were making. Uh, all right. Well, I, I will let you go, but I appreciate it. No problem. I saw you guys were I saw the Discord you guys were on. I jumped in right when you were talking about John. So, you Perfect. know me. I'm just sitting here enjoying it. Perfect timing. And uh, thanks for coming on, as always. We appreciate it. Hey. Anytime, buddy. Shuli Show is where people should go to check out the Shuli Show, wherever you get your fine podcasts. Mm. He's great. He did an episode that was, he got a bunch of the Howard 101 news people together. Yes, yes I heard that. that. Was fucking it was fucking fantastic. Yeah. yeah. They couldn't get uh, Lisa G, though. Yeah, she's busy. Polishing, <laughs> her, polishing her G cups. You know how it goes. <laughs> she's too busy. Okay. Fair enough. All right, let's talk about John's dating life. Well, I'm on the fence. I don't know if I want the uh, tacos Oh, hold on. I'm I... sorry. I'm going to set this one up. Whoa. <laughs> Where are we going with this? I like this. Hold on. I'm so sorry. Because there were a bunch of clips I wanted to take, and then it was just too much. Yeah. He's bragging about how he has dates three nights in a row. Oh, yeah. He's like, he's like, uh, I would smoke, but I can't. I got a date tonight. Yeah. And uh, actually got dates three nights in a row, three different yeah. girls. Two prostitutes and one hookup. <laughs> Did you know that you could DM chicks on Instagram <laughs> and offer them money for sex? <laughs> Did you know that? So John's got these dates. And then as he's talking about the dates, he talks, he's recalling women he's dated who suck. And he's such a charmer the way he describes this. He's talking about a girl he dated who talked too much. Mm. And this is the story of the girl who talked too much. He wouldn't shut up. Well, I'm on the fence. I don't know if I want the uh, tacos or should I get the uh, 
chimichangas. Well, how about... She goes, part of me wants the tacos, part of me wants the chimichangas. I say, which part of you shuts the fuck up? <laughs> yeah, we were at Sagebrush Cantina. Wow. Chick did not shut up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you imagine dating this guy? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> by the way, that didn't happen, obviously. And by the way, <laughs> just from my limited experience, <laughs> dating women is literally just talking about what food you want to eat right. every night until the day that you fucking die. Uh, That's what dating is. That is That's true. what marriage is. That's what it is. That is true. Which restaurant do you want to go to? I don't know. Let's talk about it for a half hour. <laughs> and then true. we'll do the same thing tomorrow night. It'll be great. Jesus. This fucking guy. Does that feel good, baby? What's with all the questions? <laughs> <laughs> so then he turns on his supporters because Benny Loco. So he's having a meltdown. The show is just a, a disaster. Oh. Um, the, the Japanese are like, wow, we feel bad for you because we have never had anything like this happen in our country. <laughs> so it's, it's terrible. And then Benny Loco says something, and you can see what kind of an angry drunk John is. Ugh, John's not a fun drunk. Yeah. He's an angry drunk, uh, which isn't good because he drinks a lot. Yeah. And he's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so he's so, angry. So this is him turning on Benny Loco. <laughs> yeah, Benny Loco was a mess because my guest couldn't get on. But I'm glad that you like to point things out like that. Oh. She's like, wow, this is a mess. Like, oh, okay. You want to rub yeah. it in? You want to put salt in the wound? <laughs> As I'm having a hard time over here. <laughs> so then he's talking to her after she comes on the show and explains how he accidentally blocked her. Oh, I, and by the way, I accidentally blocked you for a few minutes. Did you see that? Yeah, you, yeah, I did, John. I felt it, actually. I didn't see it. I felt it. I, I cringed when you did that, John. I, I thought... Uh, no, no, no. I, it was the other one, the Gloria Days, whatever. And then I had to go back, go up to YouTube and unblock him. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> okay. Two more clips real quick. I'm sorry. This is taking a lot of time. It's just too funny to me. So Mark P. lives in Washington, D.C., and as we all know... Southern John's going to have this amazing show where he goes and yells at Republicans with a microphone. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's well, it's called opening a dialogue. And <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to it. I think it'll bring some unity. It's a much needed unity. It's called reaching across the aisle with a fist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this is John inviting himself over to crash with Mark P. Mark P <laughs> does not look like he's living the life of luxury, okay? <laughs> And he's got this big hairy cat on his lap the entire time. And listen to how Mark P. reacts to this. Hey, Mark P., well, you're in the D.C. area, right? Yes. Yes, I am. I might be sleeping on your couch when I go out there. All right. Well, this, this little furry thing may be crawling all over you. That's her spot. So he's trying to discourage this behavior. Holy shit. Well, okay, but just so you know, this cat stinks and shits all the time. So (laughs) you might want to be wary of that. I know. Do you ever invite yourself over to someone's house like that? I might be staying with you. Carl, I might be borrowing your car later tonight because I got to go pick something up. (laughs) Also, uh, you're going to be loaning me about 200 bucks, but I'll get it back to you like, you know, next week or so. And Do you have any boner pills? Yeah, you got any Viagras? You're going to be handing me some of your Viagras. I went through your spice rack and couldn't find any Cialis. <laughs> yeah. Oregano. Where do you keep your Cialis in here? And I already took the veggies out of your crisper. <laughs> okay. This is the last clip. And I think this summarizes the people who like stuttering John, what their sense of humor is like, what makes them laugh. Listen carefully, because he has to say this joke twice. You'd be bored of seeing you and I, Benny Loco. Let's how, how about some of these other? Hey, Sally, Sally Beaver, you want to get on here? Yeah, come here. I'd love Ziggy, to be the girl named here? Sally Beaver. <laughs> I, I missed that, John. What'd you say? I said I would love to meet a girl named Sally Beaver. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> and then he laughs at his own joke both times. Yeah, both times. I'd like to meet a girl named Sally Beaver. Well, she's in the chat room. We can invite her on the show if you oh. want. I'll send her the link to StreamYard. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh, hey, Sally Beaver. Nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> I want to meet a sister, Jenny Cooch. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not how names work, Crouch. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah. fine. But you're not so smart that you're getting weekend Mensa enrollment. No, no, I'm not in Mensa. That was a goof. As I goof on a regular basis. Maybe you should put some sort of emoji at the end of that. Speaking of emotional <laughs> retards. <laughs> Stuttering John Melendez. Holy shit. I was checking out Tuesday and Thursday's show this week. He now has duct tape holding his microphone on the stand. <laughs> Have you seen this? Oh, my God. He, poor son of a He's bitch. got sores on his hands. He's got new sores. I don't know where these sores are coming from, but they're weird-looking sores that he gets on his hands. And he's constantly putting them in the camera shot. And it's grotesque. I wish he'd keep his arms down. I wish he was Jeffrey Tubining underneath the table so I have to see what the fuck's going out of his hands. He had a, this congressman on, Ted Lou. Now, he's had this guy on before. And Ted Lou is a gay gentleman. And the last time he was on there, he said the gay, I mean the great Ted Lou. Oh no, dude. Doesn't he do it again? This is from just this Tuesday's episode. Alright, thank you so much for coming on, Ted. I really appreciate it. Terrific. Have a good day. Please come back again, alright? Will do. Thank you. All right, thanks, Ted. All right, the great, uh, the great Congressman Ted <laughs> Lou from uh, uh, California, uh, the fruity <laughs> cop. I mean, the, uh, the fruity uh, Congressman. I mean, the uh, uh isn't he just a queer guy? A great guy. <laughs> John, really, his his brain can't handle too many things at one time. <laughs> Oh, and it's great, too, because you can watch it happen. So because he has a video show, yeah, yeah, you yeah. watch his eyes dart back and forth, and then he's staring at the screen, and then he's like, oh, shit, what did that person just say? And what is this comment here? And do I need to kick this person oh, yeah, out? Yeah. He gets lost uh, very quickly and easily yes. uh, in his own stupid head. So this is great. He's got this Lindsey Graham joke. That he's got all ready to go. And he's very excited about it. Oh, good. He's going to tear up a Republican. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> wow. But what's great about this is he tells the joke. And then he celebrates himself. And he explains how he came up with such an amazing joke. So that we can all Come get a, a peek behind the curtain. <laughs> oh. And you've been on a, a comedy show for a little bit. You ever do this before? Where you explain how you came up with a joke that you told? It just makes the joke that much funnier, I <laughs> it swear. It does. So, All right, check this I've out. seen the greats do this. Check this out. <laughs> you can still get COVID if you have the vaccinations. Lindsey Graham just got COVID, which I don't know how. He spends all his time in the closet. Thank you. Thank you very oh. much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I tweeted that one at 6 a.m. in the morning. I was taking a questions to ask the politicians, and uh, and and one of the questions was going to be for Lindsay. Isn't it time? Time for what? Time you came out of the closet. But uh, oh. then I thought of that joke. All right. So. Wow. <laughs> I know. He thought it was so good. Yes. E! Entertainment's behind the joke. <laughs> <laughs> but Anthony, what's great about that is, so he wants to do this new show. He's going to go to Washington, D.C. and interview Republicans in yes. the old style that he used to do where he'd like, you know, ask him ridiculous questions and get these yeah. reactions. So he's trying to come up with these questions now. And it's literally the Ringo Starr joke, but less witty. You know, what did you oh, do with the money? But in this right. one, it, it's, uh, I, I forget what the fucking setup was, but it was, it was so stupid. Like, don't he, you think it's time? Don't you think it's time? That's and the guy's going to be like, time for what? Yeah. You're like, no one would answer that no way. <laughs> no. Yeah. So the best part about this <laughs> is he has, he has Richard Ojeda on the show later. And doesn't he repeat the joke? This is the same. <laughs> no. This is the no. same show. It's not even like a week later. Oh my God. I could maybe He's forgive worked. it if it was a week later, but he repeats it on the same show. Uh, and, of course, Lindsey Graham has tested positive for COVID. So I'm sure that, uh, you know, everybody needs to I don't to know how he can get COVID if he spends his entire life in the closet. <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. Jesus. He couldn't contain himself. Dude, he couldn't wait. He I got came, something for this. <laughs> he came flying out with that. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like Braveheart. Hold. Hold. And then... And then uh, Hold on, no, shut the I fuck up. I got a joke. 
By the way, let me explain to you. It was uh, 7 a.m. in the morning, sunrise time. In the a.m. morning. A.m. in the morning. Not, not p.m. moon time. Yeah, 7 a.m. in the morning, uh, Eastern Standard, Western time. What a jolt. He jumped in and stepped all over that guy to get that brilliant joke in for the second time in the same show. Correct. Oh, oh shit. So, what now the dud. first time he told that joke, he had to go into damage control afterwards because it's a gay joke. And he's uh -huh. he's very woke. And we love gay That's people. That's true. Right. His, uh, one of his, one of his uh, children are in the LBGTQ. Him or her. Correct. Yes. Community, of course. So he he has to go on and say this for the damage control. I think all men and women should be created equal, and that includes trans, bi, and whatever else. <laughs> they should all be created equal. All right, well, right, tell right. God that. I I don't know what what am I going to do about it. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He doesn't say are created equal. No, they should be created equal. I should think be. Maybe I'm in the minority, but I think the bi's and the trans should be created equal. <laughs> okay. He is so bad. So I can't get enough of of John. Again, another one that if this was a character, yeah, you'd be like, oh my god, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. But we all know, it, unfortunately, it is really John. Well, you've had him on your show. A few times. Oh, you, yeah. You've talked to him face to face. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. and it's it's gotten worse. It's obviously gotten worse. Yeah, yeah. He he uh, drinks to the point of complete. He can't function. Like he gets drunk to the point where he can't function anymore. Can't speak. Can't walk. Can't do anything. And and on other people's beers, by the way, I don't think he's ever bought. <laughs> One beer that he's drank. I bet the beers he drinks on his show, someone else bought it. Oh, that's, I don't know how that's actually true. On his birthday, he had a case of Coors Light delivered to his house from a fan. Like, he's, he's literally <laughs> asking people to buy him beer at his own uh, apartment. I, I, I paid for it with the, the super chat. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, all right, so that brings me to this point. He's talking about the pub that he goes to, the Pickwick pub. And listen to the conversation he's having. With the, other, I mean, I can't imagine anyone there is excited when he walks in the door. Is he is he picking up a lesbian? <laughs> <laughs> Could you believe God, that, that story? Brutal. No, <laughs> so <stupid>. I can't. <laughs> so stupid. Uh, I, I I was glad I had Chrissy on the show. To, oh, guess, so funny. <laughs> yeah, it's like, was, well, how do you make I, sense of any of this? I was talking to Chrissy about uh, her appearance on your show, and. Yeah. Uh, I said I'm really digging her uh, John impression. Like everyone does a John impression now, and she's getting pretty good. Oh, yeah, I am this lesbian. Uh, she does a pretty good one. I like her John impression because it's similar to like when they used to do the impressions on Howard Stern. It sounded nothing like the person, but you right. got it immediately. You're like, oh, you're like, oh, you're doing John. Yep, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yours, uh, Carl, has been very good. Like. Uh <laughs> It, you, well, you know what I can't do, and this is the thing that I, I have a hard time with, and uh, and producer Chris does an impression too. We do those deep fake videos. The thing that I can't do are the pauses between words. That weird cadence. I can't. Oh uh, yeah. Talk in a manner. <laughs> no. Like well, he's, John. Would. He's more comfortable with dead air. He's so much more comfortable with dead air. Yeah, so is the audience. <laughs> <laughs> and every clip that I pull. I actually squeeze it together. I take out the dead air because I don't want it on my show. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is him at the pub. But John, isn't it? But isn't it crazy? Like, like I said to people at the pub I hang out with, I go, "Okay, so let me get this straight. You know, you guys are anti-abortion but pro-death penalty. Yeah, I don't get it. That's like a a comics bit from the '80s. Oh God, right? And he's arguing that as if that's like some profound thing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, you know, I wouldn't even get into the argument, but maybe the fetus didn't murder a family of five. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, you know. I know. I know. <laughs> That's the thing, too. He's like, he can't even understand why someone would feel right. that way. And his guest goes, well, the reason that what they'll tell you is, <laughs> you know, this whole yeah, thing. Yeah. An <laughs> <laughs> innocent life, John, is what they, that would be their response to such a ridiculous he just, <laughs> he just repeats the shit he hears yes. like like and and i've seen people do it um on both sides of the political sure. fence uh where you just 
soak in the bullshit and then spew it out. But he's the worst but at he it. Is, he's so bad at it because he gets it wrong a lot of times. And he's got this um, this uh, idea that he's a political pundit. He thinks he can give uh, concise political commentary. He can't even, like I said, his duct tape mic and his <laughs> backdrop falling down, exposing the <laughs> hovel he lives in. <laughs> it's, it's I went with Iraq. When Iraq was out, he pointed out, that the backdrop is L.A., but it's got the little watermarks on it because he didn't even pay for the like, high-res version of it. Yeah, whenever you're making, like, whenever I, I use a lot of uh, a lot of pictures, yeah. photos when I uh, when I tweet, and and I I look for ones that don't have the watermark on it for even a tweet. Right, <laughs> he's literally <laughs> using it for his background that says I'm too cheap to get the HD version for a few bucks oh. to license it. So this is him again. We're talking about Lindsey Graham, and he's voting against LGBTQ rights. And Yo, how does he get it for some time in the closet? <laughs> so he doesn't he doesn't repeat that joke again. But he does fuck up a pretty well known saying at the end here. So for Lindsey Graham, Lady G, Grandma, oh. to be out there voting against LGBTQ rights when you're a latent homosexual, vouch. Protest thy too much. Oh, <laughs> that <laughs> protest thy too much? <laughs> Thou protest thy too much for go. Hear ye, hear ye. Uh, in over his head as it's usual. Hot. Yes! <laughs> like, people fuck up the, the saying all the time I know that I have before, but I would never say protest thy too much. Like, what? Thy too much diff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that classic stuttering John? It sure is. Oh. <laughs> he should really only quote things uh, maybe in, in from the last century. Maybe. Or, or like a, a nursery rhyme or right. something. Something right. that he right. would know. Fuck a tad. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, right. As the uh, great Popeye woman. would say. <laughs> <laughs> I am what I am. Thy is all that thus then am. Thou am does protest. As Popeye would say. <laughs> I love John. It's This is hilarious. Oh, this has become my favorite part of the show now. Like I, yeah. I pull more John clips than I do the main show that we're doing consistently. <laughs> Because everything he says, like we could just Gold. we could pull up a, a, any video on YouTube and just play it from anywhere, oh, and yeah. it's just hilarious. It's terrible. He's terrible. He's not getting better. I gotta say, Opie and and Patrick Michael do not make me laugh. I'm right. exhausted from laughing. I know. Stuttering John. I agree. He's so God, unintentionally so funny. I should do a Stuttering John wrap up show. We should be on as soon as the show ends. <laughs> yes. Come over to my channel. We'll talk about All it. All right. <laughs> So he has this guy on John Fugel saying, and oh god, yeah, he, he's a yeah, he's really a liberal. liberal guy. Yeah. yeah. So he's over uh, on the East Coast, and he's talking because they got the time zone wrong again. They have uh, such a hard time with Jesus. <laughs> PST. He can figure out four hours, or he can't figure out what the time zone is. They can Which, never wait, figure what, it what, out. Is it AM or PM? Seven PM AM. So, so he explains, he's, so he's ripping on L.A. He's like, yeah, I haven't been to L.A. in a while, you know, and, and he, he gets into it. And then John reveals something that's hilarious. I okay, I'll that. return. I'll return to your magical city where everyone buys shoes and no one walks anywhere. And I'll be back in the PST. I can't wait. <laughs> you know what's so funny, John? I once on eBay, I bought um, a turn signal and I was going to pull it out on stage and go, hey, hey, L.A., do you know what this is? This is to put on a blinker. Yeah, nobody puts on blinkers in L.A. It's so funny that you mentioned that. He wanted to be a prop comic? <laughs> What's his name? Carrot Flop? Uh, whoa. <laughs> hey, it's a pear-shaped, the prop comic. How did he even segue to that from the shoes and no one walks? I understand he meant people drive, but... It's signal, hey, how about that? No one uses the signal. Am I right? Then what about these Chinese? You can blindfold them with dental floss. <laughs> I was going to buy dental floss. I don't know where to find it, but I was going to buy dental floss and bring it on stage and bring a Chinese woman up.
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I smash a watermelon with a mallet at the end of my show. <laughs> Oh shit! I I love that he's he he, he was proud of that. I was gonna do this prop comic thing. That's, he was so proud of it. Let's look down at like like just a blinker. What is he even talking about now? I was gonna just bring the uh, back half of a car on stage with me. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, check out this this light over here. It, it blinks. <laughs> Do you know what this is? Yeah, terrible comedy. <laughs> I would have yelled that from the front row. Uh, yeah, LA, do you know what this is? <laughs> a, a refund. Yeah. <laughs> he is so incredibly bad. I can't get enough. Oh, speaking of his comedy, he gives a plug. Now, this is from the Thursday episode, and he's plugging a show that he has coming up. He's very enthusiastic about it. Just a reminder, I'll be at the um, Laugh Factory in Reno. Ugh. I'll be headlining there. <laughs> so at so the end of this well, episode, he gets into this yawning fit. He's just like on his own show. He's bored out of his mind. Holy shit. And then, yeah, he's channeling and, the audience. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know what's contagious? He can tell they're all yawning. So then he gives a biology lesson. Which I always want science coming from stuttering John. That's how I learned oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. By the way, yawning has nothing to do with being bored. Yawning <laughs> has everything to do with too much carbon uh carbon dioxide in in your lungs and you have to expel it. How do <laughs> yeah. I know so much? Because when I was in seventh grade or eighth grade biology, my teacher, Mr. Morris, caught me yawning in class and made me do a two page essay on why people yawn. All right, so I looked this up, and it's just not true. Wow. It no, literally it's says, myth. yeah, it literally says, yawning is a, a symptom of being tired or bored or uninterested. Of course. And then it gets into like, if you're yawning excessively like he was, it could mean, mean like a brain tumor yeah. or your heart is bleeding, like all this shit. I'm like, Al alcoholism, <laughs> who is light that one? Yeah. <laughs> So this is this is fantastic. I love when John compares himself to people who are very successful. He's talking about George Lucas going back and re-editing the Star Wars movies, the special edition. Of course. Took right. a lot of flack for that one. Oh yeah. I mean, we're we're still talking about this in 2021. It's such an interesting yeah. topic. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that Han didn't shoot first. Like I okay, we're we're, oh, we're past that now. <laughs> so this is Holy this is John <laughs> talking about how he was also guilty of this. I hate when filmmakers do this. I'm guilty of that for Filmmaker. a sight and sound f film I did in at NYU. The 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 crew uh, was getting tired, <laughs> so they didn't want to shoot the rest of the scenes. I had to be creative and use clips and of different takes and edit a scene like and made it look like he was dreaming. It got an A, and then I went back and edited what I originally wanted. Didn't make it any better. So I learned Holy my lesson. Shit. George Lucas, you should learn yours. He's drunk. <laughs> he's, he's drunk. He's slurring every word that comes out of his mouth. Could you imagine saying, <clears throat> so I, I did what Lucas did, and I got an A. I, you know, Lucas has an 87 on Rotten Tomatoes, so I, I think that's probably a B+. Plus. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> What? <laughs> he's he's talking about his college <laughs> NYU days and comparing a film he made, which I would kill to see, I by know. the way. Yes. I if, would kill to see If he put that out for twenty dollars, I would drop twenty dollars in oh, a second to watch that. Absolutely. And 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 he's comparing it to the works of George Lucas. It's <laughs> amazing, isn't it? He is astoundingly clueless about about himself. Anthony, this guy is 55 years old. Do you remember any grades you've gotten on any projects that you did in school? No. I don't either. Not one. And Not I one. can't tell you my, my teacher's names. Like he I knows. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Mr. Whatever. He knows the fucking teacher's names. Biology in eighth grade. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Moorhead said. Like, what? I learned that, 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 that carbonite in your lungs. Carbonite. I don't know. <laughs> so... 
here's this is kind of related to this. He's talking about now he used to write, quote unquote, the cold opens for the Tonight Show when he was the announcer on the Jay Leno show. Right. And this is a little bit of a longer clip, but he's going to tell this story about how Charlie Sheen was going to do the cold open, but he showed up late. So they had to shoot it after they got done with the show and then they were going to edit it later and then put it out as the cold open and everyone was annoyed with him that they had to stay late to do this cold open and john does not understand ratings at all (laughs) charlie sheen loved to do the cold opens and he came in but he showed up late because he's charlie sheen and we didn't have time to shoot it before but he said i really want to do it so we had to shoot it after after the show and then insert it into the show later. It's called editing, folks. We know. So I'll never forget, I was standing next to the cameraman slash director and the production supervisor. And they were all upset with me. They were like, and the cameraman had the audacity to say to me, you know, John, this really doesn't matter in the ratings. Like they were mad they had to stay an extra 10, 15 minutes. I'm sure it was more than that. And I was like, in my mind, he, 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 I, I'm like, like how? I think I even said out loud, how do you know it doesn't help in the ratings? The only way to know it doesn't help in the ratings is if you go by a Charlie Sheen episode where there wasn't a cold open and then take a, a Charlie Sheen episode where there was, and then you can see if where there was, people get to see him up front. And then they stick around for him for the rest of the show. So, so okay. <laughs> Ipso oh facto. Oh, my God. Does he think that ratings mean... <laughs> Ipso facto. <laughs> does, does he think that ratings mean, like, giving it a score? I think the, yeah. I think the ratings are good for the cold open. People like it. It's like, no, no, John. The way ratings works, it's not just like any Charlie Sheen episode. It's going to be <laughs> comparable. You have to wonder about the seasonality of the episode and, and what was the lead in and what night of the week right. is it. And He's such a moron. Like Nobody tunes into the Tonight Show for the cold open. No one's like, ah, i got to get here right at 1135. It's cold open time. And I don't think the cold open, whether you like it or not, is going to decide if you stick around. It's going to no, be, yeah, no. who are the guests, you know. It, it, nothing matters right up until Jay Leno. Right. And then and then when Jay comes out, then people will be like, oh, who are the guests? I think I'll stick around. Jay was funny in his monologue. He's he's this self-important. He thinks he talks about things. And that's why I always loved when you guys would play Glory Days. Because <laughs> it's so indicative. It's exactly what he's doing. He's talking about school. He's talking about high school. He's talking about college. He's talking about- I was a big baseball player back in high school. I had a friend. He was the announcer on the Tonight Show for about a season or so. <laughs> Yeah, the cold open. Do you remember when uh, remember when Jay Leno would do the monologue, and then when the guest was on, he'd be like, "Oh, I just told a joke about that. Let me repeat it." Uh, did you hear about this? <laughs> oh, God. could you imagine Jay just diving in and stepping all over the guest <laughs> to tell a joke he told in the monologue? That's what I mean. John's learned nothing. He's worked with Howard Stern and Jay Leno, and he's learned nothing from them. Yes, yes. two immensely successful yes. broadcasters in a couple of different mediums right and he can't figure out extremely good at what they do anything it's it's oh, unbelievable so brilliant. richard ojeda now richard ojeda is going to do his bill maher appearance at the end of the month and stuttering john lets him know that he can give him a ride because john wants to try to get on the show obviously of course of course so he says oh i can give you a ride to the bill maher show because he got a new car and the question is because he's been talking about this new car for months now so he's supposed to have a Tesla two months ago. So the question is, well, what did you get? And he does not answer the question. And by oh, the way, no. Major, when you do come, um, you know, I, I got a I got a new car now. So I I uh I sold I, I sold the Mustang. So so um you know I could I, I could drive you uh to oh. Bill Mar show in class. Hell yeah, let's do it. So what is it? Uh, Ford Festiva? What do we got here? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a little it, it's a little more high end than that, but so when are you coming? Do you know? <laughs> Does that not sound like a fifth grader telling a lie? Yeah, I brought this up and now I regret doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking at the Ford 
<laughs> Steve up, but they actually don't make those anymore. But anyway, the point is. <laughs> No, no, so what'd you get? No, it's more high end than that. And, and, and it flies. <laughs> it flies. <laughs> a unicorn in the truck. Like, yeah, like a child just lying. He can't, he can't control himself. I would love to know what it is. Oh, there's somebody, there's somebody who up. lives near him who has sent me photos. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so really? I'd love for that person to give me an update. If we're, we're in that old spot where the Mustang used to be, I'd love to know. Oh, you can find that out. Know, whatever it is, it's missing a blinker because I needed a comedy bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I can't make laughs anymore, but it's worth it for the laughs. <laughs> Jesus. I haven't made a left turn since the funny bone. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, this is... I love him. Uh, this is him at the end of the show. So I don't know if you know this, but he has his realtor license. Like he, oh, God, of he has so many like does. backup plans. Like he was like substitute teaching for a while and like sell houses and stuff. Like he wants to <laughs> pretend he's in the world of entertainment. He's obviously just not. I'm a notary republic. Well, this is great. So uh, Benny I Loco, have, have one of the real estate. one of the regulars, says, "Will you be my realtor?" And John explains that he he can do that. Come on, peeps, you can't get you can't have a better show. Oh, first he's patting himself on the back. This peeps thing, too. We got to remember this peeps. for the next deep fake video. He keeps saying Dude, the oh, peeps. peeps. Yeah, it's so stupid. Yeah, my my peeps. peeps just caught wind of this what? slang. Yeah, this this is slang from a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the correct. Kids are using it. I'll tell you, the kids are using it. It's it's it's, it's fat. It's, it's no. fat. You guys see this this peep the frog meme? <laughs> That's yeah. where I got it from. Peep the frog. <laughs> you can't get. <laughs> Come on, peeps. You can't get. You can't have a better show. Uh, Benny like Loco, Foster thanks Brooks. for the five bucks. <laughs> You're gonna be my realtor, what, John? Yes, I yes I will be if you want me to be. I do have my realtor license, uh, among many other freaking degrees. You know, I'm, all right, I'm pausing it. A realtor license is not a degree. Degrees. Oh my god. <laughs> among other degrees. Well, freaking degrees. <laughs> I worked for Century IQ twenty one. <laughs> That's like a great. They gave me an A. <laughs> my boss gave me an A on my quarterly. <laughs> I'm an incredibly smart guy in my own right. Uh, All right, he just said he's an incredibly smart guy. Now listen to what happens next. Uh, I, if I accidentally block people today, I'm sorry. Uh, kinky streets and five bucks. I thought you were the fake kinky streets. So he's been having this issue lately where he's blocking oh, yeah. people who support him. And so he says out loud, he goes, if I, if I blocked you, just sign in as a different name. I'm like, well, then why are you blocking people? If it's that easy, you just told the trolls how to get around this. <laughs> you moron. <laughs> he probably blocks them. They sign up for a new account. Then he unblocks them and goes, look how many people I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Genius. Genius. It's two people for every one person because he blocked them. You don't have to tell a friend, I'll make you two people. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's brilliant, it's I tell brilliant. you. Uh, oh, all right, so. Isn't that funny? John, brilliant. John seems to think that his show has a lot of reach. And I, I don't know that, that it's true. I think that maybe in his head, the show is a big deal and it's actually persuading people. But I don't know if that's true. <laughs> He explains this guy, Jeff Seitz, recently lost an election. And John's like, well, I asked him to do my show. You know, this one's kind of out of him. Yeah, well, Jeff Seitz, I've asked to come on the show. And oh, he blew God, me off. Sense. So it's just like, all right. You know, it's like, you know, you know, you know, I'm not saying that I'm the biggest show in the world. But, if, you know, if you're going to blow off, you know, these grassroots shows now, you know, I don't I don't think you're going to have a chance. And it happened with Maya Wiley, who was running for mayor in New York. I begged her to come on, kept giving me the blow off. And I was just like, you know what? Keep on blowing me off. It, it, it's it's silly because I have a big New York following. It's silly. She could dress up as Spider-Man in Times Square and talk to more people <laughs> than John Show would reach in New York City. <laughs> this is a, that's an insane thing to say. I, I told her to come on the show. I got a huge audience in New York, and then she lost the election. Yeah, yeah. We know where you're going with that, John. Yeah, I see. 
I, 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 I could put her in touch with a lot of people in New York. Correlation is not causation. No, no. His spit is, <sighs> is so disgusting. It's gross. You could hear its viscosity. <laughs> you could hear it. It's terrible. He's like a drooly dog. Like, if he was at my house, yeah. I'd be constantly, like, watching, like, what, what furniture is he sitting on? What do I got to clean up later? Oh, God, would he be getting a trip to the vet to get the old blue IV? There's <laughs> 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 a fucking dog. End it. End it already. It's over, Johnny. <laughs> yeah. How do I not have that drop on the board? It's over, Johnny. Nothing over. <laughs> oh, he is he is fantastic. The last thing I want to hear you say is uh, one more clip from John. I want to do this for days on end. Oh, I've, just I have good news clip. for you. I've, I'm overloaded with stuttering John clips. <laughs> so check this out. He's got this guy, Richard Ojeda, on the show. Now, Richard is on John's show, okay? John is interviewing Richard. Richard has his own show, but this is yeah. not Richard's show. This is John's show. And John decides to fish for a compliment while plugging his shows with a guest <laughs> on the show. I'm doing stand-up uh, in L.A. September 5th at the Roosevelt Hotel. I'll be in Florida August 20th at the Lake Park Black Box and the 21st at the Boca Black Box in Boca Raton, Florida. But, um, but uh, you know, I'm just telling you because, you know, I know you got a chance to see some of my work. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, man. Oh, no. So this guy came to his show when he had that show with Jay Moore. This guy was in Dude, L.A. he's fishing. So I know fishing. you've seen some of my work. Now yeah. go. Yeah, go let, let the people know. Great. Am. So the guy responds with, I wouldn't go to Florida if I were you because COVID is going to kill you and COVID's scary and, and Florida is scary. So then after that, John goes, oh, shit, that didn't work. So he starts plugging more of his shows that are coming up. That'll I am also going to be at the... Uh, uh, Laugh Factory in Reno headlining the show September 28th to October 3rd, and then and then at the Laugh Factory in Vegas October 25th through the 31st. I just thought I'd give those plugs out, and I'm about to book a bunch of other shows. Uh, uh, so you know, because I'm going out there. How do these guests continue to go on his show? What are they, they sit thinking? There and like you're supposed to plug the guests yes! when they're there. Yes! Like that's why they're there. It's quid pro quo. We all know it. Give me a little something and and you know some conversation, some interesting banter and I will repay you with some plugs so people might hear it and end up at your shows or watch your thing or buy your book whatever. He doesn't understand. You're not supposed to plug yourself. That's correct compoundmedia.com. <laughs> that is correct. Thank you. Thank that's you. how that works. Holy He's shit, this clueless. guy. clueless. And again, the, the fact that he worked with two of the most successful people in broadcasting history is beyond me and picked up nothing. Speaking of working for Howard Stern, so Howard had this brilliant idea. I'm going to send a stutterer with no self-confidence to go interview <laughs> celebrities. And no matter what the celebrity says, it's going to be funny because this guy stutters and has no self-confidence. John yeah. didn't realize that he was the bit. Like The, the, the bit is you, John. And every no, now no. and again, the celebrity would say something really? funny, and they're like, oh, this is awesome. Okay, great. It was a twofer, you know? Yeah, yeah. So John's plan. just didn't get it. Yeah, he, he still doesn't understand why that bit was funny and why he was the one sent out there. He's like, oh, I always ask questions. Like, okay. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> so John, uh, he explains that he's going to do this show where he's going to go out and interview these Republicans in the, in the way that he used to when he was on the Howard Stern show, but instead it's going to be political stuff. And he's got a whole plan for this, Ant. I'm going to get a flag that says the uh, uh, S SJP News. Okay, and, okay. And then if they say, you know, where is that oh. from? I'm going to say um, Kanaga, which is like Kanoga, because that's where I, you know, I am. And I, and hopefully they'll think it's Canada. I'm just well, you know, I, I just oh, I go with go with John Melendez because yeah, John you know, Melendez. This is John Melendez from SJP News. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, where's that broadcast? Canada. Anyway. Brilliant. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Confuse everybody. Wow. Did he just say, by the way, at the end, listen to this again. I think he says SGP. It's supposed to be Stuttering John Podcast. SJP. This is right. John is from SGP News. He can't even G fucking spit out his own fucking thing. <laughs> He's With like, all that spit, you think he could? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to fool all of them. I'm going to say I'm from Canopy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like 
he's coming up with this code. Yeah. Kanaga, it's Kano Like, why? What, what? What? What is there? A law that you can't just lie when <laughs> yeah. you're standing there? I Say know. it from CNN. Who gives a shit? Uh, you're no honor, gonna... I did mispronounce it, but it, it would be spelled the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> What a fucking dummy. That is hilarious. <laughs> he is so stupid. He's proud of himself, too. Oh, yeah, that he came up with a... That's like the, I got it all figured code, out. It's like the code in Rathacon. Do Hours would seem like days, Captain. Oh, we couldn't figure that one out. Well, amazing. Uh, all right, so... Stuttering John podcast from Kanaga. <laughs> John yeah. doesn't have anything Brilliant. bad to say about Howard. Except for the fact that he's constantly saying bad things about Howard. Yeah. No, I think Tim said. Oh, this is him talking about Tim Sabian told Tim Sabian. him how many people listen to Howard's show. Yeah. No, I think Tim said, I think he 10 million. Maybe he did say 18 million. Going from <laughs> 18 million radio listeners to under 800,000 on Sirius. Look, I have nothing against the man. I really what? don't. What? But, but if he shorty talks about one, my kids. <laughs> if any of you people think it's okay to rip your freaking fans off like that, then you're part of the problem. All right, a couple things here. So first <laughs> oh, off, yeah, yeah. first off, Ant, you were on SiriusXM. Yeah. Does Tim Sabian know how many people are listening to any shows? No, they don't. there's really no way to calculate how many people are listening at any time. Not just because uh, two people could be in a car at one time listening to one subscription or uh, you just there's no way to tell. It's a one way thing. They put right. the signal out and that's pretty much it. So Tim they, Sabian, don't, they don't have a clue. Tim Sabian maybe said this to John at some point, and I'm sure Howard's audience has definitely dwindled down. But the fact that he's throwing out numbers. 18 million, now it's 800,000. He was probably spitballing, and it was probably a private conversation that he was having with them. Yeah, you know, yeah. Tim Savian said, Howard Stern sucks now. Like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> guys used to work together. What are you doing? Yeah, Tim, Tim never uh, <laughs> bad-mouthed. Um, he said some things about Howard. He's He's got criticisms, but he's never just gone out and released numbers. or anything. I think he's probably under a confidentiality uh, agreement still. That's probably... Um, uh, it doesn't expire. You just got to keep your mouth shut uh, and you can't talk about business. So he hasn't given John these. Now, why would you give it to John? Who's going to ramble and babble about it anyway. Tim hasn't been an employee of Sirius in over five years. I mean, yeah, he's, yeah. he's been, at, he was at Westwood one. He might still be there. Although hiring Opie, I, hopefully he got fired for that one, but oh God, yeah, <laughs> but I don't think he's with Westwood anymore. Yeah, I don't though. think he no. is. So, so why would Tim know anything? Also yeah. on top of that, so the other thing that I want to talk about is in this segment, and it, it's a long segment where he's just bashing Howard. He says, a TMZ interviewed me. I was out on a date. This is so funny. I'm out on a date. Date's great. Went really well. And then I got to uh, go and get to the ATM to pay for the parking. And then uh, TMZ is there, and they're asking me about Howard taking the summer. See, I'm, I talk too fast when I do. I don't say you know. Either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't say you know when I talk too fast. So he's got this whole thing, and TMZ's asking him why, what he thinks about Howard taking off the summer, and he's got this great joke, and he, he repeats it multiple times. Oh, he said no. it to TMZ. He talks about it on the show. He's that, spending the time in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> the comedy of threes. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> you tell the joke once, and then twice, and then the third time it crushes. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm gonna that's a fucking funny stand up bit. I'm gonna try that. So uh <laughs> so insane. So he says to them, he goes, That would be like if you got a Netflix subscription and then they stopped all programming for two months. Like everyone would be outraged about that. Well, yeah. Yeah, except for the fact that Sirius has, like, hundreds of channels. Yeah, you still got your 80s on age. <laughs> and you're not signing a contract. You can no. cancel anytime. You can cancel. That's why when he said, you know, if you like uh, Howard ripping you off. It's right. Like, what's he coming into your house and stealing the subscription money? And you subscribe to it. You could just stop subscribing. You can stop at any time. 
I yeah. did it when Anthony Cumia was fired. I was like, well, fuck these you, assholes. Sir. I'm not going to listen to them anymore. <laughs> and then I did that thing where you create a new email address and get the free thing every month for a while. Get the so. free <laughs> anyway. So, yeah. yeah, who cares? It's very easy to get it free. So, John is so proud of this thing that he said on TMZ, which I'm sure they didn't use. <laughs> I'm sure they had better things to talk about on TMZ. But. <laughs> They're fucking with him. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if TMZ went up to him and said, why are you famous? It's the microphone filled with bubble gum. <laughs> They're just like, let's see if he falls for it again. John, what did you do with the money? They should have asked him that. <laughs> 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 they got the microphone that, that goes to the FM dial on the car. What is that? Mr. Microphone or oh, Magic yeah, yeah, Microphone? Yeah. Or something. Microphone. Oh, hey, good looking. We'll be back to pick you up later. <laughs> <laughs> Was that on your show, Anthony? You were watching that recently? Yeah, yes. The old commercials. <laughs> so fucking... Sexually harassing women with a toy microphone. <laughs> awesome. With the Mr. Microphone, you can catcall and more. <laughs> Oh, okay, let's let's get through this. Mm. You can do it. All right. So he's talking about his date. He's on this date with this girl, and <sighs> the girl points out. But first date, the girl points out that he missed a few spots shaving. <laughs> oh shit! And the reason why this is so funny to me is because we've all seen the new publicity photos that uh, <laughs> our friend of his nose. our friend Chrissy Mayer <laughs> enhance enhance <Love> enhance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chrissy Mayer <laughs> tweeted. That, the photo of him and zoomed in on his nose hair, which is outrageous. And I loved yeah. Chrissy's tweets. Like, this guy was making fun of my looks for months. So, John looks terrible. He does not know how to shave. And apparently his date pointed this out. Oh, it's funny. On the date, I'm with the girl. And she's like, John, you know, you missed a, a few spots here shaving. This, I go, did I? I thought I did a good job there. No, you got some over here, up there on top, and then over here on top. I go, oh, no, man. Really? Yeah. Turns out I did. There is one thing I hate more. There's nothing I hate more than shaving. Well, you know. Bathing. You know, having to deal with <laughs> right-wing lunatics. Roaches. <laughs> the yeah, only thing yeah, I hate yeah. more than shaving are uh, cockroaches and bed bugs. <laughs> Roaches. Uh, green screen stands that won't work. <laughs> Clipping toenails. <laughs> <laughs> so... The this is the last clip I'm going to play. This is uh -huh. the the thing that you don't do when you're in Hollywood. And God bless John for not understanding this at all. He lists the people who he hates. All right. This is the list of people that John despises. The worst people, human beings. Number one, <laughs> Chelsea Handler. Okay. The worst person ever on the face of this planet. Number two, Jesus. Sasha Barr and Cohen. Okay. Complete idiot. Uh. Number three, Bob Smigel. Two of the latter stole the stuttering John act. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. And I think there was one more. <laughs> I think there's one more person I, I hate. Forget I'm the not a numbers guy, but. Uh, wait. Oh. Ryan Seacrest. Oh, oh. Another douchebag. The most successful guy yeah, in Prague. Elitist yeah. prick. <laughs> Good point. There's my list. Oh, my God. I'll be back on Saturday. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he wraps up his show. Yeah. By the way, the guy who produces more television programming than anyone else is an asshole. I'll be back on him. Saturday. He's a douchebag. And Sasha you do that backwards? Stole the stuttering John model. I put the boar in boar rat. <laughs> <laughs> they stole that from me. <laughs> God damn it. Holy shit, he's the worst. What is he doing? Like, I, Chelsea Handler, what's she going to do? Like, I get it, okay. She's sure. Everyone thinks she's an asshole. Yes. But what, like, what was that? Just, uh... I'm going to do a David Letterman top 10 list, only uh, people I hate. Robert Smigel? Like, why even bring that up? Because he just wanted to say that yeah, Triumph the Insult Comic Dog stole his bit. Like, that's not your bit. It's not your bit. It's not your bit, John. No, and neither is a, a, a list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you also end with number one, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, my top 10. Number one <laughs> is. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> now stick around. You're going to love 10. Coming up, number three. 
the anti-climatic podcast. <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back after these words with number 10. <laughs> You're what? not going to want to miss number 10. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so stick around. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Um, oh, he's brilliant. I love stuttering John. Me too. God, it is, in the context of who are these podcasts, he's one of the greatest shows ever. You know what You know what got him really pissed off at me? Uh, well, many people times. People lying you know, about he, you talking about his kids. Lying. Say, yeah. <laughs> Trolls. If he said that, I'll kill him. I'll shoot him in the head. I'm going to stop him. I'm gonna... And then the next day, uh, I found out he didn't. So forget it. <laughs> Forget what I said. Forget the violence I was invoking on. Like, and I, I played those. I played those clips, Ed, but it went on for an hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were antagonizing him for an hour, just like yo, cool me I'll, I'll be in New York. I'll look the him trolls, up. They Jesus. know how to get to him, man. They sure do. So, so I, I would have poker games over my house, yep. and at one point, Stuttering John was uh, here. He did my show, and uh, we were having a poker game. It's like John, come over and play poker, you know. Uh, so he comes over, but he's got a friend of his that drives him to my house. Okay. So it's him and his friend and they come over and his friend is like, uh, is like waiting on the guy, getting his beers, buying his beers. John ran out of money. The friend had to go to his own ATM account, take money out, come back and give it to John. And it was just like, and John got all plastered drunk. He's trying to pick up on my girlfriend and everything it's just he's just a, a disgusting you, uh, you come mess. here often sweetie yeah i live here yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah let me let me take you away from this virtual hell <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. So i'll be in the pool when you can fucking tell me uh, what we're doing so, so uh we have kind of a blowouty thing and I, I goofed on his comedy act at uh, one of the clubs on long island yeah him and this same friend were uh, listening to my show and John's like, yeah, yeah. He's going to talk about, you know, the gig last night. Let's hear what he said. Literally live. They're listening. And I get on and I'm like, well, it was uh, easy to find parking. That's for sure. I, <laughs> yeah. I go, I've never parked at this club. I was right at the front door, the first spot. I go, the whole lot was empty. It was a And, uh, then we're just goofing on John's act. It wasn't funny. Yeah. Uh, and he just blows up. Fuck this guy. Fuck that fuck. So his friend, just starts coming for the poker games. And this is years ago. And that guy is now like one of our group's closest friends. Oh, no shit. <laughs> and John hates it. <laughs> you go leave there because of me. Oh, I brought you here. Oh, Who the fuck are you to say I'm here because of you? <laughs> it was, it's classic. Yeah, we still hang out. We still play poker. We, we goof on John relentlessly. I was going to say, I'm guessing that guy and John are not tight anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's like, and then he goes, he says to me, because we ask him, he goes, why the fuck were you hanging out with the guy? Because yeah. he's such a douche. And he goes, I know, man, but like I grew up around here and it's it's stuttering John. You thought like, yeah. oh, I'm going to hang out with stuttering John. It's just, what an asshole. <laughs> I hear that from a lot of people. People who yes. who try to get into stuttering John's show, they're like, yeah, but the Howard Stern years. And, and I get it, man. I love yeah. stuttering John too. Uh, I heard Dr. Yeah, Steve yeah. talking about this just the other day. He's like, well, I mean, he made some great radio. We can all agree on that. But this current version of Stuttering John, like that's at a certain point, people are going to totally forget about the Howard Stern years. And this is the yeah, only yeah. thing we're going to remember about Stuttering John is yeah. this it's lunatic version. The legacy is happening. Yes. When he, uh, when he talks, there's a lot of uh, fluid comes out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Dr. Steve. <laughs> I had Dr. Steve do a cameo. For my wife for her birthday. Now, oh, a cameo God, from Dr. Steve. Great. Now, he offered it for free, but I said, no, I want to do this through cameo. $7.49. I was like, I, I have it. I can do it. You saved and That's saved. A bargain. <laughs> I know. It's so, he's got such a distinct voice. That's and, great. And the way it's, it's cadence and everything. That's who you kind of want uh, in a cameo. That's oh, yeah. funny. No, he's fantastic, but... He did the cameo. I, care, I am uh, willing to assist at a hospice. So I, I gave him a few pointers, you know, like you do on cameo. So he did it, and I, I played it for my wife. He didn't say the word fluid, and I, oh, I wrote him back. God. I said, "Is this the first cameo you've ever done without saying fluid?" He's like, "Holy shit, you're right." <laughs> Fuck that. He goes, oh. "He goes, you want me to do it again?" I'm like, "No, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine, but I'm only paying three dollars." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so cameo. I need my money back. <laughs> you want fluid? <laughs> Um, so, real quick, just because you have the inside scoop. So, Stuttering John, I believe, drank all of your tequila that night. 
at the poker game. Oh, he drinks, yeah, he drinks, uh, drank all the tequila. I'm and guessing beers. it's decent tequila. He fucking, yeah, oh yeah, it was uh, all all the best, top shelf stuff. Yep. And uh, John uh, went through that. He rented our studio out to yeah. do his show once here yep. in New York. And it's our crew. We didn't even charge him. It, it, it was our crew doing the work. And uh, they're staying extra hours to do it. He tapes it, drinks all the fucking alcohol in the place, runs through the beer that I think he was actually chugging the anisette I used for espresso <laughs> in, in the fucking, like anything that was left, rubbing alcohol. And, and, and then he didn't tip the staff. Like you, you toss, you're getting it for free. Yeah. You'd think you'd toss the guys work in the, the booth uh, a few bucks. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. He is the biggest skin flint cheapskate. I, I mean, that's that's insane that he would think that he just deserves that type of treatment. Yeah, that's what it is. He's 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 entitled because yeah. Howard Stern, Jay Leno. So this is this is what I, this is the reason why I brought that up is because I do mm -hmm. like to remind myself as much as we goof on John that he deserves it. Like we, yes. There's nothing that we can do to goof on this guy that he doesn't totally deserve in every single way. Right, right. It's it's. I, I start feeling sorry for these people sometimes, and then I just say fuck it. If they're making people miserable around them, so fuck them. So um, listen, Doug. Yeah. You have places to go, things to be. Mm. Things but, to be. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but unfortunately. We have just one more segment here. That, by the way, is a PJ original, I want to say. He wrote all the lyrics to that. I always want to do the ho and hey during that, but I know that's Croce's thing. That's so only I, Croce. I won't do he, it. He I gets know, into I know. it, too. He yeah. fucking does a backflip off the table. <laughs> <laughs> he should be here. It's insane. Uh, so the best is when Stuttering John forgets his green screen. Because he comes on the show and he does his whole like intro, world famous podcaster, and then he looks into the screen and realizes that you can see his shithole apartment. <laughs> He's like, there's so many boxes. Sorry. <laughs> so this is how his episode started the other day. Yeah, baby. Oh, where is my green screen? How dare me? There we go. There. How are we, everybody? Welcome to the world famous <laughs> Stuttering John podcast. There we go. <laughs> There's my LA ground. <laughs> it's, oh. it's incredible because you just see him trying to like get it centered behind him. And he's talking off the mic. Hi, hey, everybody. How's everybody doing today? We're going to be starting the show. World famous. <laughs> world famous. He's got a guest on. This uh, Sophia Tusfe from Salon Magazine. And she lives in D.C. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Southern John needs your super chats and your PayPals so he can buy airfare to D.C. Because he's going to do this cool ass bit where he interviews Republicans and ask them crazy how long questions. Until he, oh, sorry. No, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, how long until he gives up on this? Stop talking about it. <laughs> a great question that's a great question but anyway so he knows he's gonna be in, at dc and sophia lives there so guess what question he asks her can you guess oh uh i i know the answer go ahead and play the clip thank you so much uh, sophia and when i'm in dc let's go grab a beer sounds great take care <laughs> all right i'll see you, sophia the great Bye -bye. sophia I, I could get you some comped beer tickets i mean <laughs> buy you a beer Nope. Carl, that... I'm kind of glad I didn't answer because I was going to say he wanted to crash on our couch. <laughs> no, he always wants to get a beer with everyone. And <laughs> I don't think it's ever worked. No. I mean, she, I, she sounded sincere. I mean, right? I could ask Chrissy. Maybe she has grabbed a beer with him. I don't know. <laughs> so he's talking about how he's trying to hire Jackie Martling to write jokes for him that he'll ask the politicians, because that's what he used to do back on the Howard Stern show. <laughs> Jackie would write the jokes, and he would then ask Ringo Starr or whoever, right? 
Billy Crystal. Does, does he understand that hiring requires paying someone money? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he thinks that Jackie is a crazy person for not taking him up on this offer. Shorty one, I inquired about Jackie. I guess Jackie doesn't want to do it. I can't get into the world of Jackie. I love Jackie the Joke Man, but I can't get into the crazy world of Jackie the Joke Man. I offered him money. He hasn't responded. God bless him. I have no hard feelings, but if he doesn't want to do it, it would have been a nice a nice paycheck for him. But if he doesn't want to do it, he doesn't want to do it. He's not the only person that could write creative and funny questions. Trust me, I worked with the best on The Tonight Show. And believe me, they are a talented group of people. And some of my friends who are comedians uh, are a talented group of people as well. So, And of course, I am a very talented person, Richard. All right couple things i want to point out here first off so you heard at the end there this whole rant he's going on richard is the guest on his show during this time john yes. has gone to treating his guests as co-hosts now <laughs> he's doing his plugs and they're just they're just staring at him and he's talking about i'm trying to hire jackie he goes jackie's crazy world where he doesn't get back to a lunatic alcoholic yeah that has no money offering to pay him money for jokes it's like of course jackie didn't get back to you he told you he'd never talk to you again yes you guys are on the outs i, I, yeah, we I remember tried to pay jackie it. in uh blue chew uh and coarse <laughs> lights he hasn't gotten back to me yet also all those writers on leno listen i uh just want you to know that i tried to get somebody before you he turned <laughs> me down yeah and then later on he's talking about these writers again and he goes the writers on The Tonight Show, I'm not going to say if they're past or present. That show's not on <laughs> anymore. What past, are you talking God about? Damn it. <laughs> the show moved to New York. He's such an idiot. <laughs> he doesn't want to out the writers who are willing to work with them for some reason. Like, it's your not? loss. Your loss. <laughs> so, so then he's talking about how he's, he needs money for the plane tickets, but also to pay the writers. Thanks for the donation. Everything helps. Uh I got to book the flights to D.C. and uh, and pay some of the riders. G. Cutter, because I really want to be prepared for everybody. I've been sending out lists to a bunch of riders. Going to have a meeting with a bunch of my comic friends. Do a, uh, a, uh, a think tank there. A think tank? <laughs> Senator <laughs> John's going to get together with his friends. Tank. I don't think so. <laughs> for a think tank? <laughs> that's that's not what it means when you have a comedy writing session. It's not a think tank. Think tank. We're going to figure out <coughs> global warming and the economy and write some jokes in our think tank. <laughs> Holy shit, he's stupid. Because if you're in Florida now, I just had a podcast I was supposed to do. You know, thankfully they paid me anyway, but they were paying me and they're flying me out. Uh, to do a podcast, cancel because of the concerns over the Delta variant. People in Florida are dying. So he explains that the podcast he was going to be on was canceled because of COVID. But you never have to be somewhere to podcast with someone. No. I have no fucking idea where Doug lives. Or do I care? Right, it's probably good. <laughs> it's probably a good thing for Doug. I was expecting him to go, uh, uh, they canceled, uh, they had concerns about me being a guest. <laughs> You're right. That's what I mean. I need to know why the podcast he was going to be on that they already prepaid him for, which is unheard of. Yeah, it's bonkers. Canceled no, on him happen. because of COVID. Like, you can podcast from anywhere, John. You're mm -hmm. doing that with your guests right now. What are you talking about? Everyone's dying in Florida, and that's why it was canceled. Patty Seacups said his closet wasn't big enough for the two of us to fit in, but he still paid me airfare to Gary, Indiana. You know what my thought was on that? Because he does have a couple stand-up shows out in Florida. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, because he said something about comped airfare. I'm wondering if he got booked to do a thing, and then they paid his airfare, and then they canceled. And he's like, yeah, but I'm keeping the airfare. <laughs> like, that was his payment. I don't care if people are dying. <laughs> Yeah, I know he's so concerned about Florida. Meanwhile, he's going to do two stand-up shows it's a there. black box. Don't forget to come up and get an autograph and a selfie with yours truly. 
Uh, Carl, I don't know if you know this or not, but you can't spread COVID if nobody's there. <laughs> right. Yes, I do know that. He'll be fine. There is a guy uh, on Twitter who said the clubs are right near his house and he wants to buy a cockroach costume and go to the club. And I said, you should definitely do that. Oh, and shoot please video. do that. That'd be amazing. He was asking if that was punching down. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, just do it. You mean like it would offend roaches? or? <laughs> <laughs> there might be cockroaches at that club. <laughs> <laughs> what are you calling us out? Uh, so he goes to, um, oh, before I get there. So getting back to this co the comedy thing where he's got the think tank coming up with all these names. He's already got a bunch of hilarious names for these politicians. Get ready for this. Get ready to hold your sides, everybody. Mm -hmm. So as we really narrow these down from Marjorie Trailer Green and Matt Gates. Uh, Gates uh, gets to go to jail, and then we got like so many Lauren Bozo and Kevin Kevin McDickhead and Mitch McChinless. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be stuttering John on the warpath, man. <laughs> Marjorie Trailer Green, <laughs> what? That was actually the only clever one out of any of these. Exactly. I did like Mitch McDickless, which he did not use. I, I kind of enjoyed that one. So it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't. None of this makes not, any sense. It's not a good joke. But I love that he tries to get this joke out and just fails miserably. And Matt Gates, Matt G uh, Gates <laughs> uh, gets to go to jail. And then <laughs> Matt Gates gets to go to jail. You know, that old chestnut. Gates, idiot. no, wait, not, not his real name. Hold on. I'm uh, a little confused right now. I may be drunk. So uh, he's talking about. He went out to Pickwick Pub and ran into a fan. And the fan was super stoked to see the legend that is Stuttering John Melendez. Deb Thomas, because I'm a man of my word, from London, UK in the house. I hang out at the English pub. It was so funny. I was there yesterday. And this huge fan of mine, this guy named Michael, was sitting there. And when I sat next to him, he just kept going on about what a cultural icon I am. And it was great because all my English what? buddies were there. And he kept on going on and on. And they're getting annoyed, but I'm loving it. He's like, he's like I should stop. I go, no, please don't. <laughs> and he just kept going. I finally took a picture with him after he bought me like two or three beers. He was a little tipsy, I think. If he says a fan bought him two or three beers, it was four or five. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. No, he had four or five. He paid for two or three of them himself. So this guy is telling John how great he is. And he's like, yeah, okay, keep going. Keep going. Wouldn't you get embarrassed at some point? Be like, all right, buddy, listen, it's great to meet you. You know, I'm hanging out with my friends here. He's like, hey, yeah. everybody, listen to this guy praise me for the next two hours. <laughs> what an embarrassment. And then he brags about it. Can I tell you a quick story that makes you look good and me look like an asshole? Finally. Um, my daughter, she, uh, I had to pick her up from ballet class, so I'm sitting in the parking lot there, and I'm listening to your show. It's decent weather out here. Windows are down. Your show's on. The guy parked next to me says to me, he's like, who are these podcasts? I love that show. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. How long have you been listening? And he's like, oh, a long time and everything like that. And I, like an asshole, I'm like, hey, uh, I'm a nice Doug. Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> and then I go, uh, maybe like Doug from Good Times, Great Movies. Nothing. It was oh, the no. most embarrassing. And then I just sit next to this guy for another 10 minutes waiting for our kids to get out. <laughs> <laughs> you slowly just turn it down. You're like, yeah. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. my favorite story I've ever heard. <laughs> He's like, yeah, but do you know Kaya? <laughs> Have you met right. Kaya? <laughs> I talked to him once. I, I don't know. <laughs> it seemed pretty cool. Oh, Doug. Doug, I love you. You're that big fat loser, right? I'm like, damn it. No, it's the other Doug. I love that show you do with Anthony. It's so, that's such a great show. Like, Yeah, who is right, by the way? Can I get your autograph? You're like, you're like writing Doug from Who's Right. Yeah, yeah, here you go. <laughs> Anthony's the best, I know. Um, all right, so this is the uh, amount of prep that Centering John does. You don't believe me, you ass white? Let me play you something, Ron Death Sentence. And Jim Abbott, you maniac. Unfreaking believable. Let's get through the commercial here. 
Sorry. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Just get through the commercial. Uh, oh, no. This is not the clip I wanted. What the hell? <laughs> Damn you. All right. That's not the clip. That's something else. That's a whole nother thing. I'll just tell you what the clip was. Epic fail. <laughs> Do you know how easy it is to have the subjects you want to hit on and then the link on your notes you just click on and get to oh, the right video? Even I Jim, know that. Also, like Jim Abbott, not Jim Asshat. Like, I will, <laughs> I will write for you, John. I will write for you. Oh, yeah, I know. And, and so he's calling out uh, Ron DeSantis. What, what did he call him? Ron, Ron death death sentence. sentence. Uh, Ron death sentence, I think he said. Yes. Because everyone in Florida is dying. Sorry. So I just want to put, point out, and I'm not trying to be uh, political here. But his level of politics is so bad. Like, I, I enjoy shows where there's two competent people debating their sides of things. And you can learn from both sides and understand their point of view. And mm -hmm. honestly, sure. if you don't understand your opponent's point of view, then you shouldn't be debating in the first place. Because you got to understand where they're coming from and, and why what you think is the better answer would be better. And mm -hmm. so John talks about how is it that Ron DeSantis is still the governor and yet we have a recall for Gavin Newsom. How and why are we dealing with the recall here of Gavin Newsom, who is a credible, a credible governor, who these woke right-wing loons want him recalled because he wanted us to quarantine. He wanted us to wear masks. And all these right-wing asswipes, some of them insurrectionists, want Gavin Newsom to be recalled. So I don't live in California, and um, I, I don't follow this as closely as I'm sure Stuttering John does. But mm -hmm. um, does he know why people don't like Gavin Newsom or is he is he playing dumb? Is is he does he legitimately not understand why there's a no, recall he, going on? You you're talking like you've never listened to his show before. He doesn't <laughs> understand anything. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I do love that he called them woke right wing lunatics. Yeah, I know. What's, I he, what, what's that that's, mean? Does he mean anything? That's wild. That is awesome, and it makes no sense, and I love it. Anyway, I don't have to go any further into that. That's how stupid he is. That he mm -hmm. does not understand politics in, in any single way, obviously. And that's what his whole show is about. <laughs> oh, my God. So Richard Ojeda, the co-host of the Centering John show now, is going to be on Bill Maher. And someone in the chat wrote, OJ is going to be on Bill Maher. And Centering John goes, what? Oh, they're going to have OJ on Bill Maher? And Richard goes, yeah, on September 24th. <laughs> that's the day you're on. He goes, I'm OJ. So Ojeda. Starts with an O and a J. John is so fucking stupid. <laughs> Why not play the uh, alternate jingle as well? Comes in from Doug from the Jingles Department. Thank you so much, Doug. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Stuttering John Melendez. He had an interesting uh, Beer on the Balcony episode recently. John explains what a troll is. Because he is not a troll, but he explains what they are. Oh, getting back to the fact, am I a troll? No. Uh, the, here's the difference between me and a troll. A troll hides behind a phony name. They sit on their armchair on a shitty uh, basement at the mom's house and are bullies. But they know that nobody knows who they are. So they could be assholes and 
they have complete anonymity. <laughs> <laughs> they have anonymity. You know, kind of like Joseph Kelly and yeah. Reddit and Maple Leaf fan on Twitter. You know, John Sock accounts yeah. where he has anonymity. Uh, mm-hmm. Am I a troll? I did live under a bridge once. <laughs> I did ask you to solve these questions three. <laughs> I don't ever want to feel like I did that day. So when he pronounced anonymity in that way, it gave me an idea. The anonymity. The anonymity. The anonymity. Wow. Oh, shit. The jingles department is killing it. It's <laughs> so Ooh. stupid. Does, is someone coming to, to the live show dressed as a cockroach? To John's show, yes. Someone's, oh, all right. Someone's going to John's stand up show. <laughs> oh, right, right. His stand up show. That's right, right. Yes. And hopefully, I don't know if they're going to walk in dressed as a cockroach or what they're planning on doing. But that's so Walk funny. out with cockroaches. <laughs> so fucking funny. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, there's one right there! He just freaks out. <laughs> this guy followed me all the way here. <laughs> I said plus one. <laughs> so, so John is drunk out of his mind, and he is so bitter at this point. I have a series of clips here where he's talking about the reason why he's not a troll is because when he would go up to celebrities and ask them trolling questions... He wasn't disguising himself. People knew who he was. That's the big difference. And uh, he explains that other people have copied him. That's not what I did. That's not what Sasha Baron Cohen did. And that's not what Triumph, the insult dog. The two ladders stole the whole thing from me. And both Bob Smigel and Sasha Baron Cohen don't even have the fucking integrity and respect to you know you know give me like a kudos they don't and i'm not looking for it I, I, you're not <laughs> that's all you're talking about <laughs> yeah he needs credit for asking celebrities ridiculous questions yeah man on the street was not fucking invented by stuttering john melendez yeah and also what john's stick was was invented by Howard Stern if it was invented by anybody. But this is yeah. nothing new. This is not a new concept. And the fact he's comparing himself to comedians who come up with things to say in the conversation off the cuff because they're funny, whereas John had jokes written for him by Fred and Jackie that he had to just read. So they should at least, at the very least, say, you know what? It was stuttering John's gig in the beginning. He's, and Howard told me, John, you did it the best. He told me that at his house in Southampton, you were the best at it. I, and Howard told me I was also the best at cupping the balls. <laughs> he said, John, you were the best at sweeping up outside at my, at my <laughs> house. You were, you were the best at using the Swiffer in the living room when you needed to. He thinks that Sasha Baron Cohen and Robert Smigel should give him credit for their careers, is what he just said. He thinks he's more talented than these guys. And this, this comes off as just bad. This is just a bitter drunk. And this is the kind of thing you don't want to stream on the internet. But you get assholes like these fucking, you know, Ali G. Yeah, Sasha Baron Cohen, fuck off. Did you make more money at it than me? Yeah. Because I had Howard Stern paying me pennies. Does Bob Smigel, you know, you know, make my money with Trump? You are me, only with a fucking puppet, you fucking prick. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Is anybody, is anybody watching this and taking his side of this? Like, oh, dude. First of all, the Ali G character and everything else that Sasha Baron Cohen has done is brilliant. Comparing yourself to him is something no comedian would do. No. What he's pulled off is unbelievable. Yes. And the fact that Stuttering John thinks that he's even in the same fucking league as this guy, who's putting, who's developing characters, n- nothing that Stuttering John did. It's not even close. He's making movies, developing characters, he had a TV show. What are you talking about, John? I don't, I don't have to explain this to you, but I, I have to explain this to you. That's so stupid. 
And Robert Smigel is one of the most brilliant comedy writers of our time. And he's going, oh, this guy just had a, a puppet. He was just me with a puppet. Like, no, no. He was in Let me tell with you. Puppet. Let me tell you about this goddamn guy. All right. Uh, <laughs> yes. Please do. Yeah. This fucking guy, all right. He tries to say that I ripped him off. Oh, I ripped the Triumph the comic talk. He ripped me off. No, uh, no, I did not rip you off. <laughs> I don't have anything. <laughs> I just wanted to do the triumph. No, I, 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 I love your triumph because I happen to know that you walk around your house talking to your dogs and giving yeah. them a triumph voice all day long. I have, I have three dogs and they all <laughs> sound like triumph. Yes. Yeah. I mean, even just for the fact that triumph had a catchphrase makes him yeah. far and away funnier than anything John's ever done. Yeah. Well, he's got gabiga. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. I yeah. forgot. I forgot what he had. Uh, Don't count him out, you know. Yeah, when he had Sharon Stone, and he was asking her question, he was like, Hey, Sharon Stone, Gagia! Gagia's! <laughs> oh, you'll be excited to know, John's show prep is on point. So this is a guy who's bitter that he didn't make as much money as Robert Smigel and Sasha Baron Cohen. And so what is he doing with his life now that Howard Stern isn't paying him peanuts and he can actually just do his own thing? This is a longer clip, but I'm going to let it play, and... Uh, I want to give props to uh, Joe Namath, NYJ4, in the uh, Dabbler subreddit. He wrote, this will have you on the edge of your seat. Um, uh, let's see. There was somebody else who wrote something. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, let's see here. If you want to watch a little oh, bit of it with me, uh, we can. Could, could you uh, make that a master of puppets? <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 <laughs> let me just, as soon as we, this thing comes up. Uh, oh, wait, this is, this is not the, this is not the speech. This is some idiot from, uh, let's oh. see. I'm trying to find the speech itself so we can actually hear a little bit of it uh, before we get Hal in here. Uh, this guy is a fucking see. moron. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, is he still live? Let's see. When you step into your living room and dining room. This should be it. And we'll watch this for a little bit. Uh, let's see. Grandpa, you're boring. Pulling it up here. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. Oh. Cardiff, if you want to come out and defend this man, you just heard that clip. Are you there, Cardiff Electric? Hello? Hello? What's up, buddy? This is my new friend, Cardiff Electric. I was just on the show. Hey. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, so you're the guy. You're the SJ Army guy. You, you started the whole movement. I took it over. What do you like about What do you like about this guy's show? Did you hear that two minutes of him going, ah? Did you hear that? Well, obviously, you took that out of context. <laughs> Okay. Did he say, guys, this is my impression of the worst show you could possibly put on and then do that? Possibly. Possibly. No, he didn't. <laughs> I watched it. He didn't. Maybe I should start clipping your show and finding all the embarrassing flubs that you do. You should. I encourage it. And by the way, Cardiff Electric, you're a far superior podcaster to Stuttering John. I enjoy your show. I don't even know why you like this guy. You're better than him. Did you listen to our interview that we did? I was there. <laughs> I talked to you that, that in real time. That is great. true. Thank you. you. Cardiff Electric, do you do the movie phone? Are you movie phone voice? <laughs> that... I am Dr. Remulek. Why don't you tell me what you would like to see? <laughs> is this Brian Johnson? This is uh, my buddy Kevin. <laughs> Sounds like Brian Johnson. 
Well, I uh, wasn't able to get a, a get this week, so we got Kevin. Yeah, yeah. They're, you're stuck with me, assholes. <laughs> you also got the Cardiff Electric podcast. Well, that's true. One of the biggest podcasts in the world, so that's exciting. Cardiff, what am I getting wrong, buddy? I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the floor for a second. Go for it. Well, I think as we discussed yesterday, Stuttering John has successfully conquered all the media, and you're obviously jealous of him. So I thought we agreed Packard? that you weren't going to do these segments anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. I you you had me convinced, and then some something happened. I woke up this morning and I went, "Oh, that that's right. This that does suck. I got to keep talking about it." My bad. And please don't forget to play my ad. I already did play your ad. I fell asleep. <laughs> you were taking a little siesta today. <laughs> uh, yes, I had to get up early to finish editing the interview. Gotcha. Classic I didn't, Cardiff. I didn't hear. I, I don't know if there's a lot of editing in your show. I never hear any editing going on, which is part of the charm, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I, the best. I am fucking confused as shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. I'm going to let you go. I mean, you do bring it. I love your energy, but uh, I got to get back to talking about these Cedric John clips that I have, if that's cool. Oh, bello. <laughs> All right, you you guys are ready to hear the story of um, John's trans son. Now, I don't talk about John's kids, but John's talking about his kids, so I'm going to talk about him talking about it. Uh, This is a teary-eyed, drunk stuck Joe telling us about the time that his son explained that he's a man in a woman's body. And you'll be shocked to know that John's the hero of the story. After I got off the phone with my son, right before we got off, he said, Dad, as liberal as you are, I couldn't imagine this conversation going any better. I said, thanks, my son. I love you. I'll always love you. Skull. <laughs> my son told me, you are the most progressive person I've ever met, and I'm a trans person, and I think you're the most progressive person I've ever met. Jesus Christ, John. <laughs> How does he make that about him? Oh, Jesus, because everything's about him, of course. (laughs) What a fucking asshole. All right. He's talking about Pickwick Pub and his friends over at the Pickwick Pub. And he explains that he has very, very close friends. Now, remember, this is the neighborhood bar that he frequents with other people who drink during the day. Listen, I'm not shaming anyone for that. But this is not where you make lifelong friends, in my opinion. Because I do have a lot of very, very close friends. And very good friends at the pub. And that's a fact, Jack. Okay. <laughs> okay. So he's talking about these these friends that he has that are they're really close and just, you know, they're, they're, they're really connected with each other. And he has this one story about playing cornhole with one of his friends. Now, before I play that, this is him explaining what cornhole is. Kevin, are you familiar with the, the game cornhole? Yeah. 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 Shit, yeah. You know, I'm familiar with, with cornhole. Okay. John explains to us why it's called what it's called, and I think he's confused. We were talking about the game cornhole. Now, if you want to know the reason why they call it cornhole, it's because it's a hole, and the sacks that you throw used to be, be made out of dried corn kernels, hence the cornhole. Cornholio, beavis and butthead, you got it. That's cornhole. Hmm. Wait a second. So the, the he did have it right, and then he goes, you know, just like Beavis and Butthead cornholio. Like, no, that was about a cornhole. That was about an asshole. He needs TP for his bunghole. What are you talking about? You get it. Just like Beavis and Butthead. I was what? trying to get more listeners. <laughs> what are you talking about? Not to be confused with bunghole. <laughs> I don't know why he decided to slip that in. You know, like cornholio from Beavis and Butthead. No, that's, that's the opposite Wait, of what you're trying to explain right now. So, wait a minute. The bags were made? Did he say the bags were made out of No, corn? they had they had corn kernels inside them. Oh, all right. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, they were tortillas that you were chucking out oh, the Oh, clear. <laughs> you think they I were live too close tortillas. to Mexico. Everything is tortilla <laughs> down here. Fair enough. Uh, although the corn tortilla far superior to the flour tortilla. No way, dude. What? No fucking way. My wife and a and lot of her family, Mexican, yeah. all flour tortilla. Really? Pro flour tortilla. I think I'm more yeah. Mexican than your wife and in-laws. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's an insane thing. 
All right, I got to play this clip. It's it's long. We'll pause it. We'll we'll get through it together. But this is this confrontation that he had with this guy Eric at the pub. So he's friends with this guy Eric at the pub. They play cornhole together. And Eric is a school teacher. He brings this, this up multiple times. I don't know if he's trying to dox him or what he's trying to do, but this is insane. I said it was fun playing cornhole. And he goes, yeah, not bad for a retard. Now, okay. Me personally, I don't use that language. Sorry. In the old days, yeah, it was an acceptable term. Just like Oriental was an acceptable term for an Asian. Guess what? The world changes. Thank you, Kinky. Yes, a teacher used that word. And as far as I'm concerned. So the teacher goes, he goes, hey, that's a pretty good game of corner. He's like, yeah, not bad for a retard, which is funny. <laughs> he says to John. And John's all offended by it because he can't say it anymore. That word should not be used. Especially. Especially when you're saying it with a tone that is combative. and kind So actually, you shouldn't use that term when you're talking about a slow person. Like, I don't know, Wendy the retard or Gary the retard. <laughs> Two characters on the Howard Stern show that you worked at for 15 years. That's when it's offensive. If you're calling Suttering John a retard, it's A, accurate, and B, funny. But don't be combative. You're, don't be combative it. about it. Say you're a it, you're a good retard. <laughs> good retard. Bad about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The proper way to address a, a retard would be Mr. R. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Mr. R. This guy was a Mr. R. <laughs> Mr. R. So I took exception. R. Todd. <laughs> Didn't talk to the guy again for two or three weeks. Now. There's a certain troublemaker at the pub who I I just got. Yes, Mark B. Oriental could be used to reference rugs. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mark B. You're adding a lot to the conversation. I appreciate that. Yeah. They what could a... be called the. They're not Asian rugs. They're Oriental. Rugs. What an adult. So, this guy is saying I didn't talk to the, the guy who called me a retard. I got upset with him. I didn't talk to him for two or three weeks because he called you a word. How old are you, John? That's insane. Back to the clip. But there's this twit at the pub. Love his wife or his significant other. Love it to death. But this certain twit loves to, like, stir it up. Like, like, he, oh, how dare you be offended by the term retard. I'm like, what do you mean? First of all, the dude's a school teacher. Shouldn't be using the term. Who cares what he does for a living? He's at the bar yeah. and he called you a retard. And John's all high and mighty. By the way, John will call a Republican any fucking word he wants. Like, he doesn't give a fuck because, oh, that person leans politically different than me. So I can use any term in the fucking dictionary to describe them. But <laughs> this guy can't call me a retard if he's a school teacher. Like, what? I, What's your logic? I love that sc school teacher is somehow the standard now. Yeah. Like, they fuck children. So have you seen school <laughs> children, school teachers yes. lately? Yes, they're a problem, especially in L.A. Yeah. No one's yeah. learning shit in L.A. Are you kidding me? <laughs> retard. I got a, I got a cousin who had epileptic fits that'll never reach the age mentally above five years old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it runs in the family. Why the fuck does it have anything to do with this guy calling you a retard? He goes, yeah, but there's a guy in my family who has a hard time. Okay. But you suck at cornhole. That was the joke the guy was making. You're not good at a game that children play. What the fuck is wrong with you? I pray for that kid every day. His name is Matthew. I personally take offense to that term. I don't call people that. I once got into an argument with a comedian friend of mine who said I was retarded when he was arguing politics with me. 
You are retarded with politics. You are. Your comedian <laughs> friend was accurate with that description. <laughs> Granite. Another person. Granite. <laughs> who happened to be a school teacher. Oh, another school now, teacher. Okay. I don't know why teacher. or where they think that it's okay to use that term. But anyway, this guy who likes to stir the shit. <laughs> stir the shit. Well, John, <laughs> you call people pricks. Yeah. Okay, this this is the thing. So John has this like woke dictionary of the words you can use and can't use, and now he's going to explain to us that when he calls people names, it's appropriate, and when other people call him names, he's allowed to be upset with them for weeks on end because he, he takes offense to it. Kevin, did you ever think, when we were kids growing up, did you ever think this would be life as an adult? Listening to someone no. complain that someone else called them a retard? No, and I certainly, you know, as a fucking 13-year-old starting to watch the Channel 9 show for Stern, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never thought one day I'd be fucking talking about Stuttering John, and he would be talking about how retard is a bad word to say. Yes, this guy lecturing us about what words yeah. we could use. The guy from the Howard Stern show. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. I'm like, yeah, I do. In fact, I have a lot of close, close friends. I wish he'd get off his high horse by falling. My friend Patrick <laughs> Buckley in Florida. Hey, come on, you prick. Can I stay at your house? That's not an argumentative term. That's not a condescending term. So, uh, so when, when I ask if I can crash in people's place, I'm like, hey, prick, let me sleep on your couch. Mr. P, I don't say prick. I don't say <laughs> I, I don't get the argument here at all. I did, this is a, the most insane rant I've heard from Stuttering John. He was offended that the guy said retard or retarded or whatever he said. And John was so taken aback, he had to go off on it for four minutes on a show and he didn't talk to this guy for the longest time. John, it's not a big deal. Retarded people exist. The, the word retard means slow. It's, it's not a derogatory term unless they're calling you it and then it's funny. Actually, isn't it a music term? It is. It's a, isn't retard, retard a musical retardendo. term? Retardendo means to slow down. It's, it's, uh, tell you. Do you think one of the audience members might want to like go back through all the Studying John's uh, <laughs> interviews and find how many times he dropped the Mr. R word? Yeah, it's no shit. And I hate this thing where it's like, but now we've learned that you can't say oriental and you can't say retard. It's like, dude, you don't write the fucking rules, all right, asshole? I don't care what your rules are. You can have any rules you want, but that's not how this works. Um, all right. Last clip I want to play. So John's in Florida. He's doing these stand-up shows. And I want to point out the stuttering John who calls the governor of Florida Ron Death Sentence. And he's like, oh, my gosh, COVID's going nuts over there. His buddy Richard Ojeda says, you shouldn't even go to Florida. There's just so much COVID. And I'm looking at photos of him, and he's hanging out with no mask on next to fans at the bar. And he doesn't seem that concerned. He pretends to be concerned about it on a show with his super liberal guest that he has on. But he doesn't actually give a fuck in real life. And this is the story about John being recognized at the bar by a fan. But, yeah, it's been a fun. I, you know, I go to this place called Slacker's. It's a sports bar, and I watch the Yankees. And you be amazed. I'm amazed, and I'm not bragging here or anything. But it's amazing. This is a brand new uh, uh, clean, fresh tease, it's called. Clean, fresh tease. Oh, he's uh, talking about a shirt. For the show. Uh, and they're supposed to make you look slender and show you off your arms. So It's funny, because I get those ads on uh, Instagram, too. So they're, they're obviously targeting us fat people because it's like, hey, wear this shirt. And it'll hide your beer belly. He's like, oh, yeah, I, I could use three of those. <laughs> Show off your arms. <laughs> Shut up your arms. He's such a loser. Granted, it won't show off your, your, any of your parts of your body. And Granted. by the way, they look like hospital scrubs. When I was watching this video, I, I thought maybe he was in the hospital. He just got out of the hospital. It's a terrible looking shirt. He bought three of them. He's also drinking Gatorade from the dollar store, like generic Gatorade. He's like, oh, I love going to the dollar store. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gator drink. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was just AIDS. Uh, I think it's supposed to make you look, look slender and show you off your arms. 
So I bought three of these. Um, so what was I saying? So I've been hanging out there, and it's amazing how many people recognize me. Like, I'm, sit, I'm sitting next to this guy. He's like, hey, are you stuttering, John? I go, yeah. I go, how do you know? He goes, come on, bro. You're an icon. I go, hey, thanks. So he bought me a uh, so, of course, John makes him buy him a beer because that's what he does when any, so, ever, someone recognizes him. And I love these, like, this one encounter. He's like, everyone's recognizing me. And this guy comes up to me and says, I'm an icon. Uh, <laughs> he's like Patrick Michael. Uh, this guy said, you're the man. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was great. Oof. So, when I'm in Florida, I don't have the anonymity as other people would who aren't famous. So, what yeah. happens to me is because I don't have anonymity... They come up to me and they say, you're an icon. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Oh. All right, guys. This has all been a stall tactic because they wanted us to fill a few hours. Now we're going to start the show. That's right. This Everybody, is by the way, shots of Gagia on me after the show. <laughs> uh, so, Stuttering John had a couple shows this week. Oh, fuck. Now, and, uh, can I just say something before you yeah, go to please, Stuttering please. John? Um, I'm very disappointed. It, it there's, no, there's no Chicago of mission. Where's yeah. the mission? Oh, right. SJ Army let us down. I mean, I didn't negotiate terms behind the scenes to make sure they wouldn't come and ruin our show. And I Capitulated. Didn't. Now, I peace in our time. <laughs> this really upset me because these people wanted to see you get served. I know. I know. And I did want to see some diarrhea. Fortunately, I'm, I'm unscathed. Nothing bad is going to... Oh, scared? shit. Oh. You've been served, Mr. Hamburger. Holy shit. Kevin Orlando? Oh, fuck. Kevin Orlando. Vinny Kevin Orlando is suing me? The attorney Kevin Orlando? Vinny Winnie, people's champ, Kevin Orlando Esquire. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, I'm in trouble now, guys. This is because you have been officially served because you're a fucking cheater every week on the Creep Off. Guys, uh, the date of my summons is September 11th. 2021, this is the worst thing to ever happen on September 11th. Agreed. In the history of this country. All right, can we talk about the yeah. retard in California now? I like that your address is 123 Pizza Pie Drive. Yeah. You wish. You wish, motherfucker. A man could dream. You couldn't buy a new envelope? Is that? <laughs> I think Thank it, you, Kevin Orlando. I think it was just a gag. Everything's like, wait, I don't know if that's official. <laughs> for the gag <laughs> oh so you were following it good i tried to get a guy in a banana suit to do it but <laughs> yeah god damn it tab couldn't make it here tonight very disappointing all right Suttering john was just in florida doing stand-up comedy and uh he's flying back to la and he didn't have a great flight back to la because as you know john flies coach and there's a real problem with flying coach these days. I think it's bias against those that don't fly first class because they don't serve alcohol to the people in coach. Have now, what kind of horseshit is that? I mean, and it doesn't make any sense because the people in coach are the ones that'll pay for it. That is a bias against the non-rich. It's because he's Puerto Rican, am I right? <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm surprised, surprised he didn't pull the race card. Yeah. He, he can't even refer to himself as poor. He's got his the non-rich. Non <laughs> I'm just a not attractive, non-rich, <laughs> non-fit. All right. Could you imagine this flight is, what, five hours? Florida to LA? John had to be shaking so fucking hard. Yeah. The people behind him thought it was turbulence. <laughs> <laughs> He's chugging the hand sanitizer out of the thing. He's wringing out those paper towels that they give you. And listen, I get it. I'm just saying. Yeah. Suddenly, John's a loser. 
and he admits it openly on his show. We've talked about this with Anthony Cumia. If John was doing this as a bit, it would be, it is funny. It know? is, yeah. It is funny. Like, oh my gosh, it's, it's obviously biased against the non-rich, but he's not joking. That's a good bit. <laughs> Working into his comedy at some point. So now he has on the great Michael Popak and Richard Ojeda, because he has the same guests on every episode. Yeah. And they're getting into a passionate political discussion about Afghanistan. And these guys are fired up. This is what is political entertainment. You want people to have an opinion and a point of view, and they want to talk about it and get it out there. John decides, I should interrupt this with some petty bullshit. Anybody who actually extracts us from that process is going against the military industrial complex in a way that no one has done since Kennedy. I mean, I mean, look, I was in Afghanistan when we killed friggin' Osama bin Laden. And right. the, the moment that I was told, the first thing I said is, when are we Sometimes leaving? you have to see right. to When are we done? Sometimes right. Sometimes waiting right. isn't an option. Hey, uh, I have to, you know, by the way, what you're hearing right now is John just started playing a video. He's not even paying attention to them. He just starts playing a video. Let me, let me back that up. Let me back that up. Let me back that up. This is stuttering John. Oh, oh, like I fuck up, Dad. I mean, I mean when it happens, let me know. Because it was so crazy. <laughs> All right. the hell is, why is Siri telling us? <laughs> to to when are we leave. done? Sometimes right. That's right. Isn't an hey, uh, I have to, you know, I stand corrected here, Hal. Hold on, Washington let me, uh, uh, I have to correct myself. Thanks to Tim O'Boogie over here. Uh, hold on, I'm locking up. Okay, there it goes. Uh, uh, Stymie Beard was not in Spinal Tap. He Get was the in uh, the Buddy Holly story. That's ah! okay. Okay. So, so I stand corrected. I don't want to give any. I, I appreciate that. There's an important distinction. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> and those fucking idiots. Have waited till a, a text message later. Yeah, Hell Sparks gives some shit for that. I'm sorry. I I said that wrong thing. It was Hell Sparks and Richard Ojeda. And Hell Sparks is like, yeah, John, that's fine. We, we could have corrected that at any time. You didn't need to interrupt us. To tell us that random nonsense, it doesn't matter. And these fucking idiots are going to be on a show twice next week as well. Of course. The fuck is wrong with? Well, them? they get a lot of exposure. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously, that's the reason for it. I wouldn't vote for either of them. Stutter. Oh yeah, Hell Sparks is running for uh, mayor of Los Angeles. You gonna vote for Hell Sparks? I'll vote for anyone. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Good answer. <sighs> All right. So John is talking about his time in Florida. And apparently, he didn't enjoy it. And now, keep in mind, John considers himself a comic. And what comics do is they travel for work. It's not a vacation. You're working. You're earning a living. I'm very excited to be back. I enjoyed my time in Florida, but like I was telling, you know, my buddy Hal Sparks, you know, <laughs> when you're doing this, you know, it almost is like a pain in the ass to travel. You gotta travel, you gotta go book a hotel, you gotta book a car, you gotta, you gotta get the rental car, then you gotta go to the hotel, then you gotta deal with the freaking carpenters screaming at the top of the lungs, the, the N-word every freaking morning. <laughs> East of Omaha. Like, it isn't my idea of the best time in the world. Then why do you pretend you're a comic? <laughs> if you don't enjoy traveling, booking a hotel, going to gigs, then you're not a comic! Because there's someone somewhere in a new city that will buy him a beer. This is true. Yeah. And tell him that he's an icon. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for the shot that I will not be drinking anytime soon. I'm running a show. So, so you might have heard in that clip, he's talking, all right, I'll fucking do the shot. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> You guys, get me every time. You guys can get Carl's shirt off with the right chant, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but you wouldn't want to. I don't know if you guys could see it from here. His tiny little shoes almost fell off. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first fucking club foot joke? It took you this long, Minnie? Yeah, I'm hammered. Yeah, you're off your game, my friend. <laughs> oh, I suck. <laughs> we, did a, uh, we did a creep off dick show crossover today from our Airbnb. The, the dick, dick off. off. That was great. It was the dick off. We'll be, we'll be releasing that on our Patreons. Yeah. Way funnier than this. It was, it was a good time. <laughs> yeah. That was the peak of the day and I knew it would be. Like, yeah. All right, I'm just gonna go back to bed. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, we so. We had to do Carl's thing. You might, have, you might have heard that he was talking about, he couldn't get any sleep when he was at his hotel because there were carpenters right next to him working on the building 
and they were very loud, and they're, they're yelling things out. So John explains that he slept in until 3, 4, so he's staying with a buddy now. He slept in until 3.40 in the afternoon. And yesterday I slept till 3.40. I was supposed to do a show on this podcast. Mm-hmm. I just, because I was, I was staying at a hotel called um, um, the Red Carpet Inn, one of the Motel worst hotels. And they had the carpenter's closet right next to my room. And at 8 in the morning, this carpenter was busy screaming, <laughs> using the N-word, using... Uh, the- whoa! This guy's screaming the N word. Where, where can you get that carpenter? Yeah, like, <laughs> I feel like if I was working at a hotel, I wouldn't be yelling gamer words. Yeah. While I was, when you have a uniform that has your name on it, drywall. Watch the racial slurs. That's I've learned uh, that firsthand. I'm just. Like, Crows, there's a reason though why he was doing that. Oh, okay. Rules, and I'm sitting there going. You know, and he's talking about being a Republican and all that. Oh, oh, oh yeah. You know, well, I, you know, I, you I, know. I just couldn't take it. He's like, listen, I'm a Republican. I'll wear a mask because you know what? A human's mouth has more germs than a dog's ass. That's a fact. And I'm sitting there going, what do I got to hear this? In, in John's world, he thinks people are going to believe what the fuck? that a guy is yelling the N word and at the same time going, and I'm a Republican. And this is how we talk. As he's alone in a fucking broom <laughs> closet, yelling the N-word to himself. And one guy is doing construction in a, on a hotel? Yelling the N-word. <laughs> one wow. person, though. And, and also, which party he's affiliated with. In John's world, this is what happens. Yeah. You guys really got to give that guy a break. He's traveling. <laughs> he's working. He's trying to get some sleep. Yeah, you know how hard it is for a man who's used to the chirping of cockroaches to get to sleep? <laughs> he's, now he's got to listen to some guy with his right-wing bullshit. He's making a lot of points right now. Normally, I think Vinny's an asshole, but today, yeah. yep. he's got to figure it out. So John's talking about the fact that he will say that he's sorry when he's wrong. Because John's the bigger man, you know? He's the, always the hero of his story. And then he says this. Two hardest things for people to say, I'm sorry and, uh, and thank you. People hate this, they say thank you and they hate to apologize. Those are the two things I hear people say nonstop. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry and thank you. Yeah. I thank people for handing me a drink that I give them way more money than they deserve for <laughs> because it's their job. And I say, thank you. Literally does not deserve a thank you. And we say it all day, every day. Yeah. I mean, we're in the Midwest. All you motherfuckers do is thank each other. Yeah. Jesus Son, Christ. your mom and I are getting a divorce. It's probably harder than... Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I can think of a lot harder things to say. You, you know, I'd have given you herpes. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> You know he just means it's because of the stutter, right? Yeah, right. It's very hard to say. Th- 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 thanks. You uh, stink. That's a hard one. Anonymity. Anonymity is way harder for him to say. It's harder for me to say too, now because yeah. I can't get out of my head the way he was saying it. All right. So uh, Cardiff Electric is in the chat. Ooh. Cardiff Electric, the great Cardiff Electric. I did a show recently. Everybody's friend. Yeah, great, great guy. He's asked you, Dick, to do his show. Yeah. You think you're going to do it? Yeah, if he does 108 episodes. <laughs> yeah, that's the rule. That's the yeah. rule. All right, good point. So Cardiff Electric is in the chat, and I think that John's catching on to the fact that this guy's a troll a little bit because he doesn't even finish answer, reading his question. Um, Cardiff I- Electric, thanks for the seven bucks. Says, John and Hal, will you be on my podcast? The C- Cardiff Electric Podcast, hashtag Stutter and Janami. Also, is that is okay to have a, I, I don't care. Do whatever you want, Cardiff. It doesn't matter to me. He asked, can I have hockey puck on my show? And he goes, hey, it is okay if I have a... I, I, I'm not going to read that guy's thing. <laughs> he almost fooled me. He who shall not be mentioned. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to book Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Gurr. <laughs> Please come on my show. All right, so John's doing a video. This is not the podcast, but I just somebody put this up on the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit. I had to pull it because it's so funny. He's doing an ad for this website, offthestrip.com. There's a dirty toilet in the background. Trust me, I'm sorry I don't have the video to show this to you. I fucked up. Oh, God. But uh, this is John reading an ad for Off the Strip. This is Stuttering John from the Howard Stern Show and the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to answer a couple of questions. Uh, 
from the Vegas site off the strip.com. My favorite activity off the strip, gambling. My favorite activity on the strip, gambling. My favorite Vegas restaurant, Rayo's at Caesars. I love the Limon Pollo. My favorite Vegas business, any one of the bars. His favorite business. His favorite thing is business? No, he goes, my favorite business in Vegas is any one of the bars. Oh. Fucking idiot. I don't know that that's really what they're going for at <laughs> OffTheStrip.com. Like, they want people to discover things on their website. Like, what's a great place? What's, what's a thing people don't know about off the strip? Gambling. You can get drunk and gamble. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you guys know you could gamble off the strip. <laughs> And this motherfucker's begging for dollar bills in Super Chat. Yes. And he's going to go spend money gambling. I got a great fucking ad read for you. Oh, if yeah? you got my number 24. All right. Fan fucking tastic. Head to the website or use your mobile, de mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. <coughs> well, <laughs> betonline.ag, your online sports book expert. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore. <coughs> Get in on the action. Don't forget to use that promo code CLNS50, that's CLNS50, to receive a 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Now, here's what's great about that. What's great about that, Crush? CLNS yeah. is a podcast network out of New England, and they do all Patriots podcasts. It's all like football shit. Correct. That's their fucking promo code. Correct. It has nothing to do with Stoney John. He's literally reading the ad copy from a different show, yes. including their promo code that has the name of their show in it. It's almost as if he's pretending to be good at stuff, and we can all tell that he's not. Yeah, well, because he got busted reading the March Madness copy at the end of July, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and now he's like, oh, football season's starting. By the way, WCBS is the promo code. So enter that in to let him know that Stuttering John sent you. How the fuck is he getting away with the, it's Stuttering John from the Howard Stern show? <laughs> I know. It's you might remember me from such things as the only thing I've done. You might remember me from the Sirius XM lawsuit that you all laughed at. <laughs> we'll get into that in a second. Fuck it, I'm going to do it now since you, since you set that up. So he has the great Michael Papak, his attorney on his show. And uh, now, Suttering John, Judge Crotty was the one who dismissed this case with prejudice. And so... He went on his show and said, this guy doesn't understand the law anymore. He's too old to understand the law. He was going after this judge, which I imagine is a bad idea when you have a lawsuit that you're no, trying to No, that's how you get them to be reasonable and change their minds. So John starts walking this shit back. I don't have anything against Judge Crotty. I was just a little upset that, <laughs> that he ruled in favor of Sirius XM, you know, so, but I know, you know, you know, you know, you know and that's why we're gonna, Appeal this thing. Yeah, I, I listen. I, it, the, if we win the appeal to the Second Circuit, which we're in the middle of the briefing process right now, we actually are going to be filing our brief in about a week. And then the other side, Sirius XM, has another, I think, a, less than a month to file their opposition brief. And then we have a last, the last word. We get to file one last brief, and then the Second Circuit's gonna make a decision, probably in 2022 sometime, maybe a bit before. But um, if we win, which we were fully expecting to do, we go right back to Judge Crotty. <laughs> so if they win the appeal, Judge Crotty is the one who's gonna determine whether they win the suit or not. And John has multiple episodes talking about Judge Crotty's a moron and doesn't understand how law works. Whoops. Ooh. Ooh. Ew. Who was more incoherent in that? Yeah, I know. This guy has his own podcast, Michael Popak. I would never listen to it. He's so boring. Yeah. He's like Dr. Steve on heroin. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like Dr. Steve. He's like Dr. Steve. He's like Dr. Steve hanging out with Casey. It's like, <laughs> somebody set my alarm. So like, I will be sleeping. So then later on in that discussion, it's made known that John's attorney told him to stop talking shit about this judge. Yeah, we, there's no hard feelings about what the judge did. No, no, but, yeah. but initially I was mad, and of course, you know, I, you know, you know, I'm a broadcaster, so I got to make it, but you know, I was like, yeah. damn, why are they letting these guys get away with this? Yeah, and then I, and then I made an observation, John, you have so many other things to talk about. Don't talk about that. <laughs> 
That's why you're my lawyer, and I'm just the, uh, you know, yeah. idiot. You know, I'm the idiot in the room. <laughs> yeah. 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 The guy. A point for Dick. <laughs> yeah. His attorney literally told him to stop talking about Judge Crotty. They're trying to win a lawsuit right now. Could you please stop sabotaging our lawsuit? That'd be great, he if you wouldn't mind. Turned into to a Robert De Niro in Casino. He's just like on TV every night on a public accident. <laughs> just screaming. All right, so getting back to that offthestrip.com video, he's told to tell a funny Vegas story. This story is a doozy, everybody. And my funny Vegas story, my funny Vegas story was when I went and I was performing at South Point Casino and I got head lice, uh, I guess from my son and the owner quarantined me into my room and uh, I had to stay in my room and then he wouldn't let me talk about it on the stage because he didn't want the customers to get scared. Oh. And if you stayed at South Point, believe me, they have a lot worse things to be scared about than freaking lice. Oh. You seen some of the girls there? You know, they have lice? You know. <laughs> this is an ad! It's a hilarious Vegas story! How dare you? That is a hilarious Vegas story! I agree, that is hysterical. That's a funny Vegas story! And I want to go stay at South Point now! <laughs> he the guy that told John that he can't talk about his lice! <laughs> This is an ad for Vegas. Come to Vegas. I had lice there. Yeah. And the funny part is, is what he didn't tell in that story is that Jackie Martling was on that bill with him. And Jackie got to go out to a steak dinner with the owner. And John was like, can you bring home a steak for me? And they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is the most Southern John thing that could possibly yeah. happen. And I'm sure it was an accident. I put money on Jackie just took it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure they did buy it. Jackie sold it. He stuffed <laughs> it in the glove box of his car. He had it at the birch table. You can get my joke land CDs at this steak. All right, what I love about you people is you love to troll John in ways that are nuanced and fun, and you keep reinventing ways to troll him. Listen to the name that he gives uh, thanks to for a super chat. Yeah, I'm a uh, holes hurt. Love you, Major Ab one. Thanks for the two dollars. What? And uh Alma Holes Hurt. <laughs> it's giving him two dollars and a super chat. Thank you. Whoever <laughs> Alma Holes Hurt. It's amazing. That's two Alma. bucks well spent right there. <laughs> Alma Holes Hurt. Well done, everybody. And then this is funny because there's trolls give him money to say ridiculous shit so that we can play it and make fun of him, which is this is why capitalism works. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is, yeah. this is proof. This doesn't happen in China. All right, I can promise you that. So um, he doesn't mind that people are giving him money to troll him because pff, he's laughing all the way to the bank. They spent $245 to, to troll me. I mean, that, that explains the stupidity and what you're laughing, you. you're laughing all the way to the bank. You should go exactly my bar bill for the whole week. My hair trolls. <laughs> <laughs> and Richard gives him attention. I don't because I'm just laughing all the way to the bank. Two hundred and forty-five dollars. Are you laughing all the way to the bank with two hundred and forty-five dollars in your pocket? Why is his lawyer encouraging? Like, how much is his lawyer making out of that two hundred and forty dollars? All of it. Yeah, <laughs> he owes him all of it. Yeah, he's encouraging the trolls to keep giving him super chats because he's way behind on his bills. You heard that the lawsuit's going to stretch into twenty twenty two. He said in that earlier yeah. clip, like this is going to go on for a while. Attorneys love this. Oh yeah, they're ringing John like a wet fucking sponge, man. I happen to know attorneys in my family. And, um, and they're fucking douchebags, man. They, Let me tell you. They pretend it takes. I mean, anybody two, related to Carl. I'm sorry. Go ahead. They pretend it takes two hours to write an email. If you get an email from an attorney, they are ripping you off. I guarantee yeah. you that. Props to uh, Michael Popak for taking advantage of, of John. Crows, you have some more clips on here. Yeah, I got two for you, Carl. Uh, and this is really, you know, every once in a while I like to bring in something that's some advice for you. You know what I mean? Oh, good. Because okay. we're good, but we could be better. We could be you better. You know what I mean? We, I we, and we can always learn. We're pretty good. Well, he was talking about us. We could be better. 
Crozier myself. You're great. Yeah. You yeah. got it. You got it. No room for improvement there. Right. Yes. Um, but perfect, number, <laughs> perfect in every way. Number 21 is how to be a professional. Your heart would disagree, <laughs> but I think you're, you're perfect in every way. Because I'm not going to drink before uh, that early before a stand-up show. It is not, uh, it's not something that I would do because, as you know, I'm a, I'm a professional uh, comedian. <laughs> yeah. And that pause between the That's word good professional... Joke. And comedian. That was a good joke. Yeah, it tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, good delivery too. Cause I'm a professional <laughs> comedian. He like, like he knew it was the punchline. Yeah. Wait for it. Comedian. And then uh, I fucking quit this business. <laughs> I know. Poor Vinny. Fucking works on comedy. He, not tonight, but not a lot of other times. Other, other nights. A lot of other times. I There's really no well. evidence of it today, but I promise you, I've seen him. He's good. But Southern John is also a professional broadcaster, as you guys know, and I promise I did not fuck with this clip in any way. This is literally what his show sounds like, 22. Um, uh, let's see, there was somebody else who wrote something. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 Biden told the world. <laughs> and, and then he just starts reading a tweet that he found. We're just listening to an old man scroll through the feed endlessly. Uh, 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 and I wonder, uh, who is the more foolish, the fools or the fools who follow? Yeah. If you are giving money to Stuttering John unironically, you're a retard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to declare that right now. Stop it. $245, <laughs> yeah. Well, those guys were funny. <laughs> All right. So this is going back, and again, I just found this on the subreddit. Thanks for everybody who puts clips up. Tell doing the Lord's work, man. Yes, Holy the Lord's shit. work. This was the first time, like, I unironically enjoy listening to Patrick Michael. I think he's a fucking genius. Yes. I can't stand listening to Stuttering John. It is painful. It's painful. It's and hard. I found that, like, if you get it up to 1.5, 1.6 speed, his guests all sound like chipmunks, but he sounds normal. Right. Like, his fucking, his pitch is so back now, you, it, it's, it's he's, unlistenable. He's 40% of a human yeah. at this point. I mean, he's struggling with each and every word. And you can hear it in all these clips. Like, the dude is really struggling. So let's go back in time to the year 2004, the last year that Stuttering John was on the Howard Stern Show. And Stuttering John is going to leave the Howard Stern Show and become the announcer on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Yeah. And Nick da, 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 da. N that's not the tonight show. <laughs> that's a price is right. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, I haven't said anything in a while. Yeah. He was one of the models who showed off the new car, if you guys remember that time in Center John's song, career. Carl. It is a catchy song. We'll sing it later. <laughs> so Nick DiPaolo is on the show. Back when Howard Stern was funny and had comedians and, and Artie Lang would bring his friends in and they would have jokes and comedy. So Nick DiPaolo's on the show. Stuttering John recommended Nick DiPaolo take his job on the Howard Stern show. Now, I don't know if you guys know what John did on the Howard Stern show, but it was screen phone calls. Yeah. So this is them goofing on John for thinking Nick DiPaolo would want this job. Stuttering John's a trip late. <laughs> Like he decided a good replacement for him would be Nick DePaul. Like Nick wants that job. You know I, what I mean? I, 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 he's, he's my, job. he's my <clears throat> anointed successor. I said to Mike, oh, you go like a janitor over there, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, what are you saying? the phones. I did no, that I'm saying, and, like, like John, Hi, John says to me before he left, he goes, you know who, 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 who would be really good to try out for my job is uh, Nick, Nick DiPaolo. <laughs> so I said, I said, uh, I said, and I said to myself, what an ego on this guy. Like, Nick's a pretty accomplished stand-up yeah. comedian, probably one of the best I've seen. Yeah, I'm making almost 1100 a week. Yeah. <laughs> That's five more than John was making here. Yeah, he, he, he could take over for me. And, and then Nick, when Nick, when you, when you answer the phone, make sure, man, make sure that, make sure that, <laughs> radio's it down. Fred still is the best Centering John impression. Like, none of us can touch. Fred Norris with the Centering John impression. So that, that's how delusional John has always been. He thinks Nick DiPaolo wants to answer phone calls and ask gotcha questions to celebrities. <laughs> Nick DiPaolo is a talented stand-up. He doesn't need that gig. He'd be pretty aggressive to the celebrities if it was Nick DiPaolo. That's probably true. Speaking of which, you know the Stuttering John is going to Washington, D.C. Can't wait. Yeah. He's been raising money for it. He's very excited about it. 
He's going to go and ask Republicans, Mr. Simp goes to Washington. <laughs> All right. You redeemed yourself, Benny. Good job. Made up for the Price is Right song with that one. All right. Benny Chitty, the people's chump. Let's not get carried away over there in the front row. Uh, so... The Midas Touch Brothers are his buddies. He has them on the show all the time. They have a shit ton of money, these guys. When I was in Vegas a couple months ago, there were giant billboards saying, congratulations, we got Kamala and Joe Biden, and it was sponsored by the Midas Touch Brothers. Like, what the fuck? They're wasting money on this. So like, congratulations. It was a pat on your back billboard. Look at what we did. What is this for? Anyway, they have a lot of money is my point. So John is looking for someone to sponsor him to go and ask Republicans questions in Washington, D.C. The Midas Touch brothers said no to him. And, uh, but the Midas Touch guys are great. The only thing I'm telling you about, the only thing that, and look, I love those guys. So, but, but it's, you know, I've been talking about going to D.C. and doing all these interviews, and they started sending out this other guy. And I'm like, and I asked them on my show, I'm like, why are you sending this guy? You're not me. And, 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 then, and then Brett was like, well, because you'll get recognized. I'm like, I don't know if anybody's going to recognize me. I gained like 100 pounds since I used to do it. <laughs> and your, your hair got shorter. Well, you don't stutter anymore. Well, what's really funny about that is he was trying to exaggerate for the laugh. I've gained 100 pounds. And his attorney goes, yeah, and your hair's shorter, too. Like, he didn't think that was a joke. He goes, yeah, there's a lot of things that are different about you. Your hair's thin. You're fat. But he said, like, didn't he once say that seven out of ten people, just random passers-by in California, would know him by name? He's, he's iconic. Yeah, he said that. You didn't know that? He's, he's an icon. Until he's trying to get a job, and he's like, oh, nobody would recognize him. You said moron wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I got one more clip. You got a couple more clips on John, right? No? You're good? Yeah. You're, you're feeling good? Okay, last clip on stuttering John. He has a guest on the Beer in the Balcony show that he does. Mm. And this is a show that he does for his Patreon supporters. All four of them. So at any given time, there's six people watching this. Yeah. So he wants to do a good job for them, obviously. This is him getting up and walking away to get a beer in the middle of having a conversation with his guest. It gets quiet. Oh, Listen no. closely. He was trying to self-medicate himself, that he was probably bipolar, and he was medicating himself with uh, hard drugs. Hold on, I'm just gonna get a beer. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> like a naked guy. <laughs> the guy's just sitting there, staring at a, an empty seat. Like, uh, okay. Yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna get a beer. <laughs> yeah. Live on the air, no less. He's just sitting there, staring into the void, live on the air. All right. Holy wow. shit. All right, guys, that I want to prove the man doesn't hear anything anyone says to him. He's not paying any attention at all. Um, stuttering John sucks at life. <laughs> mm. W A T P. W A I don't have a lot on Stuttering John this week. Yeah, I just brought two leftovers. Okay. Um, so my favorite thing in the whole fucking world is when Stuttering John goes on about other people's medical conditions at length. Number yes. 19. <laughs> he never learns. Oh my Jackie God. Martling won't return an email where John's offering him money, and John's just like, I, I don't get it. What's the problem? <laughs> Listen to the level of detail in this clip. Mm -hmm. Uh, you just watched Beer on the Balcony this morning. Hope my Mom Melendez is feeling better. Thank you, Justin. She is feeling better. I'm very happy to report. She, um, she stopped taking her, uh, heart medication, I guess, and because her legs were hurting. So she, that, that's what caused her high blood pressure. And that's what caused my niece, Jennifer, to call the ambulance and took her into the ER. I told I mean, that's it's the whole fucking medical history right, right there. What the <laughs> fuck is wrong with this guy? And then because it's so fucking interesting, he talks about his medical shit that's going on. As far as me, ear's still clogged. I'm using that uh, stuff they gave me, the earwax removal oh. kit. And uh, hopefully my hearing will come back to the left ear. Clean out your fucking... 
fucking ears, you disgusting <laughs> piece of shit. By the way, he did actually. I'm the Dabbler is anonymous subreddit. I can't clip it for the show because it's yeah. a visual. Yeah. yeah. But he's having a conversation with his guest and he's digging in his ear <laughs> fucking hard. And then yeah. he's rubbing it all over his oh, face. He's rolling it around. He's rolling it around. Yeah. He's touching his face. Oh. This is this is really odd. Oh. This guy. He doesn't clean his ears. Mm -hmm. And this has been going on for weeks now, maybe months, yeah. where he's like, I lost my hearing. He went to the ear doctor. The guy's like, well, it's because of all this wax built. Yeah, it's because you're gross. It's because it's because you're gross. <laughs> yeah. It's because your a, hygiene is called ridiculous. a Q-tip. Yeah. Buy it. I, I, I honestly, I, I'm shocked. Yeah. Listen, Stuttering John, you've been places, you've seen people in sandals. Have you ever seen another human being with toenails like yours? <laughs> like, when you go to the zoo, you see a shitload of animals with toenails like yours, but... <laughs> <laughs> just go to the beach and just look at people's feet just I from a distance. Don't and just, have zoo money. Yeah, compare them to your, to your toes and just be like, oh shit, I I'm bought, fucking gross. I bought tickets to the zoo for me and my family, and people say I'm broke. Yeah. <sighs> All right, so the spin. baboon looks like my mother's prolapsed rectum. <laughs> <laughs> she called my sister when her anus prolapsed after she ate the x flags I have a photo on my phone. Let me, let me get it. Oh. Did you see where he was showing a photo of his kids on his phone? Because people were just fucking fucking with him. Oh. And they're going, oh, yeah, you don't even, you don't even talk you to your kids even anymore. Have kids. Yeah, right. <laughs> his kids oh. are sending them You back. were never married. <laughs> so now he's, he's out there. Oh, and I, I'm not even going to get into this because we just make fun of podcasts. I don't get into people's personal lives. But uh, Susanna is posting these speeches that are done by John's kids at yeah. her wedding. Yeah. Talking about how great. Their new stepdad is. It's so great to have a stable father figure. Yes. Finally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. So I guess I did just talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't clip it though. Because <laughs> leave my kids out of this. Yeah. I Slander mean, and libel. The fact though that his ex-wife felt the need to not only put that on Facebook but make it a public video is <laughs> very telling. Says, says something, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 All right. So speaking of medical information. Joe Rogan got COVID. You guys hear about this? Yeah. No one's talking about it. It's the only place you're going to hear about it. And uh, so, Stuttering John, he, he just knows so much about medical information. Joe Rogan, who was out there spewing bullshit anti-vax mm -hmm. crap on his freaking podcast, which he has tons of tons of listeners, tons of right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now right that freaking guess. jackass has COVID and right. is taking erectomectin. <laughs> you know, I mean, Iver ivermectin, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ivermectin. Erector I can't believe he's taking a vector back then. <laughs> what the fuck is he thinking? He's jamming an erector set up his ass. So, again, Hail Sparks is just growing on me. I'm liking this guy more and more. Uh, this is how Hale responds to this. You know, I, I mean, Iver, ivermectin, yes. Yeah, yeah ivermectin. Erector, erectormectin is a totally different thing. It comes yeah. in blue, chewable pill. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes you, it gives you horse dick, I've heard, but not in a good way. <laughs> Painful erection. Ooh. So Ooh. that's a callback. So um, I don't know what Hal Sparks is doing. Is he what? is he learning at all? He should be right. And he's in there twice a week doing I know. this. I know. It's, it's so a crazy. waste of it's yeah. a waste of his time. He's learning that he should respect John less. Is what yes. he's learning. And you can yeah. tell. <laughs> you're right. You can tell by the way he's starting to respond to John oh, now. Yeah. Like you yeah. fucking moron. He's you, so you, done with Yeah, him. you're so stupid. Yeah, everything he says starts with. <sighs> <laughs> All right, so last clip I have, and this is hilarious. John explains he doesn't block people. Hmm. I honestly don't know anyone he hasn't blocked. Yeah. I don't know a single person John has not blocked. He blocked me. I've never interacted with him on social media in any way. I've never tagged him in a tweet. I've never liked it. I've never done anything. Yeah. He just went out and actively, proactively blocked me. Uh, a couple of things I want to address. A couple of people have... Um, email me on Patreon at patreon.com slash a stuttering John saying somehow they've been blocked. Listen, I don't block anybody except if, if it's a guy trashing me or anything. Yeah, that, that's everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Or anything. Yeah. Or anything. That's <laughs> literally everyone. Like, I was desperately trying to super chat him to come do stand up in Lombard, Illinois last week. You were? And I couldn't get it to work that's so hilarious some shit is blocked that's hilarious so uh it, it, you know there's something going on with with how youtube 
is running this stuff. Just change your name and then come back as somebody else. I love that he explains. Yeah. So he goes out and blocks people all day long. And he's like, and by the way, if I did block you, here's how you get around Yeah, just it. come back. It'll be fine. It's super easy to do. Just don't sign in and then you can come right back in. Everybody does it. <laughs> That's what everyone's doing. Um, holy shit. I can't believe he actually said he doesn't block people. And then his next sentence. <laughs> except spell, for everyone. Spell the N word with an A instead of an R. <laughs> I went on the Drew and Mike show this uh, past week, and we talked about an episode of Kerman and Friends. That's Elisa Giordana's show. Yeah. She got Stuttering John on. And Not easy to do. No, because he's very afraid that if he goes on a show, people will troll him. <laughs> As he should be. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is... He won't even drive over a bridge. This is a an... fucking guy. <laughs> this is an epic show. I'm not driving my... New old Mercedes over that bridge. <laughs> this is this was amazing feat by Alyssa Jordana. I played clips with Drew and Mike. I, I put it out on the Patreon. People can hear it on Drew and Mike's feed. We're gonna do some of those same clips, but I have so many more and so much more. You told I, me I you spent into. okay. I'm curtain here, folks. Yeah. Carl says to me, <laughs> Vinny, this is the show we're gonna do, but you need to watch Kermit and Friends with Stutter and John. I spent five hours cutting clips. I did. I didn't... Five fucking hours, folks. Here we go. I, I, it actually backed up my entire week. I've been behind all week because of this show. It was so incredible. And you said to me, whatever you do, make sure you listen to this. And I did. did you check and out I the whole sat thing? there. I was fucking riveted. Yes. It's amazing. Alyssa yeah, Jordana is the greatest interviewer ever. Yeah, she fucking nailed that. She played it exactly right. It was goddamn impressive. I was impressive. wildly you impressed. Watch it too? I, I was upset. It interrupted a date night. I don't want to get into that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll tell you later at the wrap-up show. She wow. kept him defused. Yes. Well, just fucking bombs yes, yes. are flying yeah. at fucking King Kong, yeah. hanging off the fucking building. <laughs> and he starts trying to swat him, and then he looks at her, and she's like, so John, it's okay, John. And he, like, yeah. he calms down for a second. Yeah. Then incoming... <laughs> That's so accurate. It was the most amazing podcasting I've ever seen. So, well done, Alyssa. Let's get into it. Gakia. You knew it was going to be good when John pops up and the very first thing... That Alyssa does, Alisa does is she takes a collar. Okay, we're getting a collar. Uh, Kermit and friends, how can I help you? Uh, yeah, it's a two-part question for stuttering fuckface. Um, <laughs> why are you such a cheap bastard and stiffed everyone with the bill? And why can't you close the deal with Alisa? I loved when you got rejected to even go hiking with her. Can you please address that? Thank you. <laughs> I mean, here's a guy who's... Only concern is that a troll will come out and goof on him. Welcome the to the show, John. <laughs> stuttering fuck <laughs> face. I'm like, yes, this is amazing. I mean, that's the smart way to do it. She really did it right because now he's thinking, okay, that's the worst that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to point something out to John because I know he doesn't listen to our show because he never learns. If he listened to the show, this would not be happening to him. So I know he doesn't listen. John, the way you react to this is the reason why it happens to you. Time and time again. Just like you were saying, they just wind him up or just let him go. And this guy isn't serious with these questions. The, John could have been like, all right, yeah, good one, buddy. Instead, he gets into, oh, what do you mean I'm cheap? Addressing the, the guy's question, I, I never stiffed anybody. That's such a fallacy. And I'll explain it. Okay. I paid everybody on my comedy tour, Nick DiPaolo, $2,500 for a weekend. Nick wasn't getting that for a whole week. I paid Jim Florentine and Modi $1,000 each week. I didn't stiff anybody. That's a fallacy. Do you think Nick DiPaolo wants to put out there how much money he was making on these shows and how much he was making a week? Can I also time? add that that's not even what the guy said to him. He said, why did you leave these people with the bill? Yes. And then he mentions two people that worked with him and how he did not stiff them, which is very strange because I think he immediately assumed they must have talked to DiPaolo. i got to defuse this now. Yeah, that's, that's where his brain telling. went. Well, it's interesting, too, because he keeps saying things that lead us to believe that he's lying. Because he's constantly talking about how much things cost and bitching about how much they cost. As if he's like, 
a cheapskate. And also, ladies and gentlemen, if you do watch this, um, he uses the word fallacy about (laughs) 5,000 fucking times. That's another fallacy! Your Honor! Yeah. (laughs) And by the way, I am going to prove that these things are true that he's saying are not true. We will get into that. He learned it from Michael Popak. Probably. When he told him that the check was in the mail. He said, John, (laughs) John, that's a fallacy. That is a fallacy, John. (laughs) So this is him talking about he went over to the comedy store. So they had all gone out to eat the night before. Okay. Lisa and this other guy and John. Yeah, go ahead. And then he goes to the comedy store, and this is just full of funny things. Oh, yeah. Guess how much it costs for one 12-ounce bottle of beer, a Coors Light at the comedy store? Uh, $14. (laughs) 11 bucks. Then I leave a $2 uh, tip, Chris, so you're close. 13 bucks for one stupid freaking beer. And I tip the valet there 20 bucks. So it cost me 33 bucks for 15 minutes and a beer. Did you get to go on stage? No. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You're a loser. I a like a loser. I, I love her reaction. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. He went over there to get stage time. He thought he was going to bump some comedians. Hey, Sutter and John's here. I'm ready to do my five minutes. Like, no. Yeah, he went to the bar and bought a beer. That's how you know you're not getting on stage <laughs> yes, tonight, right. pal. Just so you know. He doesn't know. You know he looked around the club for one person he knows that he would kind of like get backstage with or something. Hey, is a Missy here? <laughs> <laughs> is a Missy here? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, I was like, get this fucking guy out get, of here. <laughs> please leave, sir. Please leave right now. So this is funny because he hasn't been on Kermit and Friends in a long time. And they explained what happened the last time he was on the show. Years ago, John and I had a fight about uh, a guy that was on Kermit and Friends. So I typically... Who I didn't know had a mental problem. Yeah, so he had a... He was... But I didn't um... know that. I was unaware of that. So, you know, it, yeah. so I made a no. mistake. And no. I apologize. I didn't know. <laughs> John was having a screaming match with a retard. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't know. <laughs> That's the level he's at. Either did Susanna. <laughs> Suzanne or didn't know either. But he has an excuse. He has a really good excuse for fighting with this retard. I've never heard this before. He took my potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> he double dipped in the salsa. <laughs> so I've never heard that people probably know about this, but I'm just catching up to this one myself. No, but I didn't know. I didn't know. And plus I had like 10 beers. At that point, that was, that was in my smoking stage, Lisa. I don't smoke anymore. Yeah. So I had an OCD thing where I had to have one beer, a fresh beer with every cigarette. So I would like literally not finish a beer because I'd have to have a different beer. So I, so I would go through like 15 beers because I wanted to smoke 15 cigarettes. It, you know, OCD is a horrible thing to have. <laughs> That is that is the worst excuse that for is. alcoholism I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> I needed another cigarette, so I had to have another beer. Uh, see, the, the, the problem is, audience, that I, I have to jerk off whenever you leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's the OCD. <laughs> it's the OCD. It's crippling. <laughs> Into a fresh Kleenex. <laughs> All right. So then Elisa gets into the questions that we all want to ask John. These are the answers we need. John's talking about a show. I do three shows a week that are political. And then on Sundays, I do my beer on the balcony show. That's not political. But I change my green screen and I drink beer and we talk to a comedian. And she says, so how much money can you make drinking beer on your balcony? Oh God. Well, the beer on the balcony is just, uh, you know, that's just here. This is my balcony. You want to see my balcony? That's was yeah. not a question. I don't, I don't know if I could change it here. Damn it. I don't know if I could change. He's trying change to change his green screen. He can't figure it out. Ah, uh, damn it! Oh, somebody's calling like... me. One second, John. Kermit and All friends. Right. All right, so she gets distracted. He changes the subject. She gets distracted, but props to Elisa. She comes back to it. Okay. Okay. So you're doing a lot of shows. So yearly, what kind of salary is that? Um, I, I'd rather not say, but it's it's pretty it's pretty well. Is yeah, it I, like? I, I, I do fairly well. Is it like fifty thousand, a hundred thousand? It's I do fairly well. <laughs> Two hundred thousand. Are you on cameo? Yeah. 
Okay, okay. So what's better for you? Is well, it YouTube? Well, can we all say a prayer for a comedian, a friend of mine? Oh, Jesus. A uh, prayer? Yeah, so then he brings up Kate Quigley, who OD'd at that party with all the other comedians. Yeah, I heard him died. drop Adam Hunter's name, too. Yeah. So he wanted to change the subject. And by the way, when he says, I do fairly well, he's referring to drinks at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can afford a $13 drink from time to time. No, no, right. no, no. We're talking well drinks. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> We're talking. <laughs> well, I, I love that. And, and Mark pointed out. Can I out, get an uh, Admiral Nelson? <laughs> Admiral Nelson. Can I get a uh, Mr. Pibb and Admiral Nelson? <laughs> so Mark Fellower. Do you have a uh, Montezuma tequila? Mark Fellower pointed out that this is genius, this line of questioning, because she says, all right, you do cameo. And she was asking him, which do you make more money on? Because she can go on and see how popular he is on Cameo. You know what I mean? So you can kind of get oh, to the God, bottom yeah. of things. Yeah, kind of, kind of a smart line What's of What's he asking on Cameo? I he know you know. changes the subject. Oh, I don't know. Get the fuck. You don't know? Up? I'll look it up. Right, I got the app. All right. Of course you do. Are you I, on Cameo, Vinny? No. All right. But I send like Cameos to people as a goof. John takes credit for uh, sticking to his word he's going to do the show, even though he's in the middle of his fantasy draft. This Which is, is so fucking great. Oh, hold on. I just got to... Hold on. I just got to... Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, what were you saying? I got T. Higgins and from the Bengals. He doesn't have to do that live. That's his way of being a big shot, I would think. Well, you do have to draft when the other people are drafting. But whatever. Okay. <laughs> he also explains he's in six fantasy leagues. Yeah. and Anyway. Would you like to know what he's categorized under on Cameo? Uh, radio personality? Comedian. Oh, jeez. Oh. Wrong. <laughs> eh. Let's see. 24-hour delivery. Okay. I know the number. You know the number? Da-da-da-da. Come on down. Producer Chris, what do you think? Stuttering John wants for a cameo. Oh, God. I think I used to know this. 75. Carl. Carl. Yeah, I'd go I'd go like 50, probably. 79.99. 79.99. Oh, he's, he wants to trick you into thinking it's in the 70s. Ladies and gentlemen. One dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, 79.99. He's not getting a lot of cameos then. There's a, a thing called a fan club on here. Uh huh. And he has 17 people in it. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I know his mom and his sister are two of them. So there's 15. There's reviews here. There's cameo <laughs> reviews. Yeah. Home run. What a fantastic birthday surprise. Your life must be horrible, sir. One of his cameos is from <laughs> Trucker Andy, if you guys remember. Yeah, yeah. That was a fun one. All right. So uh, he talks about how he kept his word. Yeah, yeah. And Alicia, I'm a man of my word, you have to admit. I you are. I don't, I'm pleased. I'm so pleased. Hold on one second. I was Kirk nervous about the football draft because it, because it was hey, going too long. John's comedy show last week in Florida when he was there a couple weeks ago. John's comedy show in Florida? Okay. Yeah, they were giving away free tickets and only 10 people showed up. Oh, really? Should I ask him about that? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not true. <laughs> I love her. It's a yeah. fallacy. I love her on this show. Oh, I yeah? am a huge... 10 people showed up and it was free? I'm a huge fan of her now. Want me to ask him about that? She just played this perfectly. She's amazing. She's acting like she's a neutral party to all of this. Like, oh, wait, what's going on? Yeah, she's a newscaster. <laughs> it's great. This is my favorite question that she asks because... She's asking him if he ever gets embarrassed about things about himself on the internet. And then she brings up a very specific example. Okay, so, so there was uh, an article that... I had you know, my was... head shaved on The Tonight Show. Nothing embarrasses me. No, but that's different than like... So like it says, former Howard Stern castmate Stuttering John lost his lawsuit against SiriusXM and claimed the broadcaster was exploiting his celebrity to gain listeners and attract more advertising. Does that get embarrassing? Why? Does that... Why? I'm appealing to, to lose... right now. So do you think you're going to win that lawsuit? Uh, is it embarrassing that you lost your lawsuit, your ridiculous, frivolous lawsuit? No, why? I'm appealing. I'm appealing because I lost. Why would I be embarrassed? Will you be embarrassed when you lose the appeal? Like, when will you be embarrassed by your actions? Because you should be. There will never be a day <laughs> why aren't where you in- John Melendez is self-aware enough to be embarrassed of himself. She's basically saying, why aren't you embarrassed? John, why aren't you embarrassed? What's going on here? Anyone else would be embarrassed by this. His explanation of it was fascinating too oh yeah by the way did you see that this made oh shit who wrote there was an article written about this daily caller maybe um that they talked about the fact that john was on her show saying that 
it's the lawsuit is not just for him, but also for Doug Goodstein and Scott DePace and Steve Garillo. Cause he, he was going to others like there's other staffers who want to get in on this. And that's not true. It's just him. Okay. Hold on a second. You, I cannot uh, disagree with you more. Do you not think for a fucking second, had this lawsuit gone anywhere, which it wasn't, yeah. but had it gone anywhere that those motherfuckers would be calling Popak's office. Well, it's possible because yeah, if he gets a settlement or something and it's easy to do, then I could see that making sense. But at the same time, you know that John is reaching out to them and going, hey, do you want to be part of this class action suit? They sent me this bill. If First step is you pay it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He would have gotten more guys involved if they were really interested in being involved. Right. I'm speculating. What do I know? No, I'm just saying, though, like, honest to God, if this went somewhere, Jackie would be suing. Everybody would be suing. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think Jackie. I, I think most of the people have moved on in their lives. Huh. To be honest with you, I mean, I, you don't think those motherfuckers would take there the would payday. be some people. Yeah, yeah, they would yeah, go for the for sure. payday. Are you kidding me? For sure. But only centering John is the one who's willing to do this. And Elisa says, yeah, but isn't it good that you're on the radio still? Now, notice I didn't sue Howard Stern personally because, you know, I wouldn't do that. That's not in my nature. I'm suing Sirius XM and, and now I'm going to appeals court. But hasn't it helped you at all? In your career to get, get those billboards. No, to get to- no, I don't need them to play any more of me. Okay. So this is interesting. I don't think that's Because accurate. 15 years passed before he sued Sirius XM. So you can't say that this has been a problem for me in my career all this time when he didn't do anything about it for 15 years. Unlike Michael Lane Jr., a, a bit, a good positive bit on the Stern show that's playing on Sirius XM that somebody hears a funny old bit of him doing the man on the street stuff, asking Vivica Fox if she does anal or something fucking sure. stupid. Yeah. Someone might go, I wonder what Stuttering John's up to. And they'll be sadly disappointed, but he might get a download. For sure. And just keeping his name out there, even for people who are semi-following his career still, it just keeps him top of mind. Right. It's only good. So somebody calls in with a brilliant question because when he does stand up somewhere, it's formerly of the Howard Stern show. Now, I will tell you something interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I know what okay. you're going to say. Okay, this guy uh, just wrote in the chat, John, will you remove uh, Stern from okay. all your advertising? Okay, this is another thing. See, listen, I love, see, I love this because I get to address all the horse shit that's out there on social media. All right, so you were going to say that that's not up to John. The clubs promote him as from the Howard Stern show. No, I was going to tell you about an incident I had with Bob Levy. <laughs> okay, let's talk about that instead. Bob's a nice guy. I got zero beef with Bob. But um, we uh, had him at a club. And on the advertising, it said from the Howard Stern show. And he called and was like, please take that off. Right. He said, please take that off. I'm not involved with them anymore. And I just, I don't want to have any association with it. So people are like, are cautious of that. There are other people who are in that world that do not trade off of that name. Right. So he could, he hasn't been on the Stern show since 2004. Bob Levy was on after that. He was on the series. He was doing the roasts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, He was on the channel. He had the grumpy old, grumpy old men. Did Stuttering John make it to Sirius XM? Was it 2004 that he left? Right. And then he went over in 2006. Right. Okay. Right. So John never made it over to Sirius. And John's still letting the clubs use Howard Stern, so he could stop them from doing that. It's a phone call. <laughs> it's a phone. It's an email. Yeah, it's an email. Yeah. It's a text. Instead, he goes, I don't want him playing me, but I'll use his name to sell tickets in Reno. Yeah. Posters were changed when Bob Levy specifically said, yep. hey, listen, I'm not involved. You could put Opie and Anthony. I do stuff with O&A. It's like, cool. No problem. All right. So let's talk about Howard Stern. Look. I have nothing bad to say about Howard. I have in the past because he said a lot of horrible things about me. I have nothing bad to say about Howard except for all the things I've already said about him. And then he goes on to bash Howard for how he treated Scott the Engineer. But that's what he does. Yes. And Anthony and uh, Artie pointed that out years ago. Yes. The thing with John is you can't just have a good-natured goof with the guy. No. He shows up with like the worst thing he could come up with because he oh, thinks yeah. that's going to top everybody. Oh, yeah. Ar- Artie goofed on him. And got a laugh, and he immediately went to, why'd you kill yourself? Why'd you try to kill yourself? Yeah. How you doing? How's the suicide going? Yeah. It's like, what did So, I- like, was Howard a dick to Scott <laughs> the Engineer? I would imagine Howard's a dick to everyone. He is. I would sure. imagine he's a cunt of a person. And Scott the Engineer, I mean, I'd love to know both sides of this, because I heard a little bit about what happened at the Christmas party that got him fired. Yeah. It sounds like Scott the Engineer might have been a little bit of a problem, too. I don't know. I could be Stuttering right. John actually told me that story in our phone call about that Christmas party. Really? Yeah. I asked him about it. I said, what happened? And he told me. Interesting. Yeah. 
Let's talk about that afterwards because I want to see if we both heard the same story. Okay. Because John always says he has moles and he has people telling him stuff. I don't know that he does because he's usually wrong about everything he says about yeah. Howard Stern. Well, show. no, he try. I mean, obviously, Scott is the hero of the story. Yes. Which yeah. is probably believable. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll have to talk about that. So Alyssa says, or Ali- I keep saying Alyssa because we did that show with Alicia, which is really annoying. Alisa. Alisa. What's her name? Alisa. She's so great. She's the best. And she says, so Scott, the engineer, are you still friends with him? Did you say you were getting her on the show right Yeah, now? yeah, we'll call her up. I wanted to show you her work first, and we can get her on and, and talk to her about how she pulled this off. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So John has to bring up the fact that not only is he friends with Scott, the engineer, but he bought him dinner. So, okay, so that that is, uh, that is very upsetting. Are you close with Scott? I'm very close with Scott. When I was in okay. Florida, I had dinner with Scott. Yes, I picked up the tab just to go back to that other guy calling me a cheap bastard. Yes, I picked up the tab. I, I wouldn't be friends with you anymore if you felt the need to say that on a show. Hey, you know producer Chris? Yeah, I just went out to dinner with him. I bought. I treated him to, to that dinner. Unless he says otherwise. <laughs> don't, don't ask him. <laughs> Whatever you do. His head goes to the weirdest places. Yes. Oh, he's constantly thinking about... He has a stream of trolls every time he does a show of people goofing at him for his disgusting feet and his ears and how bad he stinks. <laughs> and so everything he says, he's just like, and I, I was told that my armpits weren't that sweaty that day. I was at the dinner. <laughs> Not only did I pick up the tab, there were no stink lines at that yeah. dinner. You could ask anyone. There were not stink lines emanating from me. I looked on Yelp. That restaurant had cockroaches the week before also. <laughs> I did not bring them in with me. <laughs> so then Gonzo Shitcock calls in. God bless Gonzo. And ask the question that we all want to know the answer to. Hey, um, yeah, I was just calling because John sounds like he says he's not bitter, but uh, he's he, as soon as he says he's not bitter, he goes on for 10 no, no. minutes. No, 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 no. That's Gonzo, on. by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Gonzo, hold on a second. I'm not, bitter. I'm, not bitter. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. But but if you don't take care of a guy whose wife is dying, wait, I can't hear Gonzo. I can't hear what Gonzo saying, John. Oh. What what Gonzo? Yeah. So okay, this is brilliant by yeah. Elisa. Because this that's the question. Why are you so fucking bitter? And she just wants him to like get in a few more jabs on him. So she stops John from talking so that this can happen. No, I'm just saying, like, if John says he's not bitter, but then he goes on and, you know, continues to be bitter for 10 So I just wonder if John, if John has, like, any self-awareness that he is bitter. And uh, I don't know, because he, okay. he gets very bitter about things. Okay. Okay, thank you, Gonzo. Okay, thank you, Great Gonzo. Call. Okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Great call. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just wondering if he has any self-awareness, because he is bitter. Okay, great call. I love that because she's complimenting everyone all the time. So that's like kind of her cover for this. Like, no, no, I like everyone calling it. It's great. She we is want everyone on the evil show. and I love her. <laughs> it's so amazing. I'm a very good Christian girl. John, do you have any self-awareness at all? Great question. Here's another fun question that came in from a caller. Right, let me just take this caller. Uh, Kermit and friends. Uh, yeah, uh, it's me again. Two part question for Mr. Melendez. Okay. Um, <laughs> How much money did you donate to Scott's GoFundMe? And also, what happened to your front tooth? Did you get punched? Thank you. (laughs) Okay. So, oh, my God. When he asked that question, I was sitting at my desk. (laughs) I had two screens going. This was playing on one thing, and I'm looking the other way, and my head jerked (laughs) so fucking fast. Like, what is going to be the answer to this question? All right. Well, let's see what what John says. How much money... How much money did he donate to Scott's GoFundMe? Because he's pissed at Howard for giving him nothing. More more or less than one cameo. Yeah. More or less than how much Howard gave him. His question was about what? I can't remember. Um, how much did you donate to Scott uh, oh, Scott's oh, charity? Oh. Well, first of all, I was unaware of the GoFundMe till after he, you know, until after he closed it out. So I didn't get a chance to. Um, oh, he was unaware. I bought him dinner. Didn't you hear? Interesting. Because... He had a podcast back in April, April 3rd of 2018, three days after he started the GoFundMe. Oh, no. And he brought it up. Scott Salem, like I already had said, to be on GoFundMe is pathetic. He was calling him out for having a GoFundMe on his podcast. This is where John gets into trouble because he goes, John, you're lying. John, you're you you're piece the of internet. shit. <laughs> yes, you moron. You, no, that's beyond moron. That's fucking piece of shit level. Wow, yes. dude. I have another example. He insulted for having the GoFundMe, and he has the 
Yes. Holy shit. <laughs> My mind is blown. He also says Artie Lane gave him seventy thousand dollars out of his out of his own pocket. Like, this isn't a loan. Here's seventy thousand dollars. Do whatever you can for your wife who's dying of cancer. And John did nothing. John didn't even give him the seventy nine ninety nine. And John's the hero of this story somehow. I am in shock. He insulted the man's GoFundMe, and you have the balls. <laughs> At least, according to John's story, Howard donated money to a cancer charity in right. his wife's name. Right. What did you do? Oh, my God. What did he do except for insult the guy on his pocket? All right, so. I'm very close with him. He, apparently, he didn't listen to that episode. Let's find nobody. Nobody listened to that episode. Except for Carl. If it weren't for the subreddit, we wouldn't know about any of this shit. It's great. God bless all you. Dabbler's Anonymous. <laughs> really good uh, subreddit. So this is another example of him spewing out a lie, not remembering that he told us about this. Then they'll go on and they'll say, oh, John doesn't pay his child support. Elisa, I would be put in jail mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. I didn't pay my child support. Yeah, that is ridiculous because there's no way for them to know that. They only know what they've heard on your podcast or on the no, radio. What, That's we all they know. know what- Right. We only know what we've heard on your podcast. So we had Tammy Pescatelli on, and he's telling a story about the time his ex-wife served him on their anniversary because he was he in a not pay child Because he hadn't support. been paying his child support. He's like, can you believe that, Tammy, on our anniversary? You know, I she think- probably had a glass of wine. She probably laughed her ass off. Oh, for sure. And then he has the balls going on here. and be- People are making up the story that I don't pay my child support. You told us you weren't paying your child support. (laughs) And you wanted us to feel bad for you, too. That's the funniest part about it. So then our buddy Kyle comes on the show. This this was another brilliant part of this because Cy and Z or Unique or Kyle. So he comes on on a video screen. So now it's a a three-panel screen. You got Elisa, John, and Kyle. And he would, like, motherfuck John, and then they'd take him off the screen. They'd come right back on. They'd be off. He'd come (laughs) back on again. It started like this. I got my heir to the streets, John. <laughs> what is this um, threatening people behind the scenes, the docs people, everything I hear on Who Are These Podcasts? What's going on? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You are aware you know, of the show people... Who Are These Podcasts and Kumia and Julie go on there and trash you, right? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> they don't boo nobodies, Sion. Let them trash me all they want. I don't care. I don't care. I do my own show. It doesn't bother me. I love it. He goes, you are aware that Kumia and Shulia both trashed you on that show, right? You do know about that. And then John, who couldn't be more upset about it, he wanted to sue me. He wants to shut me up more than anything else in the world. Yes. Says, why would I care about that? Because you, you know admit what? it out loud all the time. How fucking long is that pike? I'm just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> How goddamn long is this pike? There's actually an accident. Okay. By, by okay. accident four. <laughs> it's, it's backed up quite a bit, unfortunately. So this is just a clip of them yelling at each other because this, this show just devolves into just childish behavior. Why do you cover your face so much every time you do a show? Because you don't get the gig. I'm just gig curious why you do beauty. that. I, I, okay, now it, shut your mouth and I'm going to ask about the chick who donated to you. It's and an odd phenomenon you stopped, that you cover your you face. You stopped so donating because you threatened her because you had to pay your rent. I don't know. I got a, I got a chip tooth and I don't care. Well, Do you able to that, open up your soda can with that tooth? You have to cover your face? <laughs> <laughs> I have a goddamn cockroach in my ear and I don't care. <laughs> So now this turns into tough guy, John. So we've got him riled up and he's going to tell people... Come on and fight me at Pickwick Pub. Fucking beautiful. Yeah. So, so you know, this Scion dude comes on under a different name because they're all cowards. He doesn't even come on with his real name because they're all cowards. Uh, my name is Stuttering John Melendez. I live in Canoga Park. I go to Pickwick Pub every day around 3 or 4 with Lynn Hills. Feel free to come by if you have a beef with me. I know how to take care of myself. Okay. So he, he invites people to come fight him. And then later on... He explains that he has a a death threat, a very credible death threat. I've had a guy at my pub threaten to kill me. A big, big dude came and whispered in my ear, I'm going to kill you. So to think that it couldn't happen, it could. People are killed all the time. You know what I mean? So, So I'm not comparing myself to John Lennon. 
I want to know the rest of that story. If someone in a bar, they're physically next to you, they say, I'm going to kill you. Like, I would have been like, well, what did you do? That? This is the one place where there should have been a follow-up question or two. Yeah, like when? Yeah, yeah. when did that happen? What did you do? Did the guy try to kill you? Was what that happened? before or after you converted the lesbian? Like, I don't <laughs> believe this it was, story. It was the same night, I'm <laughs> same sure. night. And then he talks, he has the balls that you're saying, and he said this multiple times, come to Pickwick Pub, I'm there every day at three. If you want to fight me, that's where I'll be. People on these social media sites threaten to come to the places I hang out and hurt me. You're inviting them to. You literally just put out an open invitation to anyone who wants to fight you. And he's like, I can't believe people want to fight me now. He's like John Cena with the U.S. championship. Drink. Drink. <laughs> drink. It's an open challenge. So then, because John is explaining to Unique that you're just spouting all these lies. You don't know any of this. It's all hearsay. And then John decides to do the exact same thing back to him. So... So I'm just saying, the people that like to throw stones, they live in glass houses. This, not not how that saying goes. <laughs> this no. freaking guy, who I know what his criminal record is. So, Kyle, Damn you right. want me to get into that part of it? Because I can certainly get into your criminal history. Why do you like know his do. criminal history? That is because, weird, John. Because, that is very weird. You should not know anything about that guy. Stuff. Right. He goes on to later explain. He goes, but at least I can't help it. People in my chat tell me all the stuff that he was arrested for. I'm like, well, that's the same thing that people are doing to you, where they just put it on the internet and then you believe it. Right. Like, are you that stupid? Why do we we ask this question question? at this point? That's a dumb question. What are you, stupid? Yes. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Yes. That's that's a pretty good point. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, if people are making shit up about you, you know, like your last name's Hamburger or things like that, it means you're doing something right. Then, for a week on these shows that, you know, that Scion had mentioned, they they start writing, I can't afford my gas bill. I mean, was it wintertime? Gas bills are expensive. I just bought a new car. Then they write, oh, he bought a used Kia. Like, they make up. This stuff. Yeah. But you know what? They do it, which means I must be doing something right. If they have this much time and energy to waste into hating on me. All right. First off, you are doing something very right. You never change. Right. Yes, never correct. change. Correct. Correct. You're doing everything right in my eyes. Now, he said people made up a thing that I couldn't pay my gas bill. He didn't pay his gas bill. Yeah. I think we established the fact that when your gas gets shut off, yeah. it's not because you missed a payment. Correct. Ooh. He missed many, many payments. Do you on know his that there's bill. like laws before they could shut off your gas? Right. And you're like, you have to get to a certain point before they could do Especially that. Especially in California. Yeah. In California, you can move into somebody else's house and they're like, yeah, he lives there now. Sorry. Yeah. Well, That's how do you think he works. got the condo? He owns it. Right. Well, he's using his neighbor's Wi Fi. So why would we think you could pay your gas bill if you can't even pay for your own Wi Fi? Which is the thing you need to do your He stuff. offered it. He offered yeah. it. What am I supposed to do? Give it back? He offered the Wi-Fi. So the other thing, too, he goes, I just bought a new car. He has a 2013 Mercedes C300 series. Oh, that's the that's C the, series. The yeah. C series, yeah. That's not an expensive one. It's 2013, so it's eight years old. Uh, Ke- Kelly Blue Books at about $15,000 Okay, for that car. Yeah, that checks out. It's nice. Beautiful. Nice car there, John. Congratulations. Silver? Aren't all the C-Series silver? I think they all are, yeah. yeah. I think that's the only way they come. So let's get into more of the shouting match that happens on this show. All right, John. You just proved something to me. Now how I, I know that woman was telling the truth. You just threatened to, like, release. I want to get into your criminal history like everybody doesn't threat- know and no, I don't say no, it. No, I'm saying you're out here. So you're out here accusing me You obviously me do that to I'm everybody people, you have a problem I'm with. I'm saying people Everything in glass houses you, you just shouldn't them. throw stones, you try doing with me. Kyle. I've Kyle, if you're going to go on and make false accusations about me, why, uh, why don't I have the same right to make truthful accusations about you? If he's going to make... See, this was John's show would be amazing. Fallacy. He has fallacy. These, he has boring, <laughs> it's all fallacy. Sycophant. He has these boring conversations with politicians. 
He could be talking to guys like Science and fucking going off like yeah. that. It's hilarious. They could team up and talk about you, but right. no. I swear to God, he should be making so much money on the internet. He should be. He really should be making way more money than he makes. Honest to God, even if he was just at the zoo, I would pay money every day oh. to fucking throw peanuts at him. Oh, for sure. Every day I'd throw money. I would put money in the fucking... I'd try thing. to hit his tooth. <laughs> You so, know that's my bad tooth. So so this unique guy <laughs> is getting in there back and forth, and then finally they stop letting him on the show on audio-wise. So now he's typing in the chat. Near the end of the show, John is still getting triggered by Unique. He's still spewing the hate in your chat room. The kids love Susanna's new husband more than you. Really? I mean, <laughs> how, how do you know any of that? I saw the to speech. Be true? You don't. So, yeah, I know. How funny is that? It's like, yeah, John, of course we don't know that. That's why it's funny because you react like that. This is more trolling from you, Nick. But, man, he was able to give me. See, this is that this is that Kyle guy again, Elisa. Suzanne's new husband pays for their college, okay? Now, see, this is the kind of bullshit that a guy like this Kyle, this is what he, they do. I didn't even see that comment. Yeah, yeah it's on there. But this is what a low life this Kyle guy is who has a criminal record and yells at his mother in law while inebriated. So he goes on to explain that there's no way the stepdad is paying for college because he put away $300 in bank accounts every month, all the years that the kids were growing up. Okay. And so Gonzo, to fuck with them, writes in the chat college is more than 300 bucks, John. And of course, John, you can't compute. People are fucking with him. He just has to react. Oh, God. Now, who are you going to trust here, Elisa? Me, a man who's never been in prison, never got a DUI, doesn't post his show inebriated, <laughs> or a guy with a criminal record. Okay, so guys, uh, 300, 300 for each kid a month. Do you understand that? That's 3600 a year, each year of their lives. You do the math, Gonzo. I don't lie. I don't like to lie. Try not to accuse me of lying because you'll lose because I don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> He's so stupid. That might be my favorite. Favorite fucking clip of all time. I don't post shows while I'm intoxicated. <laughs> yeah. This... I wait till I wake up from the stupid to post them. Yeah, this this guy has a DUI on his record. I only drive when it's light out. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the pub at three o'clock in the afternoon. Yes, I know. This guy's. <sighs> right. Oh, I thought this was funny too because he's explaining how he doesn't go on Reddit and social media sites. People will tweet me before I could block them. Clip of Scion Z oh. does a show about <laughs> Stutter and John. Scion Z, they tweet me this or text me with phony numbers. That's what they do. I love that he goes, the only reason why I see this is because people tweet it to me and then I block them immediately. He's just blocking. He's a blocking motherfucker, this guy. <laughs> Good. Let him block. He I'm not Raiders. blocked. He retweeted me yesterday. That's right. He did retweet you yesterday. Yeah, because I said something very kind to him. That was... Just the art of the backhanded compliment. I, I actually have the clip of him talking about this on a show, and then I'll let you read your uh, okay. your compliment there. I tweeted, you know, Howard's telling all these anti-vaxxers to go F themselves, and I was like, I'm, I'm glad to see Howard is following my lead and regurgitating the same stuff I've been saying on this show for about a year now. And now he now he's saying it. Look, I know Baba Booey Tata Tutti listens to the show every single day. I know it as a fact. As a fact, because he told one of the people at the show, who was a mole of mine, who told me that he listens to every show on his drive back to Connecticut. So I know Baba Booey is listening. So let's all say, hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Have fun in the house that tooth built. Oh, that's a good one. So he thinks that Howard stole his material because Gary's listening to the Sittering John show, and he's going into the writer's room and going, Howard, we got to start talking about these anti-vaxxers. Stuttering John is killing it. You mean that Howard Stern doesn't have an opinion on people who aren't getting the vaccine? The man who's locked himself in a fucking castle? The man who's best friends with Jimmy Kimmel? Whose monologue was, if you don't get the vaccine, I hope you die. And then he cries. <laughs> yeah. And so Suttering John's a fucking moron. 
obviously, this idea that Gary Del Bate is listening to a show, the show has been, Howard Stern show has been off for two months. He's like, yeah, he listens to it on his commute to Connecticut. From where? <laughs> what are you talking about? What commute? It's just <laughs> driving around. <laughs> gotta go listen to the, the Stuttery John show. Oh. Anyway, so he... Tw- Mary, I gotta go listen to Stuttery John. <laughs> so you're all proud of yourself <laughs> because you retweeted that tweet. No, I said to him, I go, John, uh, I think he's been screaming about this for a while. And he's like, well, I know he listens. And I said, well, you know, John, I'm sure he does. Because personally, your show is way more entertaining to me than ours. <laughs> yes. And I got to retweet. That's very well done. And it is very true. I completely stand behind that statement. You entertain me a thousand times more than Howard Stern, John. One thousand percent more. All right. Let's... What you doing? What you doing, Carl? Let's see if we can call Lisa. <gasps> oh, Let's so talk excited. to her. I have a lot more clips, but oh, I'll sit here and listen to John all day long with you. I'm enthralled yeah, okay, by this. Good, good. Yeah, because we do have more to talk about with Stuttering John and this Elisa interview. Because, like I said, I it took me hours to go through all of the content that was there. I was very impressed with how everything went. I could have been happier with the way that went. I know, and he leads with. I don't want this to be contentious. <laughs> it got a little contentious. A little contentious. Not with her. She kept it perfect. No, not with her at all. Yeah. You know what? I think, like, if that was a dude who was hosting that show, he would have tuned out. Like, yeah. he s- hung in there with Chrissy. Yep. Hey, is this Elisa? Yeah, who's this? It's Carl from Who Are These Podcasts. How you doing? Oh, hi, Carl. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Hold on one second, Carl. Hold okay. on one second, okay? One second. Don't yep. Sorry, this is with podcast. I love that she just answers her phone. So, uh, Elisa is working right now. So, I told her. I I didn't tell her when I would call her. And She's bathing Andy Dick. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> Carl, I'm right here. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for taking a second with us today. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. My pleasure. I completely forgot. That's all right. I know that you uh, you got called by, by Drew the other day. So, I heard you on uh, Drew and Mike kind of recapping this Kermit and Friends episode that everyone's talking about. Yeah, it was yes, it was brilliant. We were just playing a bunch of clips and praising you for the brilliant way you were able to keep John hanging for near ninety minutes. Hi, Elisa. My name is Vinny. Sorry. I just wanted to say hi. I should have introduced Vinny here and tell you that was one of the most well done interviews I have ever seen in my life. Bravo! Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to interview John. My goal was to have them him on there as long as possible and to get the truth out, and I think we did. You, you nailed it. The questioning about how much money he makes had him so befuddled. He didn't know how to address that at all. You were giving ranges. Yeah, it's 50000 200000 What are we talking here? You know, Carl, I, I don't think you should assign such like nefarious intentions to her interview. I think she did the proper interview. Yeah? Yeah. I don't think she was trying to be mean to the guy. You don't think she was goofing on him by having uh, Unique on over and over again and Gonzo call again? Oh, no. <laughs> I really was curious how much Stuttering John makes doing his podcast, and he never answered me. Yeah, we, so we're I all curious. Have... Yeah, we, nobody knows. It's a mystery. It's a great question to ask, for sure. Now, did you have these callers lined up ahead of time, or were they just started calling in because John showed up? I messaged, I DM'd uh, Cy and Z uh, right before. I really wanted somebody to come on and kind of be like the bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> nailed it. And, um, <laughs> yeah, he was perfect. He was absolutely perfect. And, uh, yeah, I was just thrilled with him and everybody that contributed. And, uh, yeah, it went as good as it could go. The only thing is John's very mad at me right now, and he's refusing to talk to me, and he won't come on Kermit and Friends again. And That'll teach you. Yeah. At the end of the episode, John starts lecturing Elisa about what he would have done differently. I'm having a really hard time hearing you guys right now. Can I call you back? Um, sh- nope. Uh, <laughs> only because this, this number goes straight to voicemail. Oh, okay. Can you call me back in like 45 minutes? Of course. Okay, thank you guys so much, right. and I really appreciate your support. And, uh, yeah, Stuttering John, if you're listening, please call me and come back on Kermit and Friends. Yes, come back at Kermit and Friends every day. <laughs> All right, Thanks, we'll call you back. Thanks, Bye. Guys. You know right now she's texting Stuttering John to get him on the line, to put him on the line oh, with you. That would be great. Because she's a goddamn mastermind. That would oh, be amazing. God. Yeah, she's going to fucking school you in 45 minutes, oh, kid. if that happens, I'm letting you take over the show. Because you're buddies with John. Buddy! Hey, buddy, it's your, buddy, it's your boy Vinny! Hey! 
she books me, right? But then she has guests that she knows are going to trash me to come on. Now, I had to say to this, I had to, I had to, I had to say to this lunatic, how do you expect to ever get a guest on if you're going to have somebody on and then sabotage them? No, that's actually the only way you're interesting, John, is to have you on and then sabotage you. I disagree. I think that if I had John on an episode of The Creep Off, I think it would have sucked. I think it would be an amazing John, episode. He has no sense of humor. No, he the does, only time though. he's funny is when you get him revved up and you tell him he's, he's bitter. You just never give the man a chance, Carl. How do you expect to ever build your... No one's listened to more fucking Stuttering John podcasts than I have. I've given him plenty of chances to be interesting or entertaining in any way. Your audience, if all you're going to do is sabotage... Heck, I'm the biggest name this chick has ever had on our show. How does she expect to get anybody bigger? If her whole goal is to sabotage them. Now, I didn't really care. I enjoyed it, actually. Oh, he enjoyed, I, he enjoyed it. Okay. No, he did not. No, he definitely that. did not. He did not enjoy that for a second, and he tried so hard. More lying. He was such a tryhard during that. Yep. I enjoyed I enjoyed demeaning these trolls to their faces, calling out their criminal history, their criminal backgrounds and records, and their inebriated shows that they do, and their obsessions with me, <laughs> and their spread of misinformation about me, which is which continues on a daily basis. John, enough with the drunk shaming. What are you doing? <laughs> That's the what last place you, you should go with that. Doing? <laughs> I swear to you, it doesn't bother me. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the time doing this troll show, but it's just a horrible uh, uh, business. It's. It's a horrible business plan. Oh, he's concerned for her. Look at I. I'll go out in there anytime and have people trash you to my face. But I just want to let her know she's gonna have a really hard time. This is the best episode she's ever done. He's like a yeah. white knight that's just rolling around in mud. <laughs> <Yes>. He's just <laughs> the dumbest. <laughs> to he, beg a guest to come on, and then when they come on, you trash them. It's a horrible. Now they're calling his Nikki B. I love it. I'll just say, say, hey, hello, how are you? How are you doing? Thank you. Thanks for paying money. Oh, so I guess I was watching this other thing where he gets these calls coming in from people all the time. They're spoofing right. the phone number. So it looks like it's coming from a, one of his mods. And he knows it's not his mods. Now he's wised up because it's just happened hundreds of times. He's finally learned. And so he was told by Hockey Puck. I don't know if this is true or not. He's not exactly Pavlov's dog, is he? No. It no. took hundreds of fucking <laughs> times for him to times. figure that out. Yeah, he never turns his phone off. He never just said, hey, guys, text me. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. He never says, hey, use this email to contact me during the show. So, Jesus. Yeah. So Hockey Puck told him, according to him, that when these people spoof a number, if you pick up the phone, they cannot hang up and they have to pay for the phone call. So he thinks that if you answer the call and you leave it on, it's charging them money for every minute that goes by. I don't know if that's true or not. It sounds ridiculous. I, I guess it could be. Why would you be able to hang up on your end? That sounds ridiculous. And I think that they're just trying to convince him to keep them on longer. Oh, you know what I just realized? Probably somebody who's pretending to be hockey pucks out of that information. <laughs> <laughs> they probably spooked hockey pucks number. They're like, <laughs> hi. Hockey Puck says, when I get one of these calls, I answer it, I spin around three times, <laughs> and then I leave it on there. They got to pay for the call. I'll fix their wagons. He sent me a good luck charm. I have to rub it twice. <laughs> so just do the same. Nikki B, when they call you two, do the same. Just answer it. They have to pay for it. Um, And I have like 15 minutes. Anyway, I do this person show. I'm not mentioning any names. And then, you know. And then, and then she just sabotages. He's not going to mention Elisa Jordan's name. Carl just spit white claw. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to mention any names. It's the only thing anyone's talking about about you right now. It's not like you've appearance. done a million other interviews right. that people could misconstrue. We know what you're talking about. He's got me, the same the logic as Michael A. Jr. Are going to sabotage me? So in essence, she's trying to get clicks for herself, and then. But she's going to get maybe that click for that one show. But who else is ever going to want to do it? You can't, if you can't trust the person, then after she does this, she has the audacity to text me and ask me to come back. <laughs> like, uh, no, I, I did my charity for the week. 
That's, a, that's the best part. That's the Judd, coup d'etat. You, you were a great guest. We'd have you back any time. Yeah. He did his charity <laughs> for the week. Let us know. Not according to the courts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, I could do this for a very long time. Yeah, man. This is the best part of my day so far. Okay. I'm not mad at you anymore. Okay, let's do it then. This is the part where Elisa explains to John that he is bitter. And not mentally well. Yeah, this was really good. He didn't he didn't like this too much. The way she says it though, he's confused. Like, wait, did you just say wait, what? He made the same face my dog does <laughs> when right. I say something they don't understand. <laughs> it was a head tilt. It yep. was just a uh, roar. Some people donate a hundred bucks at a clip on my Yeah, show. no, no, no. I know that you get money, but I'm just saying to people, they don't realize what you have to deal with consistently. Uh, from people, I mean, people are holding guns up to John. I mean, people are driving him nuts. He's gone crazy. He's bitter. He's angry, right, John? And he's not <laughs> mentally well. None of us are. Who is not mentally well? All of us that are doing this. I wouldn't say I'm not mentally well. I think I'm fine. What do you? I don't know what you. I, I don't get it. I'm not bitter either. Oh, you're not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he's obviously a lunatic. He's obviously crazy. He's very angry. Right, John? He's like, wait, what? What just happened? No, I am perfectly, I am perfectly fine and balanced. But these trolls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you heard her mention the holding the gun up thing. This is a theme throughout this entire episode because we're talking about Heather W. And uh, people are saying that um, he, he did make a very good point. In that interview about Heather W. Well, let's, well, let's get into it, but I'm going to play this clip first. There you go. There you, you go. Her Again. I, I think Ready I know what happened. Her. There you uh, go. Here, here, wait, wait, Unique, one second. I Alicia, think I know what happened. No, no, no. I, Hold on. Okay. Alicia, yeah. he's spreading lies again. Okay. I didn't rip off anybody. All right. So this is the fact that she gave him thousands of dollars and she wants it back. And they ask him if he's going to give it back. I said, if John thinks this woman is crazy, why didn't he return her donations? He, he probably needed the money. You needed the money, right, John? You said you needed no, 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 it for rent. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Oh, so now, so let's get the premise of this question. Alicia. I don't pay my rent. Yeah. So after she holds a gun to me, now I'm going to send woman this woman money? Are you out of your mind? Yeah, and he goes on to say. that. I mean, that's a ridiculous freaking premise. So that's like the Judge Judy argument. I've seen that on the court shows a million times. Right. I borrowed $5,000 from my aunt. And then my aunt told me I was an asshole because I didn't pay her back. So, you know, I'm not talking to her. I'm not paying her. Right. Like, that's the defense. Yes. John talks about, at length, and they bring it up a lot in this episode, this photo that Heather W. sent to him. Now, I've seen this photo. Heather Tits. W. has sent it to me. What happened was she was freaked out that Sale D was going to come to Houston and th was threatening her and, and with violence. So she wanted to let John know that she is armed and that people shouldn't come to where she lives in Houston to fuck with her. So she sent a photo of her holding a gun. This turned into this bitch is threatening me holding a gun to me. It's a photo of a person who lives thousands of miles away. Holding a gun because she owns a gun. I'm not a bullet expert. <laughs> they could have shot me through my phone. I, I have a new phone. Who do you think? There were, I mean, does he like see a picture of a, a of something out of photo, like drop it because he's scared it's gonna come out and get? Oh, it's anthrax! Ah! That's a photo of anthrax. God damn it! <laughs> Fucking idiot. He's such an idiot. So nah, he's just grasping straws and not yes. pay her back. Right. So I, he's I, not that stupid. He just couldn't come up with anything to sound good to be a good excuse. Right. I do want to say, Heather W. and I broke up this week. I don't know what I said or did, but she sent me a note. She's not friends with either of us anymore, everybody. She's not going to watch the creep off anymore. She's pissed at us. Sure, fool. Great. What'd I do? I, dude, I've, I literally have no idea. She she thinks you're talking shit about her. I don't bring her up. I probably said shit about her. Well, it, it was more directed at me oh. than it was at you, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, so anyway, there's a, there's a lot of talk about um, how scared John is because he got a photo of a woman holding a gun. Yeah, well, scared enough to let everyone know that he will be at the Pickwick Pub at yeah, 3 o'clock. Right. Fucking, I'm putting my quarters down on the bar. I dare you to knock him over. Fucking, what is he doing? I'm not as scared as you sound. I'm not, see, again, <laughs> I'm not scared. But when a woman points a gun at you, you do have to 
you do have to take it into consideration. That's all I'm saying. Like, I, like, I look, I invite people to come to the pub I hang out with. I'm not scared because I know how to handle myself. See, so he's afraid of a photo, but if you want to go to the bar <laughs> to physically harm him, have at it. This is not logical. So here's the responsible thing to do. If you legitimately think this person is crazy, yeah. hey, Heather, you gave me this money, and that was very nice of you, but I got to be honest, I don't think that uh, I'm really – want to have any contact with you i don't really i'm not comfortable with this so listen i'm just gonna send you that money back and i'm gonna wish you well yeah and good luck to you oh that would never happen that money has been spent that money's gone yeah <laughs> that money is donezo uh, yeah i went into a silver <laughs> <laughs> yeah right See, there's, there's a silver bullet there's a silver bullet that it went into <laughs> <laughs> correct all right so at one point he says i could be assassinated you never know there could be other mark david chapman's out there so then they turned that into you're comparing yourself to John Lennon, one of the greatest songwriters of all time. Now, that's a ridiculous thing to say, but it gets John worked up again. Carl, did you have a record on Atlantic Records? <laughs> John, did you compare yourself to John Lennon? I compared, I compared my trolls that they could have the same kind of lunatic as Mark David Chapman. I'm not comparing myself to John Lennon. See, Elisa, this is how things get twisted. You know, yeah. I was just saying, you don't know where the next David Hinckley is going to come from. <laughs> Who's David Hinckley? Uh, <laughs> Isn't David Reagan's. Hinckley the guy who shot Reagan? Yeah. yeah. Jo John Hinckley Jr. shot yeah. Reagan. Yeah, not David Hinckley. But anyway. Yeah. Hey, uh, Carl. Yes. <laughs> there's no way. There's no way he should compare himself to John Lennon. I mean, for Christ's sake, John Lennon was married. <laughs> <laughs> John Lennon. And told jokes. <laughs> His kids talk to him and shit. Fucking come on. <laughs> The Phantom Dennis asks, is Carl going to have to pay back all the money Heather W. gave him? Funny story about that. Not only did she never sign up for my Patreon, she would message me directly and say, hey, I want to hear that Patreon episode you just did. Can you send that to me? I had to send her the, the paywall episodes. She never gave me a fucking dime. She wanted nothing to do with giving me money. Yeah, look at you. You big man on campus. God damn it. I didn't take I any money up. from the gun-toting crazy. <laughs> I fucked up Good on that you. one. Good for you. Uh, this is just a really funny clip I have to play for you guys because the question is, what's next for Stuttering John? And the answer is, this is everything I've accomplished. Pretty sure it's not rehab. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> that should be the answer. He decides to answer it with everything that he has done. And, okay. Uh, okay. No, I understand. Um, just, just lastly, um, what are your hopes You know, for what's coming next for you? You hope you win your lawsuit. Uh, what else? My life, you know, D. Snyder said Gosh. it best to me on the Howard Stern Show. John, you lived a charm life. And I have to say I'm grateful <laughs> that I have lived a charm life. I have achieved everything that I've set out to do. I, I, I wanted to get a record deal. I did. I got to tour the country opening up for bands like Ozzy Osbourne and Collective Soul and White Zombie and, you know, uh, and Motley Crue. I got to write a song with one of my idols, Joe Walsh, and got to hang out with him in his house and record with him in the studio. I have gotten to write and sell and star and sell a movie to National Lampoon. Uh, and, um, and, you know, I've... I got to work on two of the most iconic radio and TV shows and be a writer on each show. I got to be the announcer of the biggest late night show in television history where I had a stutterer, which was an inspiration to stutterers all across this nation and the world. I got to have a book deal. I got to work for some of the greatest people. I had, had the opportunity to be a father of three great children. So I, I, I lived a very good life. Uh, very, um, you know, I made a decent amount of money, put college funds all the way for, for all my kids. They'll never have to pay for one day of college in their life. And I live very comfortably, own a condo, own a Harley, own a Mercedes. I'm living a good life. So I don't regret a thing. And to answer your question, I don't know what's going to come next. I had to speed that out. It was so long. Good on her for not interrupting him once. Just, or his resume. I know. Just a fucking good hand, they call her in the business. <laughs> She's well a good hand, that Elisa Jordan. Uh, Jordana, sorry. So another guy calling to interrupt and call John out. John's having, at this point in the interview, he's not having it anymore. He's shutting it down. I thought he was about to go into my way. Yeah, right, yeah. Regrets. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, I have all of them. It has okay, been. John, 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 John. Nothing Don't you do. think it's hypocritical? I am in the I middle am... of a conversation. It has Shut nothing. your mouth. I am in Shut middle. your mouth. Bad audio. That guy's horrible middle. audio. Oh. I'm well, in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> that's not what that's the only reason why she hung up on us because he wasn't wearing headphones. <laughs> not because he was going, shut your fucking mouth, you asshole. <laughs> I love how she runs her show. She is a treasure. All right, I'm going to play a few more clips. This is, please, near, the, this please. is near the end of the episode. 
And at this point, my face hurts from laughing so hard and smiling. This is almost White Sox game funny. I mean, it's up there. It's up there. I won't lie. I refuse to lie. Yen's Nation Sport, why am I so mad? Because I'm mad when I've lived an honorable life, have been a good father to three children, who I hang out with and talk to on a regular basis, who write me the sweetest things, kindest texts, nicest Father's Day and birthday cards that any father could wish or hope for. And I get these assholes that go on social media to, to spew hatred. And lies. And Elisa, I thought this was a religious show. Yet, you know what? You allow the most hateful people on your show. So he finally admits he's mad, which is a, a start. All know? it took was a thousand people confronting him directly <laughs> yeah. to finally come in touch with one emotion. And then he goes, I thought this was a religious show. It's like the Church of Kermit. It's not a religious show. It's it's like just the name. Who? What fucking religious show is booking stuttering John? That's what's so funny about it. He's like, I thought we were gonna like talk about Jesus and and how he saves people. No, that's not what this is. Jesus about. allowed me to write for the Cream Abdul Jabbar roast. <laughs> <laughs> so he elaborates more on uh, how Lisa should run her show. Lisa, I thought this was a religious show. Yet you know what? You allow the most hateful people on your show to Great. spew horseshit. Like Scion Z. And if you really knew Scion Z's criminal past, <laughs> you might question whether you should have him on your show ever again. I'm just saying, Elisa, you're supposed to be a, a Christian. You're supposed to be all about love. You're supposed to be all about acceptance. Well, you have a guy like that on spewing lies and horseshit and anger about somebody who's your guest. Really? This is where he's finally realized what just happened over the last 90 minutes. I just, sure this God. is the guy who's standing there covered in eggs and fucking rotten tomatoes. Yeah. Just fucking realizing. <laughs> you yeah. guys are wasting food. <laughs> <laughs> you guys came to my stand-up show just to throw rotten eggs at me. Shame on all of you. <laughs> I win here. I am the winner. I have all of these eggs and tomatoes now. <laughs> this one looks pretty good. To make a frittata. So he just continues to be good out of beer can chicken. He continues to lecture her and tell her how to run her show. But I'm just saying, you might want to change your MO on your show if you want to get guests. Because if your MO is to have people come on and spread horse shit like Kyle does, then who's going to want to do your show in the first place? Just giving you a little tip. So I have all people on my show. Okay. So far, you've had. I love everyone. So far, you've had people call me a stuttering fuck face. You've had people. You had Charmin. You had Charmin, who's wonderful, and James, yes, I know. who's wonderful. I know. I'm just telling you, you keep Jesus allowing... loves all people. You keep allowing Scion back on to He's spew interested. hate. I love that he finally realized, like, you want a guy out who called me stuttering fuck face. Yeah, and she is cool <laughs> as a cucumber, yeah, man. I love her. her. It's amazing. <laughs> but she did. She goes, People did call in and defend him. There were some fucking yep. lunatics who called into the show. And, yeah, she did a great job. That was a good mix of callers. And actually, because it was like the two extremes. No callers were boring. Right, right. And actually, she calls out John for having such a problem with Kyle, which I thought was perfect. Okay, I, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry that Kyle upset you so much. No, he doesn't upset me. I ah! didn't even think you'd care. I didn't think you'd I care about care. Kyle. I thought he'd at, be inconsequential. At least, at least I enjoy it in a way. I enjoy beating them down because I enjoy them spewing the nonsense. I enjoy being able to call them out for the horseshit. I'm not mad at them. All right. So then this is okay. Elisa's recap at the very end. I get it, John. I get it. You set the story straight today. I believe you. I think you're doing great. You're doing a lot better than I thought, honestly. And I, I feel like you did a great presentation of Stuttering John today. It was great. And everybody enjoyed you. Everybody was into it. <laughs> he did a great presentation of Stuttering John. The guy gets into fights with everyone. He gets Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Kong. <laughs> like she just pulled yeah, the fucking right, sheet right. out. Yes. <laughs> fucking you're, well you're done. You're an amazing bearded lady today, and we appreciate yeah. it. We all get to stare at you and make yeah. comments. It's great. Yeah. The only thing he could have done better is fucking bite the heads off of chickens. <laughs> I love it so much.
So this is a, another fun thing that I just picked up on. This is outside of Kerman and Friends. Someone is pretending to be John's producer and fucking with his guests. So he's <laughs> this person is sending notes to these guests and booking them at the exact same time. <laughs> this is so fucking funny. So this is him with two guests on trying to figure out what's going on. Hey, Jennifer, who's emailing you and saying 2 o'clock? Clearly, uh, Vladimir Putin. Um, <laughs> yeah, someone's messing with my show. Because Sarah got one, too. Yeah, I have it, too. You have it that I'm at 2, you have that I'm at two o'clock. Yeah, well, it says here, I have 2 p.m. Pamela Inez. Yeah, you don't know her? No. No, it's a troll. Seriously? Yes. You're joking. Oh. No. Well, I don't know any person here. Pamela. How did she get my... She, she This is someone who... got all of our emails. Yeah, well, this is what they do now. Whoa. We, we must be onto something really important. <laughs> yep. Um, this is... She even picked up her phone. Yep. Pamela Agnes. And she claimed to be your producer. I don't have a producer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a producer is the biggest. <laughs> no shit, <Sean>. No shit. <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> is that the funniest shit? <laughs> this guy is just going through life with people punching him in the head every turn. Every turn he makes. Like, He's just getting socked in the face. Like, what's going on? Can I tell you, though? <laughs> I actually kind of believe him that he's so fucking shell shocked that this shit happens and he walks out not even thinking about it. I'm going to the bar. Like, I honestly think that's what he does. If I only get punched three times, it'll be a good day. <laughs> All right. This is a fun clip. Let's see if we can count the lies in this clip. Ooh. I had a great time with my children. I picked them up in my brand new car. Not brand new. Which they love, by the way. They okay. not. brought them to my beautiful condo that was <laughs> for my great neighbor Esteban to clean because I thought I was taking them out to dinner, but they would, said they'd rather come over I because, I, because I've been right telling on. them that we all got to watch Almost Famous, which, by the way, we did. And my kids loved the movie. And I love showing my kids a new movie that they never even heard of or thought of. He was talking about his kids loving Almost Famous back when Royce was the co-host of his show. He's telling this story again as if no one's ever heard it before. It all seems very fishy to me. And then after, even my son, because I made, you know, you know, I heated up some well, Italian that's a lie. bread, and you know, you know, and then we <laughs> dip it in the balsamic uh, and the olive oil. And and even my son in the middle of the movie goes, "Dad, I love this movie." And you know, he's friends with Jason Lee's son. But we had a great time, and then my son even texted Can me. Can you this introduce morning, me to I him? That movie. <laughs> and, and and my daughter did as well. I counted ten. So he says <laughs> he says the next morning, his son texted him to say how much he loved this movie that he, he didn't even know about, and then he said, and, and my daughter did too. They're both texting you how much they loved Almost Famous. Dad, thank you for showing me this great movie from 1998. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. really are such a wonderful father, and your new car is amazing could you imagine he he was going to take them out to dinner and they're like no we want to go to your apartment and clean and, no and one wants to no clean one, his apartment no one wants to go to his apartment not even him it's the Fuck funniest it. thing i would love to see a maid's face walk in there <laughs> dude she, she's like I, I watched you on the internet it looks really nice oh that's a green screen <laughs> can i say that the funniest fucking troll in the world would be to send a maid to his house oh yeah that would be the fucking funniest thing in the world is just have a maid show up. Be like, uh, are you uh, John Melendez? <laughs> Who's asking? <laughs> like, I can imagine. It will be just the best. Didn't Andy try to do that? Somebody tried to get a maid service to go to his house. I can't remember now the specifics of it, but that would be, you'd be paying a lot. Extra. Oh, God, yeah. Adam Thoreau, our, our buddy Adam Thoreau. Never heard of him. Tried to get Stuttering John to thank Matt Lewinsky. He signed in as Matt Lewinsky and gave him money, and it sounded like this. Matthew Lewinsky, thanks for the five bucks. Oh, well done. Well, he got he got him to thank him for the money, which was great, but there was something that he wrote in there. I forget what it was that he didn't get him to say, but still, very well done getting John to thank Matthew Lewinsky. And then this other he guy. He could have used that money for commissary. 
He's a little more grateful, John. This other guy named Takedown DDT in our Discord drink. By God. <laughs> uh, got John to say this on the show. Jamal Banfield, thanks for the two bucks. I will we taught it. I think he was admitting that he's retarded there. I think he did. <laughs> I think that's what just what just happened. I got a note from <laughs> it only took two bucks. <laughs> I mean, people screamed at him. He couldn't admit he was angry. <laughs> he spent two hours yelling at him. <laughs> and he couldn't admit that he was mad. I got a note from this guy, uh, Malik. He says, I met you in Chicago at the live show and told you the story, but I was drunk and it was loud. So I was probably unclear. Hopefully this email is more clear. Back when Stuttering John was on the Stephanie Miller show, I would listen to it sometimes. While John was on the show, there was an intern that was introduced and she was in her early 20s. I don't remember her name. This intern would sometimes be on the air with Stephanie and John. John would do his usual thing, drunk on Coors Light, and flirt with the intern a lot of the time she was on the show. At some point, John was warned and told to stop his creepy behavior. I knew this because when John continued to say creepy things to her, Stephanie and the intern would tell him to stop and mention the warnings he got about his behavior. I have a strong feeling one of the main reasons why John was fired from the Stephanie Miller show is because of this incident. If there's any archive of Stephanie Miller's show with John on it, maybe we can find him being turned down by that intern and getting yelled at by Stephanie. I would have emailed you sooner, but the story, I'm a lazy fuck, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I'm going to so, I'm gonna say, I don't know if any of that's true. I haven't heard this. I don't know Stephanie Miller. I don't know the intern. I, I know he wasn't fired. I know he quit. If I was Stephanie Miller, I would make like Michael Lane Jr. and scrub those episodes. Oh, you can't find him. Yeah, you can't find Stuttering. I mean, very few clips are still available. The Stephanie yeah. Miller show is Stuttering John. Because of legal it. reasons, the intern got a settlement. <laughs> Probably. Probably. All right, let's I get... don't know that. It's a joke, John. Let's get Elisa back on because I um has it been forty five minutes? Yeah. Close to that. Close enough. Hello? Hi Elisa. Is this that Carl? This is is this a better time now? It's a little better, yeah. How's it going? It's going great. I won't I won't keep you very long. We've just been doing victory laps. Uh everything that happened on Kermit and Friends was was amazing and people wanted to know. Oh my God. They wanted to ask you about um, how John demanded you have dinner with him in exchange yeah, for John, doing the show. John says he would not come on Kermit and Friends unless I went to dinner with him. That's true. So that was and, he thought uh, that was a date? Well, I said I really wanted him on Kermit and Friends. He said he would not come on the show unless I went to dinner with him. So I did go to dinner with him, and I would do it again. But I did bring, like, four other guys with me. Okay, that's very smart. Can I ask a, two questions? Uh, Follow-up, yeah. what did John wear to this dinner? Good question. Unknown. Unknown? I didn't, I didn't notice. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and then uh, did he buy? No, he was complaining about the bill. And, he, and then he made um, a Kermit and Friends uh, cast member pay the bill. And that was really bad. And he was complaining about the bill the whole night. Wait, why was he complaining about the bill if he wasn't going to pay it? That's a good question. Uh, wait, let me pull up a chair for my friend. Okay. Um, like this here, sit here for a second. So he he complained about the bill, and then he did not pay the bill. And if you want to reach out to my friend Kleenex, Chris Dick, yep. that's who paid the bill. Yes. And, uh, and Kleenex, by the way, about- was his best friend on the show. He was sticking up for John quite a bit for some reason. I, I guess he felt like he, someone had to do it. I was shocked at that. Shocked. Absolutely yeah. Shocked. Did you pay over a hundred dollars for John? Are you saying that you found that distasteful? <laughs> this type of behavior. Yeah, I was. I was very disappointed that. Um, I was so disappointed that uh, he was even talking about the bill at all. Wow. So after dinner, John goes to where? The comedy store? I don't know. He said he went to the comedy store, but like he couldn't get in or something. Was his goal to get up on stage and do a set? Yes, his goal was to get on stage, but he did not get on stage for whatever reason. So Okay. <laughs> Probably because he wasn't booked there and he's not a big enough name to, to get up there. I don't there. know. They didn't like I don't think they let him in. He might have been very drunk by that time. But I just want to say that I think John is a very good person. Yeah. yeah. I'm just disappointed on how he treated me after his appearance because yeah. I was I loved his appearance so much and everybody loved it. And he doesn't have a sense of humor about it. He doesn't understand that it's funny. It's supposed to be funny. And he just is losing that completely. He doesn't understand that the, it, he should just have a, more of a sense of humor about himself. 
Amen. I completely agree. I heard you say this with with Drew, and I thought it was a brilliant observation. John thinks of himself as an interesting and funny person because of his jokes, which is not what makes him interesting or funny. Yeah. Like, he's not coming to grips with, it's not on your terms, dummy. You're interesting for all these things that you don't want to be interesting for, but that's what you're interesting for. Yeah, no, he doesn't, he's, he's just not, like, aware in that way, but that's okay. We could still have fun with him, but he needs to come back on Kermit and Friends and answer some more questions that we have for him. That was my next question for you. Were there any questions well, that sorry, you feel, sorry. that you feel like you couldn't get out there that you really wanted to? I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, no, I was just asking, were, were there any questions uh, during that interview that you really wanted to ask that you didn't get a chance to? Yeah, yeah, how much money do you make from your podcast? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you asked that, you just didn't get an answer. That should be the no, first... No, I didn't get an answer. And why are you so bitter? That was my second question. You never yeah. answered that one either. Yeah. yeah. I'm not bitter! Yeah. I'm not bitter! I'm not bitter! <laughs> That's a great answer to that. I liked that the first number you threw out was 50000 a year, though. I thought that was funny. Because he's like, I do pretty yeah, I mean, well. It could be less. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. I, have a, I actually work in finance, so I could get uh, you know that department on it. But I'm going to find out. Because he did not answer that question. He did not answer any of the questions. And he just uh, you know deflected everything I asked him. So I'm, my goal is to get him back on Kermit and Friends so I can get to the bottom of you know what exactly is going on. What was going through your head when you asked him the simple question, John, uh, what's next for you? And he sat there for three minutes giving you his resume. What was going through your head? Yeah, I mean, uh, he doesn't know what's next. So yeah. that's what it comes down to. Obviously. He doesn't know what's next. He doesn't think anything's next. And um, yeah, I think that's what it comes down to. He doesn't know what's next. Nothing's next. But it's okay. He, I appreciated his resume. <laughs> it's funny because he actually, yeah. I could answer that question for him. He's planning to go to Washington, D.C. to talk to politicians the way he used to talk to celebrities when he was on the Howard Stern show. Like, that's his big thing that he's going to yeah. do next. He didn't even know that. He was so frazzled at that point. He had to prove that he's yeah. a big star still. <laughs> yeah. No, he's hilarious. I love him. I know you guys love him. This is all we out do. of love. I know, Carl, you you love him the way I do. And people might think that like I'm against him, but I'm really not. I love this type of person. Yeah. I think we could all relate to who this is. This is somebody that in life has tried so hard. Okay. We all try so hard, you know, and there's failures and successes and you know, that's just life that it's failures and successes. It's all how you handle it. Are you going to be a bitter person? Or are you going to keep pushing? You know, who are you going to be? And that's, that's what I got from that interview is, you know, who is John going to be? Is he going to be someone that's complaining about Howard for the rest of his life? Or is he going to be, you know, creating yes. a great, yes, he great is. entertainment for people? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right, right. It's probably the first. So, yeah, so, so you got to choose one. That, those are your two choices. Be mad at Howard. Be mad at, um, you know, Sirius XM. Or create something beautiful. You should create something beautiful. And that's what we should, all should be concentrating on. Not, not being mad at other people. Because well our said. failures are our own. And we can't blame anyone. Right. Correct. But don't yeah. you think it goes yeah. past bitterness? Like there's just like a layer of yes. delusion on yeah. top of the bitterness. Delusion, yeah. That that makes it yeah. like. Yeah, no, no. It's, it's, it's more than bitterness. I, I don't know the word, but um, but you guys, I'm still at lunch. Um, Call me anytime. Just let me know beforehand. And uh, thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys. Nice talking to you. Thank Thanks, you. Lisa. You were awesome. Great job. Kermit and thank Friends, you. Thank everybody. You so Check out Kermit, Kermit and Friends, and Friends. on you. YouTube. Okay. All right. All right bye-bye. <laughs> I'm sorry for talking so much. No, I you're just great. Had, you're an interview guy. I'm I just was so guy. interested in like just hearing what was going through her head sitting there because like it is delusion, right? Yes. It's a layer of delusion mixed with this bitterness. But my my follow up before she just cut me off was going to be: Do you think he know even knows he's bitter? No, I think he re when he says I'm not bitter, I think he believes. You it. think he means it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. Because I, th I think if he understood what his behavior was getting him, he would change it. Like, that's the great thing about delusional, bitter people. And that's what I was going to say to Elisa before she hung up, is I'm with her. I love John for the person that he is now. I, w I don't want him to change. I need him to be this guy. I need him to keep making episodes. For example, there is an entire episode of Beer on the Balcony that uh, one of our loyal listeners, Jackie Marlowe, sent me 40 timestamps for. Like, Carl, you got to check out this show. There's amazing things. I'm reading through these. I'm like, this is all great. I don't have time to talk about it. There's too much John going on. Yeah. He's that good. We could talk <laughs> about, we could do three episodes a week. I could do it after. Johnny show, boy. Sure.
You know what that means. It must be time yes. for... Uh... All right, I want to start oh. off talking about this Cardiff Electric thing. And Cardiff is, is here. I wonder if Cardiff wants to talk to us right now. <laughs> Cardiff, are you there, He's buddy? He's spamming me. He's spamming well, you? you? You've already violated part of our agreement. I was supposed to be coming in during pee breaks. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about Who that. Who are you? <laughs> Kaya? Yeah, yeah. Why are you messaging me to unblock you as if I have the power? Talk to me when you're a citizen. <laughs> okay, so oh. <laughs> so Dr. Steve is a big Cardiff Electric fan. Dr. Steve was on your show, Cardiff. Dr. Steve is a noble man. He is a noble man, I agree. COVID. <laughs> he had COVID, yes. He's over it. Thank, thank goodness. Yes. So uh, <laughs> we all said a prayer for Dr. Steve. So he goes on Stuttering John show and starts giving him super chat money to tell John to unblock Cardiff because hashtag unblock Cardiff. As we all know, Cardiff, who is the biggest supporter of Senator John and the SJ Army, has been blocked by Senator John. It's crazy. It is tragic. It's tragic. Oh. tragic thing. So I want to play this clip. It's huh. about two minutes long. If you want me to stop it and pause it, please tell me. This is so funny because he reads Dr. Steve's note because he has to. And John decides to lie at first and then realizes that, like, okay, this is too obvious. And then pretends like he just didn't know any better when he starts telling the truth. So I will see you here um, uh, on on Thursday. Thank you, Dr. Steve. Thank John. Please unblock Cardiff Electric. He's very hurt and always promotes Stuttering John Army wherever he goes. Uh, I didn't block him. Block him from where? Here? I didn't block him. I don't know. I, uh, if, he's, if he's blocked, it wasn't me. All right. So already we're off to a good start. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I, I didn't block him. Sorry. I, I would like to extend my apologies to Cardiff. I, I did not know that <laughs> you were mentioning the stuttering John show. <laughs> I am just trying to sorry, raise awareness. Yes. I'm trying to raise awareness for the unblocked Cardiff movement. Yeah, I, you, I understand now. You have a big platform. I apologize. I need you on every Twitch stream from here on out to talk about unblocking <laughs> Cardiff Electric. <laughs> All right, so you just heard the setup of this. He reads the question yeah. immediately. He denies it. I, I, didn't, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no control. I didn't block him. I don't know. And then listen to this uh, turnaround. Yep. I have no idea. Uh, you know, I, you know, I even said hello to him. I, you know, I, you know, I blocked him from Twitter because he keeps on telling me shit that's on Reddit. <laughs> And I don't care about that. I don't want to know anything that's on Reddit. I don't want to know anything that's on any of these social media sites. They're a bunch of losers. <laughs> All right. So he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't block him. And he goes, I mean, I did block him on Twitter. Well, then wouldn't you think that that's what they're talking about? Wouldn't you assume that's what we're talking about? <laughs> you did block him somewhere? If you heard the clip correctly, he said he said hello to me. And that is true. Yes, because you were there oh, on the YouTube oh, nice. stream. He'll take super chance. Did he uh, pretend that he was hacked again and his moderator is blocked, <laughs> no, no, Cardiff? Listen to this. He explains why he, uh, why he was blocked. They're hateful trolls who have no lives, who are relentlessly obsessed with me, and all they do is lie about me. And Cardiff Electric felt the need to constantly DM me and tell me things that are going on <laughs> on these sites <laughs> after I told them don't. So I... So, Cardiff, props to you. This is the ultimate troll. Cardiff's going, hey, I just, I just want you to know that this person called you a retard. This person thinks you're a, a baboon. This person over here. Is, like, this person thinks you're bitter. You're bitter, right, John? We're all bitter. I was just trying to help John I love raise it. awareness. Really? The, 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 the key moment was he was trying to, Eric Kazain was trying to get Stuttering John on his show, and I needed to warn him. <laughs> Not to go on that troll show. That's hilarious. Don't. So I blocked him from from my Twitter accounts because because I've asked him on numerous occasions. I don't want to know. Why do you tell me these things? I don't care what these people say. They know where I am every day. Pickwick oh, Pub. Fucking liar. Back to the tough guy talk. So he blocked 
Cardiff for telling what they're saying. Stick to the and, line. And then says, I don't care what they say. Then why are you blocking people who are telling you what they say? What's the difference then? No, yeah. Yeah, uh, also, uh, oh, yeah, Car Cardiff, I, I, I don't know who, who that is, but I, uh, who? Uh, did someone block him? How? Oh, I blocked them because he was telling me about people that make fun he of me. He knows the whole story. What an he's, asshole. Yeah, he starts up by going, I don't know what you're talking about. What could you be talking about? He's like, well, yeah, so here's what happened. <laughs> What's blocking? <laughs> Obviously, John made a mistake in blocking me. Yes. So that's why I started the campaign to unblock Cardiff. Raise awareness. <laughs> and maybe he will see. And, Sutter, and Dr. Steve graciously donated $6 to help me. Could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine if there's someone on Twitter who's tweeting about something you don't care about? NASCAR. Okay. And they're just tweeting about NASCAR all day and you go to you block them. I don't care about NASCAR. Why do you keep tweeting about it? That's what John is saying right here. He's like, I don't care what anyone says about me on social media. This guy keeps talking about what they're saying about me on social media, so I blocked him. I, th I thought you didn't care. What do you mean you blocked him for that reason? Sounds like you do care. Sounds like you're butthurt mm -hmm. about it. If I had a guess. They know where I am every day. Pickwick Pub. I'll be there today right after I vote no on the recall. You have a problem with me? Come there. That's all I it's have to say. It's easier to just troll you, John. You want to be a tough yeah. guy? Come see me there. Okay? So, I'll be there. I'll be there. Pick with pub. <laughs> I'll be there. Give me a beer. You have a problem with me. But as far as, as that, Dr. Like... Steve, yeah. Go ahead. No, sorry. I was going to say, I, I like that he's been doing this thing where he's inviting people to fight him uh, at his local uh, favorite pub. Yeah. I'm there at uh, you know, 1, 1 p.m. in the afternoon drinking yeah. 16 beers deep. Fight me, bro. <laughs> I, I love that he says, I'm there every single day at 3 p.m. Right there, I'd be like, well, he, that's embarrassing. I, I don't know if you want to say that. Yeah. But then this idea yeah, I... that anybody wants to fight him. No, we just want to laugh at you because you're a boob. You don't under, you don't know the difference between <laughs> like hate, no one hates stuttering John. We love him. We want him to do a show right. every day. We want him to get wasted and, and go on the internet and, and stream it. What is he talking about? John, nobody wants to fight you. No one wants nobody to wants him. to like kill you. It's that's not a thing. We just I, want to giggle. I, I a actually want bit. to slap him around a little bit. <laughs> no! There'll be no slapping John around. <laughs> it's a slapping. <laughs> no, there will no no violence against that that fat fuck. Don't wish you harm. <laughs> uh, let's get back to the clip. Just a little bit more here. You have a problem with me. But as far as as that, Dr. Steve, yeah, he I don't want to know this stuff and and you know, and Cardiff just keeps on telling me, and I've asked him not to. I have no problem with the man. I don't dislike the guy. You should. Because he's, <laughs> yeah. he's trolling you pretty fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> he's wrong about everything. Excuse me? Cardiff might be his biggest troll right now. <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy. I just, you're right. I, no. You're not a troll, Cardiff? <laughs> I am against haters and trolls on the internet. Right, right, yeah. Uh, are you telling me that you're not going to fight him at 1 p.m. At, <laughs> at the local bar? I'll, I'll, I'll be there, Cardiff. <laughs> I can't imagine, I cannot imagine that the owners of that bar and all the people who work there want one of their regulars inviting people to come in and fight him. It sounds like bad for business, doesn't it? Unless you want him yeah, taken no, care no, no. of. <laughs> he makes them rich. Keep that in mind. Like the, the alcohol industry makes most of their money off of the whales, just like gambling. Yes. Right? So stuttering John, he may be single-handedly keeping the bar alive, man. And Coors Light. Yeah, yes. at least Coors, Coors Light. Coors Light was going to go out of business. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cardiff. I uh, I love the show, buddy. It keeps getting better. I listen to every episode. I thought your Eric Zane episode was fantastic. So if you haven't listened to this yet, it's a half an hour long. Uh, for some reason, the show's supposed to end in 15 minutes. And then Cardiff goes, oh, my mouse isn't working. I got to update a driver. And then they just keep talking for another 15 minutes. <laughs> it's really well done. Did you like sir. my Greg Hamburger episode? <laughs> I did like the Greg Hamburger episode, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're killing it buddy keep it up well the cardiff electric podcast network is expanding next week stay tuned for more details on our newest show well or you can just tell people now while you're talking to an audience 
Yeah. I don't think anyone's really listening. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, they are. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Good That's a wor- wrong sort of vibration, bro. <laughs> yeah, you're putting out the wrong vibration. <laughs> well, thank you, Cardiff. It's nice to speak with you, Mr. Whatever your name is. Oh, you're big timing oh. Kaya now? Yeah, right back at you. <laughs> 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 yeah, whatever your name is, buddy. Fair All enough. Right. That's that's Cardiff Electric. Now, uh, right after that happens, uh, Area 51 puts in a super chat to tell John, because, you know, his big plan is to go to D.C. and interview Republicans. So how are you going to find these Republicans? This guy has uh, a helpful hint. Uh, let's see. Area 51, Republicans don't hang out at the Capitol Club in D.C. How do you know that's where I'm going? But anyway, Area 51, if you have a better idea um, or where they do hang out, please DM me. If anybody knows where the GQP hangs out in D.C., please let me know uh, because, uh, you know, I'll find them. I'll do my best to find them. I'll find them. How do you know that's where we're going to go? So they're not going to be there? <laughs> so transparent. So transparent. I love it. Oh, all right. So guy. this is getting going back to an episode of Beer on the Balcony with David Feldman. Now, David Feldman writes for Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. So this is amazing mm-hmm. because, as we know, John hates Robert Smigel. He thinks that Smigel ripped off John's act from the Howard Stern show with the Insult Comic Dog. So now we finally get a chance for John to explain that he was ripped off and here's a guy who writes for triumph who can maybe tell him that he's wrong about that. Right. Should be fun. Let's hear how this works mm-hmm. out. All right. So now <laughs> I, you know, you could, you know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. So don't, don't take it the wrong way, but I've, I've always maintained that Ali G and triumph was like an offshoot of stuttering John. Like, you know, all right, first off, Ali G is nothing like no. Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. These are totally different things. It's not even close. And did you just call him Triumph the Insult Comic Dog? Let's hear that again. It's so stupid. And Triumph was like an offshoot of Stuttering John. Like, you know, like it was doing the same thing mm. as me, you know, only in a different Nothing form. Nothing like is an G offshoot of Stuttering John. Nothing yeah, stuttering it's not John. a spinoff. Nothing successful is because Stuttering John manifested it into the world. <laughs> I'm going to start using that word no. way too often. No shit. <laughs> Triumph was a fucking puppet. <laughs> but it was still uh, asking stupid questions. Uh, would you agree? I, I I think, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> he's, ta- he's taken aback. <laughs> he's taken aback by this question. He's like, did you or did you not rip me off with the Triumph the Insult Comic Dog character? <laughs> He's like the poor guess. He's like, remember, I, I, you're I, under I, oath. I guess. <laughs> Could you imagine? He doesn't know how to answer. He was not expecting this question. He's like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, sir. Let's hear how we do. Should I this. write you a check right now? Or... <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think I don't know. Uh, I know Smigel's a big fan of yours <laughs> and, and speaks highly of you. Says, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I'm so surprised. Sp- really? Yes, I know. Smiles a fan of yours. He goes, "What? <laughs> no one's ever said that." That stops him in his tracks, of course. <laughs> so, are you guys ready for the truth to come out about why Stuttering John doesn't like Robert Smigel? Finally, it's not because he thinks that Triumph, the insult comic dog, ripped him off. It's because he was disrespected on the Tonight Show. Wow, I gotta, no. I gotta change. I got to change my opinion of him because, you know, look, I, 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 I would, I'm a very sensitive guy, and I would get sensitive in the old days. And when he, when he was on the Tonight Show, like Triumph, I was the announcer, you know. And he goes, you know, why is Stutter Johnny? You should lose him. He's, you know, he, you know, he doesn't do any, you know, and he was trashing me. And I guess I took it personally, <laughs> so I was like, "Fuck you, Smigel." Smigel said that as Triumph. Oh, Triumph said that. Yes. <laughs> Which is Smigel. So, all right. Oh, whoa. All right, listen to this. 
they bring on an insult comic. Whether it's a puppet or not, doesn't matter, all right? They bring on an insult comic who comes out and trashes everyone on the show. The band leader, the host, Stuttering John. And John's the only one who's just like, what the fuck did you just say to me, dog? <laughs> so now David, it's now David's job to explain to John that he's a moron. And that that's a retarded thing to think with an insult comic. Yeah, that Don Rickles guy was disrespectful to me. <laughs> well, yeah, that's... Kind of his, it's kind of his shtick. He didn't know that's the bit. You dumb. He made me sound like a joke. <laughs> so, listen to this. this is I don't, David must be like, what the fuck is going on? I've never heard someone so stupid. He oh, and, and Triumph. Uh, so Triumph, the insult comic dog, comes on Jay Leno and says nice things about Kevin Eubanks and Jay Leno and you. That that's the bit that Triumph is supposed to come on. And say nice things about everybody, uh, but instead he insulted you instead of doing his bit, which is saying nice things about everybody. But wait a minute, he's trying to the insult comic dog. <sighs> I know. David can't believe this. So what did you want him to do? What did you think he was going to do? Bring you a birthday present? Were you expecting a greeting card? <laughs> what do you want Triumph the insult comic to do? <laughs> When he's making an appearance on The Tonight Show. I just pictured John trying to fight this guy's hand. You know? Oh, it comes to that. Hold oh, okay. on. All right. I this figured. is great. This is great. So, so John explains why his feelings got hurt by Triumph the Insult. The puppet. <laughs> the puppet that's doing an appearance on The, the Tonight dog. Show. Do you know he got insulted by nerve? Triumph. That's, that's a feather you know in your fucking nerve with me, though, Dave? I'll tell you why I did. Because the... Th- Look, it's not Jay's fault, but the Tonight Show fucked it up. <laughs> he's uh, so drunk. Yeah, well, yes, he's very drunk. But also, now the resentment <laughs> is coming out. There is legit resentment about his time on the Tonight Show, and it finally comes out. They bring me on because I was a great <laughs> guest on the show. Right. I was funny and real. I had the New York thing and everything. And then when I get there, they want to stick me in the audience like a glorified heckler and put suits and ties on me. <laughs> Like they essentially, <laughs> they paid for Stuttering John and then didn't want Stuttering John. And Welcome then they put Hollywood, me in the audience. Like, Welcome to yeah. Hollywood. So John's explaining that he was actually very insecure about what he was doing on that show and felt really bad about it. So when Triumph comes out and goes, <laughs> what is this fucking guy doing? We should fire him. John's going, well, they, they probably will fire me. He's all like insecure about it. So that's why he wasn't happy about it. Now, what David does, which is brilliant, because David's a comedy writer. He should not be explaining psychology to John. But he explains that, oh, so this is a John problem, not a Robert Smigel problem. <laughs> so when Brian said that, it had an it had an element of truth to it. So it, that's why it bothered uh, me. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Not, and it was like, yeah, why am I fault. fucking here? Ah, uh, that's not, well, but. Not it's not honest. his fault. Oh, so John admits this was John's insecurity <laughs> that was the problem and not Robert Spiegel. But then he goes, wait a second. No, I hate Robert Spiegel. So he's not going to back down. So he explains why he does hate Robert Spiegel still. You brought your own baggage yes. to that situation. I did. And it had nothing to do with triumph. It had nothing to had do nothing with Robert Spiegel. <laughs> Nothing to do with it. Here was a guy. Here's here's Robert Smiley. But he also never said hi to me when he was in the green room. <laughs> never was nice to me. Did you come in and say hello to him in the green room? Did you walk up yes. to him? He didn't, you know, he like it, it like he like like he ignored me. You think maybe he had something else in mind? Well, so John's like, well, okay, what else can we be mad? I can't be mad that a puppet goofed on me when that's the whole shtick and that's the bit. So what else can he be mad about? Oh, he was disrespectful to me when I went to say hi to him before the show. What's the opposite of uh, imposter syndrome? A stuttering John is like, yes. I was there. Yes. I, I earned the... Uh, da, 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 da. He didn't even notice. Da, I was in the green room. Uh, you're, that, you're right. No, nobody was showering me with compliments. I wish this guy <laughs> had some imposter syndrome going. I wish he felt out of place a little bit. Like, I shouldn't be on The Tonight Show. Correct. Uh, you, sh- you don't belong on The Tonight Show, John. I don't know why you're, the camera's even pointing at you. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so Poor this, guy. Is, this is great because David's Robert's writing partner, they know each other very well. So he has to now explain to John 
that right before a airing of The Tonight Show is not a time that you want to get chummy with everyone. You probably need to go over your notes. You might be a little bit nervous. Millions of people on television are going to see you. If it's right before the show is going. Is it conceivable that Triumph, the insult comic dog, that 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 had to, bravado, had the to bravado, hump a leg? It might, could it be that Triumph, the insult comic dog, might be preoccupied and nervous going out in front of millions and millions of people doing the number one show in late night? Do you think I don't he think might? So. Do I don't, don't think, think so. so. <laughs> Guess what? I, I, I know so. So John goes, no, it can't can't possibly be that. And then he goes on to explain Robert Smigel wasn't even the first guest. He goes, no, because there were four no, segments yeah. before he even went on. He had plenty yeah. of time to prepare for the show. Uh, the other guy's like, oh, oh, could it be just a good show? Uh, John's like, no, no, <laughs> no, that, that's not it. No, it. <laughs> John. So then the question is, well, did you try to talk to him after the show when maybe his nerves would subside? And he could be, have time to, like, have a conversation with you. Because that would be really the, the true test to, like, whether Robert's just a dick or maybe he just wasn't in the right headspace before the show to have a, a long conversation with a stuttering moron. And uh, John's reaction to this is, is priceless. This is, uh, this is the clip of the day I'm calling it right now. You've, you've done panel. It's nerve-wracking. Uh, did you walk up to him? Did you walk up to him after his Appearance. No, then I was pissed about that the fact that he uh, insulted my ass. Right. So maybe <laughs> it's your fault. Maybe. I wanted to go behind a couch and beat the shit out of him to be honest. What do you think would have happened? What do you think would have happened if you walked up to Triumph after his set and said hello when he had no pressure? No, no. Hold on, I gotta pause this. Notice how David's saying Triumph instead of Robert? Yeah. Like he's treating him like a child. Yeah. What if you had talked to the puppet after the cameras were off? Do you think the puppet would have been nice to you then? I have to speak up on that now. I didn't even notice that. I was clipping it. Did you talk to Triumph after the show? No. Yeah. Fuck that dog. Did you point to his butt where you were hurt? <laughs> Did you pick up his cigar for him when he dropped it out of his mouth as he was insulting you and your family? <laughs> This is, this it's is John, the same attitude he had last week. Like, no, 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 no. Um, what was her name? Elisa? Yeah, Elisa Elisa Giordana, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Her, like when she was at some point she asked a question, he was like, No, 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 no. I'm not butthurt. I'm not butthurt. It's I'm the bitter. same shit. Again. I'm not better. I'm not better. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, I'm not mad. <laughs> it's it's like his parents are scolding him. And he's lashing out. This guy's just explaining to him, like, John, here's a plausible scenario. And by the way, I'm really close with Robert Smigel. So I'm speaking from a place of knowledge and understanding. And John's going, no, no, that's not it. No, I'll do it tomorrow. So here's here's the rest of that clip. When he had no pressure. No, no. Then I would have went behind a couch. I would have said, hey, Smigel, you're doing my act only with a puppet. At least Uh. I did it face to face. You're doing with a fucking dog. So after this, David goes on to explain, that's not really fair to Robert. You're bringing your own resentment and looking for a reason to dislike him now. Because Robert Smigel is using the puppet because it's hilarious and they, they came up with this character. It's I think it's from Conan, right, originally? Because he was a writer on Conan O'Brien. I think so. I think it's where he originally showed up. And it's it's like Don Rickles. It's not Suttering John. It's a, it's a roast comic. It's an insult comic. It's funny. Yeah. It's really funny. Drive the Intel comic dog is great. When he was goofing on all the people in line for the Star Wars movies, fucking some of the best television you've ever seen. So, <laughs> so the idea that John is going on there and going, he's ripping me off and just using a puppet. And David's going, well, I don't think you understand. Like we developed this character together. We, I mean, we, we know of you. We've, we've seen the Howard Stern show, but you're not the first person to ask people insulting questions. You must know that. Right. I'll play you one more clip from this uh, this show because he then goes on, and I have a bunch more that we have to get to in future episodes. He then goes on to talk about Sasha Baron Cohen and how Ali G oh. character ripped him off as well. And oh. he explains because David goes, well, you know, Sasha Baron Cohen's from the UK. And, you know, they developed that character decades ago. Probably had nothing to do with Stuttering John, who was on the Howard Stern show out of New York City. You know, maybe influ- you know, people influence others, but nobody's going to take away 
what you've accomplished. Oh, no, I know that, Dave, Dave, Dave. I know that. I'm just saying, like, when Sasha Baron Cohen comes on The Tonight Show, right? Mm -hmm. He has to be aware. If he's not aware, I mean, well, he show is all he's over from Britain. England. He's from Great Britain. There's a good possibility. He David, never David, saw. David. The E show was all over Britain. It was played. It was the top. <laughs> Everybody knew. Stutter and John, like, they knew. If, there's <laughs> no sad. way that somebody didn't come up to him and say, hey, you know, you know, Stutter and John does, does this kind of shit, you know. In his mind, <laughs> Stutter and John was all they were talking about over in the UK right. in the 90s. In the UK, you know, people came up to Ali G and they were like, dude, like, that was funny, but did, did you steal, like, stuttering John's uh, jokes? The shit you're going to do in the future. <laughs> no one ever said that. <laughs> so the guy They who... don't know you exist. He released Borat 2 and nobody... Do you guys think uh, stuttering John sat there wondering <laughs> if he was going to get a check? <laughs> I think he does, though. I think he's that level of delusional. The fact that he's saying this to a guy who's, <laughs> who's friends with Robert Smigel, the, he's, not, he's not doing an act. So the guy who sent me this episode and, and sent me a bunch of things to clip, uh, Jackie Marlowe, who's helped out the show before, he told me, and this is what he knows, is that the E! Network Howard Stern show was on in the UK on like the third-rate cable network. It was not something that was on in major markets at all. And we're talking about, I'm going to say pre-internet. I know that the late nineties, there was the internet, but not like it is now. There's no way people were like sharing clips of the Howard Stern show in the UK back then. They had their own radio personalities. They didn't give a fuck about the Howard Stern show in the UK. And here's <laughs> this delusional moron going, I obviously just stole it from, from me. And, and even Dave was like, well, I mean, it's probably, probably not though. I mean, can we all agree? Probably not. <laughs> Even if he listens to the Howard Stern show every day, it is, it's, Ali G is not even close to Stuttering John. It's not even close. Stuttering John is actually who he is. Right. He's a stuttering moron because he's a stuttering moron. That's why they put him out on the street. Ali G is pretending to be someone who's dumb and didn't understand what, he, what kind of questions he was asking. Yeah, he did three different versions of that act right. in his show, which was fucking brilliant, by the brilliant. way. <laughs> so insane. All of which sucked. And the beginning of this interview was insane because... They're talking about, so David has to kiss John's ass a little bit. Like, oh, yeah, I know I'm a big fan. And talks about when Stuttering John was interviewing Jennifer Flowers or asking Jennifer Flowers some questions at a press conference. And this is during Bill Clinton's presidential run, his first run in the early 90s. And John takes credit for Clinton's presidential run continuing. And I never forgot 1992. Yep. 19, not Jennifer Flowers. I oh saved God. Bill Clinton's election by that fucking press conference. Reporters have said that oh I freaking God. made it such a freaking mockery that it kind <laughs> of freaking saved his fucking chances. He saved the Clinton presidential run. In 1992, reporters that's... have said. <laughs> reporters have said. He googled this. I know. Reporters have said. What the fuck? People no, have they, said a lot. They of have things. not. People... John, that's hilarious. <laughs> Holy Dude. shit! So imagine being stuttering John and thinking about yourself the way that he thinks about himself. No wonder he flies <laughs> off the handle. And people are like, you know, you kind of suck, though, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm the most amazing person ever exists. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's so delusional. I love it. I love it. Uh, that's all I got for John. I, I apologize. Like I said, I ran out of time. Oh, I had a ton I... more stuff to get to. But there's this guy, uh, D-Bone, who sent me a note and reminded me. I forgot about this. I don't think anyone's brought it up on the show before. But on the Sirius XM, they did a thing called the Stern Spotlight. And it was a best of compilation of the Howard Stern show based on different characters that were on the Howard Stern show years ago. So they had one that was Billy West. They had one that was Jackie Martling. And then they had one of the stuttering John. And what they did was not only did they compile all the different bits that these people were a part of, but they also had them come in and talk about it. So I don't know if this exists anywhere, if people can find it online, but stuttering John was most certainly hired by Sirius 
at some point to go in and talk about his time on the Howard Stern show. The company that he's now suing and saying he never had permission to use his stuff. He was a <laughs> willing participant in them reusing his old stuff going back to 2008, April of 2008, when that originally aired Stern Spotlight. So thank you for that information. I forgot all about that. And that's kind of blows up his entire lawsuit, I would imagine. But that won't stop him. That's what's great about John. Yeah. There's no way that'll Aww. stop him. And so he smoked some pot out of a bong when he was like eight, and he, he got really high. That sounds like a bad idea. Holy shit. <laughs> that sounds like a, something you shouldn't do with that talk about. <laughs> that boy turned out to be producer Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that boy turned out to be stuttering John. <laughs> I want to thank our friend Huij, who put together a fun little song for us. You familiar with um, that tune Amadeus from yes. the 80s? Yes. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty fun. This is a sad day for me. Can't get it up. And this guy's got kielbasa. I couldn't come. But here's the thing. It, like, I enjoy it. I miss me. 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 I miss penis. 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 Next week starts Jocktober, Andy. Whoa. An entire month dedicated to radio Exciting. jockeys, I guess, is yeah. what you'd call them. Right. Whether they're on the radio or podcasting, we will find you, we will hunt you down, and we will goof on you. Mm. So, as we know, we've been talking about it for months. Richard Ojeda, centering John's BFF, has been booked to be on the Bill Maher show. Yeah. And John immediately, when he heard this news... Well, immediately he said, well, why, how do they find you? Which yeah. insulting. Trying to shoehorn himself. And then he's like, hey, maybe I, can go, maybe I can go there too. Or you can put in a good word or tell him I do a show or whatever. So then it turned into, I'll drive you there. And, you know, Richard's like, well, they're going to send a car for me. It's, you know, they're, they're flying in first class from West Virginia. It's an HBO show. They have, they have a couple bucks. Yeah. Anyway. So now John's talking to Richard Ojeda in the airport. This is a Thursday show. He's flying to LA to go on the Bill Maher show. And this is Richard at the airport talking to Suttering John. Army Major. Yeah. So you're about to get on a plane. Yeah. And you're coming out to do Bill Maher, and you now have disinvited me. No, no, that ain't me, brother. That ain't me. By the way, he's wearing a mask. He's talking to his, his phone. Yeah. So it's not a great sounding connection or whatever. So, all right. <laughs> He's like, John has been disappointed. Call me when you get there. <laughs> We're going to get together, my man. We're going to get together. Well, so just so everybody knows, Richard was told that he can't, you know, that he, you know, he's only allowed to bring it like his, like his buddy who is coming with them. And, um, but they're flying your first class, which is pretty cool. So Richard was told he's only allowed to bring a plus one. Now, TV show tapings, have you ever been to one before? No. They're free. Yeah, okay. They don't make money off of charging people. They, they don't care. They oh. just want people there. Yeah, they yeah. People yeah. there laughing, reacting, so you're whatever. saying that John could go and sit in the audience. I'm saying it's nuts that they would tell a guest they could only bring one person. <laughs> Why do they give a fuck? Yeah, that's pretty sweet. And But, you know, it's all good, Richard, because I, you know, I have a stand-up show in uh, Apple Valley, so, so, you know, so it's fine. I've been to Bill Maher already. I don't, you know, I don't really have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, listen, I just wanted to say good luck, man. If you need any jokes or anything, if you need any help, 
um, call me tomorrow and tell me, and you know, and I'll come up with some stuff for you. Yeah, let, let, let's let's definitely get together. Let's meet you in house. Try to see if we can't link up, man. He doesn't even entertain the yeah. I might need jokes yeah. that you write. He's just like, no, we'll we'll get together. That's fine. Let's I want meet you in hell. And he goes, yeah, and I want hell there too. Like we all have that friend that we only hang out with if we're hanging out with our other friend. <laughs> like that's the hell connection. He's like, well, I want to hang out with hell if you're there too, whatever. <laughs> but I love that stuttering John, who's been begging, we'll get into this, begging everyone to write him jokes for his DC trip, is like, if you want me to write you jokes for the Bill Maher show. Yeah. I'll ask somebody to do it for you. And he's going to do it the day of the show, of the taping, too. Yeah, just give me a call tomorrow when you get into LA, and just I'll just riff with you. We'll come up with a bunch of stuff for you to say. So, thankfully, he doesn't even entertain that. I have to watch his appearance on there and see <laughs> Good what Good luck like. in Apple Valley. Dude, this Apple <laughs> Valley comedy show. I saw the poster for it. Oh, does it, I told him once. I told him a hundred times. It's Stuttering John first, puppet show last. <laughs> exactly. Dude, it's it's hosted by some nobody, and then it says featuring, and it's got John and two other nobodies. So he's not even the headliner. <laughs> I don't know. I thought he was a headliner. This guy told him that once in Vegas. The other thing that John is doing now is he's ranting up and down about Joe Rogan. <laughs> okay. And he thinks that he's the only person who's ever called out Joe Rogan for saying ivermectin helped him get over COVID. This is pretty well documented, but no, John thinks that he's the only one. Speaking of Baba Booey, let me just say this again. Look. Can you swallow first? I know that Baba Booey is listening to my show. I know it is a fact. I've heard it from my, I've heard it from my moles that he listens on the way home to the house that tooth built. And let me just tell you, it seems like everything I say, a week later, Howard Stern copies my rhetoric. I know it sounds crazy, but Howard Stern, I believe, you know, Baba Booey goes, hey, Wolf, Stutter and John is beating up on Joe Rogan for promoting anti-vaxxer rhetoric. Maybe we should too, Wolf. And then that's what Howard does. He gets all the headlines because he's way more famous than me. But, hey, let's face it. He's following my lead. All right, so John thinks that he's the one who first came out and called out Joe Rogan. Now, when Joe Rogan came back after getting over COVID, he had Tom Segura on, the ve- listen to the show. It's three hours long. The very first thing he says is, I mentioned I took ivermectin that was prescribed by a doctor, and it's all over the news. It's all anyone's talking about. John's not the person who's leading this charge. Yeah. He's like, I might sue CNN over this because they're lying that it's this this horse to wormer and it's prescribed to people for a number of reasons. And it helped me. He's the other thing too. is so funny about this. So John's going on there and going, yeah, you know, Howard Stern's only talking about it because I was talking about it. That's where he gets all of his notes (laughs) of whatever I say. And he's such a delusional retard. Even if, Howard had said something that only John was talking about. There'd still be no way in hell you'd connect those dots and think that Howard is now go through Baba Booey trying to figure out what to talk about on his show through starting John. But this is something that literally everyone has talked about. Yeah. Literally everyone. And there isn't a podcast I've listened to that hasn't talked about Joe Rogan having COVID and using ivermectin. And then stuttering John goes off on the rant of all rants. Joe Rogan's a blockhead. He's a dumbass. I used to actually like the dude. I'm not saying I don't like him, but <laughs> I think you are. I'm saying it's so ridiculous and can cause deaths of lives, Joe. You are responsible for those people that are listening to your dumbass podcast and are taking horse, what was it? Stool relax? What the hell is that crap? No. <laughs> Uh, evectomectin or whatever you call it, <laughs> deworming horse Eviction deworming, <laughs> and you're telling people to take that, Joe. You know what happens, Joe? They listen to you. You're an influencer, and then they take it, and then they die. <laughs> Jesus Christ! He's and so who's stupid. responsible, Joe? <laughs> you might say they are. Nah, nah, you are. Because they look up to you. I don't know why, but they do. <laughs> and they listen to you like they listen to the Dota Donald Trump. And I'm telling you, the blood is on your hands, Joe. Oh, my Jesus. God. Just I remember that. The blood is on your hands. Then again, you love watching 
uh, you love blood. You love the UFC and the barbaric beating the hell out of each other. You know, you love that, that anyway. Uh, what? You're a lunatic, Joe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Joe Rogan, not only a much more successful guy than Centering John, more intelligent any way you can measure intelligence. Any single way you would measure intelligence, Joe Rogan is vastly superior to Centering John in every way. Sure. This guy's a blockhead. He's telling people to take ivermectin and then they die. Joe Rogan never told anyone to take ivermectin. Yeah, a doctor prescribed it to him. A doctor prescribed it to him. He got over it in three days. If he, I, he was just telling his story. If I got COVID and my doctor told me to take ivermectin, I would take it. Right. Yeah, a lot of people have, actually. And then this whole thing where John's making up the people have died because of Joe Rogan. <laughs> Could you document one case of this? <laughs> the blood is on your head. Like, whoa, that escalated quickly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was fucking out there. There could be a lawsuit coming down the pike. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be from... Uh, Stuttering John's camp this time. So let's get back to this conversation he was having with David Feldman, the writing partner oh of Robert Smigel. Oh, my Smigel. God. This is legendary. I, I is... just started talking about it last week. I didn't get into it enough. Oh, my God. It's so funny. It's great. Yeah. This is amazing. So when we left off last week, he had been talking about how Triumph the Insult Comic Dog had ripped off Stuttering John's act, and he wanted to beat up Robert Smigel on The Tonight Show because the – Dog goofed on John. <laughs> right? the dog hurt, but the dog puppet hurt my feelings. Yeah. And then he started getting into how Sasha Baron Cohen also has ripped off Stuttering John's yeah. character. A from truly the talented Stern person show. is ripping him off. A talented British person who probably had never heard of Howard Stern yeah. before he started Ali G. Certainly not heard of real, Stuttering John. Real good chance he's never heard of it. I was actually reading in our subreddit, people from England were in there talking about it. And they're like, we don't know anything about American radio. Right. Why would we listen to someone talking about New York City? Yeah. We don't give a shit. We have our own people who do that kind Producer of Producer Chris, quick, name one British radio personality. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Ricky Gervais, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> Maynard? No, that's Australia. That's Australia. <laughs> well, it's same thing, right? Oh, Simon and Taylor, right? I don't know. Patrick <laughs> Michaels' character. Oh, right. <laughs> yes. That's a good poll right there. My bad. <laughs> so let's... Get caught back up again. Sorry. This is David telling John that he owes both Smigel and Sasha apologies. So, yes. I mean, pranking people. You didn't invent pranking people. I but... never said I did, David. Well, I'm just You're saying... missing the point. I think, you, you, know what? I think you owe Smigel Steve. and Sasha an apology. That's what No, I, I don't. I, I think. think I do. <laughs> no. All right. So he goes, you owe them an apology because here you are calling them out. And they've done nothing to you. Multiple they, times. Yeah, multiple times. Over a over year. Over multiple episodes. Yeah. So finally, John admits he doesn't have a patent on asking stupid questions. I'm just saying, they say, hey, love your work, bro. Yeah, I'm glad we're doing this. You know, I'm not, I, I don't have a patent on asking stupid questions. So he's saying he just needs to be acknowledged. Yeah, he wants somebody to pay him respect. Right. He just wants somebody a friend. To... <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be acknowledged. And I want to say, John... That won't fix what's broken in your life. No. If Robert Smigel came out and tweeted tomorrow, I owe my career to stuttering John Melendez, it wouldn't fix a damn thing in your shitty fucking life. Your miserable existence would continue to be miserable right. in every single way. Plus, we'd all know it was sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be dripping with sarcasm if he were to write that. So he goes on to explain that they should have been nice to him. Like, that's the only thing he ever wanted. He wanted those guys to be nice to him. And this is where David starts giving him some life advice. David, all I was saying, he, he, like, he could at least be nice to me. That's all. Well, you know, I believe in unconditional love. And I think if you had given Sasha and Triumph unconditional love and forgiveness, they'd be in your life right now. You have to, you have to give people the benefit of the doubt and love them and appeal maybe to the better. He got, maybe he got neutered that day. I don't know. It could he, be. He, but but if you forgive people, if you it took me a long time to learn this. But if you realize that most people aren't thinking about you, and if you just give them the benefit of the doubt, they're they they like you. Yeah, so this is some real life advice. So this guy is a comedian who's going on to promote his show. He has a podcast too. He's going on centering John's beer on the balcony, bad move. No, yeah. one, no one's really gonna hear that. <laughs> And then John immediately into, hey, that guy that you, that your writing partner, he's an asshole. And so is this guy, Sasha Baron Cohen. And the guy's like, 
one, I'm a fan of Sasha, and I, I know Robert Smigel. They're not, he's not an asshole. I know that for a fact. Maybe it's you. That's the problem. And then John explains that, yeah, right. If you met Sasha, you would know what a prick he was. I will bet you, yeah. Dave, the next, if you ever meet Sasha Baron Cohen, you are going to come back on this show and tell me that guy's a prick. Only if I want, guy. only if I wanted something for it. If if I go into, I'm a fan of Sasha's. Yeah. Right. So I would think he's a prick if I went into it like a child. <laughs> I'm not calling you a child. Yes, you are. <laughs> but if I went into meeting him, wanting something from him that he can't give me. Yes. Yeah. This this is the the crux of it is that John had these expectations that he was going to get praised when he met Sasha. He wants everyone to be like, John, I'm such a huge fan of yours. You're stuttering, John. I can't believe it. It's mm-hmm. so amazing. Right. He's not getting that from these guys. Right. And he's offended by it. And that's like what a child needs. Yeah. To be told that they're amazing all the time. It happens I, every time I hear a story about like somebody meeting a celebrity that was a dick. It's usually you running up to somebody and saying, can I have a picture? Can I have something? Can right. you give me something? Correct. If you meet Steve Martin and you say, I love your work. Thank you. He's not a dick to you. Correct. If you say, can I have a picture? And he says, no. Oh, he's the world's biggest asshole. Right. Right. It, you don't realize that that experience that you just had is his life every day, right. 2,000 times right. a day. It gets, yeah. it gets old. Yeah. It gets annoying. So this is a longer clip. We can pause it in here. But John is saying, you don't understand, David. These people should have common courtesy. When I say hello to them, they should say hello to me back like I do because I'm an amazing person. <laughs> That's so good. So I would think common he's a courtesy? Kid. Wait. So to say hello, to say hi <laughs> is <laughs> so drunk. So, like, so would, you grow up? would you grow up? Don't mess people I didn't. I, if I, <laughs> hello? How, how often in New York do people say hello? David, David, I've done the John Stewart show. I've done Conan show. I've done the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. I go there. I say hi to everybody. To, from a page to the announcer. Bullshit. To the band leader. The page. To the host. Yeah. yeah. Right. I am. I. I. I want to be a nice person. I want to be a nice person. <laughs> Someday. He goes, yeah. I love that he goes to the page. The page is like, I don't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm People tricking you. like Smigel <laughs> and Sasha Baron Cohen don't share that same common courtesy that I intend to do when I go to a show. Right. Now, right. But, but now, how is I that? Shouldn't a comp- run, but I shouldn't saying, expect on, people to be just like me. But what? how are you? You're you're painting yourself as somebody who gives everybody common courtesy, but you're not extending common courtesy oh. to to Triumph or Sasha. <laughs> how is that? How are you being? How are you being polite? Because they didn't given? say hello. They, they didn't say hello. Say, so it's all about you. As opposed to what they need. What does what Sasha they... Baron what does Sasha Baron Cohen need? They when need he's privacy on a show? from you. What does he need? Did you ever think what can I do for Sasha to make sure you work on this is on the tonight show, right? <laughs> what am I gonna do? Go get him coffee? Yes. Yeah. So this is yeah. hilarious because John's explaining that he's like a, a perfect person and he's always so nice and gracious to everyone. Well, except for the fact that we know that he, he used Anthony Cumia's studio and all the engineers there didn't tip them a penny. They worked for free, drank all the beer, went to Anthony's house, drank all his tequila, played poker with his friend's money. Yeah. Like, we know that John is not a courteous person. He's a taker. He's a taker. Yeah. And now here he is. And David Feldman's trying to explain this to him. God bless. I got to get David on I, show. I have no idea how he's toughed it out this long. I would have hung up. 20 minutes ago. I would have been like, I'm talking to a lunatic. Yeah. Like, this is the definition of being bitter. He didn't say hi to me 15 years ago. He's an asshole. And I, I say it on my show every day. This guy's an asshole. He didn't say hi to me. John, are you bitter? No, I'm not bitter. No, that, that, no, that's the definition of being bitter. You moron. You fucking dumb moron. So this guy is explaining to him, well, you were looking for something from them. And really, this is on you. 
It's, I mean, what you should have been thinking is these people are on my show. I'm the announcer of the Tonight Show. What can I do for them to make them comfortable, to make sure they have a great appearance? And he says, what am I supposed to do? Get him coffee like John's a big shot. And David goes, yeah, yeah. Do, do whatever it takes. This is a continuation after that clip. Yes. <laughs> Again, are, were you working on the show? Were you working on the show? I was the announcer, man. You're the announcer, writer. so it's your, it's your show. It's your show. You should, That's you why make... I came in and said hello and Smigel blew <laughs> me off. Did you bring him anything? Did you bring him a bagel? I bring so... him my handsomeness and charm. Did you hear John's reaction to David saying, well, listen, you should be thinking about what you can do for them yeah. rather than what they can do for you. It's, and it's, it's laughable, laughable to him. Like, I'm the celebrity in yeah. this situation. What are you talking about? Why would I do that? I'm the announcer and a staff writer. Yeah. for the. Maybe you don't know who I am, David. I'm a professional fake laugher. It's not my job to do nice shit for people. <laughs> <laughs> so then John turns this conversation into, apparently he reached out to David Feldman to write jokes for him for the DC trip. <laughs> Let me reset this if, if people aren't aware of what's going on here. Stuttering John's next big thing that he's going to do is he's going to fly to Washington, D.C. with a camera crew, and he's going to sneak up on Republicans and ask them crazy questions, like he used to do when he was on the Howard Stern show. Mm -hmm. But this is going to be political. And so he's been reaching out to friends of his who are writers to have them write jokes. Now, Jackie didn't return his email. And apparently David wasn't into it either. You you wanted something from him. You weren't me, you were taking take, you were coming to take something from him. Hold on, David. David, I have another freaking I have a bone to pick with you here. Why you're a Democrat. Sorry. You do not like the same people I don't like, like Marjorie Taylor Green, Lauren Bober, Kevin McCarthy, Josh Hawley. We we share this sentiment that they're destroying the fabric of our democracy. Yet, I asked you if you could write a couple of questions, like a couple of funny questions, because I'm going to go to D.C., and you turned me down. Yes, I did. So that's super awkward. Could you imagine having a guest on your show? Now, this guy's doing John a favor. He's coming on his show, Beer on the Balcony, which, by the way, Tammy Pescatelli just stood him up for. John had to do the show by himself. <laughs> she was having family issues or whatever, which is fucking hilarious. So this guy actually follows through, does this show that's watched by no one. Watched by nobody. It's statistically significant. <laughs> it's an statistically It's a statistically insignificant number of people. I'll get it right. And uh, so he goes on, he's spending his time with John, and John calls him out for turning him down to do this this writing project. I'm going to force you to tell me it's a bad idea. Right! <laughs> it's a bad idea. He does tell him that. Yes, I did. And I'm sorry. Why? Uh, you're, you're, you're putting me in, a, in an awkward position. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> Am I, David? You know, I'm just fucking with you, but this is so I amazing. Why, no, I, uh, we don't need to talk about why I said no, but the point, let's go back to... Is it because that you have an obligation to only the dog? No. I have an obligation only to my ex-wives. <laughs> All right, so David's trying to have fun with it. Like, this is yeah. insane. John's like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do it? I asked you to, you said no. Why, why not? What's the problem? Like, that's a private conversation. If you, right. Even if you want to have it, which you shouldn't. Yeah. Someone says no, it's no. The answer is no. This is like a dumped boyfriend yes. confronting an ex-girlfriend. Why did you dump me? Yeah, this is like him talking to the lesbian at the bar. Why, why can't I have sex with you? Yeah. Why don't you want to have sex with me? Don't you miss penis? The answer is, it's a bad idea. It's going to be a failure, and I don't want to be involved with it. Well, it's funny, too, because when John sent him the note, he never talked about it paying anything. Yeah. <laughs> And, and of course Dave, not. And course David said something. He's like, well, people pay me to write jokes. It's my job. I'm a professional yeah. comedian. Um, so John, they get off into another conversation because David's just trying to steer it away from this conversation. Like, I don't know why you're bringing this up, John. I'm only going to humiliate you. You're asking me why I don't want to do this. I'm only going to say things you don't want to hear. Please, you don't want going him. on the internet. But then John has to bring it back to that conversation again. He interrupts him to talk about it. David, hey. I'll do you. I'll do you one better, cause I'm, cause I'm gonna do these interviews in D.C. Okay. So if you come on, on the field with me, then you know, just give me a price. 
I'll figure it out. How are you at dumping bodies? <laughs> do you have friends? David, what are you, you doing in D.C.? You, wait, wait, David, don't you think it's needed right now, considering the G- GQP the way they are? <laughs> don't you think it's needed for a stuttering John to start freaking yes. Yes. pointing out the yeah. hypocrisy and the idiocy of their party? Yes. All right, so now he's just saying yes, because keep things moving. Yes, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. Very important thing you're doing. That's amazing. By the way, they were talking about how old they are. And then John just interrupts with, by the way, I'm going to D.C. I uh, can't believe you're not participating in this. It's so amazing. The only way this D.C. interview thing ends yeah. is with John getting pistol whipped by private security. <laughs> I hope so. It's yeah. the That's only way yeah. it keep, the roll- <laughs> keep the camera rolling. Keep the camera rolling. <laughs> we got it. This is gold. This is a great take. Uh, so then, finally, David explains this is going to be a difficult thing that John thinks he's going to be able to pull off. It might, it might be a little more difficult because of the insurrection to get access like that. These I know days. that. I know that, right. but I do know where they hang out. I know what restaurant the GQP hangs out at, and they go there a lot. And, you know, hey, shit, man, I'll go in there, you know. I mean, I'll, I'll you know, I'll take a piss text to Mitch McC- if he can find his penis and just it, it fucking hold the phone up and interview him while he's peeing, he won't have a way to get out. Right, right. He thinks everyone gets drunk at bars like he does. He's yeah, like, oh, right. I'll be able to find all of these uh, Republicans who are senators. They'll just be peeing in the bathroom at the yeah. local bar. Yeah. <laughs> After their 11th Coors Light, yeah. I'll just uh, sidle up to him. This guy's a moron. He's, he's so delusional. He's insane. This is going to be a train wreck. It's insane. It's awesome. I love it. I love that he has like some ambition still. I don't know why he does. <laughs> the more the more he talks about it, the more I realize how crazy he is. So then at the end of this show, they're wrapping up and they're trying to wrap up and stuff. And John, one more time, has to bring up the DC shit. <laughs> you have been one of the greatest guests I've ever had on this show. I love <laughs> you. I love the freaking, I love the banter. I love your arguments. And fuck Sasha Baron Cohen and Bob Smart. You owe you, you owe them an apology. You do. Come do my hey. show. Come do my show. Anytime, David. Okay, can you send and me a I tape? Will I'll need you, to see you a help tape. me with some questions. He'll go on his show if this guy will write some questions for him for his D- he has to throw that in at the yeah. very end yet again. The other thing that's funny about this, I have more clips. We'll get into more of this, but at the end he, he like Dude, you've been my favorite guest. Meanwhile, this guy's lecturing John the entire time. Yeah. And now John's trying to spin it as like they were just having a cool busting balls conversation. Yeah. John's wasted, by the way. You can you can hear <laughs> Oh, it. the amount of spit involved. <laughs> That's normal, John. But no, there's no. also you can tell. some synapses that are not connecting here. <laughs> All right. This is John bragging about his glory days. I got uh I asked OJ Simpson if he would sign my knife. <laughs> Did you really? He already had his own. (laughs) Did you really do that? Yeah. All right. So (laughs) here's the deal with this braggadocious statement. And the guy, Jackie Marlowe, who sent me this audio and all the clips to pull and, you know, his thoughts on it, is convinced that this never happened. There is nothing you can find on the internet of John talking to O.J. Simpson. Gary Garber, is that his name? Gary Garber? He was one of the guys for Stern for a while. Okay. There's a video of him trying to talk to OJ Simpson. OJ's like walking away from him at the country club. But there is n- no evidence that John's ever had this conversation with OJ Simpson. Yeah. But he, he wrote about it. The only place you could find it is in his book. Uh, he writes about exactly. it. Then he talked to OJ and asked him if he could sign his knife. In his head, it really happened. And even if it did, Jackie wrote that. Jackie wrote that joke. Fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, boy. So John tells a story about Jay Leno that is definitely a lie because he's talking about Kathy Lee Gifford and he gets the name wrong. John does. And so then he has to deflect and say, oh, yeah, the same thing happened with Jay Leno. I have a funny Jay Leno story for you, though, and I, I've never told this one. I wasn't there a Kathy Lee something on, um, on you know, that show – that's incredible or whatever, Kathy Cot Crosby or Cot Kathy Lee. Yeah, Kathy Crosby. Lee Crosby or something. So I think she was being Crosby's. I don't know, but all I know is, I think I got the people right. They told 
Jay Leno to call Kathy Lee because they wanted to get her as a guest on the show. So Jay thought he was calling Kathy Lee Kiffin. But instead, he's calling Kathy Lee Crosby, who hasn't been in the news for years. Hey, get, hey Kathy, you want to come on me salad? You know? <laughs> and then, And then she goes, yeah, sure, Jay, I would love to. And then they're going, no, that's the wrong Kathy Lee. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. Take care. <laughs> the fucking phone. So he, he's implying that they need Jay Leno to book his own show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that Jay Leno is so out of it that he's calling the wrong Kathy Lee. Sure, sure. He's got Kathy Lee Crosby's number and gives her a call. And then his staff realizes he's talking to the wrong Kathy Lee in the middle of the conversation. No, no. Yeah, yeah. They're giving him that sign. And then he, he hangs up. Yeah. How is any of that plausible? That's all a made-up story. Yeah, Johnny Carson did it, Dave Letterman. <laughs> yeah. All the big names book everybody, right? That's a lie, is what that is. Yeah. You have people who book your show for you when you host the Tonight Show. <laughs> That'd be one of the jobs you don't have to do. Yeah, I remember when Jay was selling advertising for the show, yeah. and he was talking to Coca-Cola, <laughs> and trying to rope them into a 10-week deal. It sounds like something he heard third-hand that it's he's bullshit. telling wrong. It's, yeah. yeah, it's total bullshit. Fucking idiot. And I just love that David just continues to lecture John and tells him how to live his life. You, you should be more forgiving of people and not hold grudges against Sasha and the dog. I'm not holding any grudges. Like I think dog. about them. But, but, but you're saying they're pricks when they were. They're pricks. Thought, so what? They're a lot you, of pricks. But, but, but that's not. Would you like it if I judged you on. Why would you? I'm nothing but nice to you. <laughs> what? <laughs> they're pricks. I'm a great guy. Why won't you write for my show? All right, so then I love this because John's talking about a boss that he had at NBC, Jack Cohen. I tried to look this up. I don't know who Jack Cohen is, but apparently he was a boss on The Tonight Show, and John has to shit on this guy, too. Although Jack wasn't the greatest boss, though, dude, either. I mean, he, he, he was, a, you know, he's kind of like a lunatic in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're the reason we need an infrastructure, Bill. You've burnt every bridge in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any bridges that you don't burn? You know what? I pride myself on my honesty. David's literally telling him, like, stop talking shit about everyone you ever worked with. <laughs> it's not working out well for you. He even goes on later in the show where he goes, not every thought in your head needs to be said out loud. Yeah. You don't you can think that Jack Cohen's a prick. You don't have to say it it's on bad, your show on the internet. It's bad business. It's it's pretty dumb. It's a pretty dumb thing to do. So now John is drunk and he's disoriented and, and he's looking at the chat and David Feldman's talking and John's just like reading questions from the chat. Oh, which classic. Is, yeah. Oh, which my is God. Kind, kind of rude. It's all in my spam folder. I don't know. Why. What, what, what was your question? I don't know what Stage Dog. Yeah, Fred and Jackie contributed to my questions. Yeah, exactly, Stage Dog. That's why I reached out to Jackie to write some questions. What are these? Who are you talking? Are you hearing voices in your head? <laughs> No, on the chat. I guess you don't see the chats. Like, you know, oh, I don't. I, I see yeah, so, so people ask questions. This guy's like, Fred and Jack can contribute to questions. <laughs> yeah. So, I've always I, I I say that in my book. I thank them in my book. What more do you want me to do? Fucking blow them? Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have Jackie on my show all the time. Do you? Oh boy. Yeah. How much you have to pay him? Oh, he's the best. All right. So this sets Holy up the shit. third act of this show that I'm so excited about. This is the single most entertaining interview I've <laughs> I ever know. fucking heard. I know. It's it's amazing. They should have strung this along for hours. Yeah. I mean, it was an hour and a half. It was pretty long. But the third act is great because now this guy says, David Feldman says, I'm friends with Jackie Marlin. And we know, Senator John, not a fan of Jackie these days, has a lot of shit to talk about Jackie. Now, what when I wouldn't bring that up is when I'm talking to one of Jackie's friends. John doesn't have that filter. He doesn't understand. <laughs> so he goes right into uh, his problems with Jackie. <laughs> he is a professor of jokes. He really is. I mean, he comes on and just But you know what my jokes. problem, David, has always Hang been on. Jack. Your problem? See, another bridge. Yes, I know the bridge. Found a bridge. Another bridge broken. What, what do you have against Jackie? Come on. I'll tell you right now. The guy's telling him, listen... What you're about to do right now is a bad idea. I know you want to talk shit about Jackie Martling. You shouldn't. Probably not not going to do anything for anyone to do that. 
And John gets into it, and David really explains to him what he's doing. He does a brilliant job of telling John what he's doing is wrong, and John just cannot see it. Why were why, what is it anybody's business? What Jackie should have done. Everybody should focus on what they're doing. Jackie is. I a, want the best for people, Dave. Yeah, it's, a, it's passive aggressive. <laughs> no, it's not. For, yes, it is. I want the best for people. That's no, all. You, oh, you're saying you're so talented. I love you. Why are you such a piece of shit? And a, that's basically you're being passive aggressive. You're going, I no, love you. No, I don't I understand. Yes. So, you know, certain John goes, he should have wrote his own jokes. You know, Jackie is the guy who knows every street joke that's ever been made or, or spoken. And he goes up, he does those jokes. Wait, wait, John is saying Jackie should have wrote his own jokes? Correct. While well, he's asking this guy to write jokes for him? Correct. You see the irony? You see the irony there, Andy? <laughs> okay. It's, it's not hard to pick up on these things, is it? John's a fucking moron. Oh, stuttering, God. stuttering fuckface. <laughs> so stuttering fuckface is explaining that he should have written his own jokes and this guy's going, why do you care? Because I care about him. I want him to be more successful. No, you don't. You're being passive aggressive. You're calling him out. You're saying he sucks. And uh, this this conversation goes on. But why can't you give him unconditional support and love and appreciate what he's doing? Which is pretty amazing. He's the He is the most, he's the largest, he has the largest repository of jokes in the world. He collects jokes. There isn't a joke that Jackie doesn't know. That's not true. He's being a salty bitch right now. Like, there's no one who knows more jokes than Jackie the Joke Man Marling. We can all nope. agree on that. Nope. And <laughs> Charlie, nope. I came up with a joke that he didn't know. Yep. Stump the Joke Man was a bit they did on Howard right. Stern back in the day. Yeah. People would call in, yeah. and if he didn't know the punchline, they'd win a prize. Yeah. He always knew the punchline. Unless they made up the shitty joke and it wasn't funny. Right, yeah. That'd be the one time they'd be like, nope, it's this. And they're like, well, th that's not a joke. And it was John's joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was John calling in. <laughs> Shouldn't you be answering phones? What are you doing? So uh, right there, he goes, nope. He's not, he's not even the most prolific joke teller. He doesn't even know all the jokes. And he just totally dismisses Jackie. I don't know. I don't, I, I, God bless Jackie for keeping those jokes alive. Yeah. You know, look, nah. again, so so you're being, you're being, man, man, I don't have any hatred for Jack. I'm just saying, I think his, his career would have been better if he actually wrote his own, his own material. Why? Because he could have got, the, I don't want What about to, Frank Sinatra? You like, you said I didn't mention Frank Sinatra. Oh, come on, come on. You, I, don't you think Frank should have written? Don't you think? Are you Frank, really, are you going to make a comparison to crooners, because I mean that's the, it, that's that's oranges and oranges and apples. Come on, bro. <laughs> oranges and you apples. You can't make that comparison. What well, Frank Sinatra didn't write any of the songs that he sang. Yeah. So yeah. I guess what, 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 so Howard would have said, Frank, why isn't he writing? It's the '60s. Everybody is performing their own songs. Frank, why don't you write your own music? Did I win this argument? I think I won. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think you did. Because it, 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 it's, it's apples and oranges from somebody. Half the bands in the world, you know, will sing other people's music. Half the bands in the world will sing other people's music. Statistically significant. <laughs> I don't think that that's. And if we're talking about more than half. Well, no, we're talking about successful yeah. bands. We're, uh, we're not talking about anyone. We're talking about Jackie the Joke Man, super successful career. And we're talking about Frank Sinatra, yeah. super successful. It's actually a good comparison. When you okay. think about it, like that guy's great at singing other people's songs. This guy's good at telling other people's jokes. That's what they do. That's what they do. It's why they're famous. It's, it's apples and cores lights. Uh, I had Jackie the Joke Man's got polyps in his colon. But I love that he thinks he would have been more successful if he would have written his own jokes. You ever hear a great cover band? Is your first thought, I wish they'd write their own songs? No. Yeah. They probably suck at it. That's why they're a cover band. That's exactly. I've heard <laughs> prominent comedians go, like put him down because he's doing other people's stuff. Prominent, well-known comics put him down and go, he's not a real comic because he doesn't do, you know, he's telling fucking street jokes, as you say. Well, in my estimation, a prominent comedian is way too busy to worry about other comics. How do you like that?
Yeah, no shit. John's going, this isn't just my opinion. Everyone's saying that yeah. this guy's a hack. Reporters are saying it. <laughs> Reporters are saying that I'm the reason why Clinton got elected. <laughs> so, thankfully, David keeps a, a level head throughout this entire interview. He's like, well, I think a prominent comic wouldn't be worried about what Jackie's doing. You know, I mean, we could all goof on Carrot Top or whatever, yeah. but they're not worried about it like John is. Just listening to it, you can hear a smart person dealing with a stupid person. Yeah, like with a child, happening. with a drunk child right. is what John is. Yeah, that, that's what this show is. <laughs> and it's it's so funny. It's like David Tell has been on a lot of podcasts. I've never once heard him complain about other comedians. Right. He's the best stand-up to ever live. And he's not going out there and going, yeah, this fucking hack is telling these jokes that he heard someone else say once. Because actual comedians yeah. don't give a fuck. Yeah. They worry about themselves. He's not insecure about his act. You ready for a super awkward wrap up here? <laughs> yes. I have this was say, fun. I, this is I fun. You all mean was, a... I don't think I've ever laughed this hard <laughs> on a beer on the balcony since I've been doing them. Really? Make, <laughs> like, really yeah, you why? make me laugh. Your delivery is Bob Newhart like. Oh, I and, Thank you. And, and you're funny as shit. <laughs> He was giving you yeah. wife advice. I'll tell jokes next time if you like it that much. Yeah, I know. The guy's going, wait, really? I, I was telling you wife advice this entire segment. I'm a life coach. <laughs> yeah, he could be a life coach for, for reals. So that was amazing. And thanks again to Jackie Marlowe, who is in the Discord right now, for uh, pulling that together for us. Because hey. Fantastic. All right, uh, Doug. Strap in, buddy. <laughs> So Stuttering John didn't do a show on Tuesday. You know, he's uh, performing in Reno all this past week. But he did do a show last Saturday, and he had Richard Ojeda on. And Richard Ojeda just came off his performance on Bill Maher. Bill Maher show taped Friday. I think that's a live show. I'm pretty sure. So he taped that Friday. And then on Saturday, Stuttering John has Richard Ojeda on. I assume to talk about being on the Bill Maher show. Well, kind of. It's John being super jealous that he wasn't on the Bill Maher show. I'm very shocked. My good friend books that show, Dina Katz, and I have yet to be a guest. I have yet to be a panelist. I'm very jealous. This is what he's saying to Richard Ojeda, a guy who was just on the show. How are you supposed to react to that? I'm sorry, man. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I'd, I'd love to get you on. I can't really do that. And then, of course, John asks, he didn't watch the show. He asked if he plugged the Stuttering John podcast. This is, <laughs> this is so bad. Did you? Oh, did you? Did you squeeze my podcast in there? Did you say you am on Stuttering John all the time? No, no, no. They uh, honestly, man. You coward! This dude's fucking hammered. <laughs> yes, and I'm. It's yeah, this something. sounds. Ex this sounds exactly like our first text exchange after you went on Anthony Cumia for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't talk about who's right. God damn it. <laughs> I tried to, Doug. I'm sorry. I'll do it next time. Dude, that's insane. That's an insane way to react to your friend getting on the Bill Maher show. There's so many things wrong with this. <sighs> All right. Let's talk about more fun things. So John did come back on Thursday after he missed his Tuesday show. And let's talk about what's, what's new with him. And, you know, it really pisses me off, actually. First of all, the laminate cracked again. This dentist, I got to get a new dentist. You know, they glued this thing on, and now it's cracked again. So now, look, look at that. <laughs> look disgusting. <laughs> He's back to being a snaggle tooth again. It only lasted a couple of weeks, and he got his teeth fixed. Just in time for Halloween. <laughs> that makes me so happy. He's so pissed about it. So I mentioned he's flying to Reno. He's, he lives in L.A., taking a direct flight to Reno on American Airlines. And he tells the story of going to the airport. The flight is at 3 p.m. on Monday. My flight's at 3. I get to the airport 1 o'clock, two hours before. Go to the gate. I arrive to the gate at 1.30. Check-in is at 2.32. I got an hour to kill. Of course, you know me. I hit the pub. I get a Bloody Mary, which the first time I got a Bloody Mary, it got put uh, a crispy bacon strip in there, in the Bloody Mary. I never had that before. 
was awesome. Freaking awesome. Along with, you know, a celery uh, stick and uh, olive and lime. But it was great Bloody Mary. So I had the Bloody Mary. And then I had uh, two beers as I'm waiting. So he had three drinks. He must have been hung over. got a Bloody Mary. He's never seen bacon in it before, which is surprising. Served in a glass. <laughs> this wasn't a silo cup. <laughs> I couldn't believe how, how nice this was. So he gets there at one. You got to think it takes some time for him to check his luggage and go through security. But he's able to have three drinks at this pub. And Why then, is it a pub, by the way? I know. I know the, the pub at the, you know, yeah. <laughs> my neighborhood airport pub. <laughs> I always tell people to meet me there and fight me, you know. <laughs> Nice you guys place. go ahead and check in. I'm going to head over to the tavern. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> all right. So the reason why I'm saying all this is because I'm setting up what happens next. Get to the gate around 2.30. There's a line. Guess what? They only have two shuttles to take people to the smaller plane that I'm taking going to out here to Reno. So... I missed the plane. <laughs> because they don't have a shuttle. To take you to the plane. <laughs> no, no, no fucking way. I mean, that sounds fair. So according to John, this is not his fault at all. It's the bacon. <laughs> he, got, he got to the gate, 2.30, and they're like, yeah, but you got to take a shuttle to the airplane, and there's just no shuttles for you. This is John's story. Doug, you ever fly before? I have. I, I fly frequently. Yeah. So I think you know that, especially when you have a direct flight somewhere, if they have an issue getting people to the airplane who get to the gate on time, they will hold up until they get everyone onto the airplane. This is not uncommon. And John's explaining that I did everything right and they took off without me. And uh, because of that, he tweeted at American Airlines. Of course, I tweet them out. They respond. Is there anything we can do to to help you? I go, yeah, yeah. Freaking, it cost me a flyaway. It cost me a show because I couldn't do the podcast. I go, yeah, how about give me some points? Some freaking flyer miles. No, sorry. You know, all we can do is offer our apologies. Fuck you, American. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. So it obviously was not their fault. If they say, hey, we're really sorry this happened to you. I'm going to read you the tweet that John put out for everyone to see. Just letting everyone know that if you're going to fly, don't use at American Air. Not only did I arrive two hours before my flight to Reno, not only did I arrive on time to the gate, they told me they had a lack of bus shuttles to get me to the plane, and I am an Advantage member. What does it matter how early he got there if he went, if he beelined for a bar and drank for a few hours? doesn't sound like he has the advantage either. <laughs> I know. So I love that he thought he was going to take them down and they would have to give him miles or something like that. And they're like, nah, it's, <laughs> no, you just, we'll say sorry again. Yeah, I mean, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so the best is, and I know Reno's not a big city, but he's not even able to get to Reno that day. He had to wait until the next day to fly in. So he missed one of his stand-up gigs. He didn't podcast on Tuesday because of it. It really fucked up his whole week. I hope that bacon was really fucking good, John. <laughs> it better be a really good Bloody Mary. It was going to cost you that much. What so, we should be talking about is the lucky son of a bitch on that small plane that had an empty seat next to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you almost had Sonny Johnson next to you oh, all the way man. to read him. <laughs> you dodged a big, retarded bullet. <laughs> so... <laughs> John then talks about his next flight the next day to Reno, and he's got some jokes ready to go for this. He's such a bad joke teller. Listen to how he delivers this. I was worried to fly into Reno. Let me tell you something. Last time I flew in, it was so bumpy, and they land, and the plane just drops out. It's the only flight that comes with a death certificate. Freaking plane drop quicker than my grandma's boobies. I mean, and I'll just tell you this. Oh God! <laughs> the plane drops. So, like, yeah. the plane drops over the course of thirty years. I don't understand the the joke. <laughs> over the course of thirty years. 
I, I've been checking in on my grandma's tits for the last 40 years. I know how long this process takes. <laughs> Grandma, sports bra, Christ. How many times I got to tell you? <laughs> Your tits are dropping like an American Airlines flight into Reno, Grandma. <laughs> oh, that old chestnut. <laughs> <laughs> so then Stuttering John explains that he needs the people to keep the super chats coming for a very specific reason. Uh, so let me just get rid of that. And uh, keep the super chats coming. Because here's the thing. My last show here is on Sunday. Then on Monday morning, I fly back on my birthday. That's right. It's, it's, it's my birthday, 47 years of age on Monday. <laughs> he's, st- he's still doing that thing. Mm-hmm. But he thinks everyone's going to give him money because it's his birthday. Jen, you're 56. Who gives a shit? We're you still celebrating birthdays like a child. Should we send him something? <laughs> I think so. I feel bad. Send it to the Pickwick Bub. I believe my sister-in-law, she mentioned that she's going to make a shirt for his 2017 campaign run to be the uh, senator of California. Because he needed Anthony and Artie to give him money. This was part of the bonus episode that we did. He was asking them for money to support his campaign, his election campaign. He needed shirts made. So we thought it'd be fun to send some merchandise to the pickwick pub it's a little late but yeah whatever he'll still do, wear it do you know if, does john have a p.o box i don't think so hmm. it would be great to send him a bunch of uh that pre-cooked bacon <laughs> i know you're gonna be blown away by this go ahead and shove this in a drink if you want <laughs> so john did a show in the apple valley and i guess i'm not familiar with where this is but i guess it's pretty far outside of la it's a pretty rural area but he did a stand-up show, and he had a long way to drive back. And thankfully, he had his friend Nikki B there with him. Uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta thank Nikki B for being such a damn good friend. Now, first of all, I killed it last night. Probably the best set I've ever done. You know, it was, <laughs> sure. it was packed. I try new stuff. Everything was working. The people were loving me. And the cash wasn't bad either. But I started driving home around midnight or maybe 11, 30. Called Nikki B. And she stayed on the phone to keep me awake while I drove all the way home from Apple Valley, two and a half miles. I mean, two and a half hours away. <laughs> so uh, I thank you, Nikki, for being such a good friend. As we discuss people who are not such good friends. So he was shit talking people with Nikki B for two and a half hours after a stand up show in order to keep him awake. What's weird about this is if I had moderators, which I don't, I don't think they'd be the first people I'd call if I wanted a friend to talk to. And that's like John's friend base now as his moderator. That is pretty telling. That's very telling. He talked to Nikki B for two and a half hours. Yeah. Not. A friend of his or a family member. Call the time and weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Movie times. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of interesting. Now, Elisa Giordana. I got to get on her show next time the Bills aren't playing on a Sunday afternoon. She was on this show called Juicy Scoop with Heather McDonald. And I've talked about Juicy Scoop. I think with uh, Drew and Mike, uh, this is not a great show. But Elisa's great. And she goes on there to talk shit about Stuttering John. Well, she was asking a, a question about him. And this is always fun for me. Stuttering John is not well right now. He's yeah. like, he is a mess because this is what happened. So I... I know him well. Me too. And I yeah. know his his ex-wife who just got married this past week. And so that probably didn't help his mood. No, it did not. So <laughs> with him, I feel for him so much because yeah. I went through a similar scenario where I'm no longer really involved with Howard Stern. Yeah. But I look at it in a different way than he looks at it. I yeah. look at it as, wow, I pretty much came in with no experience at all. They put me with the top writers in the world. I mean, yeah. top comedy writers. I got to be on the radio. I got to connect with an audience. It was the most amazing time of my life, one of yeah. them. And I've, I've had a lot of amazing times. So I look at it like that. I look at Howard Stern gave me this gift. He bought me a, like a beautiful diamond necklace that said dream on it. Yeah. And he, he wrote a letter on how funny I was. And I didn't even know I was funny at all until that letter. Yeah. So it, it, he just he changed my life. So Howard yeah. Stern changed my life. John, on the other hand, thinks that Howard like owes him something or that the Stern show was nothing without him when that's so clearly 
Like, not what it is. He should just appreciate that he was on there and just try to make something different happen. So Lisa's coming at this from a place where she can relate. She was a part of the Howard Stern show, and she no longer is. And she's realizing that you have to move on with your life when that sort of thing happens. Yeah, thank you for the experience. Now I'm going to try to see what else I can do. Right. And unfortunately, John does not have a good attitude about this. Yeah. And so John, I feel for him because I understand that pain because I went through the same pain, but it's just not good. The way he's talking about Howard, you know, he's just shit talking him every day. He made a whole podcast about Howard, about how horrible he is, how bad he treats his current staff, how much the current staff is making. It's just, wow. Like he is not over it. And it's, it, that's a hard part of life. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I've taken years of like Kabbalah classes to get over this and like just different religions. Yeah. yeah. And the most important thing in life, I think is letting go. Yeah. Cause otherwise you can't let in anything new. Right. And I don't want to be like a bitter person. Right. I really exactly. don't. And, yeah. and, and he, you know, he, He's a bitter guy, and yeah. I like him. I think he's funny, but it's just it's hard to be happy when you're living in a, the past, no matter what how great it was. Right, right. Very well summed up, Elisa. He is a bitter guy living in the past, thinks that everyone owes him something, and the world owes him, and Howard owes him, and they do not. He was. Not I really like what she was saying up until the very end when she said that she likes John and thinks that he's funny. Then now I can't trust anything she says. <laughs> I know. She does that a lot, too. When she was on our show a few weeks back, she, and I love John. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> I mean, I love him, too, for a specific reason. He, <laughs> he, he makes me laugh more than anyone else. But it's when he says shit like this. I can't handle stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shit that cracks me up about that idiot. That fucking stuttering fuck face. So what did Howard give John? Like, what did his necklace say? <laughs> Good question. I have to talk about what's going on with our buddy Stott Joe. Stuttering John is down in Tampa. He's doing a stand-up show or something again. So he's on the road, and he's podcasting from his hotel room. Well, this is exciting because we all know it's October, and this is the month he's going to Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Dude, I was listening back to my appearance on Drew and Mike before I posted on Patreon. I can't pronounce the word Washington. I just did it again. I, like, lose the T altogether. That's a list. <laughs> All right. He's going to Washington, D.C., which is very exciting. He's going to uh, interview all these senators and Congress people. Or is he? So I booked my trip. I was supposed to go to Washington October 12th through the 15th. Four days, $200 a day for the crew. Doug Goodstein was hooking me up. My good buddy Gonzo now just texted me. John, the Senate and Congress are not going to be in session that one week of October. Now, granted, I booked this trip a while ago. I checked online. They said Congress will be in session the whole month of October. That's why I booked it. So now there'll be nobody there. Not to fret, not to worry. I'll just go in November. So, you know... Keep the super chats coming, and I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> He's, to get crap, he? yeah. He's like, look, at I, I said it was going to be, originally he said August, which is hilarious because everyone knows the Congress is off in August. They take the entire month off. He's like, I didn't even know. They're not there in August. Well, you should. And then it became October, and now they're off that week. And he's like, that's fine, though. Keep giving me money. We're going to do this in November now. <laughs> this is great. This is never going to happen. Uh Coming up, December, we're going to be going to Washington. Uh, $200 a day for a crew? What is he hiring, like a 17-year-old with a Zoom recorder and a DSLR to film this for him? I was thinking the I same thing. I get paid thing. $200 a day just to show up and mix a, a sound console and not fucking lift anything. Right. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. So I'm not sure what this is going to look like. I'm so excited to see if he actually does try to pull this off because he just said... I was going to be there October 12th through 15th. He's going to be there for three or four days? How much footage is he going to get out of this? What does he think he's going to pull off here? 10-minute YouTube video? 
he better post something. If he goes there and I don't get to see this footage, I'll set it for his Patreon. I'll become a fucking YouTube subscriber. Whatever it takes. I have to see this. I can't wait. Oh, my God. Early on in the show, John is sneezing. And he's so gross. <laughs> so I didn't pull the clip because obviously it's a visual thing. But he turns his head and you just see mucus and saliva and snot just flying <sighs> out of his nose and mouth everywhere in this hotel room, this poor, poor hotel room. He doesn't cover He's his... always damp. Yeah, he's always like wet and, and greasy. His hair is all greasy. And he's just turning his head and he's just blowing this shit everywhere and you can see it. And he's not covering his mouth or like, you know, you put you put your nose into your elbow or something if you're going to sneeze. That's, that's what normal people do, but not John. So then someone in the chat's like, wow, you're a true bachelor, meaning <laughs> you're gross. <laughs> like you're disgusting. And John says this. Uh, page C. And between the start of two shows and those news, you can tell how much of a bachelor you are. Yes. Yes, it's true. I am a bachelor. Uh, but you know, look, I'm not trying not to be. If the right girl comes into my life, I will certainly, <laughs> certainly consider settling down. <laughs> certainly consider sneezing coke into her face. <laughs> I'm not trying not to be. Wait, what did I say? <laughs> I'm not not licking toads. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. Ladies, if you if you want to go out with this piece of hundred percent man meat, just give me a call. I'll take I, you out. Whoever you are, thirty five dollar limit. <laughs> I think I could be ready to settle down with an escort if it's the right one. <laughs> and she likes super chats. <laughs> First date, we're going Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now John is talking to. Well, he talked the, the big deal here, because this is going to be his big guest on Thursday. It was Mary Trump. So he's all excited. He talks to Mary Trump. So then Hale Sparks comes on after that. And listen to what happens in the middle of this Hale Sparks interview. You know, as a, as a director, I appreciate your ability to take notes. Yeah, hell, hold on. Okay. Oh, God. He's going into the hotel room. Jeffrey Tubin. Hello. It's the moment. Whatever. Please, God, be wearing pants. Please, God, be wearing pants. Please, God, be wearing pants. He's calling room service for me now. I don't know what's happening. Hi, folks. Welcome. This is uh, Hal Sparks in the Stuttering John Hotel Room uh, show. He's getting a noise. I'm making too much noise, he's saying. So they had a, the hotel had to come to his room and tell him to shut the fuck up. It's, it's okay. I'm a podcaster. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> this is how I talk. Could you please keep the stuttering down? <laughs> Sir, you're spinning on the wall so much, it's creeping through the other side. <laughs> they can feel it. It's damp. And flush your toilet. Jesus. <laughs> How embarrassing is it for someone to like not be able to host their own show and someone has to fill in for him in the middle? Oh, God. right. What this a is, joke. This is enough beating up on poor Carl. <laughs> He's having a bad weekend, everybody. <laughs> so this is hilarious because John's explaining, you know, Hale's like, how thin are the walls in this place? You can't talk in your hotel room without getting a noise complaint. <laughs> and John says, no, no, no. This is a really nice hotel. And I'll talk a little lower. It is a very, very expensive hotel. Mm -hmm. On, on um, uh, Palm Beach Island. Okay, sure. Because some podcast is paying me to do their show in like a half, in, in like about about um, you know about an hour. But I'll mm -hmm. tell you this: all morning, I'm, I have people talking, people vacuuming. Back, back. Yes. And then someone has the balls to call about to me call. just having a conversation. Really? So I watched this video. And I've stayed in expensive hotels before. And I've also stayed in really cheap, shitty hotels. This is a cheap, shitty hotel. I can tell by the room. You can tell what type of hotel somebody's in. We're all seeing it, John. He's like, no, this is a really expensive, really high-end hotel. I don't think you know what that is, John. It's a six-star hotel. It's right there in the six name. Star. Motel Six <laughs> Stars. <laughs> <laughs> the walls they, are made of expensive so, paper. So kind and they're so kind and considerate. They leave the light on for you. <laughs> Good one. If this isn't a fancy hotel, then how can they afford all the advertising <laughs> during the NASCAR race? <laughs> so then they start figuring out. Wait, why are people fucking with John during his podcast and he's talking to Mary Trump? Oh, I bet I know what happened.
This was yeah. my theory. And yeah. Gonzo just said it. This was what I was going to bring up to you next. You want to bet some Florida Republicans called the desk and claim you were too loud. I yeah, because you had Mary Trump on. Fucking, yep. I guarantee fucking tell you. Yep. It was a Republican who, who couldn't stand hearing the truth about his Fuhrer. Mm -hmm. And exactly what <laughs> and you talk about what hotel you're on on in Palm Beach, and then no, they I just start. I, just I mean, I'm in, I'm in Palm Beach Islands. There's right. Hotel. And they just start in a nice hotel. All right. So nice goes three steer for. OK, so it's in one of these three. And then you go floor to floor and then you ask for your room number or something. And some dumbass, the third person that picks up, tells them which room you're in because you don't travel under an assumed name because you're a moron. So now they've decided, because John goes, well, I'm in a nice hotel, and he said, what city he's in, that someone must have called in because they're pissed off he's talking to Mary Trump. Except for he said all that stuff after the noise complaint. So the timeline doesn't work out there at all. No. And then Hal describes how to dox someone. Yeah, right. <laughs> and this, it's really easy. <laughs> Could you imagine thinking in your head that what you're doing is so important that people are trying to shut you down? John has... 250 people watching him when he's live on there. And he thinks people are trying to shut him down because they can't handle it. He must know that can't be the case. He's got a theory. I wasn't saying it was somebody who called it. I think it's somebody from the other room who's a Republican and and who overheard what's going on. And that's why they, you know, called the, you know. Someone from the other room heard that he was interviewing Mary Trump and was pissed off about that. And like, we got to shut this shit down. Right now. <laughs> Makes sense. The Republicans are inside the hotel. <laughs> the call came from inside. I love it. It's like, um, I want to call to complain. The people next to you having sex too loud? No, no, no. They're talking to Mary Trump too loud. I, I don't like it. The people having sex are fine. I have no problem with that. <laughs> so that's the latest on our buddy, Stuttering John. He's not going to Washington this month. But don't worry. Keep the super chats coming. I'll be going there in November. Go in November, fight against Trumpism. <clears throat> and the G. Definitely not going to happen. All right. I've been saving the best for last, everybody. Yes! Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey! Indeed. <laughs> Stuttering John did beer on the balcony recently with Tammy Pascatelli. I don't have that because it's gone. I wish I did. But he also did it with little Jimmy Norton. <gasps> our buddy Jim Norton. Oh, I'm going to love this. Went on Stuttering John show to do a beer on the balcony. Now, you might ask the question, why? I, <laughs> yes. I would, but I'm also like, what a nice guy. That's a great question because this is how the show starts off. <laughs> and uh, say hi to who's in here. Uh, Joe Weatherford is here. CB is here. Pauline W is here. Kinky Streets is here. Um, and that's who we have so far. Only six people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my six God. people. Uh, There's six people watching beer on the balcony. Uh, and it's it's so pathetic because he never lets Jim go. There's. Let me ask one more question. Let me ask one more question. This happened six or seven times. And uh, here's an example of that. This is the fourth time he says, okay, one last thing. And this is such a, a useless thing to do. Last thing, and I'll let you go, uh, Jim. Um, uh, so where are, you, where are you performing next? I have uh, uh, Helium in Philly. And um, they. Uh, I'm also doing Ca uh, Caroline's November, I think, 1st through 4th or 4th through 7th. Like the first week of November. Um and uh, they were going to put me in Radio City, um, but then they said Andrew Schultz wanted to do it. Would I do Caroline's instead? Oh, oh wait a second. Of course, second. that's a lie. So, so Jim's trying it first off. <laughs> he's promoting a show in Philly and one in New York to the six people watching this show. It's a waste of time. But, but then so Jim tries to make a joke out of it. You know, oh, he's supposed to play Radio City. And wait, one, two, three. John's not even paying attention. And wouldn't have gotten the joke anyway. So they're like, that was a joke. All right, never mind. Moving on, I'll be at Caroline's. So if you want to see me there, that's where I'll be. I like how the show starts because uh, 
He starts it earlier than he was expecting to because Jim said he got done with his thing earlier, so he was going to come on. So John comes on, and he doesn't know what to do with himself because Jim's not there yet. And he starts texting Jim. And this is how you know that Stuttering John is an old man. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, I'm just going to text Jim. Oh, my he's, God. He's got the sound turned up on his phone. <laughs> you can hear him texting people. Uh, I mean, that would be bad normally, but you're also doing a show. Put your phone on silent, you dummy. The amount of old people that still have... What is the, what is that? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, 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 that's like the basic blues or dun, something like dun, that. Dun, dun, dun. It's called, yeah, and I know. So it's so loud and obnoxious. so annoying. Like, and they, all think, vibrate. they all think they're bad to the bone. It's like, you're not bad to the bone. No. You're in a boomer. <laughs> you're osteo to the bone. You're boomer to the bone. Getting a call here. <laughs> so, <laughs> John, right away when Jim comes on, has to tell this story again about the time that I was on the chip show and I goofed on John and Jim called John to let him know. He has to bring this up every fucking time. Oh, poor Jimmy. Well, I had to say, uh, you know, and, you know, not to sound um, too, too, too nice, but it's the truth. Jim, you are one of the most down to earth, nicest comedians I have ever met in my life. And, oh, thanks, John. No, I'm not just saying this because I, because I told everybody, you know, on my regular show, I said, I told the story about how you, you know, like you had some guy on and you didn't know th- that he was going to trash me on the Jim and Sam, uh, the uh, Jim and Sam show. And and then you called Is me. Is it Jim and Sam or Chip? It might have been Chip. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he's I don't not booking me to be on Jim and Sam. <laughs> but you called me. I was on the way to the Yankee game at the Dodger Stadium. And I was with a buddy of mine. And you called and said, look, John, I just want to say I'm sorry. I didn't know this guy was going to trash you. And I just said, no, it's cool, Jim. And- and when I hung up the phone, I go, "How, how fucking nice is Jim Norton? Nobody, nobody else would ever do something that kind. No one would ever do something that kind. Now, let's keep in mind, he had me on the show. He hits, he had me on again since then. He didn't take it out of the show. He just said, "Hey, by the way, this guy was on my show and he goofed on you. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever done for Cedric Yeah, That's, I mean, it's not that much effort. I mean, it's." <laughs> It's pretty nice. What's the I worst suppose? thing? <laughs> well, <laughs> no one else would ever do something that kind. John goes on after that to tell a story about how Ralphie May was goofing on him once and he was complaining about it to Jay Leno. And Jay's like, hey, John, why don't you just give him a call? And he goes, it was the best advice. I called him and Ralphie was like, oh, yeah, no, I was just trying to make a joke. And then and then they, they remained friends after that. Hmm, jokes, you say. <laughs> no shit. He's so fucking stupid. So he's so excited about what a kind person Jim Norton is. And by the way, Jim has been nothing but sweet to me. So I have nothing bad to say about him. But I also wouldn't be this over the top with how amazing he is. But, you know, and I, I thought that was so kind. You also thanked me in your book. And I was like, wow, that is Jim. You're the fucking nicest fucking guy. I, you don't belong in this business. So people thank other people in their books all the time. No one's ever thanked Stuttering John before. Right. And the reason is because John is a taker, not a giver. And the reason why Jim thanked him is because when John was first doing stand-up tours back when he was on the Howard Stern show and had the name recognition where he could go out and do shows, he brought Jim Norton along with him as one of the stand-ups. So Jim remembers this and he says, I want to thank Stuttering John, he brought me on these tours back when he had the Howard Stern show, credibility and publicity and everything like that. And John's blown away by this. He doesn't know that this exists in the world. He's like, I can't believe this guy's nice to me. John, a lot of people are nice to a lot of people. The problem is, is that you're just such a douchebag. He hasn't punched me in minutes. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible to be nice back to you because I also want to point out what a pro Senator John is. Just professional in every single way. You get a big guest like Jim Norton on a show watched by six people. So you might as well be a pro about it. Yeah, no, I know. And like, it's like the, it's the famous Jackie the Joke Man story. Hold on, Jim. I'm just going to open the microwave because it keeps on beeping. Oh, my God. I, I was heating up some wonton soup. But, okay. um, but, um, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> We're on a need to know basis here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so Missy says, uh, so let me know if, if you need an opener, <laughs> Caroline's. And it's funny that you say that because near the end of the show, they're talking about the Chip Chipperson show. And John's like, oh my gosh, how did you come up with that? Such a great bit. I love it so much. 
And then he says this. Um, and as the podcast, Chip is now just an asshole megalomaniac. And it's fun to do. It really well, is fun Jim, to do. Jim, I'd be honored to do Chip show. Oh, I'd love to have you. Absolutely. We'll make that happen very soon. <laughs> he just invited himself on the Chip Chipperson podcast. Jim didn't bring it up. He was never just like, oh, I'd love to have you on. It's just like, I'd be honored to do the Chip show, first of all. It's a, it's kind of a goof show. I mean, it's fun. I love it. I love going out there, but it's a goof show. I, I'd be honored. How do they say the teacher becomes the pupil? Is that how the saying goes? No. <laughs> I don't think so, it's no. The pupil becomes the teacher. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah, got yeah. it. And I... I, I know people out there know Jim Norton well. When he books Stuttering John, can you ask him to please book me too? Oh my God. <laughs> can I be on that episode? I'd be honored. <laughs> I'd be honored. Or, or Anthony. Anthony's on almost every single episode. I know the Stuttering John and Anthony are oh, uh, best man. of bloods these days, so that could be fun. I can't believe he invited himself onto that show. What a douchebag. <sighs> he is a douchebag. <laughs> He's such a douchebag. He just is. So the, the whole first half hour of this episode is John reliving the past. And uh, he's talking about when they were on the road 25 years ago together. We were talking about when I first put you, you know, asked you to do that tour. I had just started doing stand-up. I was like, right. I was only three months in. But I'll never forget the bit you used to do about Christopher Reeve is pretty much just a functional head or something. You remember that bit? I, I it's over twenty years ago, so I, I don't remember it, but it sounds like something I would have done. Yeah. <laughs> so the way John sets that question up is: remember when I brought you on the road with me? So he wanted to make that clear that he's done him a favor. But he says that, and then he goes, "You did this one bit that was really funny. Do you remember it?" And Jim goes, "I don't." This is someone living in the past and someone living in the present. Centering John says, remember this, remember this, remember this. Jim Norton says, well, I'm working on this. I got this thing going on. He's not in Manhattan right now because he's upstate because he's work, He's writing. He's working on his next comedy act. Like, that's what that's who Jim Norton is. And Centering right. John is, 25 years ago, we were doing stand-up together. <laughs> you had a joke. And I, do you remember what it was? No. And then he says, <laughs> and then he says, when you came on Leno. Now, do you remember when Jim was doing bits for Leno pretty regularly? I don't, but I didn't. He was like that. a correspondent for Jay Leno. He was doing he was doing bits for him all the time. So there's another connection between John and Jim, and so John brings up a joke that Jim told on Jay Leno, except for he doesn't remember it correctly and doesn't know why it was funny. I'll never forget it. I'm probably not going to get it right, but you said something like, uh, "You know, I just got a, I just got a massage, and there was no happy ending. I didn't know they had those kind of massages." <laughs> I think I said, uh, I, th I think I said something about I got ripped off um, because I didn't know. I forget the wording of the joke. That was the point of the joke. I don't remember the wording of it. Yeah. Um, it was, that, but that was the general push of it. Yeah, there was something. It wasn't that wording. Yeah. So John didn't know why it was funny. He remembers the concept of it. And Jim even goes, well, I wouldn't have said that joke, obviously, but okay, if you say so. So then they start talking about Jim Florentine. Now, as you know, John, good friend with Jim Florentine. So he asks uh, Jimmy, you still keep in touch with Jim Florentine? And the reason why he asked that, because he had to tell this riveting story about his recent experience with Jim Florentine. I uh, talked to Jim, I want to say two weeks ago I saw him. And during the pandemic, I would ride around and talk to him on the phone. Yeah, yeah, I'm still in pretty good touch with Florentine. Oh, good, good, good. Because, you know, I mean, you know, Jim's always been good to me, too. You know, I mean... Uh, in fact, I have two phones because my old phone's at, you know, I'm in New York right now. I'm at my mom's. Oh, okay. Yeah, in Long Island. And I left my other phone that has your number on it. So, so I text Florentine. I go, hey, you got Norton's number? I, I have it. Don't worry. I just I, I just don't have it on this phone. Right. <laughs> and then, you know, and then, and then he immediately gave it to me. So, I mean, what's the interesting part? Why did he tell that story? He has two phones, one of them somewhere else, so he didn't have his number, so he had to reach out to Florentine to get the number, and then he gave it to him, and then he was able to get, like, this is minutia. Why, why does he have a burner phone? Yeah, why doesn't he carry a phone with him? That's also weird. Maybe he's got a good boy phone and, and a naughty boy, boy phone. I got a good that. boy phone. <laughs> Maybe he's got a landline that's got those buttons that's each person. You know, with a landline, you, know. you do have to push one before you dial the oh. number. Whoa, whoa. You should probably tell Jackie about that. 11, 10, <laughs> what? 
So then Stuttering John asks the questions that uh, he asks everyone who comes on his show. You know, just standard interviewing questions. When you started, did you did you drink at, at that time or no? No, I quit when I was 18, so. <laughs> no, this is, so John's asking him if he used to drink. And then, of course, the follow-up question to that is. And, and what made you stop? I was just like a little douchey after school like special. What's that? Because you don't want to look like this. What, what's wrong with the way you look? No, I, I don't know. They say drinking ages you. So Jim knows that you cannot have a good laugh with Stuttering John. So even when Stuttering John tries to be self-deprecating, Jim immediately is like, no, you look fine. What are you talking about? No, it's great. You're, you're awesome. You're amazing. Meanwhile. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> have you seen Suttering John? <laughs> it's pretty fucking nuts. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. I just love that. So, Jim Norton is famously sober and famously been sober since he's 18. He's told oh, the right. story a million times. Not that John was listening to Opie and Anthony. I, that's fine. But I just think it's so funny. He's like, Oh, were you drinking? No, I wasn't. Why? <laughs> Why did you stop drinking? It's like, He has the same thing at Casey Armstrong, too. Why aren't you drinking anymore? I almost died. I had a really bad drinking problem. So you're going to meet me for a beer, but right? You, but you could have one beer. I'll, let me call your doctor. <laughs> oh, boy. This interview, by the way, is bonkers. It's never a fluent conversation. John's just asking questions, shoehorning in things he wants to say about himself. At one point, he asks, what comics did you like when you were growing up? And follows it up with, are you dating anyone? Oh, my God. And you would think that if he, if you know, oh, I, I want Dangerfield, and I like this guy, you would think that John would be able to like get into that conversation. No, nah, not at all. I don't even know if he's listening to the answers. He just lets Jim answer the. It's almost like what he does with like Major Ojeda or whatever. Just like answer the question. He's staring off into space, reading the super chats, and then he's right back to like the fucking next question. He remembers when he was on Opie and Jim. So after Anthony was fired. Opie and Jim did a show for a couple of years on Sirius in the morning and uh, Stuttering John was on that show and uh, Opie complimented Stuttering John after his appearance. Big mistake. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> no. So Opie, like, Opie was like, dude, that was hysterical. You know, I wish I could have you on for another hour. That was, you know, it was awesome. You yeah. <laughs> hear Jim there, he's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> not, not true, <laughs> not, I'm sure. Not true at all. Every time someone compliments him, he thinks that it's real. These are just pleasantries that we all give to each other. Like, Producer Chris, great job today. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't mean it. I know I know you I don't mean it. <laughs> you played guitar very well the other night. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> so So then they're talking about, you know, Opie and Jim and how they don't talk to each other anymore. It was kind of funny too, because Jim was very quick to say, like, yeah, we don't talk anymore, but, you know, whatever, it's fine. I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. I don't carry the way. Like, I don't, uh, I don't really think about it much. And it's not because I don't want to think about it. It's just, you know, it's been years. So you just kind of, you know, you move on and you live your life and they live their life. You put them on the pay no mind list, as I like to say. But you still talk to Anthony, of course. Constantly. All the time. <laughs> yeah, I saw Anthony two nights ago. He did Chip. Oh, really? He's hilarious on Chip. The only reason we don't have Anthony in studio is we started to immediately when we were allowed to is Sirius said we can't have him in anymore. That was a serious oh. no, Believe me, me and Sam pushed back very hard on that. Uh, we fought very hard about that. But though he's a fired employee and they just cracked down. And I was very, very frustrated. And that's the end of that conversation because, of course, Southern John doesn't want to talk about Anthony Kubia anymore. He's like, all right, moving on. Uh, then he tries to get tips on how to write comedy. If you can't see right through this question, because Jim lets him know, like, yeah, I'm working on, I'm writing right now. So, you know, I'm just, I'm out of town and trying to clear my head and write stuff. I'm going to get my notebook but, out. Um, like, I, I'm just, you know, I can't believe that you have five one hour specials, Jim. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, that is, uh, there are not a lot of comics who can say that. I By mean, the way, that's from 40 minutes prior to this. Where he goes, how many specials do you have? And Jim goes, well, there's five one hour. There's a couple half hour specials. I did this thing. I did that thing. And he goes, you know, John's been doing the same act for 20 years. I can't, I can't believe you. Five. How do you, how do, you do that? It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's five new hours, which yeah. means you are writing all the, all the time. So, so what happened? Like, you know, when you go upstate, 
you just go, like, it's just a blank page. And then you go, I don't know, you know what's bothering me today? Or you, or you watch TV. And then you come up with a the, the impetus for a bit. <laughs> Tell me about the process. Also, do, do have you written jokes that you're not going to use that I can maybe use? Do you know how to finish a sentence? <laughs> do you know how to say impetus? <laughs> Before that conversation, he's talking about self-censorship. And John's going on and on about how he was just headlining in Reno. And he goes, and I find myself not doing the same jokes because I'm concerned that maybe it's offensive. Maybe I don't want to do that anymore. What about you, Jim? Do you do that? And Jim goes, I don't think I'm a big enough comedian for anyone to care what I say. So, no, I do not self-censor myself at all, which is hilarious because Jim's a way bigger comedian than stuttering Johnny's all self-important. That's a good answer. <laughs> I know that was a brilliant answer. I just, probably should have clipped it instead of just talking about it. Now I think about it. It's fucking funny. But then John has to talk about trolls. <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny because John's asking Jim where he lives in Manhattan and Jim gives him the relative area. Jim goes, I'd give you my, my address. I don't, know, I, I don't know why anyone would fucking care, but I'll give it to you after the show or whatever. So then, don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't, Jim. Don't, don't, don't do that. I just thought maybe I could oh, come over there for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> Use your internet. <laughs> you want to come over in a week? I thought, well, yeah, then, then, and then another week. <laughs> 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 All right, so this is, uh, by the way, we're still posting the deep fake videos. I think I just put one up today or yesterday. Yeah, last night I think we put one up. Those are so funny. It's really funny. <laughs> Producer Chris Stop it. doing his uh, stuttering John impression, which is... Uh, He's, he's nailing lately. People are enjoying those. Those are on our YouTube channel. If you look up who are these podcasts on YouTube, you can see the uh, Stuttering John deep fake videos. More to come on that front. I promise you that. Coming up. So, of course, John <laughs> John can't have a conversation with someone without bringing up trolls, which is so weird because I listen to tons of other shows. I've been listening to uh, Joe Rogan this week because he's actually had some interesting guests on and uh, they've had some interesting conversations. Never once does Joe Rogan say, how do you deal with your trolls? <laughs> He's so fucking stupid. I give, you know, all the trolls know my address. They come by my place, take pictures of my car, and post it on Reddit. Oh, you do they? On those sites? Never. <laughs> I just, never. I don't check I don't at mean, mentions. I don't check at mentions. I don't check comments normally. Uh, and the reason I don't, it's not because, like, oh, they're so mean. There's a lot of fucking douchebags out there but in all honesty the majority of comments on like twitter or any social media if you mute 10 different people like the majority of comments you see are good but even that i was like who gives a fuck all right so jim is a reasonable person who realizes that well, especially when Je when Suttering john talks about reddit he's talking about our reddit and dabblers anonymous Dabblers Anonymous is hilarious. Quality Reddit. It's by a great the way. Reddit. It's devoted to Stuttering John, but there's 400 people on it. Do you remember the Opie and Anthony subreddit? Oh, yeah. Fucking brutal. We're talking about thousands and thousands of people who are doxing people and trying to ruin people's lives. Like, Jim Norton has dealt with some serious fucking trolling in his life. They're the meanest. They're the meanest people to ever exist. And John has no clue. Did you ever go on those sites like Reddit? And Jim's like, no, I, I, I totally ignore it. I don't look at my app mentions. I just ignore all of that shit. It's fine. I don't care. It's not a big deal. John doesn't understand that at all. So then he has to ask a follow-up question. Now, what's interesting about this, it's more troll talk, but he throws in critics and reviewers in there too which are legitimate things not just like internet trolls so after you do a comedy special yeah and then i mean do you read the reviews do you read you know what these trolls or these people are writing about you or you just say fuck it most time you know it's hard to avoid you read a couple of things because of course after an hour special you want to know if a review or an article you were in was pretty good so jim norton's talking about something totally different than what Suddenly, John's talking about yeah. it. He's like, well, if there's an article written about my comedy special that came out on HBO, then I'll read it. You know, if there's a review from a critic about my comedy special that came out on Netflix, I'll check that out. And Suddenly, John's going, yeah, but what about these twittiots <laughs> yeah. that go on there? Jim, when a guy dresses up as a roach, uh, <laughs> how do you feel about that? Do you ever have a guy dress up on a cock? Happens to everyone, right? <laughs> All right. No, we're getting close to the end of the show. And this is fucking hilarious. So let's get into the Jim Norton's. I only have 10 more minutes with you, Jim. This is a harmless. Are you having fun? Sure. 
<laughs> oh my god. Define fun. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> All right. Let's. John has to once again talk about how he used to work on the Tonight Show. So I got to direct Quentin Tarantino, ah. Gara. I mean, Adam Sandler, Jack Black. But are we talking about the we, Jim Norton's met a lot of celebrities. I don't know if he knows that. He had Robert De Niro in one of his cold opens for one of his comedy specials. He's had an Ozzy Osbourne well, he was in a cold open. He was on a huge radio show for years. He was on an HBO show for a long time, too. Lucky Louie. And famously has the biggest photo collection with celebrities <laughs> of anybody That's I've ever heard of. That that part's weird. But yes, he does like taking like selfies <laughs> with celebrities. And, and suddenly fuckface over here is going, I bet Quentin Tarantino, you ever hear of him? He directed yes. him. Yes, I have a picture <laughs> with him. One of the best actors <laughs> of our generation, <laughs> yeah. Quentin Tarantino. Oh, the story, too, is so funny because he was giving Quentin notes as he was directing this comedy bit. He was going off script. So I had to tell him to like stick to the script. Oh, <laughs> Great directing, John. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Why You're brilliant. It? All right, so then they get into the chip talk. And uh, this is, I think this is the sixth time he says one last thing. I could have put together a compilation, but I ran out of time today. All right, just one more question. I, okay, so this I know I, I know you got to go, but I just I don't want to keep you. But this uh... then the last thing, and I'll let you go. I know I've been saying that a couple of times. It's okay, uh, <laughs> Chip Chipperson, how'd you come? Because I heard I didn't know about Chip Chipperson. I was at Comey's house, yeah, and I was about to do his show, and then um, the you know Vinnie Brand's daughter was there. Yes, and he had to bring up Vinnie Brand's daughter being over at Anthony Comey's. I mean, this is this person is the reason why Anthony's show was off the air for a month. So I feel like that was kind of a dig. And uh, I don't know why that was relevant to the conversation. How'd you come up with Chip? How do you not know the answer to that? It was a bit on the radio show right. for fucking years and years. Okay. And then after Jimmy goes away, John has to start patting himself on the back. I can't believe anybody would be unhappy with this beer on the balcony because... I, uh, God, the guy is like the nicest fucking guy. The reason why I'm unhappy with this episode of Beer on the Balcony is not because of Jim Norton. It's because you stink, John. <laughs> you stink. Your interviews suck. You don't have a normal conversation with people. And Jim seemed like he was being held hostage pretty much the entire time. I know. It made me uncomfortable. It's, it's a very uncomfortable conversation. What gave it away? <laughs> the one word answers? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Help. How do you write comedy? Help. <laughs> How do you write comedy, Jim? What do you like? Come up with like stuff that you noticed during the day or watch on TV? Yes. <laughs> and what's that like? <laughs> what I do is I invent a new language and then I try to come up with punchlines for setups of the new language. And then when I do it in English. It's super easy. It's great. All right. Last thing I have after this, John starts promoting the show he's going to do the next day. Now, as you know, beer on the balcony, John tends to get a little bit drunk. On these shows. What? I know. It's surprising. Hmm. I don't know if this is the best way to promote the guests you're going to have on on the next day's show. Uh, and that <laughs> would be with the author and uh, uh, political pundit, Melissa Joe. I, I can't pronounce her name. <laughs> if that was a deep fake video, I'd be patting myself on the back. I know. I, like, oh, we wrote a really funny one. I can't compete with that. I can't compete with that. <laughs> Holy shit. He is a fucking stuttering fuckface. <laughs> wow. He sucks. I'm embarrassed by that. I'm not even John. As you should be. <laughs> I'm changing my name to that. I'm blushing. Because I mentioned that stuttering John was on. MSCS Media. This guy Tommy was interviewing him, and multiple sclerosis media. <laughs> Dude, I can't figure out what it is. I've looked everywhere, and I want to get in contact with Tommy. I want to get him on WATP and talk to him about this two day stint because considering John crashed at his house, Tommy put him up in a nice hotel, and John got so drunk that he crashed at the guy's house and stayed there overnight, and played with his one year old kid the next morning. So yeah. I got to find out more about this. But um, but anyway, he was talking about. You, and he was talking about Shuli. So I want to get into this real quick. Gagee, 
ya. Shalom, Shuli. Gentlemen, what's happening? What's happening, buddy? How so, are we? I, the reason why I wanted to bring you on today, and thank you for coming on on short notice, I was watching the video you did with Vince, Southern John's yeah. former attorney, and uh, the video is great because it's all the clickbaity stuff. It's called, Is Shuli Going Back to Stern Show? <laughs> <laughs> it's got the, he's he's no such way. a lawyer, Vinny. He's it's so good at that. So you guys were breaking down this whole episode of, uh, so this guy's a super Dago, this guy Tommy. Right. He's had like work done on his face. He's all tan. He's got the veneer. He he, it looks directly out of Jersey Shore. Casting. He looks like one of the Gotti kids. When yeah, they had oh, that God. TV show. You know what I mean? And have you seen this at all? No. Okay. No, I haven't. What's up, Shuli? How are you, buddy? Great, man. I was watching. I was watching you play Call of Duty the other night. I watch you when you uh, stream it too. So it's pretty oh, I funny. think we're officially gay now. <laughs> I think that is the gay. It's like, you know, hey, I saw your porn. I saw your gay porn, man. It's awesome. <laughs> That's like Tim Dillon was talking about, like, being gay doesn't mean having sex with men anymore. It's literally just not watching me. each other play video games. That's the new gay. Like, you could, you could put a dick in your mouth, but that's not as gay as talking about watching yeah, each other yeah. play Call of Duty. Oh, me, me going to my wife, like, Ant had such a great headshot, is literally sticking my tongue up his asshole. <laughs> it's the equivalent. It's the 2021 yeah, equivalent. So I want to start off by talking about what he was saying about you, Shuli, and then we'll get into the uh, Anthony stuff. So he brings up the fact that when you guys went out to L.A., he stuck the camera in your face, or Royce did, and he was trying to interview you and all these gotcha questions. And he goes, and Shuli's such a pussy. I'm, I'm sure you guys covered this. I can get it all, all the way through your video. Shuli's such a pussy. He just told security on me and had me escorted out. And then he says this. And I want to get your comment on it. Because you know they're not allowed to talk to me. Yeah. That I know is a fact. They are not allowed to talk to any of the ex-fucking cast members. They are not allowed. So Shuli did exactly what he was supposed to do because he knew that if he even talked to me, he'd be in trouble. Now, I heard you say, Shuli, on your show that you talk to your ex-coworkers all the time. So I'm assuming that's not a hard and fast rule that Howard has? I was going to say he gets a little confused by can't and won't you know there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th there's no th what's in it for anyone on the show to converse with him when he just goes out on whatever platform that's left for him to go on and just make shit up like you know it's he's just a, a pathological liar and and plus, he, he shits on where we all work. So what, what are we going to put our arm around and ask for somebody to come take a picture with a guy who <laughs> hates where we work and, and who we work for? It's like, dude, there's no point in anyone talking to you. Dude, you got it. You got to put yourself in Stuttering John's uh, shoes there uh, for, for a second. He has to fall down and pass out and shut his eyes and sleep at night. The only way he can do that <laughs> is by thinking that people can't talk to him because <laughs> the other option is so disturbing and horrifying to him that no one wants to talk to him. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of how it is with the, with the Opster. I'll be honest. Opie, uh, you know, I talked to every single person I worked with during the Opie and Anthony show. Um, I work with some of them and Opie doesn't at all. And he chooses to believe that uh, it's because of me. I have turned everyone against uh, Opie. And, and it's it's insanely sociopathic. But, you know, like I said, they, they have to somehow get to sleep at night. Well, imagine that even being a rule. So you're at a staff meeting and Marcy or Howard or whoever gets up and says, all right, if anyone who used to work here wants to text with you or chat or play a video game, then it's off limits. Like they're dictating your personal life, who you can be friends with. Yeah. How does it even make sense? How would you police that? <laughs> yeah, not, not to go into detail, but I, I sent Howard an email about something and got a reply from him. So okay. like, like I, I don't know what he's talking about. And, and But the thing I love about this. Was the this, email, isn't John an asshole? <laughs> <laughs> and the response was yes. Very no, I wrote, Can I come back? And he wrote back, "Who is this?" And, uh, that was, no um, new number. But the thing about John is, it, it, with this interview in particular, is 
he gets so wasted that it, it becomes like a like you turn the RPM on a record player down. His whole speech. That's all what you know. I, I don't I don't drink when I work. Oh my god. <laughs> it's fascinating. It's I hang amazing. on every dumb word. <laughs> he, get, he gets so wasted and you got to go and watch the the video that Shuli did with Vinny because Vinny pulled all the clips and pulled out some really good choice cuts. But the stuff that Croge and I did on two different bonus episodes, there wasn't anything you Cast couldn't it. clip on it because he's so drunk from the beginning to the end. And then by the end, he, like you said, he's slurring his words. He, his mouth is so full of saliva that I feel like <laughs> I'm getting sprayed just listening to it. And he's so angry at Howard Stern. He's calling him pelican face and oh i would i would kick his ass and then it's great time he goes well if he asked you to come back on the show tomorrow would you go it's like yeah of course i'd, I'd go there in a heartbeat <laughs> that's, that's not how life works you can't just trash someone non-stop they'd be like i don't know why he won't have you on the show i don't know what his problem is and the, the other funny thing about that is so he shows up in la and he wanted to interview all the staff surely you know, obviously he talked to you and, and you kind of ignored him and, and he went away. He, he hung out. He hung out. Let's let's just set this up and paint the picture here. We were in this big new studio for Sirius that they're debuting with Howard Show. He's in the alley. OK, hanging yeah. out in the alley with Melrose, Larry Green and speech <laughs> impediment, man. Yeah. So that's where that's where that's that's where he was in his green room waiting to talk to somebody in the show. But he was holding court, though. I mean, he was uh, definitely most successful out of those three guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were bowing to him, <laughs> kissing his feet. So he he explains that he went out there to try to interview all of the Stern staffers. Didn't get a single response to one question, and now thinks he's going to go to Washington D.C. and interview senators and, and Congress people, and he's actually going to get some kind of response from that. It's insane. And actually, since I brought that up, I'm gonna. I think he's backing out. I think he's backing out from the whole D.C. thing. No way, really. He, he, he so said it. Talked about it ad nauseum. Dude, he's supposed to go back in August. This was. This has been going on since June. This is yeah. the next thing I'm going to do. And then he's like, oh, did you know that they're all off in August? Like, yes, everyone knows that. <laughs> oh, I guess I can't go. So this is what he says to <laughs> Richard Ojeda just this week. Then I'm going to see when I'm going to D.C. I'm, I'm thinking about November. This is one week. This is how fucking, I'll tell you, Richard, the politicians haven't made. They don't work. I mean, there's only one week that they're in there, according to um, Gonzo. There's only one week in November that they're going to be in Congress one week. Then I'm thinking about instead going to December because I want to come out to, to my mom for Christmas. But you know, probably they take the whole month of December off for all we know. You know? Yeah. So this is going to be his excuse. I went out there at Christmas Day and nobody's there. I can't yeah. believe that. <laughs> Standing there with a the microphone. Way, for all we know, he literally could Google the, <laughs> yeah. the schedule. Yep. For, and and see actually when they are there and not there, but you know that would take some type of preparation. I love his team too. Uh, according to my associate Gonzo, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and the whole From the, my Washington bureau. I apologize. Uh, my political. Uh, I have a nosebleed as your political correspondent right now. I do want he, to point he, out because I was confused. Gonzo Shitcock who is in our chat right now. This is a different Gonzo than the one who is helping John out with his D.C. trip. There's I, I two know, Gonzos. There's two what, Gonzos. And what's going on? Listen, here's a serious question. All jokes aside, what's going on with Richard Ojeda? Is, is, he is on this show morning, noon, and night. I know. He, what's going on? Is life that bad for him? And they even talk about, <laughs> this is really funny, I don't think I pulled all these clips because it was too much, but they even talk about how people troll Richard Ojeda and tell him, why are you going on John's show? What are you doing? Like, what, what, you're wasting your time. And then he sends those notes to John with like questions like, do you know this guy? <laughs> <laughs> He's still, Ojeda's so out of it. He doesn't understand how the internet works. Is this a friend of yours, John? <laughs> John's like, no, I don't know that guy. <laughs> so great oh, the whole scene is fantastic i love it i love it all <laughs> right bizarre. so he starts talking about uh you anthony and yeah, it's cool. funny because at first he says i'm not gonna mention anything i'll tell you i'll tell you afterwards mm. let me ask you this because this is a very good time i'm with you on this one okay let me ask you this and i'm not gonna mention the shows i'll tell you after you know after we stop recording 
there's a certain show that actually, because I was in, you know, we were having like a Twitter war, started posting pictures of my kids and goofing on their looks, on their sexual preference, and started <laughs> trashing my children. And my children, oh my God, because they, <laughs> yeah. fans of this show, started attacking my children on social media. I'll Shit. tell you who this prick is, but I am telling you right Fuck now. It. Say Tom, his name, man. Fuck him. Anthony Cumia. <laughs> it didn't take much to get that out, did it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm afraid you'd fault under questioning. <laughs> <laughs> let's just call him A. Cumia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Anthony actually, let's just call him Anthony. Yeah. Anthony C. <laughs> Anthony C, yeah. Not A. Cumia, Anthony C. <laughs> oh, it so. rhymes with Opie and Anthony. That's <laughs> all I'll say. He's so <laughs> fucking drunk here. Yeah. You hear him. Uh, the, uh, the image I'm getting in my head is when the alien gets that second jaw coming out of it. <laughs> yeah. the, it's just dripping. Yes. <laughs> You're not far off on that. And this is a oh. video that's actually in HD. Unlike the camera that he uses on his show, you can actually see him, which is disturbing. It's not a good, it's not, I don't recommend it. HD is huge douchebag. For us <laughs> <that he's done. laughs> All right. So Ant, I'm going to tell you, you need to be afraid. I swear to you right now. Fuck him. If I ever, well, you know, I don't want to see, I don't want to be violent here because I don't want any problems. The but I'm saying, not gonna be. Fuck him off. Anthony Comia, to do that, there is a low life. Low life. No, that's a fucking, e there's wrong and then there's evil. That's fucking evil. But he's a gun carrier. So it's not even like if I could, you know, I go up to him, you know, let, hypothetically, right, and punch him in the face. Ah, you learned something from me. <laughs> so he would kick your ass, Ant, if you weren't if I didn't uh, carry a gun. If you were carrying, yeah, yeah. obviously. Uh, Why don't you he's put like, that, take off that badge, sheriff, and we'll <laughs> brawl out in the street. Yeah. <laughs> he's that guy who thinks he's gonna. His fight and successfully beat John Wick in the movies. You know, oh, he's yeah, just, yeah. He's, he's he's threatening and walking up to Ant's uh, fucking armory over there. Yeah, I got <laughs> skills. I could disarm him with a pencil. So the reason why I bring this up, and I, I know you're not a big fan of conflict, Anthony. I'm not trying to like put you on the spot or anything oh, like that. No, but what's fine. really annoying about this <laughs> is that Suttering John, when he actually gets called out for being very sensitive and thin skinned It's like, John, we're busting balls. Like, get over it. He'll always yeah. go to, yeah, but when you bring up my kids, they didn't choose to be famous like their pops. That's not, it's not fair. It's so God fucking annoying, damn. this whole argument. And he even said, there was a clip that we played on the show. He goes, and Anthony was goofing on my kids on the Artie and Anthony show. And Artie said, if you do that one more time, I'm walking out. And I was like, I don't what? think Artie would do that. That doesn't sound like something Artie would do. He sounds like more of a ball buster than a guy would be like, First of all, That's Artie too much. probably wanted to walk out to do more coke in the bathroom. <laughs> well, right. So he's like, anything. If you say another word, I'm walking out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. I remember those yeah, days. Yeah. Artie was not uh, quite uh, there at that point. <laughs> By the way, Artie's back on Monday, everybody. Yes, Monday. He's the doing a, the Artie Lang a, show. a podcast. Uh, I think who's who's he got? Bob Saget is yeah. going to be his first guest, and uh, I'm psyched for him, man. Me He's too. been clean yeah. down in Florida, um, so you know I hope I hope he can continue. Oof, that's a tough one. Yeah, people have been like uh, nobody's heard from Artie. So that's a good thing. That, right. That's a very good. Thing yeah, right yeah, him. yeah. And he hasn't been in jail, so apparently he's piss testing clean. So um, you know, God bless. I hope he does well. I like Artie a lot. All right, here's the last clip I want to play about. Uh... Anthony going after my kids. Like, even the mob has the fucking respect to not go after children or wives. What? That's even what? the mob won't do that. The mob. I'm and this the mob. jackass, Anthony Cumia, decides to go after my fucking children. You could, <laughs> could you see how fucking much I would fucking want to beat the shit yeah. out of him? He's fired off right there. But you come after me, it's like coming after Alec Baldwin. You're fucking, you know. 
take you down. You and the person behind you are getting shot. <laughs> Literally, you're at the bar and your and your friend or just some guy you just met just had way too much to drink and he's just oh. screaming like this and, and there's spit hitting you and you're just like, oh, how God, do I yeah. get away from this fucking monster? Oh, he's just pontificating about his beer muscles and how he's yes. going to just beat the shit out of somebody. And yeah, you're like, oh, I got to get away. I yeah, you're going to kick his ass. If it wasn't for a wall, you wouldn't make it to the bathroom. All right. So <laughs> I don't know who you're threatening. And Tommy's egging him on the whole time. Tommy at one point goes, yeah, man, if it were me, I would do 10 years. I don't care, man. Because yeah. if you disrespect Tommy's my kids. Tommy's super Italian. He's like, yeah. I'll kill a guy. I'll do 10 years. And I'll be proud knowing that I killed a guy <laughs> oh that said something gosh. about my kid. And that whole comparison to the mafia, like you made a joke about John or his kids or whatever you did. And John yeah. has turned this into like you put a hit job out on them. It's like, this is very, very different. You know that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Made a joke about my wife. But you, you said she had a 90 pound mole on her ass. Yeah, I was, I know. <laughs> it's, it's like Ralphie and Johnny Sack all over yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, Ralphie and Johnny Sack. <laughs> Meanwhile, he might want to look into the cartel. Those guys have a set of different rules, by the way. Yeah. I know that the idea that they don't go after families, are you, are you nuts? <laughs> what are you talking yeah. about? And by the way, John is, and we've talked about this before, as did Artie. He didn't leave the show or say he was going to leave because uh, I was talking about John. He, Artie is the one that brings up the fact that John is so uh, his his response to anything that he even perceives as an insult is the atomic bomb. Yes. Like that's his his response. So, you know, with Artie, it was, yeah, you drink bleach, try to kill yourself. <laughs> and, and Artie's like, Jesus Christ, I just said your shirt looked a little fucking wrinkled. He just goes, he, he goes after you on 11. So, you know, I say something, then he says something, and then I make a joke about his kids because, you know, Jesus, I mean, come on. <laughs> let's, let's be real here. Uh, yeah, and and I don't even blame them. Having a father like John has to be a, quite the experience uh, growing up. But, uh, and then he takes it to like, oh, my God, I can't believe he did that. Well, John, you know, look at what the, the shit you do in a drunken stupor. Well, I mean, that that's really the thing, that energy he puts out there of like, I'm going to fuck with anyone and everyone and say whatever I want. I mean, if, if people can go back, I'm sure there's there's stuff he said about Howard's daughters or or other yeah. people's kids. You know, he he's not innocent in this war. He's got blood on his hands. And you put that energy out there. People. Yep. Yeah, people are going to respond with that same energy. It's funny you say that. Somebody posted in our subreddit a clip from years ago on the Howard Stern show where Stuttering John is talking about Howard's 15-year-old daughter and how hot she is. They're at some oh, music God. festival or something. He's like, yeah, so your daughter. It's like, oh, Jesus, dude. Well, he'll go, oh but that, that, that was a compliment. That was a compliment. <laughs> right. <laughs> Saying I wanted to fuck her was a compliment. So it was a positive review. We, my buddy Vinny and I went back and we reviewed the Artie and Anthony show where Stuttering John was the guest the final time. This oh, was in yeah. 2017. Yeah. And we, what a fun episode. That oh, was. my God. We, we broke it all down because it's so funny. He comes on there guns a blazing. Like, he's ready to to make fun of everyone. He's like, right, you guys are, are trashing me and blah, 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 blah. He always says you can't make fun of things people they can't fix. And, Anthony, you go, one too many isn't a great movie. And he goes, okay, pock face. Like, the very, yeah, very yeah, first yeah. thing he's out of his mouth is like me. your appearance. Yeah, we're going to act me. All right, yeah, well, you know, what are you going to do? And then, he's and like, then Artie, he's like Rickles without the material. <laughs> right, he's Artie just, gets there, he's like, oh, why don't you do some more heroin, you heroin addict? Like, okay, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. great, great Your joke. father died of paraplegic. <laughs> oh, well, look who we have out here. What is that, a cunt? Hey, cunt. <laughs> he did not like when I trashed his set. That no. was the bottom line. That's what put him over uh, where he needed to attack with uh, guns blazing when I uh, saw him at, uh, I think it was the brokerage on Long Island. And I talked about how I'd never gotten such a close parking spot to the door. <laughs> Which is a great <laughs> joke. Look, he was so pissed <laughs> That off. was a great joke. Because you hit, you hit on something that's yeah. so true to comics, which is when we're pulling up to a gig, the first oh. thing we have to check is the parking lot. Yes. Because that's telling you right there. If you're there 20 minutes before the show and and people are playing soccer in the parking oh, lot. Oh, it's brutal. Like, it's brutal. So, I mean, when you say that, that's like such an inside thing. 
it's it cuts so deep. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, he hated that, man. <laughs> oh, my. there were plenty of people there. They want, <laughs> they they want. Fuck Ubers. Uber pool. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had one more question for you, and then we can move on. Because he does say on the show that there was the Twitter battle going on and that he like got attorneys involved and sent you a cease and desist or something like that. Is any of that true, Anthony? No. Okay, I didn't think so. That sounded so bizarre. No, a cease and desist from stuttering. <laughs> I would have laughed my balls off and read it. Like, yeah, have you would have done a full episode on it. Like, are you out of your mind? That actually a happened to uh, the Revenge of the Cis guys, ROTC. They received a cease and desist from Stuttering John's quote unquote attorney that was a yeah. DM from Stuttering John's Twitter account. <laughs> this is Stuttering John's attorney using his Twitter account. <laughs> this is yeah, officially yeah. a cease and desist. Great. I've and always then, said, like, a cease and desist is that first volley that they'll throw at you, uh, if it's a real one, I mean. And yeah. you could still do it. Like, the second one's probably the one you got to pay attention to because they're kind of gearing up for legal action. But the first one's literally someone just going, dude, knock it off, okay? Right. Could you please just knock that off? And then you go, eh, fuck you, no. And you keep doing it until the next thing uh, hits you. So a stuttering John cease and desist would not uh, put the fear of God in me if that one turned up at my door. You know, what's funny, too, is he probably thought that you took all the tweets down. Meanwhile, you just got banned from Twitter. <laughs> Twitter yeah, yeah, took yeah, all yeah. the tweets yeah, down. Look at that. I got him to remove all the tweets <laughs> and change his name and phone number. <laughs> All right, a couple more clips. Uh, this is just from shows this week. John still has not figured out what the internet is or how it works. There, but one of the times I had you on, I think I was in Florida, and my mother just got out of the hospital. This is how sick these trolls are. They actually paid 49 times five bucks, $245 to use the N-word, and, you know, and, and, and they actually paid... To write to my mother, who was watching this show live, die, Mrs. Melendez, you old hag. Now, <laughs> what kind of human being, what, I mean, who in their right mind would, would actually do that to an 84-year-old woman? It is the most bizarre, bizarre, uh, despicable uh, you know, <laughs> phenomenon in this world that you have people filled with so much hate that they're going to... Old Gravy Greg in our Discord raises his hand. <laughs> what kind of person? Attacking in, an innocent old, old old woman who's just watching her son on a show. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you old hag. Sign stuttering John. I need the inheritance. <laughs> You know he's going to move into that house. You know he's moving back to Long oh, Island. Oh, hell yeah. Back home, Long Island. Uh, so I just think it's funny that he still is confused by the fact that people troll people. It's, it's like, it's not, it's the internet. It's not real people. Yeah. That, that doesn't happen at your stand-up show. People are like, I hope your mom dies. You know, it's not, but on the internet, that happens all the time. It's kind of how yeah, that works. Yeah. Sometimes it's funny. It's literally the only reason you're getting money is for <laughs> right. people to talk shit. Right. That's it. <laughs> It's like when you're on Cameo and every Cameo you're reading is like an inside joke that they're goofing on you and you don't know any better. Yeah. Right. You know, like, for example. W-A-T-P. W-A-T-P. It's like you're putting yourself out there, John. That's what's going to happen. So last I thing I were, Oh, God. Uh, no, I was going to say, I thought you were going to play the high pitch Eric where uh, they made him uh, say uh, racist stuff at the end. Oh, that's oh, right. <laughs> Hi, this is High Pitch Eric, and you're listening to Who Are These Podcast? Chinese people smell. <laughs> oh, wait, that That's, might not be the real High Pitch. That is not right. Welcome to Who Are These Podcast? White Power. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> high Pitch. He, he, he is Ron Burgundy, man. He'll read it. He put it whatever you put in front of him. Yeah. Yep. So, and a disclaimer, that was actually Shuli doing a high pitch impression. Ah, there's a Shuli. My power. <laughs> he wouldn't be smart enough to not say his own name. Right. You'll never hear at the end of that sentence, you'll never hear him go, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they call me again. <laughs> uh, all right. So. Again, on the trolls, he's talking about he's got a beer on the balcony coming up, and he can't tell you who the guest is going to be. Cancel my Patreon. You never acknowledge a post as often as promised. 
That's a load of crap. I do a beer on the balcony every week. I have one coming up this Saturday with a female comedian who I won't mention names at first because I'd rather just have them on before the trolls try and I know the trolls always try and get to you, Richard. I mean, it's just amazing, you know, because even you go, do you know this guy? I'm like, no, you know, and he's like, and he's trying to tell you, don't do this show. And <laughs> that's what I was talking about earlier. So he says that he's got a female comedian coming on beer on the balcony. Well, he put a tweet out last night. It's since been deleted, but uh, someone screen grabbed it. I'll read it for you here. Shit. This is drunk John. I, I retweeted this and put alcohol plus Twitter equals. This is his tweet. I had a comedian guest cancel on me last minute because she was busy. Now I ask you, I've had Larry the Cable Guy, Jay Leno, fucking Guy Fieri on my show, Alonzo Bowden, Tammy Pescatelli, comma, comma, no one, all caps, is that busy to honor a commitment. I'm so sick of this shit. <laughs> Fuck that Hannah Gadsby. <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't even be I in the news you. if it weren't for me. I told you women aren't funny. The <laughs> hilarious Hannah Gadsby will be joining me. What a, what a strange thing for someone to say, you know what, John, I'm sorry, I can't make it on the show, to put a tweet out motherfucking them and then saying he had Jay Leno. That was a year ago. He's still talking about like, oh, yeah, I get Jay Leno on my show. It's, yeah, ne- it's yeah. never going to happen again. That's hey, listen, how many just... times? How many times have you had Leno? Like that's the thing, you know. Yeah, there, there's some right. clubs. There's some clubs I've played at that I haven't returned to. Doesn't mean I, <laughs> you know what right. I mean? Like you got to Them coming back is half the battle. Yeah, he goes right to eleven, though, man. He does. Just, uh, that's he, oh, I'm sorry, him. I have to cancel. I got something. Piece of shit. Fuck. Hope you find the tumor. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one of the things I was talking about, he has a book, as we all know. It's easy for you to say. And I thought, wait, does he read his own book for the audio version? And yes, he does. Oh, Christ. So this might have to be the next thing we now invest I in. Buy it. Yeah, I, I'll get it for all of us. Don't worry. I'll, I'll pass it along. <laughs> because I want to hear him read his boring ass book and break that down a little bit. Could be we should do an over under how many times he burps while reading. <laughs> <laughs> That's book. the problem. Is yeah. that there's someone editing that? I would love to hear the outtakes right. from him reading yeah, his what book. Didn't make the aren't any. It's natural. Just leave it that way. They expect me to oh, sound that, like that. You might be right because he he still thinks <laughs> yeah. like burping is funny. Because it's work to fucking actually read a book and and get every sentence down where you're not stuttering or yeah. You know, you I can't. It's least, work. It's, it's work editing, and you know what they expect yeah. when they do the work. Money. And that's, a, uh, that's <laughs> right. That's, a good, point. Of money. that's yeah. a good point. I'm good for it. Double rainbow. Thank you, Adam Thoreau. Keep those coming. And speaking of Adam Thoreau, he put together a new song for us. Oh, boy. Featuring my buddy, Stuttering John. Oh. Does. This is a song called Super Chats. <laughs> He's a swollen alcoholic. <laughs> The kind who drinks Coors Light to hydrate (laughs) He will never let you down in bed Unless you're a hot married lesbian And he forgets his dick pills at the Pickwick (laughs) He will never let you forget Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast He says all the time And you know that he's lying No issue with the cockroach He's not right No He's not bright No He's not getting paid He needs super chats Super chats To pay his bills Yeah Now <laughs> Thanks for the two bucks Oh Very well done Adam oh, Thoreau This guy's two for two All around perfect that Yeah it really was Leave Listen. him wanting more Yep That was oh. very well done yeah. Which leads me Into our next segment What has Stuttering John Melendez been up to lately, I wonder? Oh, something productive, I'm sure, right? Oh, I'm I'm sure that it has been. I was listening to a recent episode this week where he's talking about Trump. Oh, good. Which is important to talk about in November of 2021. So much to talk about with Trump. He lost a year ago. All right? 
Got to strike while the iron's hot, Carl. And apparently, John can sum him up pretty easily. That's right, Donnie. You failed at everything you've done, and you certainly failed as a president. Now, I know you're a Biden guy, Crouch, but oh, yeah. is failure the right huh? word to use for Donald Trump? The guy's accomplished a lot in his life. I don't know, failure. Like, stuttering, John, even, I wouldn't even use failure for him. The guy's actually accomplished a lot more than he should have in life. I wonder who he's talking to, though. You know what yeah. I mean? He's using the word Donnie and that, but, like, yeah. there's something <laughs> yeah. else in his head. There's there's always something with him. So, John had his beer on the balcony last week when he was in um, Vegas. And if you remember on last week's show, I talked about how the female comedian canceled on him. Yeah. And he sent out that drunk, oh, angry tweet. yeah. He was all fucking bent out of shape. Yeah. Well, guess what? That was his strategy all along. Oh. By the way, beer on the balcony today, female comedian like I've been promoting all week. Thanks, Carlene Martin, for the Super Chat Saturday. Super sticker. Thanks for the two bucks. Everything helps. Um, Yes, I do have a female comedian on for beer on the balcony. I know I tweeted something out to throw people off because I know they try and troll and find out who I am. So I tweeted out I was mad that somebody canceled. No, she's coming on, and she will be on at today at 2. So the tweet that he deleted after tweeting it, he says he did that to throw people off so they wouldn't know who was going to be on Beer on the Balcony. How does that make any sense? Oof. That's such a terrible lie. Oof. It's not even close to being anything that's possible. And John was doing this show where he was not the headliner. When he was in Vegas. I don't know if you guys know about this, but he was opening or featuring for Tanya Lee Davis. And Tanya Lee Davis was the guest that he ended up having on Beer on the Balcony. I'm guessing it went something like this. Oh, my, the comedian that was going to come on canceled. Could you, could you come on Beer on the Balcony? And that's why he was able to get this woman on yeah. his show because they were doing shows all week in Vegas. And while John was in Vegas doing the shows, People are letting know what a great job he was doing. I stay in the freaking casino. I don't go anywhere. I just lie down. I perform the shows. I kill it. I, and, you know, it's always nice after the shows. Like, you have people come up to you. Great show. You see people at the casino. Hey, great show, man. You're funny as fuck. It's always great. It's very humbling. Humbling? Sounds like just the opposite. Yeah. I don't think it's humbling when someone tells John he's funny. I think it reinforces... Everything that should not be reinforced in this guy's mind. There are so many words I would use to describe stuttering John, but humble is <laughs> yeah. not on that. Huge John's list. humble and Trump's a failure. All right. This is what we've covered so far if everyone's following at home. So this Tanya Lee, do you know who Tanya Lee Davis is? Are you familiar with this? I'm not person? sorry. Someone posted a, a pic here in our uh, Discord. So Tanya Lee is a little person. Oh. She's I think three foot six. Wow. Very short person. Yeah. <laughs> and John's featuring. He's the middle act for this. Let's hear some of Tanya Lee's stand up, so shall he's, we? He's kind of standing on her shoulders, basically. I love this time of year. I love shopping. Oh, my gosh. I totally love it. I get very excited when I go to the shopping mall. Get really excited, and I start running for the doors, right? I'm going shopping. I'm running for the doors. Oh, they got the Sensors on the doors, right? <laughs> Jumping up and down. Come on, let me in! I got shit to do. Eventually, I gotta throw my handbag up in the air just so I can get in the damn place. <laughs> but this is the time of year where I can go guilt free shopping. That's what I call it. Because I have the best intentions when I go Christmas shopping, but that always seems to be the time where I find the stuff I like for me. Yeah! I found some stuff I liked the other day. I go into the fitting room, I close the fitting room door, and where does the bottom of the door come to? Here! Put your arm right above her boobs. There I am, got my big fat ass hanging out to all the customers. <laughs> she brings all the boys to the yard. Uh... 
So John's doing his jizzing all over his stomach and then squeegeeing it with his underpants joke. And then this woman comes up and does that killer material. Wow, I can't think of anything better to do in Vegas than to enjoy that show. Great stuff. <laughs> Together at last. <laughs> Great stuff, guys. Really good. Crow's at a loss for words, which is what? saying something. What I couldn't get her to shut up 20 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, is she single? So yeah. then, after, yeah, what's her number? after this, John's talking about what a great job he did in Vegas. Now he killed it. He's talking to his old friend, Hale Sparks, is back. It's been a little while. Yeah, and I where's think, Hale been? Well, I think Hale's starting to get wise. No. I think he's starting to get wise. No. There's a few things happening in this clip that I want you to listen for. But it starts with John telling him how funny he was in Vegas. And then John slips in a, hey, maybe I could even open for you, Hal. <laughs> you know, like maybe if your feature didn't show up someday. And listen to how Hal responds to this. Like Dude, it's 14 the... shows last week. 14 yeah. freaking shows. Dude, that's great. Any of them good? <laughs> yeah, they're all good. Come on, it's me, Hal. <laughs> if Charlene uh, can never open for you, I'll, I'll, you know, yeah. I, you know I, I'll certainly do it. You know? Oh, I'm for it. I think it's a great idea. Um, Are you on the Tempe Improv? Yes. Yeah. So I've done you, plenty of shows there. I no, have no doubt. Um, yeah, and <laughs> I, made I know the most he, money at the Tempe Improv. How one weekend seventeen thousand five hundred. There you go. <laughs> all right, and that was just gambling. <laughs> that was the um, biggest payday I think I ever made. On uh, all right, congratulations. Good lord. <laughs> this guy's in show business and he's bragging about making seventeen thousand dollars in a weekend at a comedy club? What's wrong with him? Well just hell I've Hal is like when your fucking grandma will not shut up on the phone. He's like, yeah. okay, yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, wants get, on. he wants to get out of this conversation oh. repeatedly. Yeah, can we talk about the dotard now? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Why are we still talking about you opening for me in, in Tempe? Oh, that dude is just oozing. Get me the fuck out of here. And please, just shut the fuck up. Okay, all right, I will. Sorry. I love it. So the other thing that happened on this show this week is our friend Cardiff Electric. Oh. Finally gets recognized by his buddy, Zettering John. This is a big day. Oh, yeah. Cardiff Electric, I am not unblocking you. You're a troublemaker. Stop telling Monique from Radio Gunk that I'm bad-mouthing her because I'm not. I love Monique, and she's a friend of mine. You're a freaking troll, so just get lost, okay? I gave you your attention. You should be very happy. You could go jerk off later. I will say Cardiff needs a lot of attention. Yeah. This is true. You know, I kind of like Stuttering John, but now that he's badmouthed Cardiff Electric. Right, yeah. He went too far yeah, this time. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty You were far. on his team. I was. I really was. You had the Stuttering John t-shirt you'd wear out all the time. Yeah, it says uh, out of the boat on fire right on the, <laughs> on the back of yes. the t-shirt. Coming out of the boat on fire. Oh, that would be a fun t-shirt. We should do that. All right. So apparently... Some of the trolls are telling John he's not even going to go to Washington, D.C. No. Even though he's going to. I mean, he's been talking about it since June and it hasn't happened yet. But he's going to prove to you that he's definitely going to oh, Washington, yeah. D.C. Keep in mind, I know there are these trolls who like to say, oh, John's not going to D.C. Really? Then why did I fly to New York, book a flight so I can take an Amtrak to D.C.? Get Doug Goodstein to find me a crew. <laughs> pay Adam Hunter to help me write questions. Really? Really? The only thing that's holding me up now is I just got back. I don't think I want to, like, g g leave in another week. <laughs> I, I was going to go. I, I flew to New York. That's not even close to D.C., and that's where your mob lives. I know, but there's a train. I could have taken a train there. All you motherfuckers telling me that I'm not going to Seattle, then why did I buy the ticket to Tucson, huh? <laughs> yeah. huh? Explain yeah. that, smart yeah. guy. Yeah, dummy. Got you there. <laughs> Remember how I asked Doug Goodstein to do me a favor? That proves I'm definitely going to go there. I know, and this whole thing of all the shit that he could easily do himself is, well, how come I didn't pay this guy to do this, and this guy's going to do this, and this guy's going to do this? Like, yeah. Dude, just show up with a fucking cell phone. Like, he gave oh, a guy a hundred so. bucks to write questions. For politicians, he's like, I mean, this proves I'm definitely going to go to D.C. Holy fuck. I hope he does. I really hope he does. You ready for a uh, dental update? Oh, my God. Born from Stuttering John? Let's hear it. Because I'm always interested in what's going on with his uh, tooth situation. Yeah. And Richard Ojeda wants to hear all about it as well. Well, listen, Army Major, it's been great having you on. You know, I have to go early because 
I have to go to the dentist. They're going to give me Invisaligns to push these teeth back so they can put the laminate on this tooth so I'll look normal again. Normal. And guess how much this dentist is going to cost me? How much? 5000 Are you kidding me? For one me? tooth. For one tooth. For the Invisalign to, and then the tooth. And I'll tell you this. Because insurance won't cover cosmetic surgery. So Dude. I got to pay it out of pocket. These rat thinks. That's horrible, man. Goodness gracious. You look like a freaking walking can opener. <laughs> and my uh, dentist is a conservative. Damn, And, that man. Doesn't, that's and I don't like up. that either. But he, but I trust him. $5,000, man. That's messed up, man. Yeah, he goes, I don't worry about money. You know, it's, it's not important. I'm like, yeah. Not important to you. It's important to me. Hey, I, you know, you know, I got to give you shit. I'm not a comedian, but uh, everybody, John looks like he could eat an apple through a picket fence. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just sounded a little strange, strange socks. Um, why does John think it's impressive to throw figures out there? I don't know. My tooth cost five thousand. Yeah. I made this many thousand at the thing, and it was my biggest payday. And this is expensive. He's I, obsessed I've... with money, well, and cause... yet when he went on that show with Tommy, he goes, "I don't need money. I I, I get extra money in a month. I put it aside for my kids someday." But he, he spent so much time on his podcast. I drive an expensive car, yes. and I drink expensive or whatever. Like he's yeah, always nonstop. But... And it's always to impress people because it's especially when he has a guest on. When yes. there's a guest in, he's like, oh, because my tooth are $5,000, and i got to pay it. It's not even my And I bought Yankee cares. tickets. Yeah. If oh, I'm yeah, so yeah. poor, yeah, yeah, how yeah. come I'm the one buying all the Yankee tickets? Oh, you and, can't go. Can you reimburse me for that? Because I bought that for you. And, on a recent bonus episode, we discussed how he's a hero because when one of his friends needs beer, he'll buy him beer all night. And like, yes. first of all, <laughs> yeah, I doubt great. that's ever happened. That Second of all, if that happened one time, you know, hey, producer Chris, remember that time I got you that drink? Hey, producer Chris, remember that time I took yes. you out? Remember, yes. that time? remember that time? Remember that time? Remember that time? Remember that time? Oh, I bet it never fucking ends. And speaking of bonus episodes, I'm glad you brought that up because I have downloaded the audiobook. It's easy for you to say by stuttering John Melendez, Ooh. him reading his own book. And that's going to be part of an ongoing series on our Patreon. Read by the author? Read by the oh, author. God. I know. Christmas came early I this know. year. I'm very excited. So that's, we're going to be doing that on our Patreon and, um, and uh, Supercast. I, I'm sorry about the mess on the chair, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. It's very, it's very exciting. I got really excited. I totally understand. So uh, Brian also got in on the uh, music this week mm. for Stuttering John. We had a contest like years ago to do Stuttering John parody songs. We should maybe think about bringing that back again because I love it when people... You know, make my job easier. <laughs> I was going to try to say participate, and I'm like, honestly, the reason why I like it is because I don't have to do any of the work, and I get to play this. Die, Mrs. Melendez, you old hag. That's all right, just choking on some saliva. Phenomena. 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 Political pundit, no, listen, Joe. I, I, I can't pronounce the name. Phenomena. 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 When did I? I don't know, but, but anyway. Um. So. Uh, I anyway, so what happened? <laughs> Phenomena. <laughs> Phenomena. <laughs> Phenomena. <laughs> he did come and be and those are the times that he did. Like he actually complimented me and goes, John, great job. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomena. 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 And I was, I don't want to say I was rich. I was probably worth maybe a million, two, a million, three. I'm fucking happy in my life. I've got a nice car. i got a nice motorcycle. Like, I don't really need much, you know? 
I like a fucking white floor. Phenomena. 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 You know what? I miss penis. I think that number raises a pertinent question. What's that? Why did they do it? <laughs> All right. Very well Bravo. done. Bravo. Very well done, sir. Uh, much appreciated. Speaking of menaces to society. swollen alcoholic the kind who drinks Coors Light to hydrate he will never let you down in bed unless you're a hot married lesbian and he forgets his dick pills at the Pickwick he will never let you forget Kareem Abdul-Jabbar roast he says all the time and you know that he's lying no issue with the cockroach He's not right, no, he's not bright, no, he's not getting paid. He needs super chats, super chats to pay his bills, yeah. Now Thanks for the two bucks. <laughs> All right. So I got Adam Thoreau. Phenomenal job with that song. I, I just find Love that to it. be funny every single time. Speaking of dick pills, did you know that John got his dick pills robbed from him in Vegas? Did you hear this story? This is amazing. <laughs> yes, thank you, Benny. Look, we need to raise more money for this fight, guys. I, yeah, I'm not stopping. I'm not letting up. Just to prove to you I'm not letting up and that your dollars are not going for naught, I called my buddy Eric Silva last night, spoke to my fellow drop-in writer, Troy Thomas, and because uh, I needed Eric's phone number because I lose because I lost my phone. Oh, by the way, I didn't lose my phone. It turned out it was stolen. I'll, I'll talk to you all about that. Well, just it's very simple. And I'll say this before I get these <laughs> before I get these v- 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 I'm stuttering. These kill me before I get these veterans on. See, you don't stutter when you scream. Uh, anyway, I parked in Vegas. I had my gym bag which I don't know why I didn't work out because I was feeling nauseous the whole time. I had my <laughs> I had my suitcase and I had my computer bag. Uh-huh. I decided to leave my old cell phone that had my stand-up stuff in the glove right underneath my dick pills. So I forgot about the dick pills. So when I'm – so I get in my car. I drive all the way back from Vegas. Then I look for the phone I can't find. I thought maybe, you know – I don't know. I, you know, I, you know, I grabbed it and brought it inside. I, I checked the inside, outside of my bedroom, down into the living room, checked everywhere, everywhere. Can't find it. I'm like, I don't know what happened to this. Then my friend Jason asked me if he could have a dick pill. I go, yeah. And then I go, (laughs) oh, I got to pause it real quick. So (laughs) I love that John brings dick pills with him to Vegas. He doesn't need them. You know, obviously he didn't hook up with anyone. And then he drives back home and weeks have gone by now and he hasn't needed them. So he didn't know they were stolen. And then the reason why he finds out they're stolen is because his buddy needs a dick pill. It's like, he, just pretend that you needed the dick pill, John. Pretend there was a chick who wanted to fuck you. Now, my buddy wanted a dick pill. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. I got tons I'll never use. Here you go. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> they're gone. My dick pills are gone. So if you see, so then... That's his then, phone going off, by the way. Right. I, uh, Fucking idiot. I realized that I was robbed. All right. So John, John got his car broken into, apparently, and got his dick pills and old iPhone stolen out of his car. Yeah. And John, <laughs> turn your phone to silent, you moron. It's a little switch on the side of your phone. It just it stops you from making noise while you're podcasting. I don't know anyone else whose phone is going off the entire time they're fucking on a show. Never heard it, that hasn't before. Hasn't he been doing the same stand-up routine for 20 years? Why I does know. he still need his fucking jokes on his phone? Well, apparently he doesn't. And, 
Nobody's stealing that material. He didn't realize his phone was stolen until his buddy asked him for a dick pill. And he's like, oh, where yeah. are my dick pills? And also, where's my phone my stand-up routine? Damn it. Where's my routine? <laughs> <laughs> dick pills and, and jokes. Two things he'll never need ever again. John was on Alonzo Bowden's podcast. This is fucking hilarious, Andy. Oh Before the show starts, he doesn't realize that the show has started. And he's talking about Susanna's new husband. This is fucking funny right here. How you doing, Aaron? Aaron, I hate that name. That's my that's my ex-wife's new husband's name. <laughs> you should be happy then. That took over your alimony. You should love Aaron. What the hell is wrong with you? Should be your favorite name. Yeah, he's a dick. That's okay. It's not your problem. No, it's not. It's not. Oh, we're on? Hello, this is Alonzo. I'd like to welcome you. Whoops! <laughs> John just admitted that he hates Susanna's new husband. You know, the one that his kids were all very excited about at their wedding. Had these really nice speeches about what a great guy he is. And John goes out and he's like, oh, I fucking hate that guy. He's such an asshole. Oh, we're on? Oh, shit. Okay. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> welcome to Alonzo Bowden Show. Wow. I don't think Great. he wanted that to get out there, if I would have guessed. I listened to one. I, I mean, I always just listen to the first 10 minutes because the next yeah. hour and a half is just somebody else doing his show for him. Correct. But the one that I listened to um, was him starting out by saying that he is losing all of his hardware to even properly do his show. He comes on, it sounds like shit, and he has to explain why. Clip 14. Yeah, baby, welcome to the world-famous Stuttering John podcast with your favorite world-famous host, Stuttering John Melendez. I am not with my microphone today because, not because I don't have the stupid thing, but because I had the, I had the connection interface, you know, to hook mm -hmm. it up. Yeah. When I moved the computer from, from my bedroom to this room, I don't know. It disappeared. What? It literally disappeared. What do you mean? And I've just spent the last five minutes trying to find it. I don't know what happened to it. Checked under my bed. <laughs> checked in my blanket. <laughs> can't find it. That's two things now lost. <laughs> Hopefully I'll find one of them. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a moron. <laughs> I lost my wife and my family. And the connector from my microphone into my computer. <laughs> what else can I lose? Holy shit. This fucking guy is the definition of a loser. He's losing yeah, right. shit. <laughs> He's definitely a loser. All right. I want to go into this episode that I was checking out. Uh, I think it's from cool. Tuesday. Something like that. <clears throat> Yeah, baby, welcome to the world-famous Stuttering John podcast with your favorite world-famous host, <laughs> Stuttering John Melendez, here to serve you. He's out of breath to start the show, which is hilarious. <laughs> welcome to the Stuttering John podcast. <laughs> and I love that he says, with your world-famous host, and then says his name, hey, welcome to Carl Hamburger's show with your world-famous host, Carl Hamburger. That's me. The yeah. world famous guy. All right, John, we get it. It's fine. And then he has a joke that he's got already prepared and he fucks it up. It's unbelievable. Only in this world, Big Bird gets a vaccine. And what was it? I can't remember what I said. Big Bird gets a vaccine. Uh, Aaron Rodgers doesn't. Who's the real bird brain? Good one. Good one, John. Fucking idiot. He just <laughs> loves to, to retell his tweets on the show. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. He I must have tweeted, tweeted that. The other day. What, what mm -hmm. was that thing that I said about the bird brain? Oh, that's right. Aaron Rodgers is a... a Aaron Rodgers is much smarter than Stuttering John. He's one of the best quarterbacks right. to ever play football, which is a position that's very difficult to play. Anyway, that's beside the point. He can't well he can't shut up about Aaron Rodgers. Clip twenty, this is him going on and on about Aaron Rodgers. Oh good. Aaron Rodgers seeked medical advice from Joe Rogan. 
when it comes to COVID. What's next? Heart surgery from Carrot Top? I think you may be Good concussed. One. What the hell is wrong with Aaron Rodgers going to Joe Rogan? I go, I'm gonna I'm gonna get my next colonoscopy from from uh Aaron Rodgers, because he's used to hanging out with assholes. Okay. <laughs> what the what? hell? Aaron Rodgers, you are, and I met you, you're a nice man. But you are stupid. Okay. Go in a joke. Joe Rogan for COVID advice? What's next? Going to Joe Rogan for hair restoration counseling? Mm. I mean, good one. Are you out of your mind? What's next? Going going to Beetlejuice to be your next dentist? Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Aaron Rodgers. Come here. Come here. Yo, yo. Some good jokes Carl, there. Wow. What's next? A play date with Jared Fogle? Oh! I mean, what's next? Cocktails with Bill Cosby? What's next? Nick Bates going to write your next album for you? What? What's next? A prostate exam from Edward Scissorhands? <laughs> Great I jokes. freaking hate vaginas. <laughs> Yeah, those are some uh, those are some good jokes there, Suttery John. I'm glad that you uh, worked up to those. And up. We all know that John's a great joke writer because he was hired by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is getting a lot of heat, and I'm glad he's getting a lot of heat from my good buddy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. In fact, I got a book. It's close. <laughs> I almost uh, got it. <laughs> Kareem on this show. Uh, I was Kareem's head writer for his roast. And I got to write for Kareem and Bill Walton and a bunch of the Lakers and, and you know, know, other players. And it was a real, real, real fun time. I got to shoot with Kareem, a bunch of video dropping bits. And uh, I had my friend Eric do the effects. But all we can talk in her story. Holy shit. We just did, as I was talking about. The first 30 minutes of John's audiobook on yeah. the, the Patreon episode. Holy shit. All it is is talking about his list of accomplishments. I swear yeah. to God, this guy has 17 thoughts in his head, and it's all that ever comes out all the time. Let me tell you about Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar said he's an idiot. And guess what? I used to write for the Kareem. <laughs> as we know. <laughs> Fucking A. All right. So John's doing a new show now, which everyone's very excited about. Because he's been doing this political show three days a week, and then he does the Beer on the Balcony. Well, we got a, a big announcement. And I'm going to talk about this on the Beer on the Balcony at 2 o'clock today. Guess what? No guests. This Beer on the Balcony is just moi. I am going to do a show, what the, I believe, once a week. Just all entertainment. Yep, it's going to be called What Bugs Me About Hollywood. All right, so John's got a new show called What Bugs Me About Hollywood, which oh I am excited about because this political stuff is so boring. So I'm very excited about this show. What's he going to be talking about on this show? And then we'll talk about my old friend who now apparently doesn't like me anymore, Artie Lang, and uh, because he just started his show, Halfway House, again. I'm glad to see he's back. Uh, I have no hard feelings for Artie, despite all the crappy shit he said about me. But we both were guilty of that, although I didn't start it. All right. So there's this feud between Suttering John and Artie Lang. Artie doesn't know about it, but Suttering John does. All right. Right, yeah. (laughs) And what's funny is that back in 2017, maybe 2016, something like that, John was on Artie's podcast. And... John went on Beer on the Balcony on this solo show and went in and explained all the shit that went down on this episode of Beer on the Balcony. And he talks about how Artie was talking about his kids and all this shit that Artie was doing and why Artie's such an asshole. So our friend Ryan Sharman, God bless you, Ryan. He's been on the show before. He used to be a moderator 
for stuttering John on his YouTube channel. Right. Ryan put together a clip. This is, this is a little bit longer. It's worth it. You're going to hear John talking about his appearance on Artie's show and then what actually happened. And this proves that John is lying or he doesn't remember what happened in any single way or he's changing his own head to fit his new reality. But uh, this is very well done, Ryan. Thanks for putting this together. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, who you're here listening to the Audio Lang podcast along with the Stuttering John podcast. <laughs> Cut to Artie's doing his podcast and he's just trashing me, trashing me. And then that comes to the infamous one when I had Tammy Pescatelli on here, you know, and we were, uh, I only had a couple of beers. Like, you know, you know, I know Tammy thinks I was about, I only had a couple of beers with Derek. How many beers have you had? Oh, uh, only 10. Well, here we go with the exaggeration. I had, well, how many I had three yeah. beers since I got here, yeah. maybe yeah. four. And he starts trying me to admit that Jay Leno is funnier than Larry the Cable Guy. This was all because Artie saw a, a picture of of Larry the Cable Guy at some comedy club, and he says he and he was like, he doesn't deserve to be on the wall. I do something like that. That was when I saw, that's the first time I saw Larry the Cable Guy. I saw a picture of him and I said to the guy, what is this guy? And the guy goes, that's his bit. I go, that's never going to work. Right. <laughs> How astute you I are. Said, no, I said to the guy, well, that's the point of the story. <laughs> I said, uh, yeah, I said, uh, this guy, that, that's a ridiculous gimmick. Tell the guy to go back to his, the guy's got, now the guy's got a gym in his house. <laughs> so I have in the back of my head, I say, you know what? If Artie's going to start with me, because he had done it two shows before I go, if he's going to fuck with me, I ain't taking it. I'm going to kick him in the balls and hope he comes after me. And I'm going to beat the living shit out of him. And then he started trashing me. And then he started talking about my trans kid. And that was it. Yeah. My oldest is trans had an operation. Is that really true? Yeah. Why? No, wait, I knew true. that. Let's get this. Is well, it true? Are, let's, you, are you kidding? I no, I'm not kidding. kidding no. Let's not kid at all about this. this is, yeah, no, let's be serious. Point, so. And I said, Artie, you know, how many times did you stab yourself? Was it eight or nine? Did it hurt? Now, you might say that's cruel. You know what? I was done. And I said, I'm going to kick him in the balls. When you were stabbing yourself, <laughs> did it hurt? I don't know. You're the Puerto Rican. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm just. I'm just curious. Like, uh, the, the, oh you know, you kept going. Like, what? What? You oh. just. You just with that. I couldn't get her done. <laughs> <laughs> no. So you don't want to talk candidly, but I'm just. I'm just. I'm, well, that's a great question. I'll think about it. Uh, all right, so you just want to avoid the whole thing. Hey, but Bruce, I, my friend stabbing himself. <laughs> did, you, did you get a pussy and buy me a car? <laughs> Tell everybody I write on the tonight show. I said, hey, Artie, how did, so how did, you know, how did bleach taste? <laughs> it's like when you tried to kill yourself and fucking failed and fucking drank bleach. What, what is that about? <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, okay. How do you, you, you know, you, you know. When yeah, you that, fuck, that was warranted. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was because, you know, what Artie, like. I made fun of your joke and you, you made fun of me trying to kill me. <laughs> I go, Artie. Do you realize the only reason that you're alive is because your mother brought chicken cutlets over to feed your fat ass and she found you bleeding in bed? No, I I always treat you like I can't make I can't make too many jokes about you because Well, I'm, I know you clearly you put on the kit gloves. No, I do. <laughs> I do. With the suicide joke. <laughs> The that only, wasn't even a joke. The only reason why he got saved is because his mom was bringing food over for him. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, I mean, it's not even funny. Audie went silent. I shut him up. <laughs> We're goofing around. Insults. Is the I, I insulted Larry the, the Cable Guy, and you had the bleach joke. <laughs> 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 right, is that a new routine, the bleach bit? <laughs> <laughs> My friend's killing himself. If, if I were you, I'd, I'd get a p pussy. 
No, but here's the thing, Russ, because I really, hey, do, hey. I really do love Artie, hey, hey, and Bruce, I really hey, cared Bruce, about him. I love Artie. I'm very upset. Are you paying for this round? <laughs> But what is bothering you? Is it still your father on the roof? Uh, Thank you, John, <laughs> for bringing that it up. It doesn't mean hey, anything. The he's trying thing. to change the subject because he's getting killed. No, I don't give a shit about getting killed. Is that what it is? It's another no-hitter. Wow. <laughs> John's appearance on Artie Lang's podcast is insane. That's crazy. What an asshole. I think that was Tammy Pascatelli who was the third mic on there. It was just like, what? why are you doing this? What are you doing? Why are you talking about this? Yeah. What's going on right now? We're trying to have fun. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Holy it's shit. not even jokes either. It would be like, oh, John, why are you upset? Is it because your kids like your wife's new husband more than you? <laughs> yes, not, right. It's not a joke. It's just being nasty. It's just being very mean. Yes, correct. Yeah. All right, so you know... Andy, that uh, John makes his income from YouTube and the Super Chats. And you also know that he gets paid on the 11th. Well, the 11th was just this week. So let's say hi. Oh, by the way, this is the last day of the month. Uh, well, not the last day of the month, but the, um, uh, you know, the I get uh, the YouTube closes on the 11th for the month of um, October and the beginning of, you know, uh, of November. So if you do want a super chat, uh, now's the time. <laughs> uh, let me say hi to a lot of the people here just getting uh, texts from guests that are not able to do the show. So he's getting distracted by his phone because <laughs> right. it's going off in the middle of his show. And he's like, uh, and that's another person who's turning me down. All right. Oh, this girl doesn't want to go out for dinner. All right. Fair enough. All right. And, uh, moving on. <laughs> We're still doing really well here. Uh, no, I don't want to hear your band play. Okay. No, I guess that's not going to happen. All right. So anyway, uh, who's here? And then he goes to this roll call that lasts for, I'm not lying, 10 minutes. 10 minutes of explaining every single fucking person who's watching mm -hmm. his show. <laughs> so <laughs> it's so, so obnoxious. He's constantly getting fucked with and trolled by everybody, which is great. I checked so many times. Jill, you are not blocked anywhere on YouTube. I would never block you. You've been a great supporter of this program, and I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So I don't know. It, it must be a YouTube glitch. And it's their fault because I know you would super chat a lot. So it's costing them money. It's costing me money. But I would never block you. I checked everywhere on YouTube, and you were not anywhere to be seen blocked. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, unless your name is Throbby Vaney Dix. <laughs> that name is blocked. I love that. I've never heard another show where the guy has to keep telling people, I'm not the one blocking. You keep saying you're blocked. I'm not blocking you. I don't see that you're blocked. I looked at all the different systems. I don't see that you're blocked. I don't think you're blocked. John, you're being fucked with, you moron, you dumb moron. <laughs> and all this on Super Chat Saturday. <laughs> I know. It's, it's my Super Chat Saturday. You guys are fucking with me. So after 10 minutes of going through every single fucking person's name, there's 40 people watching him. Right. And he has to explain that. All right. It might seem like I don't have a big audience because I'm able to call every single person out by name who's watching. But that's not the case. But you don't realize because you see I'm on Facebook and Twitch and iTunes and Libsyn and Spotify and Pandora. I'm all over the place. So, it, you know, so so the numbers are everywhere. I'm not just on one uh, platform. So it's very hard to, you know. You know, because you're going to do it in all different places. But uh, Andy, you might think that a few hundred people are watching Suttering John when he's going live, but you would be very wrong about that. There's millions <laughs> of people. He's just on so many platforms you can't keep up. And that's why you don't understand that. <laughs> it's so pathetic. Is there anything else that you pulled from Stuttering John we should discuss before I move on? Sure. They, they, he, he opens the show with that stupid fucking Trump train song yeah. every time. And yeah. it's it's so ridiculous. Why can't you just pare it down to 30 seconds or a minute? And even the people in his chat are fucking sick of it. In clip 16, some guy starts calling him out to get rid of it. Uh, Willie Sudweeks, I think you should get off the Trump train by not using that damn song anymore. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? 
I don't get copyright strikes from the USA singers. I played like, I played the trailer from the supporters and I got a copyright strike from the music in it. That's not the point. The point is that it's a three minute long song and you play it every fucking time. It's, it's too long. But it's free to me, so I got to use it. Yeah, I know. He, he goes, no, you don't understand. They let me play their song. No, we know that. We know yeah. that. It's fine. It's just, it's too much. It's not a good theme song. I don't song. know how to edit it down to a reasonable length. <laughs> no, obviously not. He has no idea. Yeah. Which I will give and, Andy. Uh, and cl- I want to give you credit real quick. Back when I wrote the theme song for who are these podcasts, that's a minute long. <laughs> I believe you were the one who told me, it's like, can you just pick like a segment from that song and use that? It's too long. <laughs> Your theme song's too long. So you've been consistent on this point. I'll give that to you. All right, go ahead. Constructive criticism. Yes, correct. <laughs> Fucking Andy's a troll. <laughs> he doesn't like my theme song. <laughs> I hope his mom gets hit by a car. <laughs> I hope that when... Someone gets hurt who's a twin that the other person gets hurt too and then his brother gets hit by a car and then Andy feels it. <laughs> That's too clever. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. All right. And uh, the episode that I listened to, he was also teasing the fact that Beer in the Balcony was coming up, but nobody was slated to be on it. He oh, could not find anybody to be on. It's great. I've been working on a Beer on the Balcony. It might have to wait to tomorrow or Monday because I haven't got a guest yet uh, for Beer on the Balcony. You know, uh, so we'll see because uh, I've, uh, you know, I've reached out to a few people and haven't heard back yet. You're an alcoholic. <laughs> you wouldn't come to work hungover unless you're an alcoholic. Dude, you got a disease. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Some things are better left unsaid, John. You know, it's like nobody wants to do it. Right. When I have Jen from the Jingles Department as a co host, I'm like, hey, look at how exciting this is. Jen from the Jingles Department is here. Hey, it's Vic co hosting with me. Look at how great this is. You know, pretend like you did that on purpose, (laughs) you dummy. He's all excited about his new teeth, also, Carl. In clip 19, we get a dental update. Oh, good. Speaking of beautiful, look at those that temporary laminate from a real dentist. Not like the last one. It still managed to stay. So I upped it and get, went to a real dentist. Not like the horrible dentistry that I had uh, before. He he falls into that bargain hunter's trap. You tried to cheap out. Yeah. You got you spent money on tr- trash, and then you had to go and spend a real amount of money at a professional. And ended up paying more when you were trying to save money. Correct. You're a sucker. And he was bitching about it too. Five thousand dollars. Meanwhile, he's got all of his dental work that's got to happen in order to get his teeth fixed. It's like, yeah, that's what that's what that costs, dummy. Dentists are are good at what they do. So John again is talking about his trip to DC, and this is going to happen, Andy. I don't know why you're a hater. Do you think it's not going to happen? He <laughs> he just needs to figure out what. Congress's schedule is. That's all. Gonzo, I need you to do me a favor. Give me this give me the scheduling again when Congress is in session for November, December, January, and February. Because I need to know when I'm gonna book my flight and come out there. Someone in the subreddit, the Dad was anonymous subreddit, had a really funny comment about that. It's as if only people in New Jersey know when the Giants are playing a home game. I, my friend in New yeah. Jersey told me that the Giants are home this weekend, so I'm going to try to get out to that game. Like, this is public information, John. You don't need Gonzo yeah. to tell you when Congress is in session. There's a schedule. You can find out for yourself. I don't know when I'm going to go. I, uh, I got to talk to Gonzo and figure it out. You fucking moron. <laughs> so stupid. Gonzo's got to tell me how to work Google. And then... Not only does he need to figure out when they're in session, but he's going to need to get a crew to record him, obviously. And this is more involved than you might think, Andy. I do have to organize my trip to D.C., and I got to figure out. I, You know, I almost got to get, I don't know, maybe I'll talk to Benny Loco uh, or, you know, you know, Nikki B. I need some, I need some kind of, you know. A, a production help, like going on Craigslist and finding the crew, you know, if Goodstein, you know, can't get me one, you know, for that week. Um, uh, 
I have to see, you know, because it, it's, uh, you know, there's only so much that I could do. I mean, I'm, you know, you, you know, but I am doing it. I actually got to hit Adam Hunter up because I need a few more questions. I'd like to do one more brainstorming session with him. Uh, I know it's getting cold there, Mark. I, I, just, I have to see when the best time is. I, I got to talk to some Washington insiders. <laughs> he needs a Washington insider. I thought what was really funny there. He goes, I need Benny Loco to help me figure out how to use Craigslist. It wasn't, I need someone to help me put a crew together. I need someone to tell me how to put an ad on Craigslist to put a crew together. Like, John, really? You know how to put a post on Craigslist? Is that possible? Are you possibly that dumb? Does he ever figure anything out <laughs> no, himself? No, it's always <laughs> Hal. It's always Hal Sparks or someone else showing him how to do shit. And he's talking about how amazing Hal is at this conversation Hal was having on his show about how the rising gas prices are not Biden's fault. Just like Hal said about the gas prices going up. And I, I did the research after I had Hal on, and he was spot on accurate. It has nothing to do with the president. It has everything to do with supply and demand. It's called capitalism. All right. I know we've been talking too much about politics today, but John thinks that gas prices are based on capitalism. I can't think of something further away from capitalism than the price of gasoline. OPEC equals capitalism. The first thing Biden did, the very first thing he did was shut down the Keystone Pipeline. And here's Hal Sparks showing gas prices are based on capitalism. It's supply and demand. Uh, Okay. Sure. Maybe maybe the pharmaceutical industry, too, is just all based on capitalism. That's why the prices are what they are, you fucking idiots. So then Hale comes out. I don't usually pull clips from Hale, but apparently Hale was debating Scott DePace, you know, the Howard TV guy back in the day. He was friends with John. And uh, they were debating each other, and Hale explains why Scott DePace is totally out of it when it comes to politics. And, of course... All of the fallbacks are based on massive fallacies. I mean, just the just the whole like existence of the Hunter Biden laptop. Like, let's just start from scratch right there. Show it to me in an era in an era of Instagram and lunch. And there are there's video of Rudy talking with Levin Eagle or talking to some like hooker in Ukraine going, hey, I'll see you soon, baby. But there's no picture of the laptop. How many pictures do you have on your phone of lunch or beers or like friends you don't use? But there's no, there's no video of the laptop. So Hale Sparks thinks Hunter Biden's laptop is bullshit. He's wrong. He goes, there's no video of the laptop. Yeah, but hell, there's photos and videos from the laptop. Isn't that more important than seeing what the laptop looks like? You have Hunter Biden smoking crack, jerking off fucking hookers. There are underage girls on there. How do you not see this shit? Are you that stupid that you think like, yeah, but I haven't actually seen what the laptop looks like. It's a MacBook Pro. Whatever. Who cares? (laughs) The videos have all come out. The text conversations. It's all out there. It exists. It's real. You fuck. Anyway, not to get too political on you in there, Andy. (laughs) That wasn't the point of this. Anything else from Senator John? Oh, God. It, I mean, he just had a joke that he tweeted that he had to retell in Club oh, 18. He I always did, like, like that. came up with theme songs for everybody from the Stern show, except Howard. It, it's fucking lame. Oh, God. The theme song. I, I, I'm doing this too much today, and I apologize, but I have to once again tease our bonus episode. He wrote a theme song for the Howard Stern show, and he was a intern at the Howard Stern show, and he sang it mm-hmm. for his audio book. And it is cringe-tastic. Oh, I gotta my you. God. As I p- tweeted out today, theme songs for all the Stern Show members, from my experience, Gary Delabate gets ape man. I'm an ape man, I'm an ape, ape man, I'm an ape man by the kinks. Blob and Quivers gets, um... I'm a bitch, I'm a liar by Meredith Brooks. That's how that goes. <laughs> uh, who else we got in there? We got uh, Jackie the Joke Man gets I Me Mine by the Beatles. I Me Mine, I Me Mine, I Me Mine. 
because it's all about Jackie. Um, okay. Artie gets food, glorious food. From the soundtrack of Oliver. Fred Norris, who did I... <laughs> Oh, Insane in the Membrane by Cypress Hill. Insane in the Membrane goes to Fred Norris. Okay. And Scott D. Pace, of course, gets dumb by Nirvana. And then, of course, I get beautiful by Christina Aguilera. (laughs) How about Dare to be Stupid by Weird Al Yankovic? (laughs) Would that be a better theme song for (laughs) Stuttering John? Wow, that that was dumb. Terrible. Not good. He had a guest on... On his show recently, and Richard Ojeda was on there also. So there's, there's three people in the panel, and I think his uh, guest was dunking on him a little bit here. I did stand up at the Roosevelt Hotel, and nice. I invited the Army Major there, and I was paying for all the beers, but every beer we got each for a 12 ounce yeah. bottle of Bud was was ten bucks. <laughs> yeah, comedy clubs, man, they got to make the bottom line. I've dabbled in stand up too, John. Oh, this guy dabbled in stand up as well. <laughs> I love that because you know, as soon as John hears that, he goes, "Wait, is this person? Uh, is, this, is this person go for nothing? Troll? Are you trashing <laughs> me, you troll?" <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I dabbled in stand up too, John. That's great. Very well done, awesome. whoever that person is. But I love that John has to bring up. I was buying beers, and this is how much they cost. Okay. All right. I could have. Afford it, but it was too much. What kind of conversation is that to have with people on a show? I just, I don't understand it. Yeah, it really is. Especially in LA where it's like, where are you going to go? Like two minutes up the road and then realize there's traffic and turn right back around? Well, there's one place you could go and that's the Pickwick Pub. I got to talk about Centering John a little bit today, if you guys don't mind. Of course. Of course. (laughs) I mean, he's just saying some ridiculous shit, and I I always enjoy it when he's talking about Republicans. They don't care. They care about one thing, money and power. (laughs) It's one of the funniest things he's ever said. (laughs) There's one thing. They care about one thing, <laughs> two things. They, all they care about is that one thing, money, power, women. All right, oh, so God. John had a tough night this past week, and uh, I feel for him. This sounds like it was rough. Uh, I don't know if you heard about this, Vito, but, um, man, he, he could have died. Had a really oh. tough night last night. I took my son out to dinner but when I went, I went to the gym like an idiot and worked out really too hard. That's me, though. First, <laughs> here's this fat lump going. Yeah, that's just how I am. I just I, I take things too. I work out way too hard. Like obviously, John, that's the problem. Yeah, you work out too hard. <laughs> okay, that's me, though. First time back in the gym, I work out like crazy because you know I got to do it for the ladies, and uh, and then. Go to the pub, have a pint, and then go <laughs> pick up my son, and then we're going to go to have dinner. Wait a second. Why is the bar the thing in between the gym and going to dinner with your son? Yeah. That's bizarre, right? That uh, that undoes your workout pretty quickly. <laughs> pretty quickly. Right? Well, he explains it was just the one pint. Um, Don't worry. One pint is under the limit. Anyway, <laughs> then someone pointed out that in the subreddit, somebody pointed out that Alcoholics always have to tell you things that you already know. Just so you know, one pint is okay. You can still drive after you've had one pint of beer. Like, yeah, well, we know. You don't have to oh, defend yourself. You. Every, it makes me feel like maybe there was something else going on. You're like, no, it was just one. It was just one. But <laughs> as I'm at the pub, I'm starting to get all crazed and dizzy again. Same feeling I had on stage in Reno. Stop taking the Klonopin for two days. Just two days. And Boom. Freaking symptoms. I'm like having dinner with my son. We went to IHOP. I'm like, I'm like, buddy, I'm not feeling right. Who goes to dinner at IHOP? He took his son to oh, IHOP. God, dude. Is that yeah. open for dinner? Isn't that on your wheel of consequences? <laughs> I think so. Eating dinner at IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> 
Seriously, I didn't think that was open for dinner. I, I've never been in my fucking life, dude. <laughs> so weird. IHOP is like, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're like, oh, yeah, there's, this is the only thing open. Right. So I'll go to IHOP. It's not a choice that you make willingly. Well, I mean, you probably get a table at 7 p.m., I would imagine. That's probably pretty <laughs> He has a reservation. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck. Yeah, he's like two for Melendez. They're like, sir, there's nobody else in here. Sit so wherever you would like. I said two for Melendez. <laughs> I don't know who you talk to. We don't take reservations at the IHOP. And a picture of Coors Light. <laughs> just one picture. Yeah, just I'm one. driving. Uh, I'm like, my buddy, I'm not feeling right, man. I got to go to CVS and get this freaking. I got to get some new medication. It's weird because I used to be able to go four or five days without the clonopin. But now I went like three or four. Before the, the symptoms hit in Reno, this was only two days. It's only 0. 0.5. It's like half of a Xanax. But I don't know. So I I just drove to CVS. I got my Klonopin. I got my Fluvoxamine. Took it. And within like 30, not even 30 minutes, I was completely fine. It's just amazing. So, uh, you know, I already took my clonip in this morning. I cannot go off this thing. Uh, yeah, Dennis, it's clonip in withdrawal is horrible. I know, Nikki B, I can't. I know. I get it. I could have a seizure and die. Dr. Steve is in our Discord right now. Uh, Dr. Steve, clonipin and alcohol, is this a good combination? Do you know anything about this? That you want to uh, give us an update on. Let's see if we can come on real quick. What if I unmute you, Dr. Clon- Steve? Clonopin and alcohol? Yeah, I think that's a that's a good uh You think that's probably okay? Right? Yeah, that's normal. Hey, there he is. What's up, Dr. Steve? Hey, man. Yeah, hey. I'm in my car. Sorry. Yeah, and that's not a good combination <laughs> at all. <laughs> Isn't that like one of the warning signs on the label? It's like, do not have alcoholic beverages with this? Yes, two uh, two central nervous uh, system, at, you know, depressants together, not a good idea. Benzodiazepines and alcohol contraindicated together. All right, that's what but, I thought. Hey, but the thing is, he just drinks the Coors Light to hydrate, so then it's fine. Oh, right, he's not even getting drunk. I don't even get drunk. Right. Oh, except for all those times on the internet when you saw me drunk. That's the only time I've ever gotten drunk. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you for your expertise, sir. I'll let you get back to driving your car. Uh, you're welcome, man. All right. You're the best. Dr. Steve calling from uh, the trip to Walmart today. So he does talk about his boner pills. This, this is the other drug that he likes to take. Apparently, all of his friends want to borrow his boner pills for some reason. I don't know what's, I don't know what kind of life you live where you're asking your buddy for his boner pills. But... What? No. <laughs> it's a weird thing to ask. <laughs> and it's not like I need them. But it's a nice guy like that. Somebody wants dick pills from me, I give it to him. By the way, a lot of my friends need dick pills. Because <laughs> yeah. that's, that's just me. Is good, you know, you know, we lose like one percent every year. But anyway, and it's not like I need them, but it does make it a hell of a lot better. It makes what a hell of a lot better. This guy's not getting laid. He talks about every time he goes out on a date. We know he's not getting laid. And then he's like, oh, I, I love my dick pills now. Like, what are you jerking off with dick pills? Yeah, what? why would you? Unless you're having sex. You, oh, my God. And this is really funny because then he goes into a story about a date that he had. Mm. And I'll let it play through, and then I'll give you my analysis of it. But I'll be interested to hear what you guys think about this. Actually had a date uh, last night. But it was getting so late. It was like nine, ten o'clock. I was out till since three, and they're just like, "All right." And then, and then we ate dinner. I don't know about you guys. As soon as I eat dinner, I crash. I just fucking hit the wall. I'm like, "All right, I gotta go," which sucked because she was gonna come over too. So I blew that one. Ah, I was just too tired. Well, I'll come to your house and and then we'll watch a movie. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, no, no. You know, I you know I got home and just went straight to bed. I just had to. So he could have had sex, but instead he's a tired old man who ate dinner. So he didn't say that she was unattractive and he wasn't in the mood. She wanted to come back to his house, and he said no. Yeah, because they were out till nine, <laughs> and he was right, too right. tired. <laughs> so I'll give you my analysis of this. Right. He said I had gone out at three. 
He went to Pickwick at 3 o'clock, knowing he had a date later that night, got wasted, went out to dinner, continued to drink, and by the time dinner's over, he's a mess. And he has to go home and crash. Oh, okay. So he went out at 3 in the af- that afternoon. Yes! Okay, I, I did I know, not read I, it that way. I didn't understand it at first either, because yeah. I'm like, wait, wait, what is he talking about? Why is 9 late? I don't, I don't even get it. He's like, well, I've been drinking for 6 hours. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, well, now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> now it makes sense. What a loser. <laughs> yeah. Why are you day drinking? What are you, come on, man. Did <laughs> he, did, he know he had a date? He, he must have known he had a date. He took yeah. out to some pizza place because <laughs> he told, he said what the place was. I looked it up. It was like this, um, like a piano bar or pizza place. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's not fancy enough to take to the IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> That's for me and my son. That's a, that is our place. place. <laughs> it's just so surprising to me that this guy would be that pathetic and then talk about it on his show. Yeah. These are things I would keep a secret. Like, you don't even have to talk about going on a date and then the girl wants to fuck you and you don't because you're too drunk. Like, you don't have to talk about that. Well, my yeah, not you so... can just not mention it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think he thinks it's a humble brag to say, I could have gotten laid, but yeah. I chose to just take care of myself. And Listen, this chose show's to be important a, to me. A I sloppy a... drunk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get a good night's sleep. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it when he says shit like that. It's so funny. All right, so... Uh, obviously, the uh, verdict came out on the Kyle Rittenhouse case. Uh, that came out yesterday, and John was doing a show. So he was actually doing his uh, shit on Hollywood show or whatever he's doing now. Hmm. That's the non-political show. But uh, one of his moderators brought it up, so he had to acknowledge it. Oh, Benny Loco, thanks for the two bucks. No justice, no peace. We're doomed in this country. We are doomed. Singing in the rain. Hopefully the civil suits will start rolling in against Kyle Rittenhouse. Now, I'm not going to get into a political conversation on this, but how does anyone who's following that case think that it wasn't self-defense? I don't understand why why there's teams on this one. I don't know, man. It drives me up a wall. He shot a white pedophile. I think what it comes down to is a lot of people made up their mind when they heard there was a shooting. And one of the guys, you know, was one of these guys with a gun, a white guy. And they, well, he's clearly guilty. And uh, I don't even need to watch the video to be sure yeah, of it. You You're obviously like, did wow. not watch the video because it's obviously self-defense. And he shot a guy who fucked like five children in one day. I, I, I don't That's understand. That's what we keep it's... laughing about. Is like, I was talking about this with Dick. I'm like, you couldn't like pick a more comical, like, well, who's the guy he shot? Oh, he's a guy who had sex with five kids. And you're like, well... <laughs> You know, as much as I want to, like, you know, examine both sides, you really couldn't pick a worse guy to represent yours, you know? There's people protesting in Portland that have signs with that guy's picture on it that says, Hero. I'm not even making this up. That's how stupid these people are. They're like, this guy who fucked all the all the kids and then tried to attack this, this 17-year-old, that's a hero. Okay, I guess. I'll toot my own horn. Uh, do you know of my Twitter uh, fake news account, Vic- the Victory News Network? No. So I have, like, my own fake little uh, The Onion type thing that I just occasionally make up fake news stories. Nice. And uh, what do you call it? Ben and Jerry's came out and they said, well, you know, this Rittenhouse case, blah, 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 and did their little hippie whatever thing. So I made uh, a post that said, Ben and Jerry's is honoring Kyle Rittenhouse shooting victim Joseph Rosenbaum with a new limited edition flavor. All profits from the sales of Rosenbaum's Heroic Hazelnut will be donated to Black Lives Matter. And I put that that, <laughs> pedof- that heroic pedophile on a Ben and Jerry's uh, ice cream thing. And uh, I got uh, Snopes, Snopes had to come out and be like, no, there's no pedophile ice cream from Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I made that's, Snopes, baby. That's awesome. So, uh, <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Well, yeah, you can follow Victory News Net for some really stupid stuff from me. Nice. We'll definitely do that. That's fucking funny. Oh, God. All right. So John does this thing called Beer on the Balcony. And the Beer on the Balcony show was typically with guests, usually comedians. Sometimes he does them solo in like a AMA style. And he finally had this guest on who used to work with Howard Stern. And he had some interesting things that he said. So John decided, even though Beer on the Balcony is for the Patreon subscribers and the YouTube subscribers, people who give him money get this content exclusively, John decided that this one is going out to everyone. And by the way, um, I did do the Beer on the Balcony only for the Patreon people. I later, 
I made it public only because of the revelations that Chauncey was saying about Howard Stern. So I figured it might get some news that'll, you know, that might help the show at some point or help the subscriptions, just like Hal was saying. But for the most part, all Bear on the Balconies are only for my Patreon people and my YouTube people. So he finally has a good episode. He's like, well, this one's free. The ones that people pay for are the shitty ones that won't get me any traction at all. But this one is actually good that my people might actually enjoy. Yeah, I'm putting that out there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Interesting this guy's model. got podcasting down to a science. <laughs> he really knows how to monetize it, doesn't he? Yeah. He knows what they want. The bad episodes. That's what you're paying for. That's what you pay for. I want the ones that aren't good enough to put on regular YouTube. So then... Another way that he makes money is by trolls paying him to insult him. And for some reason, he's gleeful about this. I wouldn't be, personally, but... No, we're glad he is, though. <laughs> oh, look, look. A guy's paying to troll me. John's mom raised a failure. Thanks for the 279. Worst attorney ever. Look at this guy. You know what? I wish the trolls would get their own podcast, and then we can troll them. <laughs> You know what? They're going to pay me to troll me. Be my guest. I don't care. I mean, that's the dumbest troll you'll ever get to find. <laughs> Not really. It's kind of funny. John's mom raised a we failure. We established <laughs> that, like, Stuttering John gets a pension or yeah, whatever. Two, from, he has two pensions. Like, this man has money, right? I should. I don't know if he's able to cash it on his pension yet. Uh, okay. Well, I just... The idea that, like... Because you know you don't have to read the 275 donation. You can just go... You know, I'm going to ignore this one that shits on me. Well, especially because he has know, man. His, attorney, his attorney, Michael Popak, is on the show with him, and it says, like, worst attorney ever, and he reads that to Michael Popak, who would have even seen it. Yeah. But he feels the need to do yeah, that. Right. Yeah. Such an hey, asshole. my chat's being mean to you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for letting me know. Yeah. That really helps me out. And he's, he's like, celebrating $2.79. To read yeah. this Ooh, thing. Oh, 279. Ah, I got you now, motherfucker. Like, dude, come on. <laughs> Why you, this is not a good thing. I for win you. again. <laughs> Chad, you're a pathetic I got loser. You. I got you, mother. No, all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then the other thing that people do to fuck with John is they call his friends with his phone number. I, honestly, Vito, this is a level of trolling well beyond my realm. I don't know how you yeah. spoof people's numbers and how you find all of their friends' numbers on their phone or whatever. I mean, this has happened to me before, too. But uh, apparently someone was calling Hale Sparks using John's phone number, and Hale is on there going, hey, man, by the way, just so you know, I think you butt-dialed me because you called me, and when I picked up, I could hear you doing your show. And what John should have said in this scenario, just throwing it out there, yeah, whoops, I don't know, it's fucking weird. Sorry about that. Instead, he goes on to explain how everyone's trolling him all the time. Hal Sparks, what's up, brother? See, it really was me. You really did butt dial me. My phone rang, and then it was you, no, and then it started. It's not uh, me, Hal. It was, Hal. You, it was Hal. you doing your show. No, no, Hal, I have to tell you. Okay. Somebody must have your number because the trolls will call you from my number, so it looks like it's mine. Like, they call my ex-wife with my number, and they call me with her number. Like, they call my moderator... Uh, Nikki with my mm -hmm. number, so she thinks it's me, and they call me with her number. It's some fucking app. But I checked my phone. I didn't call you. Okay. All right. Well, at the very least, uh, I, I'm glad I reached out. <laughs> like, why give up all that information? And you know what else you could do is you could call my mom and my moderator and fuck with them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know that you need to tell everybody this. Yeah. It also does sound like, yeah, you just butt dialed him. Because why would someone prank call him and then play your show in the background? It, it doesn't make any sense. Like, that's a terrible prank call. <laughs> it's not a great one. Yeah, I don't think that's what happened. The last clip I have here, and this was on the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit. I think it might have been on our subreddit as well. Now, John is obviously very far left. I don't know if he's far left, but he's a Democrat. I think those are two different things. He is very much in the Democratic Party. And uh, so, of course, those are the pe the bleeding hearts, right? I mean, Vito, you you have a background in this, right? You know about this. People, yeah. people in, the, in the Democratic Party are the ones who care about people. Or they, very caring. Very caring. You're, you're concerned about everyone in society. You don't want to see 
you know, the billionaires, the millionaires and the billionaires control <laughs> society. And, yeah. uh, and, and John has that same political leaning. Rupert Murdoch, fuck you. You Aussie prick. You 90-year-old die. Seriously, Jesus. I never wish death on anybody. You, it would be comforting. Because you don't give a shit about the lives of Americans. You don't care. Tucker Carlson died. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, He's like, I never, I never wish death on anyone. But Tucker Carlson and Rupert Murdoch and... Like, all right, well, man. yeah, because it doesn't come off as like tough. It's, it just sounds pathetic. Yeah. Die, oh, yeah. wait. die. Okay, man, you got like any like complex thoughts about that? Die. I want them dead. It's like, all right, dude. <laughs> His political it's discourse just pathetic, is man. so yeah, pathetic. If you're a great political mind, why don't you tell me what they did and articulate what? Die. You fucking die. Doesn't all care right. about Americans. Well, yeah. <laughs> do you care about Australians? <laughs> what, what do you mean? Who cares? Yeah, I got to say, as much as I love Patty Seacups, there's one guy who still is the king. All right, Vinny outed me. I didn't want to do a lot of work this week. I only have three clips on Southern John. <laughs> More than enough. More than enough. We were going to get through this very, very quickly. I want to start off by asking you two, or you three. There's, there's four of us here. Producer Chris counts? Does anyone know? Three and a half. Does anyone know best. why Trump was kicked off of Twitter? Because John is going to explain it to us here, which I think is very interesting. Anyone have a, a clue as to why our former president's no longer on Twitter? Uh, whiny babies. Okay, that's a that's an interesting theory. Yeah, anyone, anyone else? Stut Joe are, taking credit for it? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, are we guessing why Stut Joe says he was? Because that sounds like about it. No. Because my uh, the, the stuttering John Army was he using stuttering John's material without his permission? <laughs> <laughs> and because Donald Trump can't tweet because he's been kicked off because he's a freaking loser, oh. loser. He got kicked off for being a loser. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Twitter's like, oh, you're no longer president? Off our platform. Yeah, Hillary's not allowed on there either. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of losers. I think it does say that in the terms and conditions, but you got to scroll all the way to the bottom to get there. Yeah. Do you consent to our terms and conditions? Have you ever lost a presidential election? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you lost based on the Electoral College? You are out of here. So John's going to have this guest on his show, uh. and his guest is Claude Taylor. Now, Claude Taylor sent a video to John ahead of time. Where, again, for some reason, Steve Bannon's all over this podcast, but Steve Bannon is talking to reporters somewhere. And Claude Taylor had a brilliant troll right here. I'll give you, here is um, Claude Taylor trolling Steve Bannon. Uh, He sent me this today, and I enjoyed it, so I might as well play it for you. Here we go. Okay, should be fighting for this case. That's why I'm here today. For everybody, I'm never going to. You're a fascist. Out. They took on the wrong guy this time. Okay. Why are you showing the wrong guy? You're a fascist. A lay person has to follow his attorneys. I love Claude Taylor. So that, so that's Claude trolling Steve Bannon, calling him a fascist, which is brilliant. I'll play one more time. <laughs> Which is brilliant. I'll play it one more time. And it then he plays it again. It's a brilliant drill to call a fascist. You're a fascist. Well, that's brilliant. Did anybody else notice that Stuttering John was listening to that clip? Like the improv group? Yes. <laughs> like the Soda it's Girls. Giggling his audience. ass off. Just every fucking time. You, you, know, know, you know what he should have said? Steve Bannon, you look like Joe Rogan if Joe Rogan put protein powder up his ass and then drove a Volkswagen Beetle into an Arby's parking lot. That's what he should have said. Better than Tom Myers' show. Yep. Just saying. Jesus Christ. You got a future in Mexican restaurants. (laughs) I love that he thought that was brilliant. All right, last clip that I have here. And uh, let's talk about a very stuttering Thanksgiving. So... (laughs) John, John says, 
you know, uh, my kids don't like turkey, so we're going out for Italian food. <laughs> is that what they call him? Is that their nickname for him? Beer can turkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought his kids' nickname for him was turkey. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like turkey. They, they go out for Italian food, <laughs> and now he's trying to figure out what are they going to do after they go out for Italian food? They should go back to his apartment and watch a movie. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to go home, and I'm probably either going to play them Jerry Maguire, because I just played him almost famous. They loved it. <laughs> Terry Fry. How many times? Either Jerry Maguire or the Nicole Kidman movie, The Others, which is creepy as hell. So I'll make that decision. I might even put it on them. Do you want an Academy Award winner or do you want a scary one? All right. So, so there's some conspiracy theories going on around about Can this. I put one out? Please. I believe he walked past that $5 DVD bin at Walmart. The Red Box? Yeah. You, no, not even the Red Box. The, yeah. the, one, oh, the old DVD The one where you can buy them, yeah. The bins we walked by when you were watching yeah. porn yesterday. <laughs> yes. So... Yeah, I haven't been in the Walmart in years. That was a weird trip yesterday. Holy shit. Like, Vinny points out, there's just giant bindles of, like, nonsense. Shit. In the middle of the- everywhere you go, it's not, like, organized <laughs> or anything. It's like, there's a whole pile of throw pillows. Like, why? <laughs> it's, it's nowhere. It's in the fucking hardware section. And like, then there's, it's like a size just $12 with a smiley face. Why are you smiling? <laughs> I didn't understand that. Anyway, enough about our Walmart material. That's... I'm the creep off Patreon if you want to watch that. I did my seven second porn challenge. It's up there for free. You don't have to. It's up there for free. Mm. Good times. So there's some conspiracies going around because I read the Dabblers subreddit. Yeah. And uh, this almost famous thing has come up a lot Mm -hmm. where he says, I I introduced my kids to the movie Almost Famous. They loved it. But it's always, I just did it. I just watched it. Always, I just did it. I just watched it. It's always that. Yeah. And so, whenever he talks about movies with the kids, it's always movies from 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Almost Famous is an old movie. Everything he's talking about here, there's a theory that he does not see his kids at all. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why he's still reliving this moment when he watched a movie with them and they enjoyed it from seven years ago. And anytime he's talking about watching another movie with them, he's picking a movie that he's already watched with them. Or it's just alcohol-induced dementia. <laughs> well, uh... also, he has had a, a number of strokes. I don't think I'm speaking out of school here when well, I say that. Yeah, I mean, of all the things that he's constantly hiding in his life and, and <laughs> dancing around verbally and all that shit, I mean, there is kind of no direct evidence that his children even speak to him, you know? Correct. And the, the, the not whole, that like, I want to get into that because I just make fun of him for his podcasting. Of course, but it is fascinating. It is. It is. You are you talking about my kids? Yep. <laughs> I'm talking about your kids and your relationship with them <laughs> specifically. All right, just chuck it. Yeah. Because another thing he did just recently is he updated his Facebook page. And listen, I'm, I will read this up right. This is not me digging into yeah. this. <laughs> he updated his Facebook page, like his personal Facebook page, with a photo of his kids from eight years ago, and it said missing. <laughs> <laughs> it's from eight years ago. It's from back when he had two daughters. Yeah. It's really bizarre that he has that. So there's yeah, there's some people who think that maybe he's not spending a lot of time with yeah. his children. You know, that's funny because I just took my kids to see Harry Potter in the theater. <laughs> and man, we had such a good time. We were drinking some Zimas. Oh, it was so awesome. <laughs> I might take him to see the prequels of Star Wars. Yeah. They're gonna enjoy that. Yeah, we have, I'm going to introduce them to the Phantom Menace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I was what guys. I happened to be watching, was it yesterday, I think? He was doing his What I Hate About Hollywood show, his new show that he has. Oh, Ooh. boy. And he was, Stuttering John was. He has a new show? Yeah, he has a new show. Well, oh, when I think Hollywood Insider, I think <laughs> right. Stuttering John. And this segment was him explaining all the problems with the continuity of Star Wars. Oh, God. And he wasn't being funny about it. He's just literally going, and then Princess Leia said she remembered her mom. But then when you go back to the prequels, her mom dies while she's giving birth. So she couldn't have known her mom. How could they get that wrong? Well, I mean, maybe she has the Mary Lou Henner disease. I don't know, John. (laughs) Fucking relax. Obi-Wan Kenobi said he was trained by Yoda. But then when you go back to a fan, it's like, Chad, is this really what you're ranting about on the internet right now? And, and not to cast aspersions, these don't sound like original observations. No. It's, I mean, these, like, top ten fucking continuity issues. Uh, what's the uh, Cinemas... Uh, Cinemassacre? The no, angry the, video game nerd? Oh, god damn it! Like, Cinema Score or something. Or 
Cinema Sins. Thank you. Cinema Sins. Producer Chris, Google Cinema Sins. For me. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but anyway, <laughs> you they, they've been staff. making these top 10 things for 15 years and they're hugely popular and they right. have fucking tens and hundreds of millions of views. And like, they circle shit and they point it out and you can actually watch it and see it and they'll just hear like a drunk guy going, and another thing that happened. Yeah, exactly. The way they do it is at least kind of interesting. Right. And they're pointing out shit. This is, yeah, this is just a guy reading a fucking list off of Wikipedia. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're assuming you can read. Wow. Well, uh, <laughs> And heard I didn't do a, a large segment on our friend Stut Joe. Okay. I kind of did a quick overview on a few things. It doesn't all always have to be a deep dive. It doesn't, yeah. but I'm gonna make up for it this Sweet. time. Sweet. And actually, we're going to bring in somebody to help us out here. What? Is it yeah. stuttering John? Oh. <laughs> Johnny Russo. Um, I have you unmuted on my end, sir, if you want to unmute yourself. Russo? Joe? It's, it's not stuttering John. <laughs> okay, just so you know. Johnny Russo. And once he gets in here, I'll let him, I, I'm picking up on him a little bit early, so maybe he's not ready. Um, hmm. I'll let him introduce himself, but uh, he is, has some... Hands-on experience. I love these kind of things I where know. people are just like, I have first-hand experience of dealing with this absolute <laughs> shithead. <laughs> oh, you don't think it's going to go the other way? Hey, guys, you yeah. piled out a little too hard. Yeah. He's actually a great guy. Did yeah. you guys know that this is the most <laughs> selfish person that I've ever met? Yeah, it's usually the case. All right, while we're waiting for Johnny to come on, uh, Southern John was talking to our friend Hale Sparks. Hmm. And... His guess, hair is getting out of control, by the way. What's going on with Hell Sparks' Sparks fucking is, is hairdo? He's turning into a an attractive woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I want to, like, put on leather and jack off. He, <laughs> can't, he can't grow a beard. He has, like, zero facial hair and it's long, right. silken oh, hair. It's really bizarre. What the fuck's it's, going on over there? Yeah, it makes me question everything about myself. <laughs> so, Suttering John's talking about doing a comedy tour with uh, with Hale, you know, the two of them doing stand-up together. Mm. And then Hale has an idea, and listen to how quiet John gets. I know it's hard to listen to quiet, but listen to how quiet <laughs> he gets. Thank you so much, brother. And tell your agent to hurry up and get back. I mean, you know, I will. like I said, I, will. You know, I already told the guy. You I would and have I had an hour to call him, but I've got a show to do in a half an hour, so I can't. But I already told him, uh, yeah. we don't need a host, so let's take that money, too. You know, you yep. know what I mean? I'll, you know, I'll open the show, and I'll do, you know. Yeah. You know, you the know, other question is, is, if it's cheap, can we live stream it? Because that's where we can kind of make up for some of it for the for the fans that are not there. If not, we can get copies of it and and post it to patrons and people like that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that was great because he's going. Yeah, you know what else we can do? Make more money on it if we live stream it. And John's like, Oh, oh no, yeah. no, 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 no. We're not gonna we're not gonna put this up on the internet. People right. are not gonna see my stand up act on the internet. That would be. A terrible How idea. many commenters named the N-word do you want to see on your live stream? <laughs> Who's setting up for this? Nick? What's Nick's yeah. last name? I just love how he's just like, your agent needs to hurry up and get back and do everything for me because I don't know how to do anything myself. Yeah, you pick up on that? Yeah. And Hell Sparks is even like, all right, John, I'll call him. I have other shit to do today. I'll, I'll get on it, though. I promise you. We'll make it happen. Johnny Russo. Hey, what's happening, yes, buddy? Can you hear me all right? I can. I can hear you great. How you doing? All right. Beautiful. I'm good, pal. Thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, it's, it's a pleasure to be on after the English stat section. But, uh, thank you. Appreciate oh, that's it. why you checked out and <laughs> you were in the bathroom vomiting from that? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, down, I was drinking off. Everyone's either t- <laughs> tuned out at this point or they fast forwarded yeah. this part. It's the first no, thing they're but, hearing. Uh, yeah, the stuttering John shit is you're doing God's work. He no, deserves thanks, every bit of insult and injury to him it gets, there's some times where it's like oh maybe you're going too hard on him and then he said something stupid he's like no he deserves it he fucking <laughs> deserves it he does when i started out in stand-up comedy 20 years ago he would come into new york comedy club with benji and he had the long hair back then the first thing he'd do is get a beer and he'd go on stage and everybody oh it's stuttering john and about 30 seconds in that novelty wore off very fucking quickly and instead of laughing with him they were just laughing at him pointing and it's, it's, he, he's just a piece of shit, and thank God you're doing what you're doing. So, all right, so Johnny Russo was working at the comedy clubs back in the 90s. Also, you co-wrote Anthony's book with him, right? Anthony I Kumis? did, yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, 
So Johnny has some uh, firsthand experience both through Anthony Cumia and Artie Lang with Stuttering John, but also even before that. Now, you think about that time when John was a big celebrity on the Howard Stern Show in New York City, the biggest show in New York City, and here's the, the stunt boy coming in to do comedy. And you got to think, like, oh, this might be good. And then you realize that he's just a stuttering moron. And immediately you're like, why is this guy wasting time? I should be listening the, to Paula Poundstone. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the novelty woke, woke. He'd come in at like 11 o'clock at night. There'd be like five people in the audience. He'd go into the second room and have a beer in his hand, obviously, and drunk out of his mind. And this is when he had like long hair. And he'd just go on stuttering. And, like you know, 30 seconds, people like, oh, it's stuttering John. And then literally 30 seconds after that, it's like, look at this asshole. What the fuck is he talking about? This piece of shit. I got, people, he, he would walk people out of the room. Not surprising. I've seen some of his stand-up before. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, 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 yeah. he does the, uh, pulls up his underwear and does the, oh, Jesus. The squeegee this has come. Every yeah. amount of insult and injury that you're doing to him, he deserves it. Well, he's also very sensitive. He's a very sensitive boy. I'm going to play a clip for you here where Hale says something to him. And what's going on here is that they're talking about how John's apartment is disgusting. And Hale has made this joke before where he's like, I don't even know if you can clean it. You should just burn it to the ground, you know? <laughs> so Hale makes a similar joke here and then listens to, listen to what happens. If I was you, I'd buy a flamethrower to solve most of my cleaning <laughs> issues. Just kidding. John's very sensitive, guys. We have to, you have to understand, things we say in light jest, he really does take to heart. So why it's am I a, laughing my ass off then? Well, uh, but, well uh, you'll do that at first. And then later on, you'll tweet me or text me like, did you really mean, what did you really mean? <laughs> no, that's when you said light a match to it and get, and get out of there. But yes, I was, flame, flame I was thinking about better. my cats and my poor cats I, that would kill the three of them. Well, yeah, I would suggest removing the cats first. <laughs> Why I, I'm, I'm now I'm offended. Do you think I would want to cat, set cats on fire? What kind of monster do you think I am, John? <laughs> John really is a humorless boob. <laughs> he had to send Hal a text after a show months ago saying, hey, man, are you serious about like wanting to burn my apartment down? Because that's not cool, you know? Like, John, it's a fucking comedy show, you moron. It's not cool. <laughs> it's, it's a joke, you idiot. That's so telling. I, I don't know how they not know that in another joke. How Sparks looks like a Midwest twink. <laughs> his hair, his body is a like, Jesus Christ. But that doesn't even even how and the other guy Ojeda. How do they not know? Like going on his podcast, they're part of the joke. How do they not know that? And maybe Ojeda's getting it. You know, getting the picture now. But I mean, how Sparks? How the fuck does he even go on that show and have an, an ounce of respect if he hadn't anyone? before that but i mean jesus christ going on stuttering john's podcast is like i mean it's fucking insane you're just ruining your you know any career that you had if you had one it's also odd to me that hail sparks comes on there and is the show he just takes over he's the only one talking he's the only one who's being yeah, entertaining it's a House sparks podcast. right and then all these super chats are coming in while Hale Sparks on the show, and it's all going to John. Yeah. Like, Hale, just do a longer show on your own. You'll that's make every, more money. Every guest that's on his show, is that's the show. You're right. John just sits back and says nothing for 80% of the show. So I, I got to ask you, uh, Johnny, so you're pretty close with uh, Kumia and that whole gang. Have you had any yeah. experience with uh, this current iteration of Stuttering John, not just the one from the 90s? Well, you know, it's, it, when you were doing the uh, the section of that episode of O and A, I mean, of uh, Artie and Anthony, when yeah. Stuttering John was on, and Artie was late, yeah. Um, so that I guess that was the Thursday because we would usually write on Wednesdays. So I would go to the studio and meet Anthony, and we'd either go to the Friars Club or his apartment in Manhattan and write the book. So uh, we were at his apartment, and he gets a text from Artie. It's probably about nine o'clock at night, and Artie says, "Hey, can I borrow fifteen dollars?" It was it was a very weird denomination, and okay. I've been even thirteen. Very w weird denomination, and Anthony's like, "Well, yeah, all right, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm at the apartment writing. I'm on the beach outside." So, three minutes later, Artie texts back, "Hey, can you make it 50? And I, I just looked at Anthony. I said, "Just, just give him a hundred. Just give him a hundred because this is going to escalate. Right. <laughs> Except the text. It's just going to go." So, Artie says, "All right, I'm, I'm coming." So. I have to see this. So I'm going with Anthony. I got to see this transaction. So I go with Anthony the escalator. We go outside and we meet him at the corner and there was scaffolding. And if you know, New York scaffolding there's like metal bars that separates the sidewalk from the street. Yeah. Right. So me and Anthony are on the sidewalk side and he, and uh, already comes out of one of those van cabs. That's like the side, the side swoops out. 
So the side swoops out. Artie comes flying out. He's got his sunglasses on. And again, it's like 9, 9.30 at night. And his little cap just looked all kinds of fucked up. And Anthony, Anthony hands him like the, the $100 bill, almost like a you would hand like a gorilla a banana at the zoo, like over the scaffolding. Like, here you go. Here you go. Right there. Here you go. So an uh, artist takes it. Like, I'm going to pay you back tomorrow. Like, and it's like, don't worry about it. Don't. So now I'm going to pay you back tomorrow. I'm going to pay you back tomorrow. I think I made a quip like, I don't like to see no risotto. And we all like guffawed and we went back. And I said, you know, he's not coming back to Hoboken. And he's like, no, no way, no way. So what you dissected, when Artie came in on that episode, the yeah. first thing he did was give Anthony back the 100. Oh, right. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know what that was about. And then uh, remember, that was when Stuttering John then pulled out a 20 to pay Keith the cop for letting him use the studio time that he <laughs> yeah, never yeah, tipped 20. the guys for. Yeah, I'll cover everything. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was the best. Stuttering John's like, what do you want? 20 bucks? He pulls it out. And yeah. then they're like, John, yeah. we don't want your money. He puts it right back. It's all right. Yeah, he's, got, he's, got, he's, got, he's got seven Budweiser's in front of him during that show. <laughs> and just he just out of his mind. I, I, I like the, the what Artie Lang thing. is like, you know, you're half Danish and half Puerto Rican. Do you have any of the Danish? Any of the Danish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Artie has definitely done a, a nice job of blasting John. And John doesn't forget it. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Every joke Artie's ever said. Johnny Russo. Shot out of a cannon. Shot out of a cannon today. <laughs> yes. What um, a great stuttering John segment about Artie Lang. <laughs> <Yeah>. permanently, <laughs> permanently suspended on uh, audiobook, the Anthony Cumia book you can check that out let's get back to stuttering john shall oh, we? we have more stuttering john content? i have a lot more stuttering Sweet. john content so stuttering john needs help with twitch and he's talking to hell spark still stuttering john still 26 viewers over here on twitch most wanting most waiting to get in i don't want th- hell i need yeah. what when are you gonna be back in la um <laughs> next week i'll be in next week all right well can we like can we put something on the books that you come yes. here and when, you know, yes. get me, to, you know, like to know how to run this fucking Twitch thing? Oh my god, he can't figure it out on his own. He I'm can't sure Hell's do helped him. Anything on his own? He, he, I'm sure Hell's already helped him get him set up on Twitch and everything else. But he still needs him to come over to his house to get it set up. So this is where they start talking about how gross John's apartment is, <laughs> I, I, right? Because Hell's got to come over there. Because Hell's got to go over there again. So this is funnier because this is earlier in the show from when he says that, by the way, if you make fun of John, he'll text you afterwards because he's very sensitive. So listen to how Hale tries to goof on John and then says he's just kidding. I'll have a, a, a condom on and a rubber band around my penis just to make sure nothing, you know, in case there are any earwigs or space worms or God knows what. I'm kidding. Um, Notice how Hale's like, listen, oh, oh he's getting sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, John. You're the best. So then he starts explaining how gross John's mattress is. This is a guy who's been in John's bedroom. Just. Oy. The uh, first no. thing you said when you went to my bedroom was, you need a new mattress. Yeah. Or Casper or something. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Yeah. No, there's no. And I was more worried about because you've been talking about like going on dates. And I'm like, you don't bring women back to this situation. You don't. That's not right. That's I not mean. I no, like no, do not. You try. Yeah. <laughs> Just lesbians. Yeah, I mean, you try to do that. But instead of getting a new mattress, John figured out a way to fix the issue that Hale saw when he went over to his house. Um, yeah, but what do I do now is like, I, I, I take the sheets and pull them down so you can't see. Oh, you bastard. No, 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 no. <laughs> and he's all proud of himself, yeah. too. Yeah. Like, the, uh, another grown man came into your place, said your mattress is disgusting, and your answer is, yeah, but I hide it better now. <laughs> That's weird, right? That's not a good response to that. I have three cats, and I don't know how to keep up with cleaning the litter box. Oh, that I'm just box. pouring oh. cat litter all over the apartment <laughs> and letting them shit wherever they may. That's got to be a fucking disaster. That litter box. You know he's not on top of cleaning one litter box for three cats. There's no way in hell that he is. Ah, so disgusting. So John admits that he would actually like it if when Hale comes over, Hale would clean his Will, will you apartment. clean my cat's oh. litter box? Although I do picture Hale wearing a maid uh, <laughs> yeah. with quite hot. Yeah, with that hair. It's pretty hot. <laughs> actually, if you clean my room, I, I'd be happy about it. I'd be like, oh, good. I'm glad somebody did that. I, I don't know. See, I'm yeah. OCD, Hal. I hate cleaning. I hate it. 
That's not See, OCD. I thought OCD people clean. I mean, it depends no, on what see, you the, what. It depends on what you obsess or are compulsive. That's the about. misnomer. There are two, you know, opposite OCD people. That's They're it, the yeah. clean freak, germophobics, mm-hmm. or the the, the complete slobs like me. It's right. it's either one or the other. There's no middle. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm OCD about cleaning things. I don't want to do it. That's not obsessive compulsive disorder. I that's obs- not what that is. I obsessively, I obsessively don't do anything. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's not what OCD is. I love that this guy just wants to have an excuse for shit. I'm Puerto Rican. I have OCD. What am I going to do? I can't use Twitch. <laughs> I can't clean my apartment. Like, John, figure it out. You're an adult man. You're an adult. So John's got this other show that I checked out. Oh, yeah. What's bugging me about Hollywood. Right. And this is one of his solo shows. Great. That he does. And this episode, he's talking about award shows. <laughs> And it's almost two hours long. John talking about award shows. It starts off with this production. He has this new intro that a guy that he worked with on the Tonight Show put together for him. And it's got like animation and it's got a bunch of like, it's a sizzle reel almost, you know, it's like, whoa, this is kind of a, looks like it's a real show kind of thing. You know, it's kind of impressive. Now at the end of it, and I, I assume, this is what I'm assuming. I don't think John gave this guy any notes or any direction. I think he just said, hey, I'm doing a show called What's Bugging Me About Hollywood. And this guy goes, yeah, I can put that together for you. He found some images of John on the internet that you can easily find, and he, he pulled something together. And at the end of this animation is John's face, but it's all animated. His mouth opens up, and bugs all climb out of his mouth. There's, like, spiders and cockroaches and centipedes and all these Shut types up. of bugs. They, they all crawl over his face, and they all go back into his mouth. And I'm assuming that the reason why the guy did that is because... It's called What's Bugging Me About Hollywood. Uh-huh. Not knowing that that would be something that we would all goof on. <laughs> so John plays this. It probably also really happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually video. Yeah. <laughs> I was calling it animation. I might be wrong. <laughs> so, so, so John, who could knock it out of his own way to save his life, has to acknowledge this right after this play. <laughs> this is the first thing he says on his show. I know. I love how the trolls... Remember when I had the cockroaches that time when I moved all the boxes from my ex-wife's house? And then I'm the one who first posted me getting up. I I immediately put it on Twitter before those idiots got a hold of it. So, you know, it doesn't make it doesn't embarrass me at all. I mean, geez. When I get my place in Manhattan, forget about it. The place that I rented out to Gangie and Grillo, there was freaking cockroaches all over the freaking place. It was disgusting. Here I I haven't seen any since that one incident. Okay, so a couple of things there. First off, he goes, I'm the one who uploaded that video of me freaking out about the cockroach on Twitter. I I love it. I think it's great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, own it. Good job, John. Also, goes, you didn't vet anything about your news show. You didn't maybe say, could I see the intro before we green light this? Good yeah. point, yeah. <laughs> you didn't have so many cockroaches crawling on my face? That's one of the things they goof on me about. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy named Curl who wears a cockroach costume. that gets yeah. more views on YouTube than my show. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The guy's like, well, you can go with the bug thing or you can do it yourself. He's like, I guess we're going with the bug we'll thing because I can't thing. do it myself. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, God. So this is John just tripping right out of the gate. This is just, I, I love that John thinks he's a broadcaster. We're going to get in, all into this. All the down and dirty from everything. from, from Because, oh, uh, well, hold on. Before I, tomorrow. All right, I wrote this down. This is what he said, okay? <laughs> We're going to get in all into this. All the down and dirty from everything, from Ev, from because oh, well, hold on. Before I tomorrow <laughs> is what he just. I said. gotta say, it makes more sense when you say it. I'm more articulate, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm a guy who can't pronounce words correctly, and I'm goofing on this retard. <laughs> oh, okay, so he starts talking about how when he was on the Tonight Show, they never won an Emmy for writing. And when he got on there, he's like, hey, guys, we should try to win an Emmy. And the other writers are like, eh, it's not going to happen, John. When I got to the Tonight Show, when I was a writer there, they're like, I go, come on, let's win. Come on, let's win an Emmy. The best writers. They're like, John, it ain't ever going to happen. I'm like, why? He goes, because, because the, you know, the guild, you know, they, you know, they frown on us. 
you know, they think Jay Leno is too middle of the road. They're never going to give us any Emmy. They were right. I was optimistic. Would have been nice. If you looked at our stuff compared to David Letterman, Kimmel, Conan, any of them, our stuff was at the least equal, but at the most way better. (laughs) (laughs) Then it sounds like you now. I know. (laughs) He started to sound more like you. (laughs) If you listen to all the better shows. If you listen to shows that people laugh at and enjoy, like Conan and Letterman. (laughs) I get it goes, at the worst, we're just as good. (laughs) But we are likely way, way better. (laughs) That's how that works. Yeah. (laughs) That's not the range. So the question is, of course, is he bitter that he never won an Emmy? (laughs) Just give me a freaking break. Am I bitter? Well, I would have liked to win an Emmy. Yeah, yeah, I would have liked to win an Emmy. I mean... (laughs) I mean, like, who wouldn't know? The answer is yes. All right, you guys ready for some hot takes? Now, as you know, (laughs) as you guys both know, award shows are not as popular as they once were. Mm -hmm. They don't get the ratings. People don't talk about it. It's not a big deal. We're kind of getting sick of Hollywood. Is this episode one of this new show? No, he's done a couple of them. Okay, because award show... It's not a great subject. It's not, it's for, not a great topic. No, for nobody bug- cares this about it. This is not a Hollywood insider thing to talk about, obviously. It's bad. It's bad. It's a bad idea. It's a bad idea, and he goes on forever with hot takes like this about the MTV Music Awards. MTV Awards used to be a big deal. Now they don't even show videos anymore. Boom! Hot take! <laughs> No one's ever said that before. I'm kind of watching Suttering John explain that MTV doesn't even have music, and that's what the M stands for. Yeah, I know, John. It's been going on for decades, you fucking Jesus moron. God. And then, not to be outdone, he talks about how the Grammys don't have rock bands on anymore. You know, it's all hip-hop. You know, it's an, an ultra-pop and R&B. There's no rock bands on the Grammys anymore. It's called rocking out. You wouldn't understand that. You're not with it. I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now what I'm with isn't it, and what's it seems weird and scary to me. We get it, old man Melendez. You're out of it. (laughs) I'm sorry, Led Zeppelin is not the Grammys. (laughs) It sucks, I know. What are you going to do? So then he gets into the Academy Awards discussion. And this is great because he's like, well, that, yeah, obviously, that, this is the big uh, award show, the Academy Awards. And I've never seen him do this before. He turns into Patrick Michael Ooh. and starts reading Wikipedia to oh, us. Oh, Wikipedia? This is hilarious. <laughs> Wikipedia, thank you. The big kahuna of all award shows, the Academy Awards. Now, uh, I'm going to tell you this, okay? Webster's describes the Academy Awards. The Academy Awards uh, has been around. They debuted in 1929. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, Best picture is usually the last award. What the fuck is happening? First Academy Award ceremony. There were two categories of awards that were each considered the top of the award of the night: outstanding picture and unique and artistic picture. The former being won by the war pick, the war epic Wings, and the latter by the art film Sunrise. What are you talking about? <laughs> That was a minute-long clip of him reading Wikipedia about the Academy Awards. Year one. <laughs> Year two. And then, <laughs> and then just like Patrick Michael, as Crows likes to point out all the time, he thinks that he's teaching us shit. Uh, but the statue's full technical name still remains the Academy o- Award of Merit. Award of Merit. So there you go, in case you guys were wondering. So you're going to learn something. He goes on to talk about why it's called the Oscar, and he reads a whole article about why it's called the Oscar. I'm not learning anything from this, John. That's not what learning is. Right. It was like some <laughs> cinematographer, like camera operator. I think he's just recording a presentation he does for his kids before they watch <laughs> yeah. Almost Famous. Yes! Yeah. He gets into that. Yeah. 
That's good foreshadowing. Shut the fuck up. That is really good foreshadowing. Oh, my God. Because, of course, he has to bring up the fact that <clears throat> his kids didn't like Jerry Maguire, and he can't figure it out. <laughs> she hated it. All the movies that I've shown my daughter, she fucking hated Sideways. I couldn't believe it. She didn't really seem like she liked her and all my son. Didn't seem like they loved Jerry Maguire. I just showed them that. Which I was shocked because they loved Almost Famous and it's both James Cameron. Not, not James Cameron. It's both um, no. Cameron Crowe. Cameron Crowe. Thank you. <laughs> fucking die. A fucking idiot. Will not shut up about Almost Famous. I, I'd love to interview his kids just about Almost Famous. Nothing about John or his parenting. I just want to get them to, their take on Almost Famous and be like, it's fine. Yeah. It was a fine movie. <laughs> Do you remember it? Not really. Right. Cameron Crowe's catalog is not bulletproof. I, I, mean, right. I know. He oh, made... How could you like this movie, but not this movie? The same guy made it. Yeah. That happens all the time. Right. What are we talking about? Sideways is a bunch of divorce guys running around getting hammered. Of course, John likes it. That's what I was thinking, too, because I haven't seen Sideways. You don't but, have to. But there's yeah. there's a lot of alcohol abuse in it, right. from what I know. Yes. Maybe that's traumatizing to their, his kids. Right. They're like, Dad, I don't like this. It makes me feel bad about stuff. Yeah. Like, it yeah. makes me think this is what you're doing. <laughs> All right, so now John's talking about he goes through and he's he's complaining about the Academy Awards. It, it never gives the Best Picture Award to the right movie, you know, according to John. Okay. All right, and not that he's seen these movies, he Everybody just knows, knows that. it's about the best box office. It's not about like, the best movie. That's not true at all. It's all Shh. art films now. The Academy Awards. The Academy Awards. Three billboards. How much of that gross? Three hundred million. It's what are you talking about? More about box office than anything. Guys, else. guys. What are you talking about? That's not even close to true. Harry Potter won Best Picture. I'm confused. Well, it probably won Best Production Design and oh, a yeah. lot of fucking awards that you don't care about. I'm surprised that Andy's coming in with these hot takes. I thought he knew about movies. <laughs> anyway, so John, <laughs> John is complaining about what movies are winning, but it's not as if he's actually seen them. Let's see what the. Okay. 2019, Parasite was the winner. I still have yet to see it because I hate reading a fucking movie. I don't want to read a movie. <laughs> okay, John. I don't, I don't like that it has subtitles in it. Yeah. I mean, do you, <laughs> John, really? I'm not good at reading yeah. is what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, so then he starts talking about The Sixth Sense. Now, The Sixth Sense should have won for Best Picture, even though... He actually reads the other movies that were up against The Sixth Sense that year. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, well, I can see why that didn't win. <laughs> but uh, this is just hilarious because John's trying to figure out what year The Sixth Sense came out. And I've never listened to someone who's so bad at using the internet before. This is a 60 seconds long, but it's worth every <laughs> second. Right. The Sixth Sense. Let, here. I'll tell you who. Let's see. Here, the Sixth Sense came out and when? Just tell me, because this is what we're going to do today. Sixth Sense came out. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, Sixth Sense, Sixth Sense. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Sixth Sense. Uh, okay. When the fuck did Six Sense come out, people? Help me out, will you? Because I can't find it. I must not be looking in the right spot. Six Cents. Probably already writing it. I'm I'm busy looking at the thing here. Oh, here it is. 1999. <laughs> <laughs> it took him a minute. Now, just for fun... I typed in the Sixth Sense into Google, and before I even hit enter, it showed up underneath the thing. It's like right. 1999 movie. Yeah, right. it's so easy <laughs> it's to find. It's the easiest thing to figure out. Nine. What, what was he looking through? A fucking book? How was he trying, how was he trying to find it? <laughs> My first book of movies. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so then there's uh, John's amazing trumpet playing. As we all know, he was all county. Mm -hmm. Trumpet player in fifth grade. Mm. He's talked about it a few times. He was lead recorder in fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> he was fourth chair. <laughs> fourth chair. <laughs> and I was a trumpet player. I was an all district trumpet. That's why I could do this. Oh. But whatever. I can't do that great right now. <laughs> That's why I can do this. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's amazing. I love this guy. All right, so then he talks about how this show is very interactive with the audience because he's asking them questions like, "What did the Sixth Sense come out?" And they're answering with, hey, "I'm answers, interacting." Like, yeah, 1999. <laughs> And so he realized that maybe this show shouldn't be what's bugging me about Hollywood. I love doing these shows because you, you could all contribute. This is just chewing the shit with stuttering. <laughs> you know, I have to come up with a title. It's a lot about Hollywood. But anyway. It should be chewing the shit about Hollywood. <laughs> chewing the shit with stuttering John. I know a scat top that would love to check out this show. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. So... Now John's going to start railing on the Grammys and what he hates about the Grammys. By the way, the Beatles never won a Grammy. <laughs> yeah. How fucked up that the best band in the history of rock and roll did not ever win a Grammy. Wrong. All right. So John <laughs> is very convinced that the Beatles never won a Grammy. Now, the Beatles have won 11 Grammys. Granted, they've only won, they only won four when they were together as a band. Best New Artist in 64, performance by a vocal group 64 for A Hard Day's Night. And then they won Best Contemporary Album in 67 for Sgt. Pepper's and Album of the Year for Sgt. Pepper's because you had to. That was an amazing album that no one had ever done anything like that before and it changed the landscape of music. Now, should they have won a lot more Grammys? Yes. Yeah. We can all agree they should have won Grammys every year because they had multiple albums out every year that were better than everything else. With that said, how do you assert that they never won any? Right. So that someone corrects them. I just think that it should be on the Beatles won 11 Grammys, Amy. <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> I'm going to now look this up. That's a fire cry uh, from zero. A 11's a lot more. A <laughs> 11's a lot more than zero. So then Judd decides, well, maybe I wasn't wrong. I'm just thinking of a different band. And now it becomes my homework. Could somebody tell me what bands haven't won? Because maybe I mistook the Beatles. Have the Stones ever won a Grammy? The have Isotopes? The yeah. <laughs> Has Led Zeppelin have the Kinks? <laughs> maybe it was the Kinks. The I was kinks. thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> what bands have won nothing? <laughs> millions and millions yeah. of bands? <laughs> Every band I was in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Suttering John's band, I believe, won zero Grammys. <laughs> yeah. That might be part of it. But am I bitter? Yes. <laughs> I'm extremely, extremely bitter about it. Uh, sometimes John needs to put his foot in his mouth. This is, this is, this is, this is stuttering John and his, and his penchant for putting his big freaking nine and a half, ten size foot in his mouth. <laughs> So I was, nine and a half I was, is not a big. Spot. I was born club footed, <laughs> and even I know that nine and a half and big foot are not the same thing. And then he's like, I mean, I mean ten, I mean eleven. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't have a small dick, <laughs> of course. It's, it's a huge foot. It's <laughs> a big tiny foot. All right, last uh, clip I have on here because it's very important that this DC trip happens. And Gonzo, the guy who's going to help him out, I guess he lives in the area or he understands the schedule of Congress or something, is in the chat. And John better not be trying to weasel his way out of this. He better not be. They removed the uh, site for you to find out when we can go. Is, is, is that not right, Gonzo? Please let me know. Because I got to book the tickets after Christmas. I'm going to book them. I mean, because my Christmas ticket was over a grand. And that's a lot of money for a ticket to go to New York and back. Uh-oh. It sounds like somebody's going to weasel his way out of this. <laughs> well, if the tickets are a grand, then, you know, I got to get the camera crew. I like that. If I don't get Super Chat Saturdays up and running, <laughs> then we're going to have to go to Washed Up Wednesdays. <laughs> I like that uh, Remziel says, oh, it's Herman's Hermits is who I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah, Not of the course. Beatles. That's not my fault. The other Beatles. <laughs> Very good. Well, John, you got to keep the hope alive, my friend. We definitely need you to, uh, to go to Washington, D.C. I think that's going to be really important. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hughesy, you probably think I'm going to let you get out of here, but nope, not so fast, my friend. Gakia. Stuttering John is going on these troll rants recently. So what happened was... 
Tabitha Stevens, who was an oh, attractive gee. porn star about 38 years ago, was supposed <laughs> to be a guest on Beer on the Balcony. And apparently someone texted her from John's number saying it's canceled. And then John comes on his show and he's like, oh, the trolls are ruining my show. The trolls. So he goes off on, on a rant here. These losers seem to really get joy at being a hateful prick. And you know what's weird about it? Some of these losers have kids. Okay. And I just want to just I just want to put that in perspective. They they have kids. And if they have kids, uh, what exactly what lessons are they teaching their children? How to have fun on the internet, I guess. You're going to say, "Well, <laughs> you know, John, you were stuttering John." Yeah, but stuttering John was a comedy bit. For the sake and of you were the joke. <laughs> I didn't do it anonymously. I did it straight to their face. And I always tried to hug them or shake their hand after. Because as far as our, I was concerned, there was no hate involved. Ugh. It was just a comedy bit. Can you imagine a hug from Stuttering John? No, thank and you. And I was a comedian. You were? So I did it. But I'm face to face. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not hidden. But these people are hidden. They think they're hidden, although thanks to uh, a certain person who I won't mention, I know because of his investigative uh, skills, I know who half of their names are. He knows half of their names. And the first half of the second half. They try to do it anonymously. (laughs) And they could say, well, John was a troll. No, John was a troll publicly. He didn't hide. They are trolls that are doing it anonymously, and they have children. Some of these people have children. So what do they say? Look what Dad did today. I I canceled somebody's guest, you know, on their show. Well, Dad, why'd you do that? Because <laughs> he's a loser. <laughs> oh, because he's an asshole. Well, then why don't you just, you know, you know, just leave my, like... Like, I don't get why you would be such a hateful prick. Because you react to it every time. That's why. Yeah. Because of this. Well, somebody. Because that's. Some of these people are. have fucking have. kids that are meant to be parents. Be and pricks. some of them have kids that change They're sex. They're losers. There's nothing wrong with that. Someone posted this in the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit. And I thought there were some good points being made in the, uh, the thread on this. First off, this whole thing where John's always like, and this guy has kids. Or some of them have kids. That's a threat, right? When you start bringing up people's kids, like why even yeah. bring that up? That's seems like he's trying to like put it out there, like yeah. And I I know all about you. I know where your kids go to school. Like all right, dude, relax. You know, I'm I'm not saying you should try to get guests to cancel on John, but it's not the way I would respond well, what, to that. What would he have even said? The top of the Stevens, like hey, so. Uh, uh, did you remember sucking uh, Ron Jeremy's cock? <laughs> well, you actually did have Tabitha on uh, after they got this all figured out. So I do have some clips from that. But I want to read what Joe Namath NYJ wrote underneath this clip in the subreddit because I thought this was brilliant. This is the thing that John's not understanding. Top five rules for dealing with trolls. Number one, ignore them. Number two, if you can't ignore them, don't constantly say they don't bother you and then address them anyway. Number three, if you must address them, whatever you do, don't lecture. It will only be a source of amusement. Number four, if you can't help but to lecture, don't become emotional and call them names. It will only be a bigger source of amusement. Number five, if you become emotional and call them names, don't bring their kids into it. They're not in the troll biz like their famous father didn't ask to be in the spotlight. I I thought that was pretty brilliant. John is consistently bitching about trolls. And wonders why they fuck with him. He fucking invented trolling. <laughs> well, you kind of did, yeah. And uh, by the way, I've got to say, happy anniversary, Carl, because it was December 3rd last year that I interviewed you for the first time. And it was December 10th when it was released. And it was December 10th when Stutter and John blocked me on all social media. Hey, yo, 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 yo. happy yeah, anniversary. You're a prick, you interviewing my enemies. 
Yeah, you had John on your show and then me the next week, I think. And he got pissed off about that. Yeah, what are you, what are you doing giving them uh, time? So this is more of him. This is another troll rant from a whole other time. You know, you know, they're not going to stop me <laughs> from doing my show. And it ain't going to, you know, it doesn't bother me that much. Yeah, did they cancel Tabitha Stevens? Yeah. Wow. You good for you. Wow. So in other words, you're an asshole and you're happy about being an asshole. Think about that. I like that he says, think about that. Maybe you want to do something different with your life. Think about what I just said to you. Cause yeah. I've got life figured out. I'm stuttering John Melendez. So then he has Richard Ojeda on and he starts bitching to Richard Ojeda about the trolls. I, this guy just could not stop himself. But you know what happened, Army Major? I had a beer on the balcony, and, you know, a troll decided to use that um, that phone app and text text my guest canceling, canceling her. So she thought she was canceled. So, I mean, this is, this is the amount of free time they have. I don't think it takes that much time. And also, I think a lot of people are on the case. So I don't think it's just one person who's doing Type that. Of two <laughs> it's not that tough. So he finally gets Tabitha on. They figure out the scheduling. He brings her on. And Husey, you are a podcaster. You interview people. And when you interview them, you do a good job of preparing. You know how to introduce your guest, what to say about your guest. John was not prepared in any way to bring on Tabitha. <laughs> the troll tried, but the troll has now officially failed. Now, without further ado, my friend, um, and uh, I've known this, I've known this woman for quite some time. Say hi to Tabitha Stevens, everybody. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hi, Tabitha. He, he could have said porn star. He could have said frequent guest on the Howard Stern show. He could have said a lot of different things. This is my friend, and uh, uh, I'm friends with her, and uh, we're friendly, and uh, <laughs> great and introduction. I'm, I'm going to a dry patch, so I still want to fuck her. Oh, uh, God. Tabitha. He would need a lot of boner pills to get with Tabitha Stevens these days. I'm just saying, it's not uh, what it used to be. She's looking uh, worse than Chris Martin's wife. <laughs> I don't know. I'm maybe not that bad. <laughs> so in this Tabitha Stevens interview, John tries to fish for a compliment. He didn't realize that Tabitha had seen him do stand-up recently. And John tries to fish for a compliment that he does not get. And then she changes the subject. I was just there two weeks ago. I, I um, crushed it there at, at that show. Oh, it was I, fun. I, we had, was fun. We had, wasn't it a great time? Like, that yeah. was a lot. And you were great. And it was awesome. So, um, Jay, uh, so. Uh, oh, wait, Jay, so you so, were at the show that I did at, the, you know, at the Dirty, at 1230? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, oh, awesome. Yeah, that was my, like, best show when I was, you know, that I had, like, I was killing it there. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, and that was a good time. I'll tell you what. I was killing it there, right? Hey, She's I, like, oh. I, I, was... <laughs> I did all these hilarious observations, uh, such <laughs> as I said that Donnie Dotard Trump has fucked up here. Both those people there were laughing their asses off for two seconds. It's a great time for me. Can all we right. see your big tits? Getting away from Tabitha Stevens now, I want to talk about, we we brought it up last week where John was having trouble with Twitch and he says to Hale Sparks, can you come over and help me with this? And then they start talking about how gross his apartment is. And, you know, could you clean your place and get a new mattress before I come over and that kind of thing? Well, fast forward, Hale has come over to help out Stuttery John and they talk all about it. Let's find out what uh, Hale ran into. First off, he had to do extra work for John beyond just helping him with tech issues. Just to give you an idea what a mensch Hal Sparks is. Yesterday I get a call. I'm preparing for, for an audition for a Michael J. Fox movie. It's like a documentary slash live action Michael J. Fox movie, which I'd love to be a part of because I'm such a fan. He is one of the nicest and sweetest uh, celebrities I've ever met in my entire life. 
but um, you know, and and I did the audition, and I said, well, Hal, since Hal called to, to to come over and help me with Twitch and Facebook, which he did, but he also read and then coached me in the audition. And if you think Hal's smart, nope, about politics, nope, and science, nope, and English and, mm. stuff and everything else, you know what? Also, he's an expert on family ties. Now, the reason why I played this clip, the main reason is I want everyone to know that John auditioned for a Michael J. Fox documentary, whatever that means. I'm not even sure how you audition for a documentary. (laughs) And so I just want to see, like, let's keep our eyes open to see if this thing comes out and what kind of role stuttering John Melendez has in it. Be curious. Yeah, and it's it's like... Uh, only Michael J. Fox, who's got really bad case. What is it, MS? Uh, no, he has um, Parkinson's. Yeah, Parkinson's. Yeah. Yeah, Park. Even he was like, I can't understand a word this guy, the stuttering John, saying. <laughs> yeah, they're like, which one has Parkinson's? I can't tell. Yeah, I was so fucking drunk that I was spilling more beer than Michael J. Fox. <laughs> I'm, I'm just off my medication. Yeah, I said to him, it was fucking hilarious. I said, hey, where the fuck's the the wizard guy that you drove the car with in the space movie? <laughs> it was fucking hilarious. Everybody <laughs> laughed. The wizard guy in the space movie. All right, so that would actually would be a funny thing if he said that. I don't think he would come up with something that good. Hey, you remember you played the fucking the, the president's friend in fucking shit city or whatever the fuck? You little dwarf freak. It was fucking hilarious. All right, so let's get into So poor Hell Sparks comes over to help with tech. Now he's also becoming an acting coach, and he's helping him with his lines and his audition. And let's talk about the state of this guy's apartment. <laughs> I didn't have a chance to clean up, and I'm like, oh, no. Of course. Hal's just going to come over here. And I go, didn't bring it up. up. I didn't bring You brought it up. I didn't no, bring it up. it's okay. It's okay. I'm going, Hal's going to come over here and go, what the? Does this guy have a hero to word cleaning? <laughs> uh, yeah. I um, I brought a girl home the other night. You and we, go to, box. And we go to the song? living room. And she goes, <laughs> and she goes, you know, I mean, would you bring me here and there's cat litter all over the place? And right. Like, I mean, really? I mean, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what I that's she was clearly a woman of taste and breeding. Um, (laughs) All right. So John is leaning into this now. I don't know why he thinks it's so funny. I really don't, because being a gross slob when you're an adult man in your 50s is not funny. And I think Hale's kind of like, dude, why why are you doing this? What's going on? Yeah. And does he even own a cat to have cat litter? (laughs) He has three cats. Oh, great. And apparently it's a problem. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, because yeah, I, I hear that the smell is terrible, but eventually the cats get used to it. <laughs> All right, so hey, oh. John does explain what happened with his date that he brought home. In this particular circumstance, um, that that is a cruel and unusual punishment, and I think you uh, owe her um, like. I don't know, a refund on Tinder, however that works. <laughs> well, Josh Jameson, oh, this she was from Bumble. He goes, did John she use the sheet trick? from Bumble. I was kidding. <laughs> yeah, and I did do the sheet tricks, so she didn't see, you know, the, the, any anything coming out of the mattress. And, um, oh, God. you know, I did get kind of lucky. And Oh, uh, <laughs> oh God. He, he got kind of lucky. What yeah. does that mean? She... she she was about to suck my dick, but I have had a cock full of cheese. <laughs> what does he mean? He kind of got lucky. Did she pass out and he put his cock in her hand or something? Yeah. What does kind of getting lucky mean? I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I, I tried to stuff my fist up a cunt, uh, but it turned out that it was a guy's cock. <laughs> so this is him. This is a convoluted story. I'm not buying any of this. None of this makes any sense talking about this woman. And she's a science teacher. Oh, God, this poor woman. She's been through enough. Oh, God. Oh, dear Lord. We had great chemistry. Uh, I'm, I, you're, she's going to bomb your place with potassium and a, and a jug of water. How um, is the funniest part. So, oh, no. Oh, no. She, she's I have very, scars from this conversation already. She's very respectful. 
So she sleeps over, and you know, like you know, she sleeps in my arms. It was a very nice time. Mm-hmm. And and then she, she, I was gonna yeah. go to her, I don't know, you know, her brother's kid's birthday party, whatever. And you know, she's like, "You want to come?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." And then she goes, and then and then she texts her brother. The brother's like, "What? Well, like you know, like I don't want some strange, you know, some some you know, some, some you know, a date of yours, to, you know, like he like he wasn't he wasn't right. that keen on it." She goes, "Look." I'll make a deal with you. You know, I'll fool around with you and stuff, but uh, you don't have to come to the party. <laughs> I go, great. <laughs> All right. Does that make any sense? So she invited him to a family party, and then her brother didn't want her bringing Stuttering John, and she goes, listen, I'm sorry you can't go to a child's birthday party anymore, but I'll blow you now. Does that sound yeah. flawless? I mean, does that, does that go on in Ireland? What's, what, what are they talking about here? But we, the main thing I want to know is why the fuck is Hal Sparks always on this show? That actually leads me into my next clip because Hal is questioning himself. What is he doing all of this for? And he comes up with a theory that I think might be right. So what there was your impression no- when you were up in my studio here? Um, uh, that I I should have bought you a flamethrower. That, that joke again. <laughs> Third time he's I used that joke. I still stand by my original statement. I said you got me these lights that I still don't know what the hell I'm going to do with. Yeah. You're, you're, you're from a flamethrower, aren't you, Sparks? Hilarious. I'm going to use that in my next step. I, I drive all the way across town, and I put my, put my own show on hold. Um, I think I might be codependent. I'm going to have to seek, seek uh, professional help. Um <laughs> I don't know why John's laughing so hard. It's not I don't know why I would think that after the last time I was there, when you had somebody come and clean, because you cleaned, that you would keep doing it. I don't know why. <laughs> I really do. I got to get a cleaning lady. I do. Yes, you I do. do. You've also just got to get a shovel. But um, <laughs> Why a shovel? <laughs> for the kitty litter. Oh, the, yes. Yeah. John does not get jokes ever. Yeah, this is this is the going back to that Brennan and fucking Benjamin thing. But uh, I think that Stuttering John reminds Hal Sparks of the grandmother that he neglected as a child. Yes, there's something and going on here. Yeah, this codependent relationship thing is an interesting theory. So he sees this fat, unfunny, double stroke victim alcoholic and thinks, I've got to do what I can before people remember that I was in Queer as Folk. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's trying to make a new legacy for himself by helping out a special needs friend of his. <laughs> so this is where it gets very gross. I uh, will warn everybody. John goes into specifics about what he's doing in his apartment. Okay, how? I got three cats. So they go into. Th- I have three kitty little boxes. They right. go in there and they dig all the kitty litter, and then it goes all over the floor. Get a covered cat box. They have hoods on them. Or vacuum. Get the ones with yes. hoods. They won't kick it out. Or sweep every now and then. Clean yeah. them. Every two days, sift them. Yes. Take every the two shit days. out. Leave the kitty litter. Every two oh. days. Oh, I, at I, least. I, I sift them at every least. two weeks. <laughs> All right. He's proud of himself. I don't know why. He's got three cats in his apartment, three cat boxes, and he cleans them every two weeks. What what do you think? Uh, like, if, if that's the, the hygiene of his house, yeah. Well, what do you think is the state of his uh, anus and penis hygiene? Right. I, see, like, this is why the, bringing his kids over for Thanksgiving, or this idea that um, he's bringing a girl back to his place, none of it makes any sense. No one would I do think that. He, I think he takes a shit and and just to save the money, he goes, "Okay, I'm going to give it six squares of paper." And whatever I get, and if it's not clean by the shit, then I'm going to have a scratchy ass all I, fucking day. I thought you were going to tell pump. me that he, he flushes his toilet every two weeks just to save the water. He's worried yeah. about the water bill. I'll just let it pile up for a week or so. I'll, I'll go to the Pickwick pub and take a shit there. Oh, you know he shits at the, at the pub for sure. Yeah. So my buddies where I keep getting my dick sucked. So for some reason... John continues to ask Hal, like, yeah, what else did you think about my place? So he didn't clean up his place. It's disgusting. And he keeps asking Hal to describe it. The other thing is uh, cans of stuff. 
Uh, we'll talk about that later. It's not important. Oh, oh you mean I? You know, like the orange juice I had, the Gatorade, and the beer cans. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's from. My, I mean, yeah, that's from my beer on the balcony, and and I, you know, I should probably put them in a bag and you know. Yeah, and take them out after, after, after. Yeah, yeah. Or at the very least, just throw them off the balcony. At least you won't be <laughs> tormented by them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so John never cleans up the cans. His empties are just laying all over the place, apparently, which is, again, a childish thing to do. I'd be an adult, have a recycle bit or something. And this whole idea that, well, I got to have my beer cans because I do a beer on the balcony show. That was his idea to do that. And now he's acting like... I don't want to be drinking beer, but I have a show called Beer on the Balcony, so what am I going to do? My hands are tied here. Hal Sparks could use his acting history to do a crossover called Queer on the Balcony, but uh, the question I've got to ask you, was there any updates on that lawsuit? Yes, actually, he did talk to his attorney, and I didn't pull the clip of the great Michael Popak because <laughs> what uh, his attorney said was that they won't hear anything until probably the second quarter of 2022. This thing is just dragging on and on and on. So there won't be any new news for a long time, unfortunately. This is, he is a ridiculous, sad old man. Like, I, I, I really don't know what the fuck he's, he's even thinking. It, it's embarrassing. Come here, get him. <laughs> get him. Get him back on your show. Let me call oh, in. Please. That'd be great. Anthony, if, if, you, if someone can get this to Anthony, Anthony, Please put the message out to Stutter and John and get him back on your show and have live that'd call be, in. That'd be amazing if, yeah, if you extended an album branch. It was just like, John, you know what? I'm, I was going back. I'm thinking we didn't treat you right when you came on the show last time. Artie's not here anymore. Come back on. Let's let's have a little powwow. Maybe I should donate to your run for the Senate. You know, maybe I'll, I'll actually <laughs> invest in that for you. Get one of your T-shirts. Oh, please, Anthony, be a, be a good boy and get lovely Melendez on the show. That's what Elisa Jordana did. She got him on the show and then just had nothing but haters call in and call him a stuttering fuckface, and it was hilarious. <laughs> it was one of the best things that ever happened. Oh, my God. Uh, Anthony says okay. He's into it. All right. Yeah. Hey, hey, Anthony, i got a hilarious nickname for you. Because you're my hero, you're... <laughs> The Ant-Man. <laughs> anyway. All right. That sucks. I'm going to play you the last clip of Hale Sparks because John thinks that, like, Hale's neat and tidy and John's a slob, so they must be, like, the odd couple. And Hale Sparks is like, well, you're beyond just untidy. Any other observations? Uh, no, no, no. Luckily, no one can, uh, like, we're not on smell of vision It's fine. <laughs> You weren't very judgmental, though. It seemed, like, it seemed like you just were like, I know what I'm getting into. I'm not going to even comment. I'm just going to, like, I'm just going to deal with the fact that he is the incarnation of Oscar Madison. I I don't think, see, the thing, Oscar Madison was uh, was scattered, and and he definitely was messy. But there, it it was. It didn't graduate into kitty litter at all. It was just kind of like crumbs. See, John thinks he's cute and quirky because he's got this thing where I never clean my apartment. It's, isn't that hilarious? It's one of the things people know about me. Like, no, it's disgusting. He's becoming a whack packer. <laughs> yes, John the Drunk. <laughs> yeah. be his new name. Calling into the Howard Stern show. John the Cheese Dick Loser. <laughs> what an alcohol problem. And the son with a cunt. I could I could see John calling into the Howard Stern show. John, did you shit in your poopy diapers? Yes. Did you then <laughs> eat the shit out of your poopy diapers? Yes. <laughs> All Sp right. Spell poopy diapers. <laughs> L-E-S-T-R. Last one I have for you. He had this comedian on Ornery Adams. Or Orny, oh, Orny Adams. Not Ornery. I know him from the uh, comedian documentary starring yes. Jerry Seinfeld. Very good. That might have been your best impression yet. Can you say, I'm Jerry Seinfeld, and you're listening to Who Are These Podcasts? I'm Jerry Seinfeld, and you're listening to Who Are These Podcasts? Do you want my Michael Richards impression? <laughs> yes, I want your Michael Richards impression. Yeah. I know what this is going to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not. Uh, you're a ginger, Jerry. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so, I say Ginger 24-7. So Ordy Adams is on John's show, and John finds out that he lives in L.A. So what's the first thing that John <laughs> thinks when he finds out someone's local? The pick my pole. We got to get a beer together. <laughs> exactly. This, <laughs> this exchange is unbelievable. And wait till the end because that is the kicker. Now I'm in L.A. Where? Well, I don't want to say where, but, uh, you know. Well, no, I mean, I mean, you drink beer? <laughs> yeah, I drink beer, but I don't, I don't start at two in the afternoon. It's only three. I got, a, a, I got a guy coming over to, uh, we have to snake my, one of my bathtubs later. You know, this day's I just, have, I have you're a hell plumbers. of a drinker. I have good plumbers, by the way. No, this yeah, is my well, beer this... on the balcony. How can I call the show beer on the balcony if I'm not drinking beer? I mean, like, mm. you know, you know, yeah. I mean, that would be false advertising. You know what I mean? Way to be committed to the format. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll privately invite you over. You come over. You can go. The, the Shasta's got a beer fridge. It's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. I'll do your podcast if you want. Well, I haven't asked you, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what is that? He does it all the time, too. By the way, I'll do your podcast. You're not an interesting guest. You're not a good get. John. Orny Adams, of course, huge star reading here. Star of. Teen Wolf. Oh yeah, I saw that. Which Teen Wolf? Yeah, the exact thing. <laughs> not not the not the Michael J. Fox Teen Wolf. Oh no, not she. You know, I auditioned for him, the, and I said the truck with a space movie, and we drove the truck to space, and I fucked his mother. Uh, what a what a great get from Orny Adams. <laughs> I, th- I love that he goes. Did you do drink beer? He's like, yeah, but not now. Why are you drinking beer right now? And John goes, well, it's the name of the show. I have to drink beer. And like, <laughs> he's the one who came up with the idea and named the show. And he's like, "It's I, my hands are tied here. I, I have to drink beer because it's beer on the balcony. You know, I we, can't have a we, orange juice. We got so much in common. Beer. We never made it. Does your son have a pair of tits in a gun? Oh. <laughs> what do That's you That's right. That is right. So he has a clear connection to celebrity. He also sat across from someone who interviewed celebrities for 10 years. So <laughs> That's true. He, he, sometimes they said hi to him in the green room, and he'll point out who said hi and who didn't. I hear about that all the fucking time. He's a, he's a cool guy. He would say hi. I am, thanks to you, I, I always thought, like, uh, I knew very little of Stuttering John. I yeah. was an Opie and Anthony guy. I'm a little too young to have caught him on Stern. Yeah. Um, but he seemed to me like a nice guy. I remember I actually prank called his radio show once. Oh, did and- you? At the time, so like, um, it was something I dropped uh, a Kirk Minahan show reference. Mm -hmm. And because of that, he thought that like Kirk was mad at him or something. And I was like, that's pretty weird that he would get, because he talked about it on his next episode. What an idiot. And I was like, that's weird that he would get sensitive about it. And now you have exposed that, (laughs) oh, that's pretty normal in the stuttering John world. Uh, Is is Kirk crashing me? Is is Kirk (laughs) crashing me on his show? Because if he has, you know, he has children. And he's trashing Why'd you send that blind guy after me? He's just stealing my bit. <laughs> he's trashing me. Um, all right, so John starts off this episode where... Now, John isn't shaving anymore. For a long time, he was cutting himself. I think because he's very hungover when he shaves in the morning. But oh, he was God. cutting himself a lot, and he was bleeding on air. So he's decided to just, like, stop shaving. And he looks pretty bad, but he explains this. <laughs> I, have to be, uh, I have to be honest uh, here. I mean, the beard is, uh, is kind of because... Um, because I'm lazy, it, you know. It, it, I hate shaving. Oh, I decided to drink on this one because talking about the relationships, it's a cloudy day. Why not? Let's go. <laughs> he decided to drink because it's cloudy out. <laughs> this is something an alcoholic says. Why are you drinking? Ah, oh, it's a nice day today. Why are you drinking? That's ah, shitty weather. Well, the sun rose today. I figured I should celebrate. Yeah, you know, I I only drink when I'm by myself or out with other people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so this one of his is, rules. He only drinks uh, at night. <laughs> this is a this is a um, oh, that's the best when when his uh, guests call him out on beer on the balcony. They're like, "Whoa, John, it's like three o'clock. You're drinking a beer." He's like, "Well, it's called beer on the balcony." I, that's the I, show. If I didn't have a beer, people would be you know pretty upset about it. <laughs> no one would be upset if you stopped drinking, John. Everyone would be very happy for you. So this is a weird, weird episode because it's all about relationships in Hollywood. Relationships between celebrities. This is what bugs him. And he says, I don't know why celebrities are always dating other celebrities. It never works out. 
Like, what do you care? <laughs> what, what difference does that fucking make? <laughs> but this is this is what he's all worked up about. I mentioned Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Well, yeah, they last. Are they still together? I think they are. They've lasted a long ass time. Sometimes it works. But most of the time, nah, it doesn't. And that's what bugs me about how, why don't these freaking Jennifer Aniston's, Angelina Jolie's, like, why not give a regular dude a shot? Why not? Oh, why God. not go out with a plumber? <laughs> go with a plumber? Or a stuttering comedian. <laughs> why not go out with a husband? <laughs> why would they? Why would they give a, has been a chance? Is this really also, what's on his mind? He's just stating something that's statistically true of marriage in general. Correct. And <laughs> some work and some don't. Yeah, yeah. He, he goes. He goes. All these relationships break up. It's like, well, that's true of all relationships. It's just because we know about them that you know that they break up or not. It's fucking retarded. And the way he puts people on blast in this episode. So it starts with Ben Affleck. And uh, maybe you heard it made some news. Uh, I think TMZ covered it when he was on Howard Stern yeah. last week. Mm -hmm. He talked about how his marriage with Jennifer Garner was driving him to drink. Right. And uh, John pff, doesn't like that. First of all, you come out and you say that Jennifer Garner led you to drink. Ben... Shut up. Look, you're a good actor. You're a good guy. Well, man, well, well, yeah, 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 I would say you're a good guy. Any friend of Matt Damon is a friend of mine. <laughs> you're a good uh, um, uh, director or producer. You know, Argo was a great movie, although you bent the truth a little bit. Um, oh, John knows the truth about the Iran <laughs> hostage crisis. Um, okay. But... <laughs> Now you're back with J Lo. <laughs> That's what he's pissed about. That <laughs> was it. <laughs> he's back with J Lo. I was waiting for some great philosophical wisdom to come out of John. <laughs> was that what you thought was going to happen? I really did, dude. This is like a show you'd see on like E Entertainment or something. Ben Affleck is back with J Lo. It's like okay, who cares? <laughs> it's and with John, I always get obsessed with like the little things where he's like. Uh, Essentially, the tone when he threw out Matt Damon's name was yeah. basically like, and Matt, if you're watching, and I know you are. Yeah. Like, he thinks these celebrities even know who he is anymore. Like, they've forgotten you, John. You were f a funny gimmick in the 90s, and they don't remember who you are anymore, and that's fine, but you should just do your podcast and not be as obsessed with it. No, he's definitely <laughs> alluding to the fact that he's friendly with Matt Damon. He's like, well, any friend of Matt Damon is a friend of mine. Like, Matt Damon's not a friend of yours. What do you mean? What does and that actually, mean? Uh, so I let him borrow the plot of uh, Good Will Hunting. <laughs> yeah, I, I came up with that. You know, actually, <laughs> actually Fred did, but <laughs> I, I take credit. All right, so now let's talk about some inside information he has about J-Lo. You ready for this? I uh, am. You're going to learn some info here. So now I'll tell you some inside thing, and, you know, I hate to be a little crass, if you will, but... It's a much known thing. We know it from a friend who dated J Lo, and Ben Affleck. Put it this way: J Lo is supposed to have one of the most beautiful uh, vaginas in the world. <laughs> That's what I hear, and I hear it from a good source, so I'll stand by it. So you could see that you know maybe Ben wanted some more of that. <laughs> So John, because he's got inside information, thinks that he got back with J Lo because he wanted to have sex with her. Yeah, well, I think what an so. insider. <laughs> what Hollywood gossip? <laughs> I think he wants to get his dick wet. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I, I think that sounds pretty plausible. By the way, I don't know who Margot Robbie's dating, but I have heard rumblings that it's with someone that wants to have sex with. Her, if that's a little, <laughs> I'm a bit of an insider, Carl. <laughs> uh, you know that chick who's like a, a perfect ten, even though she's 50 years old. She's an attractive <laughs> vagina too. You don't say. <laughs> wow. And the man with her likes filling that vagina. <laughs> I never, never would have guessed. <laughs> Jesus Christ, John. W what am I listening to? This is such a weird side of stuttering John I've never heard before. Gossipy Gill over here talking about, oh, I, I know someone who knows someone who, you know, got a, a peek with their camera underneath their skirt. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that, I wish he would do that. Just a straight up, like, 
uh, you know, Entertainment Tonight ripoff with John Melendez. <laughs> I mean, that's what this episode is. It's insane. <laughs> so then he puts Jennifer Aniston on blast for some reason. And you won the Jennifer Aniston. You wonder why. And let me tell you something. Your biological clock is ticking. But everyone, Brad Pitt, Justin Thero, all the ones you date are all celebrities. And guess what? You haven't found one that made you happy. <laughs> this, is the, this is actually the most insane thing John's ever said. And he said so many insane things. He's telling Jennifer Aniston how to live her life. This guy. I hope. I don't know how uh, skilled your listeners are at like editing video and things like that, but I would love a movie trailer, like a rom com trailer, <laughs> where John is pitching that to Jennifer Aniston. Just date a regular guy like me. Why don't you just date a plumber and just see what happens? <laughs> Jennifer, I got everything you got right here. And it's funny too because this guy should not be giving relationship advice. You know, I'm going to throw that out there. Is that, is that right? <laughs> yeah, and at one point, someone asks him why he doesn't have a girlfriend since he's giving out all this advice. He has an answer for that. No, no, I'm very, I'm actually way too selective. It's been my biggest problem. <laughs> Always. I'm way too selective. It's very hard. <laughs> that's, that's the problem. You know, his standards are very high. <laughs> That's what I. Uh, that's what I cried out loud when I was alone on prom night. I'm just too goddamn selective. I can't be bothered to clean a litter box or clip my toenails, but I'm very selective <laughs> when it comes to the girls that I date. Okay. Sorry, sweetheart. Nines and above. So he's going on and on about how what is up with these celebrities who date other celebrities? Why would they do that? And then he has to confess. You know what, Mike? He's been in that trap before, so he's not completely Ooh. innocent here. There's a certain thing. Now, I get it. Like, look, I'm not going to lie to you. I had sex with a Playboy centerfold. But, you know, how often? You know, you know, I, you know, I've had some fun at the Playboy mansion. You know, I, you know, I had sex with another Playboy, you know, girl. Yeah, you know. No one told me there was going to be it. boasting. But, <laughs> but who would, you know, I, I get that. Oh, you get that celebrities want to have sex with other celebrities because they're very attractive and make a ton of money. Now, now you're starting to get it. He's like, yeah, when I used to fuck those really super, super hot chicks, that was pretty cool. I, I could see why you'd want to do that. Folks, I'm not going to lie to you. I love that I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've had sex with Playboy models. Oh, John. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're not shitting us. How much regret do these girls have? I, I picture... These girls crying like that porn star who fucked Jeff the Drunk or whatever. I, I can't remember what happened on the Howard Stern show. But yeah. one of the Whack Packers had sex with a porn star. And immediately after, she regretted it and was bawling her eyes out. Yeah. Like, when Hugh Hefner died, we started to learn some of the horrible things he did. But I think allowing these women to sleep with Stuttering John might be the That's worst. That's the worst. Yeah, <laughs> The highest crime of them all. <laughs> That's the worst of them all. Can you just do me a favor? It's for Howard. Just do me a favor. Trust me, it's not going to take long. It's not. It's not going to be your whole night. All right. Just. Uh, all right. So John talks about there's a celebrity dating site called Raya. And I've heard uh, of this, yes. yeah, yeah. So it's only for celebrities. Uh, Raya is um, the celebrity dating site. I kid you not. And to prove they don't consider me a real celebrity, Raya has not allowed me into that dating site. <laughs> <laughs> Yet they let a comic friend of mine in because she's a hot chick. And she doesn't, you know, when she's, you know, if I said a name, you wouldn't know her. Yeah, but he's not bitter or anything, my God. They won't let me in, but they let this <laughs> asshole in. No one's and ever that heard name of. is Sarah Silverman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have heard of her? Oh, I guess. <laughs> I also, like... It's a celebrity dating app, but also, like, I think they let, like, movie producers, like, people who are kind of loosely attached to that world on, which makes it more hilarious that Stuttering John's not allowed. Yeah. Oh, well, I have uh, 14,000 subscribers on YouTube, and my videos got a few hundred people watching them, so <laughs> what else do I have to do for this application? Uh, hello? Hello? Yeah. Unfortunately for John, the people who created the app weren't alive when Stuttering John was famous. <laughs> right. 17 minutes into the show, John is not getting any money and starts begging for money. I'll see you, Linda Workman. But I will say, 
feel free to give me some stars on the way out. Oh, by the way, super chats are allowed on this show. Uh, <laughs> by, by the way, by the way, I don't know if you guys know <laughs> the rules there, but you can super chat me if you'd like to. I find that sort of thing disgusting. As a guy with a Patreon that you can find at patreon.com slash blind Mike, I find that sort of shamelessness disgusting, quite frankly. Slash blind Mike, you say? Yes, that's patreon.com slash blind Mike. Is that, sound, that sounds easy to find and fun to do. It certainly is. Uh, this is this is a fucking ridiculous thing. So John's trying to explain how hot Mila Kunis is. All Ooh. right. Now, the way I would do that is I'd be like, I find Mila Kunis extremely attractive. That's how I might do it. He takes a I would different... say you've seen Mila Kunis before, I assume. <laughs> yeah, right. He, he, he takes a different route. If you watch the movie Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Mila Kunis makes uh, Kristen Bell look like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually one of the funnier things. I don't think he meant it to be funny. <laughs> That's not, that is a funny line. <laughs> That's a pretty funny line. Like She makes another hot chick <laughs> look like a dog. <laughs> Jesus. You can just say that she's a tranny. You don't have to put down the other one. <laughs> yeah, well, it's topical at least. Um, so if you listen to the show, you know, or if you ever watch Stuttering John's show, you know that he always puts his pinky out when he drinks his beer, and it's enraging. It's Is that like, like to be classy? Well, I've always wondered that, and someone finally asked him, and he finally addressed it. Aileen Elizabeth Moran. Yeah, I don't know why I always have my pinky up. It's some kind of fucking reflex. I don't know why. So he can't control his hands, I guess, <laughs> is why he does that. It's not a reflex. It's not a reflex. <laughs> no, it certainly isn't. Even when he's drinking like orange juice or something, he does that stupid like pinky out thing. Oh, he's trying there's to be got to be some darkness there. There's something <laughs> weird going on. <laughs> but John loves it when people troll him. Oh, Pretty boy. great show, John. Even the trolls couldn't resist it. Oh, I know. These trolls, you know they love me. <laughs> They're in love with me. <laughs> it's, I love it, actually. Just like Hal says, give me the algorithm. I don't care. Be- trash me all you want. Okay, I told you. <laughs> I told you we will. We are. <laughs> we are trying. <laughs> but I should mention this is the third week in a row. Producer Chris is not here. He's got another week off. Oh. And uh, but what he did is he sent me in some clips that I could play, and I haven't been playing them. But he sent me in some clips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it would sound like he was here. And I think th- I think <laughs> well, this one's fun. This one's appropriate. He's doing a stuttering John impression. The thing these trolls don't know. Is I know my kids look up to me. They say, Dad, every story you tell, you're the hero of. Very good, Chris. It's pipe, actually pretty good. Pipe down now, <laughs> producer Chris. That's, <laughs> that's enough out of you. Um, now, Will had mentioned earlier about his uh, his birthday when he, he was supposed to be on Planet Mikey. Yes. Not a good way to celebrate your birthday. I will say that, um, and I don't celebrate birthdays, but when this show comes out, it will be my birthday. And oh. I want to thank Stuttering John for singing me happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Some fat loser fuck who works at a marketing company in, uh, in Rochester. Happy <laughs> birthday. To you. Oh, thank you so much. That's sweet. You guys could put down your differences for a moment. <laughs> right. Yeah, we got to celebrate <laughs> the special moments in our lives. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Well, they were playing the name game. I'm going to play the name drop game. Well, I was on a show with Chrissy Mayer this week and Elisa Giordana, and I just wanted to put it, give a shout out to Chrissy Mayer. Check out her latest episode on YouTube. We get into it uh, talking about... My friend, Stuttering John. Mm. Hey! Hey! Woo! <laughs> now, there was a show that just came out where Crazy Cabby was interviewed by this guy it's a, it's st weekly is the youtube channel and he's done most of the guys from the howard stern show and he does interviews with other celebrities and crazy comedians crazy cabbies and stuff like alive yeah i was just thinking the wow. same thing yes 
So he's talking about the old boxing match. Now, this was a stunt that was done on the Howard Stern Show in the 90s where it was Crazy Cabby, who was, by the way, a disc jockey on the station. I think he did Afternoons. But they would bring him on because he was a character. He was yeah. like a crackhead. He had all sorts of problems. He had a real job. He wasn't just microwaving potatoes and answering Right. Phone. Yeah, he was okay. actually an right. on-air talent, unlike Just to be John. clear. Yeah, right. right. So because John was the stunt boy of the Howard Stern show, he's going to have a boxing match with um, Crazy Cabby. So John won by decision, and it was such a pathetic boxing match. I mean, it was there was no technique at all. They were not in shape. <laughs> These two guys bent over with their hands on their knees. No, they were hugging each other the whole time. They're yeah. holding each other up. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought it was funny because um, the interviewer asked him about the animosity that took place during that boxing match. No, oh, dude, that shit was real. I fucking hated that guy. I always hated that guy. I still hate that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin yeah. still hates Stuttering John. I wonder why he does. This is a fun little story. Now, Cabby is a uh, veteran. And uh, he is paralyzed. He cannot walk. He's in a wheelchair now. R- really? Yes. When did that happen? I mean, how? How much research you want me to do, Andy? <laughs> no, you brought it up. Uh, all right. I need, I need you to Google crazy cabbie. Yeah. No, well, scroll. He, scroll. scroll uh, like, hospital. Yeah. He wasn't, and now he is. Wait, check all out right. this chick. chick. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Does she whisper things? All right. Thank you for he your service. He told me. I don't even know how he got my cell phone number. But he got a hold of it. I'm guessing Gary gave it to him. He got my cell phone number, and he called me while I was in a fucking hospital at the VA. And he was like, "Hey, hey, you want to, you want to, you want to do my podcast?" And I was like, "No, dude." And he's like, "Why?" And I was like, uh, "You know, I'm I'm dealing with this fucking health issue. I, I'm crippled and in a 500 pound wheelchair." I think it's funny because when I heard that, I thought for sure he was going to say, yeah, he called me. I don't know how he got my number, but he called me and wished me the best, you know, told me get well soon. No, it's just like, can can you do my show? Yeah. I'm in the hospital. Do you get good reception there? Yeah. Oh, Oh, you don't. You're a piece of shit. (laughs) (laughs) Is he saying he's in a 500 pound wheelchair or he's 500 pounds in a wheelchair? He's lost a lot of weight, but he was a very big man at that time. So this is now him. Um. Wondering if it would have made sense for him to do Stuttering John's podcast. He goes, you have to be on my podcast the first thing when I get, when I was like, who listens to just Stuttering John's podcast? Do people actually listen? I, I, I don't even know. Does he still have a podcast? I, I don't know. So guess what? All right. What's yeah. funny about this is that in our world, Stuttering John's podcast is amazing. Oh, must listen. I listen to it every week. And so for someone like me, I'm like, well, of course he still has a podcast. But you got to remember that these guys are connected to the Howard Stern. So you got Crazy Cabby and this guy who interviews all these people from Howard Stern. And they're like, does he ha- still have a podcast? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, Stuttering John's way off the map in every single way. Sure, of course. It's Until- like Austin Radio Gunk holding this thing alive. You're right. Them. Until you brought it up on yeah. your show, nobody even would not know that he no. had a show. No, well, of course he's not. He's running with Hollywood's elite now. So oh, yeah. right. Yeah. He left all this behind. So... <laughs> so the last clip I have from uh, from this I thought was interesting because for some reason, Crazy Cabby decided, all right, I'll do Centering John's podcast. I called him three times. He never fucking answered. I gave him every opportunity. Stuttering John can suck my dick. I will <laughs> fucking eat his face, even as a fucking cripple. I won that fight. That was a fix. <laughs> so he was ready to go on the show, and then John drops the ball by never wow, answering his phone or returning a phone call. But I, in the wrong time zone. I yeah. do love the ISO that we got from that. Stuttering John can suck my dick. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'll be keeping this. I'll be keeping this on the board right here. Very good. Speaking of time zone issues, Croge. Now this one I pulled right out of the Dabblers Anonymous subreddit, and this video was posted by Joe Namath NYJ, who posts a lot of great things in there. Yeah. With the caption, these two geniuses are going to save America, but first they have to figure out what time it is. <laughs> this is John with Richard Ojeda. <laughs> Army Major, 12.45. You said 3.15. Oh, I screwed up. 12.45. <laughs> so that's 4.15. It, no, at, at 3.45. <laughs> My time? Yeah, in half an hour. All right, I'll be there. I'll, I'll be back. All right, sorry, brother. Everyone. All right. <laughs> oh. It's another two-step process. Oh. 
<laughs> that was so good. I just came twice. That was fucking amazing. That's so fucking funny. Fifteen hundred oh. hours minus three is uh... <laughs> the. The Dadler's Anonymous subreddit, I cannot recommend highly enough. There is some gold in there. It really is. It's worth scrolling through all of it. And it's very active, too. There's only yes. like 500 people, but, but they're, they, they're into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is a lot of fun, for sure. And I get a lot of the clips that we play on here from that, because they do find choice clips from John. I can't play them all. They do find some <laughs> choice clips. Oh, there was one that someone put together that was great, where John's talking once again about how when you tell someone to abort their child, oh, you know, he's going over that again. He's a beer on the balcony. He's getting yeah. drunk. And he goes, you know, I was excited to be a parent. He said I was going to be an unfit father. And then he put together a clip of him <laughs> chugging five more beers <laughs> after saying that, which is really pretty funny. So that's well done. But it translates better to video than uh, our format. Now, uh, I pulled this clip only because John has a new name for all the trolls out there. I mean, Fred's father, I believe, I don't want to, I'm pretty sure he said this on the air, was an alcoholic and abusive. Oh, oh, look, oh, look, the trolls are back. It's definitely not a friend or your agent. It's got to be a sad life to be a troll. It's not bad. And you know what? Oh, I'm not going to call them trolls anymore because that's, too complimentary. Oh. They're losers. Oh. So when I say the next time, oh, another loser. Trolls yeah. are now losers. Let's keep close track of this, guys. I want to see if he remembers that next time. Yeah. Because now he's declared that. Well, that, man, what a razor sharp <laughs> job. Yeah, so, just hell, <laughs> hell, what do you do about all these people who are losing you? <laughs> <laughs> you stop losing me. <laughs> And right after that, by the way, because, I again, it's a visual thing, but he's like, they're not trolls, they're losers. And then he pulls up a beer and chugs it. <laughs> yeah. John, what are you doing? And not just any beer. You're not helping yourself in any single way. No. <laughs> Keep getting lost on my subreddit. All right, so he has this guest on with Richard Ojeda. And this guest is this guy, Hugo Lowell. He's a congressional reporter for The Guardian. So he's out of the U.K., but he covers the U.S. Congress for The Guardian. He's a young guy. And uh, what's funny is they bring this guy on the show, and I've never seen any other show like this, where John has to explain to him, by the way, now that you're attached to my show, you will get trolled. <laughs> he has to explain this. And the whole time, this guy's just staring at him, straight face, just like, what's going What do you mean? Like, why? What would happen? And then listen to the end here. Richard Ojeda tries to get in a joke about it. You know, all I'm going to all, all tell you is this. You'll get some of my trolls who will who will now tweet you don't, don't go on John's show anymore like but so please don't don't please don't listen to them because uh, Richard gets it all the time you know I have these people that just always want to try and screw you know screw me up so please don't buy into any of the garbage that you get from my haters they're a very small group they have no lives but this is what they do you, you know what I mean well, Hugo, let me tell you that I, I caught some of the flack from some of John's haters, and I actually went for therapy on this. And my therapist looked me in the face and told me that the best thing you could do is to tell them to fuck off. <laughs> That's not good advice. Oh, I'm going to be yeah, a therapist. Don't engage with the trolls. Don't tell them to fuck off. Ignore them and block them, right? <laughs> what therapist would tell you to violently confront people, first of all? <laughs> well, that was a joke. <laughs> and so, yeah, why would it be like, yeah, they, uh, these people drove me to therapy? <laughs> I don't know. Oof, oof. Not, he didn't say, uh, make a better show, and they'll stop telling you you suck. No, he did not say don't that. Don't do that. It's just that he happens to have a couple of trolls that keep changing their username and happen to have 500 accounts on Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> keep goofing at them. You guys ready for the reason why he was late to his show the other day? Oh, yeah. All right. There's a lot of information to process here. Someone wrote a book about this at the subreddit, a, a whole analysis of what's going on here. Sorry, I was a little late today. Why? Well, <laughs> three letters, DMV. Yep. Went to the DMV. Had to pay my, pay my late fee. Oh, boy. 
and uh, paid three hundred dollars for my daughter's car that I gave her, and then they asked me for my current insurance. Uh -oh. Then my phone died. <laughs> then I say, could I come back in 10 minutes? I'll, I'll charge my phone. I go to charge my phone. Come back. This is the know, and and, this is and the insurance card that I have on file is expired. Mm -hmm. I start calling my insurance company. And the main guy wasn't there. And the girl was at the post office. <laughs> So it was just a guy who answered the phone who didn't have access to the computer. I got to back this up. I've never heard of an insurance company where it was like, there's like, there's a main guy and then there's the girl, but the girl's gone. The yeah. main guy, like, what? The general was not there <laughs> and the private was out to lunch. Is, is Shaq there? Yeah. And the gecko can't work the keys. <laughs> <laughs> this is so great right here. Listen to this, this little, uh, this detail of the story. So... There was just a guy answering the phones who didn't have access to the computer. They let a guy answer the phone who literally could do nothing for anyone. Hey, can you look up my account? Oh, I don't have a computer, sir. That would be, I mean, what kind of investment do you think this company makes in equipment around here? You think I'd have a computer? That's, that's an insane thing. I was just walking by the phone. This and, can't uh... be a real insurance company, right? I know. <laughs> what are you talking about? So now I'm waiting for my time in line waiting for this girl to call me and then my time was up i had to go to the desk again i showed the expired one she caught on quick then i had to go back to my car charge it more <laughs> keep calling this girl finally she answered i'm back i'm i'm emailing you the new insurance put it this way i left around 9 20 something I didn't get home till 12.03. Took a quick shower. Thank God I already brushed my teeth. Jeez. Took my pills. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> you fucking Grandpa pills. Simpson. Yeah. Dude, what's so funny about this oh. is he's pissed at the DMV, and yet all of these things are his fault. Right. Right? So he, he had to pay this fine because he hadn't paid the registration. Yeah. So he's got this late fee that he has to go pay, and he has to renew the registration that's like his daughter's car, but apparently it's not because it's his registration. He's the one not renewing it for some reason, even though you get that notification in the mail and you can pay online. It's a really easy thing. Uh, to I was going to say, all this stuff is online. All, it's especially online. since yeah. COVID, you can do almost everything They don't even online. want you in the DMV. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Correct. So then he shows up to the DMV, and his insurance has obviously lapsed. Yeah. I mean, that's, oh, yeah. that's obvious. Uh, yeah. so he's like, yeah, this card is expired. Yeah. And he has no idea how to get that information from his phone. So now he's calling people to email him at his phone. He goes at 9 o'clock in the morning, he goes to the DMV with 7% left on his phone. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. What are you doing? Was it on the charger all night? <laughs> yeah, or in your car on the way yeah. to the DMV. Uh, well, if you pass out drunk and don't sh put it on the charger, yes. then it's not going to fucking have any juice, is it? Oh, we complained about that when he was in, in uh, not Vegas. Maybe it was Vegas. Um, what was the other place in, in Nevada? Where he Reno? Went. Reno. He was talking about the same thing where he's like, you know, I got up the next morning and I really had these pains, but I didn't know where a drugstore was because my phone didn't have any juice. It's like, yeah. you woke up in the you morning and your phone doesn't have a charge? You Why? passed out without plugging it in. Moron. Again. Imagine being so terrible at life. that it, like, Right. These are basic things we all do. Renew yeah. registration. Exactly. Get our insurance up to date. And most people do this without ever leaving their house, without even putting their fucking pants on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Jesus Christ. I like that he doesn't shower before he goes to the DMV, but he has to shower before his internet show. Yeah. Like, why not shower when you go and interact with people? I know. That should be the priority. And, and the one thing that you don't have to worry about when you're doing a podcast on the internet is the smell of your breath. Yeah. Nobody can smell <laughs> Obviously, it. Obviously, he doesn't have to worry <laughs> about God, that. God, I brushed my teeth. Or well, else you'd be able to smell it through the internet. Yeah, he was like, I already brushed my teeth this week, so I'm good on that. It's insane <laughs> that he's like, I know I'm three hours late, but the DMV sucks, doesn't it? People and we're all like, yeah, it does. Yeah. But, oh, it, those were all your fault. Yeah. Every yeah. single thing that happened there was your fault. Now, t speaking of showering and John's hygiene, it's time to hear about his third date with the Bumble Broad. Oh, boy. Yeah. He got a third date? Croge. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He says he did. I mean, I'd be, I'd be shocked. You gotta take him at his word. Because listen to these details. Now, first off, we're all older gentlemen at this point. John's much older than all of us. Yeah. He's fifty-six years old. At no point in my life 
when I go into the amount of detail. This is like chick shit. Yeah. Like, if you were to tell me, like, oh, I brought home a girl I got laid last night, I'm like, that's awesome, man. Good for you. I would be like, oh, I need the deets. Yeah. Spill, spill, spill. Yeah. What happened? You know, that's, that's like a girl thing that you would ask. But John, for some reason, just wants to tell us everything. I had my third date with this girl that I met on Bumble. So she uh, she slept over on, on, let's see, what's today? She slept over Sunday night. Was it Sunday night? Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she's... Now, the Bumble girl was a science teacher, so I doubt she slept over on a Sunday night, but who knows? Yeah, this story is a little fishy all of a sudden. Uh, already, it's a little fishy. It was like, what night was it? It was just two days ago. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> yeah, she slept over on Sunday night. You know, let's just say, you know, I hit a home run. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yes, I... Yep, uh, intercourse was made. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> intercourse was made. <laughs> That's like out of a forty-year-old virgin or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. Oh, right. Yes, God. I also enjoy intercourse with girls. Yeah, <laughs> I achieved orgasm. Brushed my teeth. She did not. Let's just say it was a soul shot to right. Yeah. Oh, She's God. conducting a science experiment on me. <laughs> All fucking night. Holy shit. Yeah, right. Freaking. Man. I was pushing rope all night. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, and then, and then, and then, uh, and then, like, you know, like the first couple of times, because we were drinking, you know, I, I couldn't orgasm. Finally, the third time, you know, I told them I'm probably going to, you know, probably going to want to have sex in the morning. I said, you know. So this guy cannot perform. Oh, yeah. All right, let me translate here. If this is if any of this is true, he's yeah. like, yeah. So I'm not satisfying her at all. And so I was like, hey, let's try it in in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> the Dead Kennedys wrote a song about this: "Too Drunk to Fuck." Yes, yeah. correct. All right. Now listen to this exchange. This is insane, and I I hope this didn't actually happen. In the morning, I said, you know, I just want some consent if I wake you up Ooh. having sex with you. Oh. <laughs> So, all right, this is what I want to know, because I've been told that if you get someone drunk and then take advantage of them, that's not consent. They can't consent yeah. when they're intoxicated. Now, what he's saying is, while she was drunk, I asked her if it's cool if I rape you tomorrow, and she <laughs> said yes. So, raping someone when they're sober, as long as they consented, when they were drunk, apparently, is fine. Well, yeah, I think he's asking... Uh, can I put it in you while you're asleep? That's what he, that's exactly what he just said. Which is not a great question for a third date, I would say. The barf I mean, bar bags are located yeah. just to your right I'm over need there. One. Yeah, no, oh, I have Lord. those equipped for this this specific Oof. drop. Wow, Oof. what is going on? Consent if I wake you up having sex with you. <laughs> she goes, I, I, I'm glad you asked me, and yes, you get my consent. I would love to be woken up to that. Oh, and, I'd uh, love to be woken up. With a flaccid oh. penis being rubbed on <laughs> my face. We'll be woken up to that. And uh, I didn't have to because she was awake. Oh. And then and then we had sex. She was trying to sneak out and, and I caught her. <laughs> she never closed her eyes. I don't know why. <laughs> the roaches kept her up. Could you imagine being like, just so you know, as soon as you fall asleep, I'm going to put my dick inside. And she's like. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have another cup of coffee, please? Yeah, head on a swivel. <laughs> I and can't orgasm had... with a woman rolling her eyes at me. Please be unconscious. Oh. I can't wrap my head around the mattress. The fucking yeah. disgusting mattress oh. that we've heard so much about. I know. Ooh. Hey, just put a sheet over it. Oh. Cleans it immediately. Oh. Can't even smell uh, the fungus after all. Oh. That's four layers of sheets. He never changes them. He just puts a new one on top. <laughs> Pillow top. I didn't have to because she was awake. And then, and then we had sex. Oh. And uh, then, and then I finally did orgasm. And then she goes, uh, oh. and she goes, "Well, are we still gonna have sex in the morning?" As I look out and see that the freaking that 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 it's sunrise, and I'm like, "It's already morning." But um, yes, I did take a couple of blue chews there, Benny Loco. <sighs> All right, no shit. Oh. So I love that. I don't even know. John's making this up, 
but I don't know what parts of it ha- are based in reality or based on a true story or yeah. what the deal is. But it's funny that as soon as he finally does orgasm, she's like, so can we do it again? And he's like, no, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this is what I've been trying to do all night. Now you've got to uh, go. <laughs> That's not a good time to ask a guy anything right after the orgasm. So are you going to take me out for dinner tonight? No, I <laughs> most well, certainly will not unless you're buying. And it's almost grosser that he's so clinical about it. Like, and then we had almost, penis in vaginal uh, almost sexual grosser. intercourse. Oh God! It's all gonna be in my new book, John Line Dating. <laughs> I'm kicked God. off Bumble. They won't have me on Raya. I had to start my own <laughs> dating app for people who aren't welcome on Raya called Diarrhea. <laughs> it's just me and Tom Arnold. <laughs> And no women. If you're tired of erect penises, then please join <laughs> Diarrhea. You can't possibly be penetrated by us. Um, all right, let's talk about tech problems. So John's having more technical problems here, and he's able to recover by making a great joke. Now, what I've done here, even though I do find these things funny, is I've cleaned up at least 20 seconds of dead air out of mm. this. So this went on much longer than what you're going to hear. But this is just a typical beer on the balcony. This is a paid show. You have to give him money in order to hear this. Uh, 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 <laughs> damn it. It's never, ever happened before. My phone update last night, it won't let me access StreamYard. Uh, His phone updated <laughs> last night. That freaking damn, I hate those updates. Uh, damn it. <laughs> oh, God, mother. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Good try and get him on. Well, in the meantime, oh, when I was a kid, when I was five years old, my mom, she, uh, she always wanted me to be famous. She actually let me walk to kindergarten on my own at the age of five in hopes that my picture would end up on the side of a milk carton. <laughs> Get it? Uh, pretty good joke, guys. Uh, so you saved that whole segment with that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good stuff. Please just save us. Just call hell. I'd rather listen to you <laughs> dialing your phone to call hell to fix this. Hell was supposed to be on, but his phone up dated and he hates my guts okay <laughs> <laughs> all right i have one more clip from centering john now i am going to tell uh everyone who's here in the studio right now smoke if you got them bathroom break time uh i'm gonna let this play out because i find it hilarious <laughs> yeah. but this is over four minutes of john having technical problems <laughs> and i didn't pull this together this isn't like a compilation this is real this time is straight real time four minute yep this is john difficult trying to find a video he wants to play for people on beer on the balcony oh. <laughs> all right I'm, I'm just i'm just gonna do this for you guys hold on ah fuck i don't know if i can I don't know if I can log in here. Oh, I'm on there. All right, hold on a second. Give me a minute. It'll be well worth it. Trust me. Give me a second. Where is it? Come on. Come on. Let me find it. Come on. Give me a second. Uh...
Hold on a second. Mm, uh, is it on this page? Maybe it's on a different page. Hold on. Hold on. Stay with me. Stay with me here. Hold on a second. Wait, is this just... No, this is my regular one. Hold on. Oh, come on. No, this can't be my regular one. All right, hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to try and find this for you. It'll be worth it. Do, 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 do. Strangers in the night. It's not on this Facebook. I got to go to the next Facebook. How could I do this? Hold on. Let's see if I can get uh, uh, switch accounts. All right. Are you lonesome tonight? Uh, there we go. All righty. All righty. Bear with me. Skull! Oh, come on, man. There we go. <laughs> All right, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I shit. don't believe it. <laughs> wow. wow. Show prep Johnny over here. Cut it all out of your show. But why not? Like, if you want to play a video, why not have it ready to go? Right. Maybe know where the link is <laughs> or save it to your desktop or something. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's still this bad at podcasting. And right? for that, we love him. <laughs> 